Overnight, the world experiences a shutdown of all water and electricity. The temperature has plummeted by 100 degrees. I am the only one able to sit at home, playing games by the fireplace. Neighbors all step out of their houses to complain. In this extreme cold, people are sure to freeze to death. Furthermore, no one had the foresight to prepare instant noodles. So, even if they don't freeze, they'll starve. But I've hoarded an entire Walmart's worth of supplies in my house. The girl I've had a crush on for 18 years brazenly asks me for food. I unashamedly send her a picture of steak and wine. She instantly recognizes it as top-grade Wagyu and a $100,000 bottle of wine. Immediately, she says she also wants steak and wine. Upon hearing this, I laugh. If she wants to eat, she can go to the supermarket herself. Turns out, a supernova explosion affected the planet causing a global ice age. And, using my position as the warehouse manager of a supermarket, I have hoarded enough supplies to last two years. Who knew the girl would break into my house with a group of neighbors and steal all my food? In order to ration the food, they decide to start eating me. The girl even gleefully admits that she tricked me into opening the door. She want to take one of my thighs. In extreme despair, I would rather die. But when I open my eyes again, I've been reborn three months before the global freeze. In my new life, I swear never to be a bootlicker again. And I want to repay the pain of my previous life a thousandfold. But the immediate priority is to hoard enough supplies before the end of the world and build a sturdy safe house. Just as I'm considering where to start, a bright light flashes before my eyes. In the next second, I'm in a strange space. Looking at this otherworldly place, a bold idea pops into my head. If I could move an entire Walmart here, I would never have to worry about food and drink for 10 lifetimes. Just then, my stomach rumbles. Thinking about all the good things I won't be able to eat after the apocalypse, I head to the best restaurant in the city. A meal costs me 50,000. In the apocalypse, even a bowl of instant noodles can cost a life. It won't be easy to eat your fill then. This scene is witnessed by the girl I've been infatuated with for 18 years. A girlfriend standing beside her looks surprised. Fan Yuching, you're so lucky. The bootlicker chasing you turns out to be a rich second generation in disguise. Fang Yuching naturally wouldn't miss this opportunity and comes up to chat. Shang Yi, what a coincidence. Hearing this, I laugh coldly inside. In my last life, I was tricked by her pretending to be pure and innocent. In the end, I became soup in her bowl. Although at this moment I really want to kill this bitch, it would also land me in jail. I have to wait until the end of the world. Immediately, I pull out my bank card and ask them if they want to go shopping at the supermarket, thinking to use these two as my free labor. As expected, they happily agree. Sure. Sure, we're neighbors. We can help you carry a bit. Who knew I would buy two full shopping carts and throw them to the two? Free labor shouldn't go to waste. This leaves the girlfriend looking displeased. You're a big man. Aren't you going to do any of the work? Upon hearing this, Fan Yuching hastily chuckles. I've done you a big favor today. You owe us a big meal. Hearing this, I laugh coldly inside. Of course, I'll have to treat you too well. When the extreme cold comes, not one of you will be able to run away. Just then, Auntie Lin from the neighborhood committee walks up with her grandson, Little Zhang. You can't eat all this by yourself. How about sharing some with Auntie Lin. After she says this, her two-year-old grandson starts taking things from my shopping cart. I grab it back right away. Sorry, I don't even have enough for myself. Upon seeing this, the child immediately started making a fuss. Big villain, give it back to me, or I will kill you, he shouted. In response, I coldly said, dare to say that again. Believe it or not, I'll slap you to death. This yell made the child cry immediately. However, Auntie Lin wouldn't back down. What are you doing? A grown man, haggling with a kid. I'll buy this box. I'll transfer you the money later. Stop acting like we're trying to take advantage of you. I immediately displayed my payment QR code, always saying later, either pay me now, or go to the supermarket yourself. This move made Auntie Lin very angry. Once I got back home, Fan Yuching winked at me, don't forget to treat us, okay? After I sent the two of them away, I stored all the purchased food in the alternate space. Next, I had to build an impenetrable steel fortress, with heating devices and medical supplies. It would be great if I could get some firearms, but I'm not in a hurry, there are still 90 days until the ice age. During this time, I have to sell off my property as quickly as possible. With money, I can always get what I need. The next morning, I came to the alternate space to check the freshness of the food. Although I can't store live creatures, the food remains as fresh as when I bought it. I took out my phone and contacted the best local restaurant and booked 500 tables of meals. I said I wanted to host a banquet for three days and three nights, but the hotel manager said the cost for 500 tables of food and drink will not be less than a million and a deposit of 200,000 is needed in advance. Without any hesitation, I transferred 200,000 over. Then, I found my property certificate and went to the bank to mortgage it. After the apocalypse, money will become useless waste paper. But mortgaging the property and adding my own savings is only enough to build my savings.
safe house. I need more funds to purchase weapons and supplies. As I was thinking about how to get more money, a man in a suit walked up to me and said, Bro, do you need money? I was delighted. Money is coming when I need it. The man in the suit quickly brought me to another man. The man didn't beat around the bush and asked how much I wanted to borrow, but the interest rate would be a bit high. Upon hearing this, I rubbed my hands together. It doesn't matter if the interest is high. The main thing is to raise the money as soon as possible. So, I mortgaged the house that I had just mortgaged, and my Mercedes-Benz as well. After the transaction, both parties felt that they had made a good deal. I mortgaged a house worth 5 million and a car worth 300,000 for 4 million. In the end, I have to pay them 7 million back, but I also think they are really nice people, just giving away money for me to spend. Then, I came to the most famous War Dragon security company. In my previous life, a second generation rich guy spent $2 billion to build a top level safe house. As a result, that rich guy directly became the emperor in the apocalypse. At this time, a business manager came over and asked if I needed any help. I quickly walked up and expressed my idea, indicating that I wanted to build a safe house for the apocalypse. Hearing this, the business manager didn't say much and directly presented me with several plans for me to choose from. However, I was not satisfied with the plans above. Then I stated that the house should be reinforced with aviation materials, the balcony glass should use the highest strength bulletproof glass, and add an air filtration system and a 360 degree no blind spot monitoring system. The front door should be made of the same material as the bank's anti-theft door, and I asked the manager to find a way to get some guns. After seeing my requirements, the business manager was surprised. With these renovations, and some weapons. This would be a fortress. The final plan required 8 million. After I paid the deposit, I asked them to start work immediately and said that the balance would be paid within three months. Next, I need to get some weapons for self-defense. I called the owner of a hunting club I know and got a few sets of crossbows as weapons from him. Just then, the 500 tables of banquet I ordered also arrived in batches by truck. This attracted quite a few people from the neighborhood. This is the delivery truck from a five-star hotel. These several trucks of food would cost at least a million or so. After a while, the food for 500 tables filled my entire house. Without wasting any words, I put them all into the otherworldly space. With all these delicious foods, plus the ingredients I had ordered before, I basically don't have to worry about food and clothing for the rest of my life. The next day, the security company's workers came to start building the safe house. This scene attracted quite a few neighbors' attention, who ridiculed me, asking if I had taken the wrong medication. But I didn't care. When the end comes, you'll know who the real joke is. Then I found manager Joe from the company, and I bought a part of the warehouse's supplies at twice the market price. Next is to transport these things home little by little. My recent hoarding activities also attracted the attention of Fan Yuching. She then asked if something was going to happen recently, even saying that she had been thinking about me lately. As for this bitch's fake concern, I didn't want to respond at all. This really pissed Fan Yuching off. John E, this bootlicker, actually dares to ignore me, but she was still curious about my sudden hoarding. However, her best friend just scoffed. If something big is happening, the country will definitely notify us. Just try your best to catch Zhang Yi, this bootlicker. Half a month later, my safe house was successfully built. In order to ensure the employer's safety, the manager also installed a surveillance system on each floor. I was very satisfied with this. Next is to wait for my last batch of supplies to arrive. Soon, several trucks of drinking water arrived in succession. At this time, Uncle Yu from the same neighborhood looked curious. Little Zhang, what are you doing with all these barrels of water? Thinking that Uncle Yu was one of the few good people in my past life. I whispered, the weather this year is going to be very unusual. It's best to stock up on some supplies to prevent extreme cold as soon as possible. Upon hearing this, Uncle Yu was half skeptical, but seeing the serious look on my face, he believed it. In the following period, I tried my best to exchange all the money in my hands for various supplies. Three days before the advent of the extreme cold end days, I specifically went back to the warehouse and invited all my colleagues for a cup of milk tea. After they drank it, everyone fainted. In order to move the entire Walmart warehouse with peace of mind, I had already put sleeping pills in the milk tea in advance. After shutting down the surveillance equipment, I went to the warehouse and immediately put all the rows of goods into the otherworldly space. With the help of the otherworldly space, I quickly emptied the entire warehouse. Just then, a box in the corner caught my attention. When I opened it, it was the cold-resistant tech product that was stocked a few days ago. It was said to be able to withstand temperatures of minus 100 degrees. With these supplies, even if facing the coldest ice age, I have nothing to fear. To prevent exposure, I also directly gave myself a dose of sleeping water and then laid down 
down on my colleague and fell asleep. Two and a half hours later, I was awakened by my colleague. Boss, something crazy has happened. Our warehouse has been emptied. Hearing this, I pretended to be surprised and jumped up. What the hell? Then, looking at the empty warehouse, I pretended to be upset and said, What happened? How are all the supplies in the warehouse gone? At this time, the manager called, inquiring about the loss of the warehouse supplies. Knowing that the whole warehouse was emptied all at once, the manager immediately cursed. How is this possible? Are you a mole and stealing for yourself? I gave an awkward smile. Manager, what do you take me for? Besides, I'm not that capable. I think we better report to the higher department as soon as possible, so as not to delay the investigation time. After hanging up the phone, I quickly comforted my colleagues. Everyone, don't be afraid. We who are upright are not afraid of crooked shadows. Soon, all the colleagues on duty and I were called to the police station for questioning. But nothing could be found out after the questioning. Then the cop told us not to leave Tianhai City rashly, in order to cooperate with the follow-up investigation. Soon this incident made the news in Tianhai City. No one could believe that hundreds of square meters of supplies disappeared without a trace in less than three hours. Just then, it suddenly started snowing heavily in the sky. I knew this was a prelude to the extreme cold, so I hurried home. Three days later, the shockwave from a supernova explosion swept across the globe. This brought about a devastating disaster to the entire planet. The temperature began to plummet overnight. Looking at the heavy snow outside the window, I remained calm. What was destined to come, eventually came. But at this time, the homeowner group became lively. After all, it was the first time to see such heavy snow in the south. I looked at all this with a calm face. Perhaps for many people, this might be the first time they saw snow. And it could also be the last. In my past life, the heavy snow lasted a full three months, and the temperature would get lower and lower, causing many people who had not stocked up on food in advance to freeze to death in this winter. On the second day of the extreme cold weather, the heavy snow at the entrance of the residential area had piled up to half a person's height. Even if people indoors turned the air conditioning to the maximum, they still shivered from the cold. But I, who had prepared various heating equipment in advance, was sleeping soundly. But just then, I was suddenly awakened by a ring of the phone. It was a call from the bitch, Fam Yuching. She asked cheerfully, Zhang Yi, did you know about the temperature drop when you stocked up on supplies? You didn't even tell me, and now I'm freezing. Hearing this, I scoffed and directly hung up the phone. This pissed off Fam Yuching on the other side. This bootlicker, he dares to hang up on me. Then she shamelessly texted me asking for food. After reading it, I laughed. She still wants to treat me like a bootlicker, huh? I directly sent her a picture of steak with wine. Fang Yuching recognized at a glance that this was a top-tier Wagyu beef and a bottle of wine worth a hundred thousand. She immediately said that she also wanted to eat steak and drink wine. After hearing this, I laughed. If you want to eat, go buy it yourself at the supermarket. After seeing my message, Fang Yuching was furious. But after thinking about it, she calmed down. After all, she has to hook me, the fish, and I, full and bored, started watching TV. Just then, the tablet monitoring the building suddenly made a noise. I saw Auntie Len on the screen solemnly saying, everyone, don't panic and scramble for supplies. This extreme weather will last at most two or three days. Our neighborhood committee will help everyone through this. Rushing for supplies will only lead to price increases. If anyone dares to hoard supplies, I will report to the authorities. But just then, a voice sounded behind them. Auntie Lynn, how can you determine that this heavy snow will not last long? You are blocking everyone from going out to buy things. Will you be responsible if something happens? Hearing this, the surrounding homeowners also echoed. If we don't hoard supplies now, will you be responsible if we run out of food later? Auntie Lynn quickly stated that the neighborhood committee would take responsibility for this matter. Then she pointed at me and cursed. Zhang Yi, don't stir up trouble here. This is an illegal act. But I didn't bother to deal with her and turned around to go back to my super safe house. A week passed quickly, but the heavy snow outside showed no signs of stopping. I was having fun at home as usual. Suddenly, a message came in on my phone. I saw Auntie Lynn in the group chat, calling me out by name to go shovel snow. I didn't even think about it and directly refused her. With such heavy snow falling, we'd be shoveling slow than it's falling. Clearly, Auntie Lynn was just trying to pick a fight. This got her gnashing her teeth in anger. Then, Auntie Lynn commanded in the name of the neighborhood committee, Zhang Yi, you must go out and shovel snow. Whoever dares to lead the opposition will certainly be dealt with by the organization after the snow disaster ends. Seeing this, I said coldly, such a show of authority. Then I quickly typed a bunch of text and sent it out. How come I don't see you calling out the rich kids in the neighborhood? Just picking on us honest people. Auntie Lynn, since you're so capable, why don't you go ask Su Hao and Chen Zheng Hao to shovel the snow? Chen Zheng Hao is the boss of a construction project. He has hundreds of people under him. And Su Hao is a well-connected rich kid. In my past life, these two guys broke into my house and took all my food. Hearing what I said, other people also started making a commotion in the homeowner group. Zhang Yi is right. If you dare, go ask them. Seeing the messages, Auntie Lin was immediately cursing. Clearly, my words made it hard for her to step down. So she could only grit her teeth and call out the two in the group to shovel snow together. Chen Zheng Hao, seeing the message, immediately started cursing. Are you fucking crazy? I'll kill 
kill you if you bother me again. Suao also echoed. What a big idiot, taking the homeowner's money and acting high and mighty every day. Now you really think you're the boss. I don't even bother to deal with you poor ghosts. Seeing this message, Auntie Lin was so angry that she didn't dare to say a word, but directly pointed the finger at me. Zhang Yi, you're really trying to make trouble for me, aren't you? You'll be satisfied if no one goes out to shovel snow, won't you? I picked up my phone, turned on the voice message, and scoffed. Did you come to me to seek a sense of existence after being scolded by someone else? Believe it or not, if you talk any more nonsense, I'll kill you. Seeing my serious tone, Auntie Lin immediately backed down. Just then, a loud bang came from my front door. I heard Chen Zhenghao outside yelling, Zhang Yi, weren't you pretty cocky in the group chat just now? Believe it or not, I'll kill you. At these words, I picked up my crossbow and went to the door. It's not certain yet who's going to kill whom. I shot him directly through the shin with an arrow. Injured, Chen Zhenghao fell to the ground, wailing incessantly. He never imagined that I, a seemingly honest person, would be so ruthless when I took action. Little did he know that this was only the first step of my revenge. With temperatures now at minus 100 degrees, Chen Zhenghao's leg, which had been shot through, was surely not going to be saved. If not treated in time, he could only die slowly in this freezing weather. Chen Zhenghao, bearing the severe pain, staggered into the elevator. He could never have imagined, having only met me a few times, that I wanted to kill him directly. This realization made Chen Zhenghao shudder with fear. So, he immediately took out his phone and dialed the emergency number. However, the whole city was already covered in heavy snow, and the hospital's ambulance simply couldn't make it. Left with no choice, Chen Zhenghao could only go home and treat his wound himself. Fortunately, the weather was freezing cold, and his foot was almost numb from the cold. Then, with a grim determination, Chen Zhenghao pulled the arrow out. Then, he took out his phone again and made a threat in the homeowner group. Zhang Yi, wait for me. Watch me kill you. Facing his threat, I naturally wasn't afraid, and responded confidently. Keep talking, and I'll disable your remaining two legs. This scene stunned the onlookers in the group chat. After all, as the area tyrant, Chen Zhenghao, this was the first time someone dared to confront him directly. Soon, he picked up the phone and summoned his hundreds of followers. In no time, a swarm of followers, each holding their own weapon, rushed over in grandeur. After learning about what had happened, the leading bald guy came to my door with his followers. You offended our bro Hao. Today will be your death anniversary. With that, he slashed directly at the door. But the next second, his machete was flung away. This scared the gangsters out of their wits. How many people had this kid offended? His home was fortified stronger than a turtle shell. Watching the scene from my security camera, I laughed with disdain. Are you guys hungry? Try harder. Seeing the bunch outside the house swearing and fuming, I suddenly had an idea. Immediately, I took a water hose and connected it to the kitchen faucet. Why are you so angry? Let me cool you down. The gangsters outside saw the door lock suddenly open and were instantly alert. Upon realizing it wasn't an arrow, they had a good laugh. Who would have thought that the next second, the hose would spurt out cold water? Soon, a bunch of them fell to the ground, frozen. Only three managed to escape. Seeing this scene, I was quite pleased. In this freezing weather, cold water is more lethal than any weapon. On the other side, the three little guys who escaped were huddled together, shivering. Chen Zhenghao looked at them and yelled, What happened? How did you guys, a whole group, not manage to bring a small brat? Hearing this, the three hastily explained. Zhang Yi was too cunning. He turned the front door into a burglar-proof steel door. We chopped for a long time and only scratched some paint off. The key was he sprayed us with cold water. Upon hearing this, Chen Zhenghao's face immediately darkened. No wonder the door felt a bit hard just now. But don't worry, I don't believe this kid can hide in there forever. Send a few men to keep watch at his door day and night. When he dares to show his face, tear him to pieces. Little did he know, the food stored in my house, not to mention for a lifetime. Even if it were for 10 lifetimes, it would run out. On the other side, Uncle Yu was leading a few people to clear the snow from the entrance of the residential area, planning to dig a path to the supermarket to replenish food. However, they couldn't shovel as fast as the snow fell. After a while, they gave up and prepared to go back. Watching this scene, I sighed. Human power is simply no match for a disaster of this scale. Although the TV is actively reporting to reassure all citizens that the country is launching a final offensive against the snow disaster, only I know that 90% of all organisms globally will freeze to death in this snow disaster. Disaster. My crush of 18 years was the first to send me a greeting. Zhang Yi, are you okay? Seeing the message, I couldn't help but laugh. If it wasn't for her eating my most important part in my previous life, I would have still seen her as a pure lotus. So, I replied indifferently, I'm fine. Then Fan Yuching shamelessly asked me for something to eat, saying she would return the favor later. Faced with my crush's request, I agreed without hesitation, then sent her a picture of a lobster to whet her appetite, adding with a mocking tone, I'm already full. Seeing this, Fang Yuching got angry and decided to kick me out of her pond. At this time, her bitchy best friend sent me a message. Why are you so dumb? Fang Yuching is really angry right now. Seeing the message, I laughed again. They're really good at acting. One playing good cop, the other bad cop. 
Huh? The bitchy best friend didn't give up and continued. The snow can't last that long. Starve for a few meals and seduce Fang Yuching first. Wouldn't that be a big win? Regarding this, I ignored her disdainfully and simply responded with oh. This response infuriated her. How did this bootlicker suddenly become enlightened? Fang Yuching could only sigh. Why did my attitude towards her undergo such a drastic 180 degree change? At this point, her bitchy best friend suggested, if we lose one bootlicker, so be it. Don't we still have others? Hearing this, Fang Yuching's eyes lit up and she immediately called other bootlickers. Soon, Zhou Peng hurried over with large and small bags of supplies, claiming that this was all the food he had left. Hearing this, Fan Yuching was touched and immediately sent him a good person card. Xiao Peng, you're a really good person. Before Xiao Peng could express his loyalty, her bitchy best friend promptly closed the door. In no time, three days had passed, but the heavy snow was still falling non-stop. Munching on a chicken leg and looking at the time on my phone, I thought, the real drama is about to begin. The next moment, the entire neighborhood plunged into darkness. Soon, neighbors began stepping out of their homes, asking each other whether they had electricity. Now with water and electricity cut off and air conditioning, no longer functioning, it was genuinely getting cold enough to kill. After finishing my chicken, I picked my teeth and then turned on a generator I had prepared in advance. I was fortunate to have died early in my past life, otherwise, I too would be freezing like the rest of them. At this moment, Auntie Lin from the neighborhood committee was shivering while holding her grandson. She never expected the snow to last so long. A message came into the neighborhood group chat. They say this is a once in a hundred thousand years global blizzard. We might be on the brink of a mass extinction event. Several major cities in the country have already been overrun. Everyone must stockpile more supplies. After reading the message, Auntie Lin was shocked. She never imagined the snow disaster would be this serious. At that moment, she hatched a plan. She must trick everyone into giving her their food before they receive the news. So, Auntie Lin promptly posted a message in the owner's group. Everyone, don't worry. This disaster is temporary. Workers are currently repairing the water and power outage. The officials have issued an order. Due to these extraordinary circumstances, the neighborhood committee will conduct unified management of all property owners. Anyone who does not cooperate will be arrested and interrogated by the police. Upon seeing the message, Chen Zhenghao began to curse in dissatisfaction. Although he had a lot of underlings, he dared not confront the police. Meanwhile, Auntie Lin continued in the group chat. Due to the severe impact of the blizzard on everyone's lives, the neighborhood committee has decided to collect supplies from each owner and distribute them uniformly to help us all get through this crisis. On seeing the message, I couldn't help but laugh. It was the same old trick as in my previous life. Then Auntie Lin sent me a private message. Little Zhang, you usually work in a warehouse and must have hoarded a lot of food, right? Besides, you bought three truckloads of stuff last time. Everyone is in trouble now, and it's your turn to do your part. After the crisis, we will certainly repay you. On hearing this, I chuckled coldly. You old hag, your hands were also dirty in my death in the previous life. Just you wait. I immediately replied with a voice message. That's great. I just ran out of supplies at home. Auntie Lin, when you collect the supplies, make sure you share some with me. Seeing my message almost made her explode. This kid had hoarded several truckloads of supplies. How could he possibly run out so soon? Realizing that she and her grandson were depending on my supplies, Auntie Lin swallowed her anger and kindly replied, Little Zhang, this is an order from the organization. You must comply. Once the snow disaster is over, I will definitely report your good deeds to the organization. On seeing her message, I laughed again. If I hadn't died early in my previous life, I might have believed her lies. So, I picked my teeth and replied, Auntie, I'm not lying to you. I really don't have anything to eat at home. Why don't you take the lead? and send me a few packets of instant noodles first. Upon hearing this, Auntie Lin could no longer restrain herself and furiously retorted, John E, refusing to hand over your supplies is the same as opposing the organization. I will definitely report you to the organization for disciplinary action. I mocked her. You represent the organization? You're not even a civil servant, not to mention a public institution staff. Why don't you ascend to heaven? It's okay for you to show off normally, but now that things are like this, you still think you're so important. As soon as I said this, it made Auntie Lin so angry that she smashed her old-fashioned phone. This little brat dares to talk to me like that. After all, I'm a leader in the community. After failing to get any advantage from me, Auntie Lin turned her attention to other homeowners, thinking, it doesn't matter who I can deceive, as long as I can deceive some. Two days quickly passed. Under Auntie Lin's coaxing, quite a few homeowners had actually sent their supplies to her home. Looking at this scene, I sneered in my heart. What a bunch of fools, believing in some great Samaritan in this post-apocalyptic world. Now, the whole world has plunged 
plunged into chaos. Without enough supplies, they could only wait to die. Soon, many homeowners began to tag Auntie Lynn in the group chat. Wasn't it said that the supplies would be distributed evenly? We've run out of food at home. Start distributing some to us. But Auntie Lynn merely scoffed at the messages. What a bunch of idiots. These supplies were obtained through my hard work. How could I possibly give them away so easily? Just then, her phone rang. Seeing that it was Chen Zhenghao, she broke out in a cold sweat. What does he want with me? On the other end of the line, Chen Zhenghao said coldly, Auntie Lin, you have quite a method. You've actually deceived everyone's supplies into your home. Hearing this, Auntie Lin feigned innocence, saying it was the arrangement of the community committee, and she was just doing her duty. Chen Zhenghao laughed. That's perfect. Over ten of us here are waiting for you to distribute the supplies. Hearing this, Auntie Lin coughed lightly. These supplies haven't been sorted out yet. Some homeowners haven't handed in their supplies. We can't start distributing them yet. The next second, the area tyrant Chen Zhenghao, along with his underlings, burst into her house. Seeing this, Auntie Lin's face turned pale. How dare you break into a civilian house? Is there no law anymore? To which Chen Zhenghao responded with a slap. And you think you've been lawful, deceiving everyone's supplies? Today, I'll act in the name of justice. Meanwhile, I watch the scene on the surveillance, cheerfully eating a sausage. The dogfight was finally about to begin. At that moment, I had a brilliant idea. If watching alone is fun, sharing it with others would be even better. With a love for drama, I immediately posted the surveillance video in the homeowner's group chat. Surely, everyone's reaction to this would be quite amusing. On the other side, Chen Zhenghao and his gang had already broken into Auntie Lin's house, instructing his subordinates to take away all the food, not leaving a single thing behind. Hearing this, Auntie Lin hurriedly clung to Chen Zhenghao's leg. You can't take everything. Some of the supplies here are what I hoarded myself. Without these supplies, how would my grandson and I survive? Chen Zhenghao let out a cold laugh. That's none of my business. Get out of here. With that, he directly kicked Auntie Lin away. Her grandson was stunned by this scene, and then picked up a small knife to avenge his grandmother. He managed to accurately stab one of the punks, a yellow hair, in the butt. The severe pain made him forget about moving things, and he kicked the boy away in response. Witnessing this, the other thugs burst out laughing. Since when did yellow hair learn to kick? He actually managed to kick this little brat away. Despite the intense pain in his butt, yellow hair played along. How cool am I? Right. Someone should have recorded that moment. Auntie Lin fell in front of her grandson, little who, my dear grandson. But Chen Zhenghao, watching this scene, showed no sympathy. Instead, he sneered, this is what you get for deceiving us, your neighbors, we're just dispensing justice. On the other side, many homeowners watching this scene also clapped and cheered, ha ha ha, serves the big liar right, such thunderous methods are necessary to deal with swindlers like her. Without bro how, we'd be helpless against this kind of rogue. Seeing these messages, I laughed, you people really don't understand the crux of the problem. Today, Chen Zhenghao can break into Auntie Lin's house. Tomorrow he could break into yours. But all this has nothing to do with me. My two meter thick steel door wouldn't yield even if he came with a tank. Soon, Auntie Lin was pleading for help in the homeowner group. Does anyone have hemostatic drugs, anti shock medications, and antibiotics? My grandson was injured by Chen Zhenghao. Dr. Zhou needs these medications urgently for surgery. Upon hearing this, my eyes lit up. Dr. Zhou Kier was a savior like figure in the previous world. Fortunately, we have neighborhood Dr. Zhou Kier to save her grandson's life for now. At this point, Auntie Lin was pleading continuously in the homeowner group for medicine, promising to kowkow in gratitude to anyone willing to provide it. However, this only resulted in mockery from many homeowners. So you plan to kowkow in a chat group? Dr. Zhou, a kind-hearted beauty, saved your grandson. Why should we help you? After deceiving us of our supplies, you still have the audacity to ask for our help. Seeing this, I sighed. This was karma for Auntie Lin. Furthermore, the snowstorm had been going on for over a week, and the outside was practically paralyzed. Even if the boy was saved, how long could everyone last without food? At this point, the snow outside the community had almost buried up to the first floor. Many people had already heard from the news that this was a global snowstorm that occurs once every hundred thousand years. No one knew what this snow disaster would turn into. Soon a week passed in a flash, and the whole world was almost buried in the snowstorm. In some cities in the north, the temperature had even dropped to negative 100 degrees Celsius. Many residents who tried to evacuate southwards ended up freezing to death on the road. In the homeowner group, Auntie Lynn began to play the morality card again. My dear your grandson has been hungry for two days. He's just a child. Are you really going to stand by and watch him die? She stated that she was willing to pay a high price for supplies. Seeing this, the homeowners started to inflate the prices, and the last pack of instant noodles was even sold for $2,000. Seeing this, 
I laughed. These people are not taking the apocalypse seriously. In a little while, you'll think paper money is too hard even to use as toilet paper. As a second generation rich kid with some business acumen, Suhao started to hoard supplies at a high price. He was very clear that money in this apocalyptic world would become as useless as waste paper. He had to get rid of it while it was still useful. At this time, a single mother in the group sent out a plea for help, stating that she and her daughter were about to starve to death, hoping that everyone could help her. Seeing this, I laughed. In the past life, this woman and her daughter managed to survive for a long time. This Sielime is not as simple as she seems. Ten days passed quickly, and as usual, I was enjoying my time at home. At this moment, the phone on the table rang. Seeing the caller ID, I let out a cold laugh. This bitch finally couldn't stand it anymore, so, I opened the video chat and sarcastically said, You all look thinner after not seeing each other for a while. Behind me, the sight of food made the two people drool. Why do you still have so much food in your house? Zhang Yi, is it because you hoarded it last time? And with this weather of negative 100 degrees, Degrees. Why are you sweating? Upon hearing this, I smiled. Oh this? I installed a fireplace at home. This thing is very warm. I feel like going for a run outside. Upon hearing this, Fan Yuching immediately tried to butter up to me. Brother Zhang Yi, you're so awesome. You're so well prepared. Could you let Fan Yuching come over and take a shower? Inside, I scoffed. Do they still take me for an old lecher? So, without a second thought, I rejected her invitation, even taunting her. With the temperature at negative 100 degrees, make sure to keep warm. Fan Yuching was instantly infuriated at my words. Zhang Yi, don't go too far. We are freezing and starving. It's fine if you don't help, but don't make sarcastic comments. Hearing this, I laughed. You still think I'm an easy target? If you want food, go find your rich kid. Besides, we're not related. Why should I help you? With that, I stylishly ended the video call. On the other side, Fan Yuching was already furious. She never thought that I would be on the path of a bootlicker's counterattack. At this moment, her best friend chimed in with some fair words. Zhang Yi is quite good. It's you who missed the opportunity. Otherwise, we could be enjoying the things that Zhang Yi's house right now. He is much stronger than that so-called rich second generation. If I had known you would fail, I would have gone for it myself. Now everything has been revealed, and we end up with nothing. At this, Fan Yuching was already furious. Lin Kaining, you bitch, still speaking in favor of Zhang Yi. I'll kill you. Soon the two bitches were wrestling on the bed. Meanwhile, the government, seeing that they could no longer hide the news of the snow disaster, issued an announcement on television. In order to meet everyone's electricity needs, power supply would be provided from 1 to 2 o'clock every day. But the voltage would only be enough for low power appliances. Currently, all major power plants are shut down and power is scarce. Everyone is encouraged to use electricity sparingly to prevent large-scale power outages. Soon, the homeowner group was lively again. Did you see the news? Turns out the rumors online are true. Just as everyone was on edge, suddenly someone offered to sell instant noodles 5,000 bucks a pack. Any takers? Seeing this, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Knowing that we're in an apocalypse, yet still wanting to exchange life-saving supplies for this worthless paper. Under the current circumstances, filling one's stomach is above all else. When everyone is hungry, who would care about this useless paper? On the other side, after wrestling for two minutes, Fan Yuching and her friend finally calmed down. Since the soft approach didn't work, we'll go hard. With that, Fan Yuching picked up her phone and contacted her number one bootlicker, telling a wild story about how Zhang Yi wanted to tarnish her purity just because he had food. Xiao Peng was instantly furious upon hearing this. This Zhang Yi is such a scumbag. If I don't take this guy down, I'll be letting down my bootlicker identity. Seeing Xiao Peng was hooked, Fan Yuching immediately got close to him. Little Zhou Peng, let's find a way to take his house, and then we can live together, okay? Xiao Peng agreed without a second thought. But before that, they needed to prepare some weapons. In a short while, the three of them, each carrying a kitchen knife, arrived at my doorstep. Then Zhou Peng, hiding the knife behind his back, knocked on the door. Brother Zhang Yi, are you in? It's old Zhou. As colleagues, could you lend me some food? I'll trade you with fever medication. Unbeknownst to them, I had already seen the whole scene clearly through the surveillance camera. Seeing the weapons in their hands, I was ready to explode with anger. Do you guys really think you can kill me? If the tiger doesn't show its power, you'll mistake it for a sick cat. Then, I picked up the hose, attached it to the tap, and decided to give them a chilling shower at negative 100 degrees. At that that moment, the piled up waste caught my attention, and an idea sprang to mind. I picked up the hose and approached the door, shouting, Don't worry, I'll make sure everyone gets enough to eat. The three of them, thinking that I was about to open the door, excitedly raised their weapons. But the next second, a pile of feces sprayed through the small window of the door onto them. Fang Yuching immediately realized it was a pile of feces and started to vomit on the side. While Zhou Peng was furious, Zhang Yi, if you have the guts, come out. I'll kill you. At this, I just laughed. Don't say I didn't give you a chance. If 
If you have the guts, come in. Hearing this, Xiu Peng, seething with rage, raised his kitchen knife and struck my front door, only to find that the door was unharmed. Instead, his hand was injured from the impact. Watching this scene, I couldn't help but laugh. My two meter thick security door isn't something you can break just by saying so. I really don't know what you're thinking. And, I've stockpiled as much as a Walmart warehouse in my house. I'm not worried at all about them keeping watch outside. Even if I never go out in my next life, what can they do to me? I was suddenly woken from my sleep by a gunshot. Even though I knew the maliciousness of human nature would be exposed in the post-apocalyptic world, the sudden gunshot still gave me a big fright. There was actually someone with a gun in this community. So, I quickly picked up my tablet and started checking the surveillance footage. It turned out that Chen Zheng Hao and his men were going around robbing houses. After the water supply was cut off, most of the residents would go out to dig snow for water during this time period, and Chen Zheng Hao was taking advantage of this time to loot supplies. Once the supplies were gone, even if they used the accumulated snow as food, they wouldn't last long. After robbing supplies, Chen Zheng Hao didn't forget to assert his authority in the homeowners group chat. We've been snowed in for so long. From now on, I, Chen Zheng Hao, am in charge of this building. Anyone who tries to undermine me, this will be your fate. He then posted several intimidating photos. Seeing this, I couldn't help but sigh. Chen Zheng Hao's ruthless tactics were no doubt why he had been so successful in society before the apocalypse. However, his ammunition and followers were ultimately limited. They couldn't possibly face off against all the residents of the building. Just then, I was added to a new group chat. Several homeowners were vehemently denouncing Chen Cheng Hao's actions in the chat, saying that we all had to unite to resist such a tyrant. Even if he has a gun, he can't stop all of us. But when asked when to take action, a few clever ones suggested that we needed to plan this carefully. After reading these messages, I couldn't help but laugh. The loudest critics were also the most hesitant to take action. They were all just talk. At this point, Uncle Yu, a retired veteran, chimed in the chat. We can't let Chen Cheng Hao continue like this. Otherwise, we're all doomed. If you all are scared, I can lead the charge. Let's all rise up together. Uncle Yu's words garnered a lot of support from the homeowners. Some offered to provide weapons. Others suggested tactics, saying Chen Cheng Hao was only one man and we could ambush him. Seeing all this support, Uncle Yu continued. Besides the gun, Chen Cheng Hao has about five or six people with him. I alone won't be enough. We need a dozen or so young guys to ensure our safety. Just as everyone was eagerly preparing to volunteer, a woman suddenly spoke up in the chat. Auntie Lin just tricked us out of our supplies. Who knows if Uncle Yu, you won't do the same. If you lead everyone to surrender, what about the rest of us who are old, weak, women, and children? I absolutely disagree. Hearing this, I really wanted to smack her. This woman was the one who stirred up gender conflicts in the past life. In this post-apocalyptic world, if you can't even trust a retired veteran, who can you trust? Soon, the homeowners were divided into two factions. The radical faction thought we should unite against Chen Zheng Hao now. The conservative faction suspected Uncle Yu was a spy, saying whoever wants to be the scapegoat can be one. Watching the two sides bicker for two hours, I couldn't help but sigh. This scene was exactly the same as in my past life. Back then, it was these conservatives who kept passing the buck, resulting in the majority of homeowners being brutally killed by Chen Zheng Hao. But what does this have to do with me eating my curry rice with corn, green peppers, tomatoes, and chicken? On the other side, Chen Zheng Hao, backed by his gun, was still robbing houses everywhere, not even sparing his own followers. Anyone who dared to resist would be taken away with a single shot from Chen Zheng Hao, but he knew it well in his heart. Without this gun in his hand, these subordinates might not necessarily obey him. Then he ordered his men to collect all the bodies. Watching this scene from the surveillance, I immediately realized that this guy was planning to use these people as backup food. It seems it's time to find an opportunity to confront this guy. The next morning, the leader of the conservative faction, Lu Tian Tian, sent out a cry for help in the WeChat group. Everyone, come save me. Isn't Uncle Yu a veteran? You all should be able to fight them off. As the impact on the door behind her grew more intense, Lu Tian Tian grew more anxious and said, I'm in trouble. None of you will be able to escape. But as soon as her words fell, the door behind her was broken open by someone, and then she was dragged out like a dead dog. Her ordeal didn't evoke sympathy. Instead, it drew mockery from the radical faction. Serves you right for being a turtle. Your retribution has come, hasn't it? On the other side, Fang Yuching and her girlfriends were also very nervous when they saw this scene. If they didn't come up with a plan soon, their turn would come soon. At this moment, Fang Yuching had a plan. She must spread the news that Zhang Yi, that guy, had hoarded a large amount of supplies, and then unite everyone to take over his house. So, I was quickly added into a group chat of a mutual aid group. I saw Fang Yuching at me in the group chat and said, Zhang Yi, it's too dangerous for everyone to live separately now. Your door at home is particularly solid. We lack a secure base. I hope you can join our team. And now everyone must unite. If you are alone, you will be dealt with by Chen Cheng Hao soon. Seeing the message, I couldn't help but laugh. They want to pull the same stunt as in the previous life. So, I replied indifferently. I'm fine. I'm used to living alone in this little broken house of 150 square meters with heating and electricity. Seeing this situation, 
situation, the group chat immediately exploded. Old John, don't be so short-sighted. Everyone needs to unite now. Fan Yuching also echoed on the side. Saving a life is better than building a 7-story pagoda. You can save 7 people now. That would be a 48-story pagoda. What responded to them, however, was the message of me leaving the group chat. This made Fan Yuching and the others stunned on the spot. When did this bootlicker evolve into a cool guy? Soon, they began to discuss how to capture my fortress. Glasses man suggested that as long as everyone was well protected, then directly forced the door. They will surely take down that guy in one fell swoop. Brown hair on the side agreed, and I used to work in a lock company. I can open any lock on the market. So, they all agreed and came to my door to start prying the lock. They even prepared a few umbrellas to prevent cold water. As a result, brown hair pried for half a day, found that he couldn't even budge my lock. I, who was in front of the surveillance, was sneering in my heart. This five-layer reinforced security door of mine is comparable to the anti-theft level of a bank vault. And you, an ordinary lock picker, want to pry it open? Then I activated the high-voltage electric defense feature. Brown hair was shocked to a grimace. Help me, please. However, brown hair man soon fell to the ground, his body emanating a puff of black smoke. This sight stunned Fang Yuching, who was standing by. The high-voltage electricity had brown hair man's hands still stuck to the door. Witnessing this, I didn't feel any guilt. At this moment, glasses man pointed at the door and swore loudly, Zhang Yi, you damned beast, come out. We came to talk to you, and you just killed someone. Now Lu Tao is dead because of you. Don't you think you owe us an explanation? Hearing this, I just laughed. You guys came to pry my door. I don't think there's any need to explain your intentions, I said, shaking my head. I then loaded my crossbow. Isn't it better to stay alive? In the next second, an arrow flew out of the small window at the door, hitting Glasses Man's left arm squarely. Seeing this, Xiao Peng hurriedly helped Glasses Man up. They didn't expect me to be so ruthless and quiet, as I had intended to take their lives right off the bat. Just as they had barely moved a few steps away, two more arrows flew out of the small window, striking Zhou Peng and another neighbor accurately. Seeing this, Fang Yuching and the other two women started to flee, afraid that they would be the next to get hit if they were a step slower. Once they returned to their lodgings, the three men who were hit by the arrows lay on the ground howling in pain. If not treated in time in such extreme cold weather, the wounds would necrotize. Moreover, the arrows were rusty. Without antibiotics or other medicines, they could only wait for death slowly. Thinking of this, Glasses Man regretted his actions terribly. At this moment, Zhou Peng's cousin, Wang Min, walked up to Fang Yuching and slapped her in the face. It's all your fault. You damn woman. Didn't you say that only Zhang Yi's door is strong? How come there are crossbows? No wonder you were standing so far away just now. Did you know it all along? Fang Yuching looked wronged. I didn't know. When we went there last time, he didn't use them. At this moment, Zhou Peng quickly stepped forward and shielded Fang Yuching behind him. Cousin, stop. It's not Fang Yuching's fault. I can vouch for her. Seeing her cousin evolving from a bootlicker to the bootlicker king, Wang Min felt disappointed. Little did she know that the one who ran the fastest just now was herself. Now, the only thing they could do was to contact Dr. Zhou in the community for help. After a while, Zhou Kier came to Wang Min's house to check the wounds of the injured people. However, after seeing the wounds, she looked surprised. This is the same as the wound I treated for Chen Zhenghao a while ago. It's also an arrow wound. Then Zhou Kier said that the wounds were too deep. Without professional equipment, the success rate of surgery was less than 20%. Furthermore, the iron arrow was rusty all over. Without antibiotics or similar drugs for treatment, they could only wait for death. Upon hearing this, Wang Min immediately shed two lines of clear tears. She and Zhou Peng had grown up together, and their relationship was very deep. She then fell to her knees. Dr. Zhou, you must find a way to save my cousin. Zhou Kier turned her head and said, if we rashly pull out the arrows without medication, the consequences will only be worse. I hope you understand. At this moment, Fang Yuching stepped forward. I remember a month ago someone delivered a batch of drugs to Zhang Yi's house. There must be plenty of antibiotics and similar drugs. Why don't we ask him for some? Hearing this, Glasses Man looked excited. Really? Then you go find Zhang Yi. He caused my injury. He has to take responsibility. However, Wang Min on the side expressed, We were almost killed by him just now. How could he possibly give us medicine to save our lives? Hearing this, Fang Yuching looked unconcerned. We just wanted to take over his house. We didn't harm him. Besides, we're the ones who got hurt. We're the righteous ones here. Hearing this, Zhou Kier was rendered speechless. You guys deserve to get shot. Suddenly, Wang Min pointed at Fang Yuching and said loudly, then you'll be in charge of getting the medicine. Zhang Yi once pursued you. You're the most suitable person to handle this. Bootlicker King Zhou Peng also chimed in. Fang Yuching, we'll have to trouble you this time. I can only protect you when my arrow wound is healed. Hearing this, Fang Yuching had no choice but to agree. However, thinking of my attitude, she had no confidence. The only plan now was to try making a phone call. Soon, she dialed my number and said, Lu Tao and Zhou Peng are dying. Can you help them? Upon hearing this, I laughed. So what if they die? Everyone has to die sooner or later. Besides, you don't really think you can survive this snow disaster, do you? The city is blocked by heavy snow, and this building has become an isolated 
island. Once the existing supplies are used up, if you don't starve to death, you will be killed by Chen Zhenghao. Upon hearing this, Fang Yuching sobbed tremulously, Zhang Yi, I know I was wrong. It's all my fault. I let down your true feelings, but I've come to my senses now. Can you forgive me? Xiu Peng and the others were shot by you. If they don't get medicine, they will die from infection. At this point, Wang Min snatched Fang Yuching's phone. Zhang Yi, don't be so heartless. Keep some goodwill. You never know when you might need us in the future. Hearing this, I laughed. Guess why I shot them with rusty arrows? I never intended to meet you again. And how do I know you won't suddenly turn against me? Upon hearing this, Wang Min hurriedly argued. How could we? We are good citizens. I cut her off. Good citizens wouldn't try to take over someone else's house. But well, helping you isn't impossible. Given that I have been pining after Fang Yuching for 18 years, I might consider letting her come over alone. Hearing this, Fang Yuching excitedly grabbed the phone. Zhang Yi, brother, I'm willing. From now on, Fang Yuching is yours. Do whatever you want. Her best friend, Lin Kaining, also excitedly moved closer. Take me with you. Take me with you. But Fang Yuching slapped away Lin Kaining's hand. My brother Zhang Yi only wants me. You should just stay here and behave yourself. As soon as she finished speaking, Wang Min slapped her across the face. You shameless woman. You've caused everyone so much trouble and now you want to run off. No way. Bootlicker King Zhou Peng also looked shocked. Fang Yuching, how could you do this to me? Didn't you say you hated Zhang Yi the most and wanted to be my woman? Upon hearing this, Fan Yuching immediately started arguing, is it wrong for me to pursue a better life? If I stay with you, when the supplies run out, we'll all just wait to die. Xiu Peng, isn't loving someone about wanting them to have a happy life? Although you gave me a few bags of supplies, Zhang Yi has a whole Walmart stashed in his house. Hearing this, Bootlicker fell to the ground, defeated in the battle of love, before it even started, and Fan Yuching just turned around and left without a second look. Lin Kaining threw her to the ground, why should you get all the benefits? Wang Min also pointed at Fan Yuching and scolded, you only think about yourself and don't consider everyone else. If we're not doing well, you shouldn't either. Show Kier, who was watching their infighting, was speechless, but she still kindly reminded, the wounds have only been temporarily treated. Without medicine, you all need to be prepared. Upon hearing this, Glass's man had a sudden idea. I have a way to deal with Zhang Yi. From the video he sent us, it's not hard to see that his house is fully stocked. Now we just need to tell everyone in the building about this. If we can't deal with him, someone else surely can. Then we can get a share of the benefits from the sidelines. Upon hearing this, Fang Yuching panicked. Don't be so shameless. How can I live a sweet life with brother Zhang Yi if you do this? As soon as she finished speaking, Wang Min raised her hand to slap her. You dare to be so brazen, you shameless woman. At the critical moment, Zhou Peng stepped in front of Fang Yuching. Sister, hold on. My love for Fang Yuching is genuine. I will win her over with time. Sooner or later, Fang Yuching will fall in love with me. Then, he confidently looked at Fang Yuching. Don't be afraid. I'm here. This angered Wang Min so much that she almost wanted to slap this bootlicker to death. However, she she decided to focus on the pressing matter first. She quickly posted some photos of delicious food in the homeowners group. Everyone is almost reduced to eating tree bark, but Zhang Yi is having sumptuous meals every day. Do you think that's fair? Seeing the message, Chen Zhenghao drooled all over the floor. This kid is hiding so many good things in his house. That's perfect. I can get my revenge for old grudges. Upon hearing this, the homeowners group exploded. Some people were trying to morally bind me, asking me to distribute my supplies to everyone. Some people, just for a meal, asked me to become a father to their child. There were even those who were willing to hand over billions in assets, just to live in my house. Seeing the message, I just laughed. Why? Am I close with you? Why should I share my supplies with you? Thinking of these people breaking into my house in the past, I felt a fire in my belly. Now the tables have turned. I thought, let's see how I'll play with you this time. Seeing my reply, Bootlicker King and others looked dumbfounded. Is Zhang Yi not afraid that we will unite against him? Others, seeing my cold-heartedness, began to blame me in the group chat. If you hadn't secretly hoarded supplies, we wouldn't be living like this. You must atone for your sins and donate the supplies to everyone. Besides, what's the point of living alone? Young people should have the spirit of contribution. Watching them bicker back and forth, I couldn't be bothered to engage with them any longer. Then, looking at the falling snow outside the window, I mumbled, staying at home every day is quite boring. It seems I should find some time to go out and stroll around. Luckily, I still have a few snowmobiles hidden in my pocket dimension. Once I deal with this group, it might be time to see what the outside world is like. Just then, my phone suddenly received received a notification. It was a plea for help from Dr. Zhou Kier. Mr. Zhang, our home's medicine and supplies have been completely exhausted. Upon seeing the message, I instantly recalled what Zhou Kier looked like. In my previous life, 
Her death was due to her giving her last food to Sialime and her daughter. However, I didn't immediately agree to her plea. Despite a good impression of her from the last life, the prettier the woman, the more dangerous. I don't want to die at the hands of a woman after barely getting another life. I wouldn't provide help without being completely sure of her trustworthiness. So, I responded, I can provide supplies, but you need to exchange something for them. Upon seeing the message, Joe Kier immediately agreed to become my private medical assistant. If I still wouldn't agree, she could only sacrifice something else. But I did not agree to her terms, and instead, I said, I can provide you with medicine and food, but you have to do me a favor. Those neighbors are about to collapse soon, and they will definitely take action. I need you to be my spy, to acquire their action plans. So, the choice is in your hands now. You can choose to follow the crowd and be a bystander, or you can choose to betray them and side with me. Upon seeing the message, Joe Kier fell silent. If she chose me, she would have to face all the homeowners in the building with me. But what she didn't know was that my house had long been turned into an iron fortress by me. Even if they came with a tank, they couldn't break in. The reason I did this was just to find an excuse to test her. At this moment, Glass's man sent me a final ultimatum. Johnny, I'll ask you one more time. Will you hand over the supplies in your hand or not? Seeing the message, a cold smile appeared at the corner of my mouth. This guy had overstepped his bounds. I responded cheerfully. Even if I were to feed my food to the pigs, I wouldn't share a bit with you. This angered Glass's man, grinding his teeth. Very well, John E. You still dare to talk tough even when death is imminent. You brought this upon yourself. Don't say we didn't give you a chance. Soon, a chat group was established to denounce me. Chen Zheng Hao solemnly said inside, don't worry, everyone, for this operation to eliminate Zhang, I only need half of the supplies. After getting the supplies, I swear I won't harm anyone. Glass's man also echoed, let's put our past grudges aside for now. Our primary goal is to take down Zhang Yi at once. On the other side, after some consideration, Zhou Kier finally agreed to my terms. She was very clear in her heart that she, a woman alone, couldn't hold out for long without clinging to a strong figure in this apocalyptic world. Soon, I received a warning from Zhou Kier and Uncle Yu. Glass's man and his gang have decided to launch a full attack at 2.30 tonight. To this, I was not panicked at all, but just curious about what kind of mess this group would make. At this point, Zhou Kier sent another message. Those people have gone crazy. Aren't you going to come up with a plan? But I just laughed at her message. I glanced at the guns laid next to me. All fear stems from inadequate firepower. I replied, you don't have to worry about all this. Remember not to follow along with their action. I'm only warning once. With that said, I picked up the gun in my hand. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Soon, it was 2.30 in the morning. A group of people armed with weapons came marching towards my house. We must kill that shameless selfish ghost, Zhang Yi, this time. Soon, the corridor at the entrance of my house was surrounded by Chen Zheng Hao and his gang. Zhang Yi, come out. If you don't want to die, this is your last chance. I saw this scene from the surveillance and couldn't help laughing. I didn't bother being polite with them. I turned on the high voltage device. Just as a few youngsters were about to break down the door, they were electrocuted into a charred state, emitting a puff of black smoke. Seeing this scene, the others were frightened and dumbfounded, and they wanted to escape. But as soon as they turned around, they were blocked by Chen Zheng Hao and his gang. Chen Zheng Hao pointed his gun at a person's head. If you dare to enter the battle, be prepared to die. Keep smashing the door. I don't believe his high voltage electricity can last a year. Glass's man, their strategist, immediately came forward to encourage them. Don't be afraid, everyone. We must avenge our fallen comrades. As long as we work together to break this iron door, what awaits us inside are a cozy fireplace and endless food. Encouraged by Glass's man's words, the residents who originally wanted to leave were instantly filled with fighting spirit. They picked up a wooden stake and continuously smashed my door. For a bite of food, everyone was exerting all their strength, listening to the rhythmic thudding coming from outside. I also became interested. So, I instantly retrieved a large speaker from another space. Seeing you all so hardworking, let me play a tune for you. Hearing the battle song, the neighbors seemed to be injected with a stimulant, hitting the door even harder. However, after half an hour of relentless beating, a few of them were panting and fell to the ground. What kind of door is this? We've been hitting it for so long, but only a tiny scratch was left. It seems we won't be able to break it open without years of effort. At this moment, Glass's man, who works at a bank, stepped forward and immediately identified it as a bank vault grade door. He said, such a door can't be breached even by a tank, let alone wood. Hearing this, the others looked shocked. Then, is there no way to open the steel door? Glass's man sighed, unless we can find the world's top locksmith, there's no chance to open it without the key. While he was explaining, I had already come to the door with my crossbow. So professional, I murmured and then shot an arrow. Seeing Glass's man get shot, the other residents in the hallway panicked. Zhang Yi actually has weapons. Glass's man and Chen Zheng Hao didn't even tell us. Some of the slower neighbors were quickly turned into sieves by my arrows. Looking at the neighbors scattered around on the floor, I felt no guilt. If they want my life, there's no need for me to be polite. Just then, Glass's man had an idea. Everyone, don't panic. I have a plan. Zhang Yi's steel door might be thick, but the wall 
is still made of cement bricks. I don't believe we can't break it down. Hearing this, the neighbors seem to understand. We have so many people. We can definitely break his wall in less than half an hour. A few neighbors immediately mustered up their strength and started smashing the wall with vigor, while Glass's man kept encouraging them. Sure enough, in a short while, cracks started appearing in the wall. Seeing this, a big man smashed the wall with even more force. But the next second, a metallic clang echoed. The impact numbed the man's arm. Glass's man rushed forward and exclaimed, Damn it, the wall is made of steel plates too. Hearing this, several big men looked shocked. Who uses steel plates for wall construction? But they still didn't give up. They randomly hit different parts of the wall, hoping to find a weakness. Watching this scene, I couldn't help but laugh. I'm sorry to inform you that the outer walls of my house are reinforced with half a meter thick high quality steel. Not to mention your hammers. Even if a cannonball came, I wouldn't be afraid. Soon, the neighbors realized that I must have known about the apocalypse in advance, which is why I built such a sturdy fortress. Glass's man grew angrier the more he thought about it. He knew about the snow disaster all along. This selfish and narrow-minded person, only caring about himself, ignoring the lives of everyone else. Some people couldn't bear this despair and started to cry on the spot. At this moment, Chen Zhenghao stepped out from the crowd. What are you crying for? His walls are made of fine steel. But does that mean the ceiling and the floor are too? We will split up and start tearing down the place. I refuse to believe Zhang Yi could have built a tortoise shell. Hearing this, the neighbors were re-energized. They went up and down my house, hammering with all their might. Watching this on the surveillance, I chuckled. Chen Zhenghao has some brain power, but unfortunately, not much. After hammering for a while, they once again fell into despair. As it turns out, I did build my house into a reinforced tortoise shell. Without power tools, they would need to hammer for years, without rest or sustenance, to have any chance of breaking this fine steel wall. At the thought of this, the stomach of a neighbor who had not eaten for two days and wasted so much energy hammering, started grumbling. He wanted nothing more than to eat a large piece of meat. Thinking of meat, an idea suddenly popped into his head. He looked at a neighbor beside him and they both drooled at the thought. After realizing what the other was thinking, they awkwardly turned their heads away. Glass's man, on the other hand, was in despair. Are we really going to wait for death in this apocalypse? That damn Zhang Yi is so cruel. Why can't he sacrifice himself for the good of everyone? Then, a bright idea from Glass's man. I remember that Zhang Yi had floor-to-ceiling windows on his balcony when he renovated. Maybe we can break in from there. Hearing this, everyone's hopes were reignited. I refuse to believe that Zhang Yi would seal his windows. With that, they got together and started moving towards my balcony using planks. Soon, they were outside my window, yelling and threatening, Zhang Yi, it's best if you open the door yourself. Once we break in, you'll regret it. Hearing this, I calmly sipped my coffee. You think you're smart, huh? And who says glass has to be more fragile than metal? As expected, after knocking for a while, they found no traces on the floor-to-ceiling windows and could only vent their frustrations helplessly outside. Of course, I wasn't going to let them off so easily. I leisurely walked to the kitchen and picked up a homemade Molotov cocktail. Since it's so cold, I'll help you warm up a bit. With that, I placed the Molotov cocktail into a small window in the room. The next second, a hole appeared in the ceiling of the balcony. By the time they realized it was a Molotov cocktail, it was already too late. Soon, flames engulfed one of the neighbors. The intense burning sensation made him wail in agony. Before long, he could no longer bear the pain and jumped off the balcony. Seeing this, several neighbors finally felt regret, pressing against the glass, begging for mercy. In your previous lives, you turned me into feces and never showed any remorse. Left with no choice, they had to return the way they came, hoping that those behind them could help. But they were stopped by Glass's man and his group. Got lost. Don't bring the fire over and involve us. Even hitting the first person with a wooden hammer, the man let out a cry and fell from the high building. Soon, those with no way out were burnt to charcoal in the fire. In the face of this scene, Glass's man and his group showed no mercy. Instead, they gathered around to warm themselves by the fire. The neighbors, starved and no longer arrogant, dropped their weapons, crossed the balcony, and came back to my floor-to-ceiling windows. Zhang Yi, we were wrong. We just want a bite to eat. Please save us. We'll do whatever you want from now on. Listening to the police from outside the window, I sighed. Don't be like this. It makes me feel so bad. I have a strange quirk. When I'm upset, I want to eat. Saying this, I started eating the noodles in my bowl. The sight of this made the people outside drool all over the ground. If only we could have some soup. I know that in this apocalypse, only human hearts are unpredictable. But now I have a better strategy. I then said to the people outside, Of course, I, Zhang Yi, am not a cold-hearted person who wouldn't save people. I'll give you a chance. Bring me Chen Zhenghao's head, and I'll feed you these kinds of noodles for a week. Enough for each meal. Hearing this, they all looked excitedly at Chen Zhenghao in the next building. At this moment, in their eyes, Chen Zhenghao looked like a delicious roast chicken. Taking him down would mean they wouldn't have to worry about food and drink for a week. Seeing their ill-intent gazes, Chen Zhenghao felt a chill down his spine. A feeling of there are always villains trying to harm me arose. Before he could think further, they charged towards him. However, under the threat of
threat of Chen Zhenghao's gun, they dared not act rashly. At this moment, Chen Zhenghao received a bounty notice I sent in the homeowner group chat, saying that anyone who could kill Chen Zhenghao would receive a week's worth of food. Seeing the message, Chen Zhenghao ran off immediately, finally understanding why everyone was giving him hostile looks. The following day, bright and early, several neighbors had already set up an ambush for Chen Zhenghao. Although Chen Zhenghao had a pistol, his bullets were ultimately limited. Moreover, my impenetrable safe house was simply not something they could break through. From previous attempts, they had already lost 40 to 50 people. Rather than starving to death sooner or later, it was better to find an opportunity on the crippled Chen Zhenghao. At this time, Chen Zhenghao was scolding his two subordinates to go out and eat snow. He was well aware. At this moment, he was the little fat lamb in the eyes of all the property owners. Whatever he did, he had to act quickly. Just then, two neighbors who had been ambushing for a long time launched a sudden attack with kitchen knives. Seeing this, the two subordinates were shocked. Watch out for the back. However, it was already too late. Two neighbors with red eyes holding kitchen knives had already reached their back. Yet, they were shot down by him. At this time, Chen Zhenghao was panting heavily. Luckily, he responded quickly. Following that, Chen Zhenghao ordered his men to drag the two bodies back home, just worrying about having nothing to eat. These two reckless things even came to the door. Just at this moment, one of the subordinates exclaimed, Quick, look at your back. It turns out that although Chen Zhenghao had just dropped the two men in time, he was still cut by a kitchen knife, leaving a long wound. Afterwards, Chen Zhenghao asked the subordinate to help him back to the room, while he made a call to invite Dr. Zhou to come and treat his wound. A moment later, Zhou Kier, carrying a medicine box, arrived at Chen Zhenghao's house. I must make it clear in advance. I won't help you for free. Hearing this, Chen Zhenghao smiled. Of course, I'll share some food with you. After saying that, he had a subordinate bring over a basin of chicken feet. However, seeing the food, Zhou Kier felt nauseated. Naturally, she knew what was in the basin. She immediately declared that she would rather die than eat such a thing. Chen Zhenghao on the side gave a lecherous smile. I can't bear to see you die. He knew how important it was to have a doctor by his side in this post-apocalyptic world. After saying that, Chen Zhenghao reached out to touch Zhou Kier's cheek. I will save you for the last. Seeing this, Zhou Kier quickly slapped his hand away and turned around to leave, but was stopped by the two subordinates behind her. Why is Dr. Zhou in such a hurry to leave? You must stay here until my wound heals. Then Chen Zhenghao began to discuss plans with his subordinates. Ever since I issued a bounty. Chen Zhenghao had become a fat lamb that everyone wanted to eat. Now he must quickly deal with the threat that I posed. So, Chen Zhenghao and his men decided to move next door to my house and keep a rotating watch, waiting for the moment I step out of the house to take me down. Shou Kier, who heard their conversation, immediately got up pretending to go to the bathroom, but actually, she was telling me their conversation in the bathroom. I told her to stay there and keep observing. Soon, the door of glasses man's house next door to me was knocked on, and then Chen Zhenghao and his men swaggered in, knowing that they were going to live here. The couple of glasses man didn't dare to say more. Fortunately, they had already hidden the remaining food on their bodies. There were so many empty rooms in this building, any one of them would be suitable to live in. Just at this moment, two subordinates landed a blow on the back of the couple's heads, and in no time, the couple fell in a pool of blood. Chen Zhenghao, standing to one side, gave a cruel smile. I'm doing this for their own good. The weather is so cold, they would freeze to death sooner or later if they go out. Moreover, we have to store some food, don't we? Dr. Zhou, at this time, in Wang Min's house, the three glasses men lay on the sofa, wailing incessantly. Ever since their last unsuccessful attack on my house, their plan to forcibly take medicine had also failed. Now without the treatment of antibiotics and other drugs, their wounds had started to fester. A disgusting stench wafted through the entire hall. Seeing this, glasses man was shocked. He had just graduated and was looking for a job. He didn't want to die so soon. The wounds of Zhou Peng and the others were in the same condition. If it were just a simple scratch, it would be okay. But alas, they were wounded by my rusty arrows without the use of antibiotics. Their wounds would only get worse. At this moment, Zhou Ping ran to Wang Min. Can you please plead with Zhang Yi for us again? Otherwise, we're all going to die. But Wang Min waved his hand. I'm out of ideas. Zhang Yi is not easily persuaded. On the other side, after the bounty was put on Chen Zhenghao, he had begun to feel restless. He even feared that he would be ambushed by his subordinates in the middle of the night. So, he used meat and a pistol to threaten some residents to join his camp. Hearing that there was food, many people willingly joined. Seeing this scene from the surveillance, I couldn't help but laugh. Even if you have many people in your camp, Chen Zhenghao, what do you think they will do when there's no food left? Then I picked up the phone to call Zhou Kier, asking her about the situation on her side. I could only hear Zhou Kier nervously answering, Chen Zhenghao's group has gone crazy. The existing food has been eaten up. They are preparing to start robbing houses. In these few days, many neighbors have already become their feces. Then she pleaded, can you save me? I haven't eaten anything for two days. I can't hold on much longer if this continues. Upon hearing this, I paused for a moment. Zhou Kier is the main surgeon at the nearby grade 3A hospital. In the post 
post-apocalyptic world, doctors are hard to find. We can't let her die so easily. So, I replied, don't worry. Once I finish this last task, I assure you will not want for anything. Just then, my front door was knocked. Xiao Peng was at the door, hysterical. Zhang Yi, you coward. Come out. Fan Yuching is starving to death, and you're still hiding in here. Are you a man? Hearing this, I laughed. At this point, I'm willing to call you the last bootlicker in the apocalypse. So, I said flatly, you're still thinking about Fan Yuching at a time like this? You should think more about yourself. Given your current situation, the tetanus bacteria has spread all over your body. Even if I gave you antibiotics, it would be useless. I remember you've been a bootlicker for so many years. I don't think you've ever even held Fan Yuching's hand, have you? Instead of waiting here to die, you might as well do what you want to do. Hearing this, Xiao Peng suddenly realized he struggled to get up, staggering back up the stairs. After returning home, Xiao Peng rushed into Fan Yuching's room, kneeling down before her with a thud. Seeing Xiao Peng in his state, Fan Yuching was instantly scared into screaming, Xiao Peng, what are you doing? Xiao Peng, his eyes bloodshot, stared at her intently. Fan Yuching, will you marry me? Fan Yuching frowned, disgust filled her eyes. She instinctively pinched her nose. I won't. She shoved Xiao Peng to one side, bitterly saying, get out of here, you're about to die. You stink. I have to go find Zhang Yi. Who do you think you are? You're not even a spare tire in my book. Xiao Peng broke down. He had given so much for Fan Yuching. Even his own life was at stake. But Fan Yuching never had a heartbeat for him from beginning to end. In desperation, Xiao Peng grabbed Fan Yuching's neck tightly, shrieking hysterically. You love me. I'm going to die soon. Let's go to hell together. Together forever. Seeing this, Fan Yuching fearfully slapped Xiao Peng. No, get away from me. You smell so bad. Disgusting. You dare call me smelly? Isn't it because of you that I ended up like this? Fan Yuching, her face turning purple from Xiao Peng's grip, struggled desperately. Who's to blame if you're useless? Desperate loser. Meanwhile, after a night of deep thought, Xiao Kier finally agreed to Zhang Yi's proposition. She knew it was a test from Zhang Yi. Although dangerous, if she didn't do it, she wouldn't last long under Chen Zhenghao. With this thought, Zhou Kier slowly walked towards the kitchen. She told Chen Zhenghao that she wanted to help in the kitchen. Hearing this, Chen Zhenghao thought Zhou Kier had come to her senses, nodding his head in approval. That's best. I knew you couldn't resist. You still have some use for me now. Zhou Kier turned her head back and returned to her usual aloof demeanor. She slowly said, I don't want to die. I want to live. Hearing this, Chen Zhenghao finally relaxed. He waved his hand nonchalantly and let Zhou Kier into the kitchen to help. Once inside, Zhou Kier picked up an axe and started to chop wood for the fire. Energy is scarce these days. Cooking can only be done by burning furniture. Although she had agreed to to Zhang Yi's terms. She couldn't help but feel a bit hesitant about this kind of meat. After a while, a little brother asked Zhou Kier to watch the fire. Don't let it go out. Then he turned and left to prepare the ingredients. Seeing this, Zhou Kier knew her chance had come. First, she pulled out a small bottle from her pocket, poured all the liquid inside into the pot. Then, fighting the nausea in her stomach, she carefully stirred the pot. At mealtime, she served everyone a large bowl of meat soup. Chen Zhenghao, looking at the steaming meat soup in his bowl, smiled. I never thought the day would come when Dr. Zhou would join us. In order to gain their trust, Zhou Kier also served herself a bowl of soup and quietly went back to her room. They had no idea that Zhou Kier had drugged the meat soup. Back in her room, Zhou Kier waited silently for the drug to take effect. She had put most of a bottle of sleeping pills in the pot. These sleeping pills work quickly. Just one pill can put someone into a deep sleep in 30 minutes. Now all she had to do was wait and pray that Chen Zhenghao wouldn't notice she had tampered with the soup. In no time, Chen Zhenghao and the others fell asleep on the sofa. Seeing this, Zhou Kier knew the drug had taken effect. She took a deep breath and immediately messaged Zhang Yi. I've given them a large dose of sleeping pills. They've all passed out. What are you planning to do next? Zhang Yi replied flatly. Drag them to the balcony. Seeing that Chen Zhenghao and his group were all here, I immediately let out a cold sneer. You guys finally fell into my hands. Huh? Shou Kier saw me smirking on the other side and nervously asked. Do you plan to kill them all? Hearing this, I smiled and directly tossed a hemp rope over. You guessed wrong. The one to take action is you, not me. Now find the gun on Chen Zhenghao and throw it to me, then tie them all to this railing. Upon hearing this, Zhou Kier hesitated. If she was really to kill, she didn't know if she could do it. Before she could think more, I pointed a handgun directly at her. You only have this one chance. Miss it, and it won't come again. Seeing that I wasn't joking, Zhou Kier had no choice but to follow my instructions and tie up Chen Zhenghao and his group. Then she found that ostentatious handgun on Chen Zhenghao. Just then, I pointed the handgun directly at Zhou Kier's head, took out the gun's magazine, and then threw it over. Hearing this, Zhou Kier looked hesitant. How 
How do I know you won't suddenly turn against me? But I just laughed. Do you have any other options now? In such extreme weather, you won't last long without my help. Upon hearing this, Sho Kira had no choice but to remove the magazine according to my instructions, and then she threw the handgun to me. After receiving the gun, I carefully examined it, confirming that it was the same one Chen Zhenghao I'd used before. I turned and went back to the room. Next, I took out a water pipe and opened the valve, spraying it directly at Chen Zhenghao's group. Sho Kira was shocked to see this. This way of turning people into ice lollies was utterly cruel. Chen Zhenghao, who was sleeping soundly, was frozen awake on the spot. The few underlings next to him were also screaming from the negative 100 degree cold water. Looking at his bound hands and feet, Chen Zhenghao realized that he had been drugged. Immediately, he twisted his head to look at me. Zhang Yi, you are so despicable. Hearing this, I just laughed. You dare to call me despicable? It's time to send you guys on your way. With that, I opened the valve again. The next second, a thick column of water sprayed directly at several people. In such extreme cold, no one can withstand negative 100 degree water for three minutes. Sure enough, Chen Zhenghao and his group on the other side had already been frozen into ice lollies. Just at that moment, Sho Kier received my call. You've done a good job. You've passed the test. After hanging up the call, Sho Kier collapsed on the ground. Though she could finally survive, she was no longer the white-robed angel. Under my guidance, Sho Kier had successfully proven her value, and I naturally kept my word, deciding to let her live in my house. A moment later, Sho Kier cautiously arrived at my front door. Although I could see from the surveillance that she didn't carry any dangerous items, I didn't dare to be careless. So I picked up the handgun, pointed it at the door, and said coldly, the door's not locked, you can come in. Upon hearing this, Sho Kier nervously pushed open the heavy steel door. Seeing her enter, I immediately locked the door, and Sho Kier collapsed directly on the floor. At this moment, a long lost sense of warmth was filling her body. Sho Kier knew that I was living a decent life, but she didn't expect it to be this good. Apart from ample food, there was even a heating fireplace, compared to the negative 100 degree weather outside. This was a warm paradise, but just as she was about to lose herself in this comfort, I put the gun directly to her back. Dr. Zhou, don't rush to enjoy, you don't think you've passed my test that easily, do you? Now you need to do one last thing, that is to prove to me you're not dangerous, since you've chosen to align with me now, shouldn't we be honest with each other? Upon hearing this, Sho Kier naturally knew what I meant, so she took off her coat directly, exposing her figure in front of me. Of course, I had no time to admire, seeing that she had no hidden dangerous weapons. I handed her a bath towel, you've worked hard these days, go take a hot shower first, you stink. Hearing this, Sho Kier couldn't help but complain internally, as if everyone lives as well as you. Life is even better than before the apocalypse. Soon, the sound of the shower was heard from the bathroom, and I was fiddling with the medical kit that Joe Kier had brought in the living room. I put everything like syringes into the different space, though we were being honest, it's always better to be cautious. Two hours later, Sho Kier, dressed in pajamas, emerged from the bathroom, her wet hair hanging down her back. There was a thrilling beauty about her. I then patted the sofa next to me, indicating for her to sit down. Next, I picked up the hair dryer and began to blow dry her hair. I didn't let you live here because you're pretty, but because because you're of some value to me, but you have to understand, this is my home, allowing you to live here is a great favor, so, it's best not to have any bad intentions, there's surveillance all over this room, once I find you plotting against me, I'll have no qualms about killing you, then I pointed to the room next door, you'll live there from now on, without my permission, you're not allowed to wander around, hearing this, Sho Kier replied softly, she was very clear about the consequences of being thrown out by me, then I continued, Dr. Zhou, you're a smart person, I hope you can do as you say, of course, I won't treat you unfairly, at this point, I walked behind Zhou Kier. I'm about to reveal my biggest secret to you. Doing this was naturally to ensure Zhou Kier's loyalty to me. Then I continued. Everyone knows that the cause of this snow disaster is the gamma rays from a supernova explosion. But these rays can also cause mutations in humans. With that, I conjured a loaf of bread out of thin air. This is the superpower I gained different space. I can store any supplies in it. Seeing this, Zhou Kier also suddenly understood. No wonder I was living such a comfortable life. I must have stored a lot of supplies in advance. Then I continued. Dr. Zhou, you're a smart person. Only by following me can you enjoy all my supplies. Will you have food to eat? Hot water baths to take? Once I die, the supplies in the different space will disappear with me. So, you can only survive if I survive. Right now, I don't fully trust you. You need to exchange labor for rewards. So, from now on, you'll be responsible for all the housework. Just as Zhou Kier was about to agree, I interrupted her. Besides this, what else can you offer me? Upon hearing this, 
Joe Kier's cheeks suddenly turned red. Being a smart person, she naturally knew what I was talking about. The next day, I looked at the still sleeping Joe Kier with mixed feelings. Having a woman around in the apocalypse is quite nice. If I were alone, I fear I might have a mental breakdown one day. Then I knocked on the door, signaling Joe Kier to get up for breakfast. Joe Kier woke up from her sleep. This was the best sleep she'd had since the apocalypse began. Then she dressed and came into the living room. Afterwards, I smiled. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and eat. Hearing this, Joe Kier didn't hesitate. She picked up the hamburger on the table and started eating it hungrily. Seeing my half-smiling expression, Sho Kier realized her eating manners were not good, so she sat up straight like a well-behaved child. After Sho Kier was full, I tossed her a thermal coat. This coat is a high-tech product from before the apocalypse. It can withstand temperatures down to minus 100 degrees. Then I gestured for Sho Kier to come out with me. Sho Kier was puzzled. What are we going to do? At this, I gave a cold laugh. Obviously, we're going out to smash those icicles to pieces. Those scum, even if they're frozen in to icicles, are still disgusting to look at. Of course, I mainly want to set an example. Hearing this, Joe Kier started to think, holding the baseball bat. Although these people were indirectly killed by her, she still hesitated to smash them. Before she could think too much, I made a gesture of invitation. Dr. Joe, it's your turn to take the stage. Seeing this, Joe Kier couldn't say anything else. She immediately climbed over the balcony and went to the other side along the board. Then, she raised the baseball bat in her hand and smashed it down on the people frozen into icicles. Watching this, I took out my phone and started recording. Seeing this, Joe Kier was puzzled. Are you recording? I want to show those dishonest guys. Who's in charge of this building now? At this, Joe Kier didn't hesitate and continued to swing the baseball bat in her hand. At this moment, she didn't care about her angel in white image. As long as she could survive, that's all that mattered. However, what she didn't expect was, right after I posted the video in the owner's group, not only did the neighbors not blame her, they applauded her. Some even wept for joy at the sight. After all, Chen Zheng Hao had been domineering here for a long time, and there were no few owners who had died at his hands. Now seeing Chen Zheng Hao get his comeuppance, they were naturally overjoyed, but before they could rejoice for long, I directly began my ascension ceremony in the owner's group. From now on, this building will be under my, Zhang Yi's rule, or else you'll end up like Chen Zheng Hao. Then they remembered the video was posted by me, so they all started to flatter me in the group. Upon seeing the message, Fan Yuching was the first to call me. I was surprised to get her call. I didn't expect this bitch to still be alive. I heard Fan Yuching say pitifully on the other end of the phone, Brother Zhang Yi, Chen Zheng Hao is dead. Can I come to your house for food and warmth? I don't allow you to be with that woman Zhou Kier. You belong only to me. Hearing this, I just laughed. So, you're not dead after all. Hearing this, Fan Yuching seemed to understand. I get it now. Brother Zhang Yi thought I was dead, and that's why he's with that woman Zhou Kier, right? I'm coming to live the good life with you now. But her best friend and Wang Min were not happy about this. Their miserable lives were all because of Fan Yuching. They would naturally not allow Fan Yuching to have a good life. Soon, the sound of the three women fighting with each other came from the other end of the phone. Seeing this, Zhou Kier hurried over. She felt a sense of crisis at this moment, afraid that I would run away. This scene suddenly gave me a wicked idea. Fan Yuching, in the last life, you made me turn into shit in despair. This time, it's your turn to experience despair. I immediately sent a cozy photo of Zhou Kier and me to Fan Yuching. Then I expressed regretfully, Fan Yuching, you're a good person, but I've found true love now. Let's not contact each other anymore. I don't want her to get the wrong idea. Upon hearing the voice message, Fan Yuching hurriedly broke free from Wang Min to pick up her phone. After seeing the photo, she exploded. Zhang Yi, the one who truly loves you is Fan Yuching. Zhou Kier is only with you for the food. Hearing this, I laughed. Aren't you the same? Moreover, Zhou Kier is far superior to you in every way. How could I give her up for you? After reading the message, Fan Yuching burst into tears. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You were so devoted to me before. How could you change so suddenly? It must be that bad woman Zhou Kier who did something. Her best friends and Wang Min immediately began to mock her. You self-centered white lotus. This is karma. On the other side, I asked Zhou Kier, do you think I'm being cruel by doing this? Zhou Kier immediately leaned in. I trust that you have your reasons for doing this. Hearing this, I also lowered my guard considerably. After all, no man can resist such an understanding and sensible woman. In a short while, Zhou Kier made a table full of delicious lunch. I had just picked up an apple and taken a bite when a message came in from the homeowner's group chat. I saw the formerly arrogant Auntie Lin starting to make trouble again in the group. She claimed to have relatives in the upper echelons of the government and threatened that everyone must hand over their food to her. Otherwise, everyone will be dealt with after the snowstorm. Seeing this message, I was taken aback. I remember Auntie Lin was the first to be looted by Chen Zheng Hao. That she's still alive is truly a miracle. At that moment, Zhou Kier quietly mentioned she had left some supplies when treating Lin Xiaohu, thinking that the snowstorm would pass quickly. She didn't expect the snow to last for two and a half months. I was puzzled. Logically, after so much time has passed, even with the supplies Zhou Kier left, Auntie Lin couldn't possibly have survived till now, especially when she also has a two and a half year old grandson. 
Xiaohan. Hearing this, Zhou Kier said that Lin Xiaohu died about 10 days ago due to lack of medication. Hearing this, it suddenly clicked for me. It seems that Auntie Lin has eaten her precious grandson. Zhou Kier naturally knew what I meant. Having been under Chen Zheng Hao's control for two days, she has become quite numb to the concept of cannibalism. Just then, my phone suddenly rang, seeing that it was Uncle Yu calling. I picked up the phone to answer and asked what was going on. On the other end, Uncle Yu looked awkward. Uncle Yu, as one of the few good people left after the apocalypse, and also a martial artist, was someone I naturally wouldn't refuse. Uncle Yu hesitantly stated, Siali Mei's daughter, Tang Bao, is running a fever, and she would like to borrow some fever-reducing medicine from me. Uncle Yu, who has been single all his life, was probably tempted by the young and attractive Siali Mei. After being single for 40 years, how could Uncle Yu resist such temptation? So, he became the willing victim of this scheming mother. Hearing this, my expression faltered. This Siali Mei is indeed not simple. Among all the homeowners, only Uncle Yu and I have stockpiled supplies, yet she managed to make the most correct choice among many. But I didn't think much of it. After all, it's someone else's family matter, and this could be an opportunity to win over Uncle Yu for future use. So, I smiled and said that I still have a few boxes of fever-reducing medicine, and asked Uncle Yu to come pick it up later. Hearing this, Uncle Yu was overjoyed, and profusely thanked me, even swearing that if I ever need his help in the future, he will do his best to assist me. At that moment, Zhou Kier leaned over and asked, Do you have a good relationship with Uncle Yu? I answered indifferently. People interact mainly for mutual benefit. Uncle Yu is a kind and honest person. Having him owe me a favor might be useful later on. Moreover, I don't want to see a retired soldier like him lose the last glimmer of his humanity in these apocalyptic times. Soon, there was a knock on my door from Uncle Yu. Is little Zhang there? It's Yu Jiguang. Hearing this, I looked through the door's monitor. Unexpectedly, Xiaoli Mei also came along. She anxiously asked from outside the door. Our Tang Bao has a high fever. Zhang Yi, please help us. Before she even finished speaking, I tossed a box of fever-reducing medicine through the small door window. Give it to the child quickly. Don't waste any more time. Uncle Yu hurriedly picked up the medicine, then said with a look of gratitude, Zhang Yi, thank you so much. You've helped me out twice already in this apocalypse. Just then, Siali Mei stepped forward and pleaded, Zhang Yi, do you have a heater? Could Tang Bao stay at your place for a while? We'll leave once she gets better. However, I saw through her little scheme immediately. You're probably wanting to take a mile when given an inch. So, I spoke calmly to those outside. Sorry, Miss Xia. These are special times, and I can't easily let out outsiders in. Plus, we're almost out of coal. We're even resorting to wearing eight down jackets each to keep warm. At that moment, Uncle Yu quickly intervened to smooth things over. Zhang Yi has already done us a big favor. Let's not make things difficult for him. However, Xiaoli Mei began to emotionally manipulate the situation. Zhang Yi, please consider it for Uncle Yu's sake, and for the sake of the child being so young. Let us stay at your place for a short time. Hearing this, my expression instantly darkened. I thought to myself, what a master manipulator this Xiaoli Mei is. She survived for quite some time in the previous previous apocalyptic world by exploiting people's sympathies. But this trick will only work on honest people like Uncle Yu. So I calmly replied, if this were before the apocalypse, Miss Xia, I'd have no problem letting you and your entire village stay. But now it's the end times, and all the tenants in the building want to take over my place. I hope you understand. However, Xia Mei wasn't giving up. You let Zhou Kier stay, didn't you? If she can stay, why can't we? Hearing this, I chuckled. Zhou Kier is my girlfriend. If she doesn't stay at my place, should she stay at yours? Zhou Kier was surprised to hear this. Although she knew I was just speaking casually. Having a dependable man to rely on in these times is what every woman desires. At that point, Uncle Yu also chimed in. Yeah, little Zhang has already helped us a lot. Let's not make things more difficult for him. But Xiaoli Mei looked dejected. I'm doing all of this for the sake of the child. What will happen to me if something happens to her? Seeing the situation, Uncle Yu felt helpless. He could only leave with her while continually apologizing to me. After they left, I sighed. With this woman meddling, I fear it might strain my relationship with Uncle Yu. In my eyes, Uncle Yu is the ideal worker. Not only is he upright, but he's also quite skilled. Now with Xiaoli Mei whispering in his ear, my plans might be delayed. On the other side, as soon as Uncle Yu got home, he began questioning Xiaoli Mei. Medicine is scarce right now. It's good enough that he gave us some. Why are you so greedy? Xiaoli Mei, holding the child, looked distressed. I'm doing this for our child and our future. I don't plan to freeload off him forever. Hearing this, Uncle Yu sighed. I understand what you mean, but we should be grateful. If it weren't for little Zhang warning me about the snow disaster, I wouldn't be alive today. Upon hearing this, Xia Li Mei began to ponder. If Zhang Yi knew about the snow disaster in advance, he must have hoarded a lot of supplies. She leaned on Uncle Yu's shoulder and sighed. I understand the principle, but while you see him as a benefactor, he sees you as a potential threat. Didn't you see? He even threw the medicine out to us, afraid that we would enter and take over his home. If he's genuinely a good person, how could he ruthlessly kill dozens of neighbors? In my view, he's just offering minor favors to use you as his henchman later. Before Xia Li Mei could finish, Uncle Yu loudly interrupted her. Enough. I, Yu Jiguang, can still distinguish between right and wrong. Please don't speak like this anymore. His angry outburst startled Xiaolimei, who then apologized repeatedly.
repeatedly. She knew that Uncle Yu was now angry and would have to find another opportunity to stir the pot. Uncle Yu then left, his face stern. Though he is honest and straightforward, he's not foolish. He knows exactly what Xiaoli Mei is thinking. Xiaoli Mei looked at the sleeping Tang Bao with a grim face. To survive in this apocalypse, I must be ruthless. Now, the deadly cold has persisted for 75 days, and the accumulated snow in the residential area has piled up to the height of an eight-story building. Leaving the area is nearly impossible, and the remaining tenants can only start looking for food nearby. At this moment, a group of unwelcome guests arrived in the snowy area. They are digging in the snow, and eventually unearthed a tunnel leading to my apartment complex. A few of them, holding shovels and hammers, crawled out from the tunnel. Without any hesitation, they headed straight for my apartment on the 24th floor. Just then, a tenant who was going out to dig for snow to eat ran into them. Seeing their malicious gaze, the tenant immediately dropped his bucket and started running. But two legs can't outrun a dozen. He was quickly knocked down by their shovels. Anything alive that they encounter will become their food. But they have something more important to do right now, to take over my home. This is because they recently found out that I have hoarded a large amount of food. In this end time when food and warmth are scarce, this information is undoubtedly a ticking time bomb. Once they take me down, they can live longer. Soon, this group confidently arrived at my front door. A young man skilled in demolitions stepped forward with a bundle of C4 explosives. After lighting the fuse, he sprinted towards the end of the corridor. Moments later, a deafening explosion resonated throughout the building. The loud noise instantly jolted me awake. Given the situation, I couldn't afford to think too much. I hurriedly grabbed my handgun and checked the surveillance equipment. I saw a group of unfamiliar faces sneaking around at the end of the hallway, discussing something. From the tools they were holding, I quickly confirmed their identity. They were a group of construction workers from the neighboring building. I remember that their group consists of about 20 or more people, and the fact that they're boldly heading for my place indicates that news of my stockpile has leaked. Outside my door, the group seemed puzzled. Old Donkey, what kind of crappy bomb did you bring? It can't even blow open a simple door. Hearing this, Old Donkey rubbed the back of his head. Maybe the explosives got damp, reducing their potency. Why don't we just break in? We're professionals at tearing down buildings. Seeing this unfold on my monitor, I was instantly furious. If the tiger doesn't show its might, you think I'm a sick cat, huh? I immediately took out the white phosphorus I had previously hoarded from another dimension. Quickly, I made some simple white phosphorus grenades, and along with some incendiary grenades, threw them out of the small window by the door. When white phosphorus grenades explode, they instantly generate temperatures of up to 1000 degrees Celsius, melting objects nearby. Soon, two people at the door who couldn't dodge in time were instantly melted by the high heat. The fire rapidly spread throughout the corridor. Old Donkey, who was on fire, was about to shout to his companions, but the next second, a bullet went straight through his head. I then picked up my handgun and fired several shots at the people outside. This scene left the team leader, second uncle, stunned on the spot. They had thought they could easily take over my home, but they didn't expect my house to be not only extremely secure, but also equipped with such lethal weapons. Soon, the last worker approaching my front door was shot dead by me. Looking at the several burning bodies on the ground, second uncle didn't dare hesitate any longer and hurriedly led the remaining people to escape back to the neighboring community, fearing that they too would be reduced to ashes if they were a second too slow. I, however, stared at the handgun that had run out of bullets and fell into deep thought. In this apocalyptic world, there will undoubtedly be interest groups stronger than these workers. To deal with these tough characters, I need to acquire even more powerful weapons. Moreover, these guys clearly came prepared. I must find an opportunity to completely eliminate them. I then returned to the room to comfort the already terrified Joe Care. Don't be afraid, I've driven those people away. Hearing this, Joe Care looked at me with tearful eyes. Although she knew we were now in an apocalyptic world, this was her first time encountering a firefight. If those people had broken in, she could imagine the terrible fate awaiting her. But upon hearing that I'd driven those people away, Show Care felt considerably relieved. As of now, I am her only support. She then asked me what had just happened. I briefly explained the situation. Upon hearing it, Joe Care looked stunned. These people are much more dangerous than Chen Zhenghao. Chen Zhenghao was merely flaunting with a handgun, while these workers do physical work every day, making them naturally stronger than ordinary people. And they even know demolitions. We have to resolve this lingering problem as soon as possible. Otherwise, we won't even be able to sleep peacefully in the future. Upon finishing my thought, I took a look at my phone. It's time to find some expendable people to do some work for me. At the same time, the homeowners group chat was blowing up. I simply explained the situation in the group. Upon seeing the message, the homeowners started to fawn over me. Johnny, you are our hero. However, I told them that my weapons were almost depleted and everyone would have to fend for themselves. Just then, Uncle Yu called me to inquire about my situation and mentioned he knows the leader of those workers, a man named Huang Tianfang. Under his leadership, dozens of homeowners have already been harmed in the past few days. Hearing this, an idea instantly formed in my mind. Uncle Yu, can you provide me with more details about them? That way, I can discuss plans with everyone to deal with them. Uncle Yu told me that this group comes from the building 
next door and are part of a group called Heavenly United Gang. The gang consists of more than 20 members, with Huang Tianfang as the ruthless leader. His misdeeds are no less than those of Qin Zhenghao. Hearing this, I decided to collaborate with the homeowners on the 25th floor to counteract these workers. They've suffered a significant loss at my hands this time and will definitely look for another opportunity to strike back. Unless we eliminate them, nobody will be at peace. The homeowners in my building are the sort who only respond to force and would not easily agree to unite against external threats. What I need to do now is wait for the right moment. I then turn to Zhou Kier beside me. These neighbors might show respect to me on the surface, but they'd love to tear me down behind my back. So, I'll leave it to you and Uncle Yu to gather information. The sooner we understand the distribution of forces in the area, the better for our next steps. Two and a half days quickly passed. Zhou Kier, dressed in work attire, listed the latest collected intelligence on a blackboard. The most significant threat right now is the Heavenly United Gang made up of workers. Since they are physically laboring workers, they are naturally stronger than ordinary people. However, the good news is that they don't have access to firearms or other highly lethal weapons. The next is the Wolf Gang from Building 21, led by two thugs, Wang Chang and Xiao Lu. Their members are mostly young people in their 20s. Hearing this, I pondered. It seems that the main threats come from these two groups. Homeowners in the other buildings have already diminished their numbers through infighting, so they should not pose a threat to me. I then instructed Zhou Kier to continue gathering information, emphasizing the importance of confirming whether they possess firearms or other weapons. On the other side, Huang Tianfang led the Heavenly United Gang back again. However, this time they didn't choose to directly attack my home, but decided to deal with the surrounding neighbors first. They said that if I don't come out, they'll eliminate all the other homeowners in Building 25. As expected, his words quickly ignited a strong reaction from all the homeowners in the building. John Yi, you're the one who caused all this trouble. Why should we have to bear it? If you have any conscience left, you'd step up now. Seeing the message, I couldn't help but laugh. These people never change, do they? I replied with a smile. You guys can't resist them, so why should I go out and get myself killed? You think you're the only ones with thick skin? What does this have to do with me? This instantly infuriated a few of my neighbors. Zhang Yi, did a dog eat your conscience? Your house is safe as a turtle shell. Have you thought about us? Seeing this, I was immediately enraged. These idiots really don't know the meaning of the word death. What do your lives have to do with me? When you all ganged up on me, where was your talk of conscience then? You don't really think I won't take action against you, do you? Upon reading my message, several neighbors were left speechless, because they knew I would really do it. They initially thought they would survive after Chen Zhenghao's death, but now a more ruthless Heavenly United Gang has arrived. If things continue this way, they'll be fertilizer long before the snowstorm ends. Looking at my neighbors who were on the verge of despair, I dialed Uncle Yu with a smile. Uncle Yu, it's your turn to perform. After a long silence, Uncle Yu suddenly spoke in the group chat. Don't be afraid, everyone. The Heavenly United Gang is at most 20 plus people. As long as we work together, we can fend them off. Seeing the message, the homeowners suddenly saw a glimmer of hope. Uncle Yu is right. We'll all support you wholeheartedly. However, Uncle Yu then revealed that he hasn't eaten for several days. He said that if we want to win this fight, it would have to rely on Zhang Yi. Not only can my house afford three meals a day, but we also have weapons, making me the most suitable leader for the group. Seeing the message, I couldn't help but smile. I didn't expect Uncle Yu, this seemingly honest man, to be quite skilled at manipulating people. Soon Uncle Yu sent me a private message, asking what we should do next. Seeing that the timing was about right, I told Uncle Yu to keep supporting me in the chat. I must seize this opportunity to make everyone listen to me. Only then can our building be safe in the future. Then, I coldly stated in the homeowners group chat, I'm willing to talk more with you all only because of Uncle Yu. I can help, but under one condition, you all have to listen to me. No sneaky moves behind my back. Hearing this, many homeowners quickly responded, as long as you're not sending us to our deaths, we'll do whatever you say, Zhang Yi. Of course, I didn't believe these people would be so cooperative. I immediately replied, I won't send you to your deaths, but I will need you to take up arms against the Heavenly United Gang. Can you do that? The chat went silent. What's the difference between this and sending us to die? Seeing that no one was responding, I laughed. So you all want me to go out there and risk my life alone, is it? Show Kier, who was standing beside me, was also speechless at these cowardly neighbors. I continued in the group chat. If that's the case, there's no need for further discussion. You can wait for the Heavenly United Gang to take you out one by one. My front door is made of steel, so I'm not worried. Seeing this, Uncle Yu hurriedly supported me in the group chat. If we continue like this, we're all doomed. Instead of waiting to be slaughtered, why not fight together for a chance at survival? Hearing this, the homeowners realized the severity of the situation. Uncle Yu is right. We might as well give it our all. Seeing that all the homeowners had no objections, I immediately stated, from now on, everyone must follow my instructions. If I find out anyone is trying to sit back and reap the benefits while doing nothing, don't blame me, Zhang Yi, for being ruthless. Hearing this, everyone in the group chat started tagging the other homeowners who were playing dead. We're at a life and death crossroads now, so pretending to be dead any longer would make it real. I also know the principle of ruling with a balance of kindness and sternness. So, I continued in the chat, 
since you all have chosen to follow me, I won't let you down. As long as you listen to my orders, I will go out and find supplies for you to hold the building. They need at least basic combat capabilities. And luckily, I have already prepared some snowmobiles. In this snowy apocalypse, I am the only one who can move freely throughout the city. However, the homeowners looked confused after reading the message. Won't you freeze to death looking for supplies in this extreme cold? I assured them. I know what I'm doing. As a leader, I must do something for everyone. I've been a warehouse manager for two years and know the locations of nearby malls and supermarkets. My own supplies are also running out, and we need to find more if we want to survive. Hearing this, many homeowners were moved to tears, saying that they had chosen the right leader, but only I know the true nature of these people. In the apocalypse, human nature is the most unpredictable. The neighbors started to treat me like a god, saying that they would follow my orders without question. However, I didn't care about their flattery. If it weren't for fighting against the Heavenly United Gang, I wouldn't care whether they live or die. I can't forget the pain of being torn apart in my previous life. Show Care looked worried. The snowstorm has lasted so long, and the outside world is almost paralyzed. No one knows what dangers lurk outside. I put on my level 3 armor and smiled at Joe Care. I've been wanting to go out and see for a while. Now is a good opportunity. Don't worry, there are enough supplies at home to sustain you. Show Care, knowing I still don't fully trust her, volunteered to go with me. I pinched her fair cheek and said, Woman, you should stay at home and wait for your man to return. With that, I turned around and left, assuring Joe Care that I trust her completely now. Show Care was touched, but within two seconds, I secretly moved all the remaining food and coal at home into an alternate space. Then, I went down the stairs and arrived on the fourth floor. By now, the snow had piled up as high as the third and fourth floors. I only needed to open the window to step directly outside, but as soon as I landed, the snow engulfed up to my knees. Luckily, before the apocalypse, I had stashed some snowmobiles in an alternate space. Otherwise, it would be impossible to move in snow piled meters high. I looked around and found that, apart from the sound of the snowstorm, the neighborhood was utterly silent. Seeing no one spying, I took a snowmobile from my alternate space. Unaware that a shadowy figure in the building above was watching every move, riding my beloved motorcycle, I headed out of the neighborhood. I'd been cooped up at home for so long, I was starting to get cabin fever. Finally, I have a chance to breathe some fresh air. After satisfying my urge to speed, I drove the snowmobile to the Heavenly Sea City Police Station. The primary purpose of this trip was to find more powerful weapons. The root of all fear in this post-apocalyptic world is insufficient firepower. The station was pitch black, seemingly abandoned long ago. However, a few steps in, I discovered some frozen cops huddled in a corner. Seeing their thin clothes made me uneasy. They must have been on the night shift when the extreme cold hit, without even proper clothing. After paying my respects to these officers who once protected the city, I covered them with a white cloth. Just then, I noticed a bunch of metal behind the cloth. It was a set of keys to all the rooms in the building. My face lit up at the sight. With these keys, I can easily access the armory. After paying my respects to these heroes one last time, I began to search for the armory. Soon, a room labeled armory appeared before me. Upon opening the door, all sorts of weapons came into view. I even found a powerful sniper rifle. After some time spent defending my safe house, my shooting skills have reached the point of unerring accuracy. With these weapons, I have nothing to fear. Even if several more Heavenly United gangs show up, I stretched out my hand, sucked all the weapons in the armory into my alternate space. Next, it's time to find supplies for those cannon fodder neighbors. Although my safe house can withstand various forms of artillery, it won't hold if someone blows up the building's load-bearing walls. The best approach is to use these expendable neighbors as my vanguard. The snow disaster has been ongoing for two months now, and the shopping centers near the residential area have surely been picked clean. So I went to a large suburban mall, now buried under snow. Based on memory, I cleared away the snow on the ground with my hand, then broke the skylight and slid down a rope. Seeing all the luxury goods in the mall, I couldn't help but feel sentimental. Before the apocalypse, it would take two months of salary without eating or drinking to afford just one item. Now, these luxury goods have become worthless debris. After storing some useful supplies in my alternate space, I went to the supermarket on the underground floor. Due to the extreme cold, the fruits inside have all frozen and spoiled. Some meat, though not rotten, had also frozen into zombie-like consistency. I picked out some still edible food and stuffed it into my bags. I wouldn't even want these items if they were given to me for free, but they'll suffice for dealing with the neighbors. Soon, I returned to the neighborhood with two large bags of supplies, and this scene was seen by a few members of the Heavenly United Gang in the building next door. Seeing my snowmobile, Wang Tianfang's eyes immediately lit up. With such a vehicle, he could also easily go outside to find supplies in the future. The snowmobile's roar also attracted a crowd of neighbors, though greed was the prevalent emotion in their eyes. Uncle Yu, surprised, saw me carrying two large bags of supplies and said, Little Zhang, you actually found this much in one go? I sighed. With the snowstorm going on for so long, the local supermarkets have been emptied. Otherwise, I would have brought back even more. Despite the supplies being spoiled by the cold, it was enough to make all the neighbors drool. Seeing their eyes filled with eager anticipation, I immediately took out 
out my handgun and warned. I went through hell and high water to find these. I hope you appreciate that. Hearing this, Uncle Yu caught on and shouted. Zhang Yi has brought us hope for survival. Shouldn't we thank him? After that, he led the crowd in chanting. Long live Zhang Yi. Seeing everyone chanting my name, I knew it was time for me to make a statement. I had Zhou Care pour out all the supplies I had found. And then I looked at everyone and said sternly. Since you've all chosen to follow me, I won't let you down. But this is the most dangerous moment. And I, Zhang Yi, will not keep idlers. If you eat these supplies, you must pick up arms against the Heavenly United Gang. Just then, members of the Heavenly United Gang arrived at our building armed and shouted, hand over the food, or don't blame us for being rude. Seeing this, I knew the opportunity to test these neighbors had arrived. I pointed at the Heavenly United Gang members outside and said coldly, anyone who can take down one of them will be rewarded with five people's worth of food. Hearing this, the neighbors hesitated for a moment, but seeing only ten members of the Heavenly United Gang outside, and considering they were a group of several dozen, they felt emboldened. So the neighbors, as if injected with chicken blood, armed themselves with pots and pans, and charged. Seeing this, the Heavenly United Gang members were stunned. These usually cowardly people, how come they are so brave today? Soon, both groups were fighting fiercely in the snow. For the sake of food, everyone was seeing red, and even if they were injured multiple times, they felt no pain. This was exactly what I wanted to see. I'm no saint, but if these neighbors are willing to fight for their lives, I certainly won't hesitate to provide them food. At this point, Uncle Yu shouted, everyone, let's go. They are not in the majority and can't hold on for long. With the addition of Uncle Yu, a retired soldier, the battle quickly turned one-sided. Seeing they were no match, the remaining Heavenly United gang members fled towards their building without looking back. Witnessing this, all the neighbors picked up their weapons and cheered. This was their first victory fought for their own survival. Show care sighed at the sight of it all. Though we won, many people were severely injured, and without professional equipment and medication, they likely won't survive for long. Moments later, I gathered all the neighbors in the building's lobby. You all did very well. As you've seen, this is the power of unity. As long as we work together, even the apocalypse may not be insurmountable. I then turned to the two young individuals who performed the best in the battle. You both did extremely well. Keep up this momentum moving forward. I then handed them two portions of food. Seeing this, they were so moved that they burst into tears. Finally able to eat a full meal in this apocalyptic world, the rest of the neighbors were filled with regret, wishing they had given it their all. This was exactly the kind of attitude I wanted to see, so that everyone would fight against external enemies without holding back. I then gestured broadly, calling the remaining people one by one to receive today's food. The neighbors who received less food were filled with regret, wishing they had contributed more earlier. Soon it was the turn of Su Hao, a wealthy second-generation individual, to collect his food. I tossed him a small piece of candy. This is your food for today. Seeing that others had at least a piece of biscuit, and he only had a candy, he immediately roared. This is not fair. Why do I get so little food? I responded coldly. You have the audacity to complain? Others were fighting on the front lines, and you were merely shouting slogans from the back. Giving you a candy is already being extraordinarily generous. I hope you appreciate what you have. Hearing this, the neighbors who received less food felt a lot better. At least they weren't at the bottom. Who would have thought that Su Hao would try to argue at this point, saying, there were so many people fighting, I couldn't even find a way to get in. I just laughed. I only care about results, not the process. If you couldn't find a way in, that's on you. Hearing this, Su Hao became furious. This is unfair. You're clearly targeting me. As soon as his words fell, I gestured for two neighbors to restrain him. Who do you think you are to talk about fairness with me? The woman next door in her 40s managed to get in and throw a few punches. And here you are, a man in your 30s, telling me you couldn't find a way in? After saying this, I pointed a gun directly at Su Hao, asking everyone, what should we do with someone so undisciplined and disobedient? Hearing this, the two neighbors holding Su Hao gave him a solid beating. I then turned to all the neighbors and yelled, if anyone thinks I'm being overbearing, feel free to go find your own food. I, Zhang Yi, will not bother you. Seeing no objections, I clapped my hands. Very good. I hope everyone will follow the arrangements from now on. But Su Hao, accustomed to being arrogant and domineering, was still not convinced. Zhang Yi, don't push people people too far. His words had barely left his mouth when I stepped on his right hand. Su Hao, face the reality. We're in a post-apocalyptic world now. You can't go back to your cushy life. I, Zhang Yi, won't support a waste like you is only good for eating. I hope everyone takes this as a warning. I then asked Zhou Care to collect the remaining food to be distributed later. But just then, a voice sounded from behind the crowd. Brother Zhang Yi, I haven't received any food yet. Fang Yuching and her best friend pushed their way through the crowd. Brother Zhang Yi treats me the best. You definitely didn't forget about Fang Yuching right? Hearing this, I couldn't help but laugh. Of course, I haven't forgotten about you too, because there was never any food allocated for you too in the first place. Upon hearing this, Fang Yuching burst into tears. Brother Zhang Yi, aren't you most fond of me? But I pushed her away with one hand. I was just speaking casually. You didn't take it seriously, did you? Besides, I already have a girlfriend now. You don't think you're better than my Shou Kier, do you? Please stop bothering me from now on. Shou Kier naturally came over and acted affectionately with me. Seeing this, Fang Yuching
Shin cried even harder. This can't be. You've been fawning over me for years. How can you go back on your word like this? At that, I just laughed. Before the apocalypse, you thought your looks could bait a whole Pacific Ocean of fish. But now we're in the post-apocalyptic world. How many packs of instant noodles do you think your face is worth? At this point, Su Ao, who was lying on the ground, chimed in. This stinking woman wanted to reel me in before the apocalypse. Good thing I'm a smart rich second generation. Hearing this, the surrounding neighbors started gossiping. Who would have thought this seemingly innocent white lotus was actually a siren of the Pacific? Seeing the situation, Fan Yuching tried to silence everyone, but no one paid any attention to her. Left with no choice, she yelled and ran away. I then rewarded the sensible Su Hao with another candy. After that, I began to arrange the building's defense, excluding the children who had no fighting capacity. We still had 47 people in building 25, so I decided that aside from me, Zhou Kier, and the couple Uncle Yu, the others would be divided into six small groups, each with seven to eight people, on 25-hour shifts to guard against attacks from other buildings. If anything happens, everyone will hit the stair railing or other metal objects to alert everyone. The same incentives for killing enemies still apply. Whoever kills an outsider gets enough food for five people. Of course, those who want to slack off during their shifts will only get leftover food. After saying this, I patted Uncle Yu on the shoulder. As a military veteran, you're the most suitable person to arrange all of this. Two days passed in a flash, and the Heavenly United Gang didn't seem to be in a hurry to attack. Shou Kier looked worried about the two days of peace. Strange occurrences always mean trouble. Meanwhile, I was on my tablet, learning about various ways to use firearms. The heavy snow had trapped the city, and the lower buildings were already covered in snow. At this rate, even if the heavy snow stops, it would take two and a half months for the snow to melt. And in this post-apocalyptic world, human hearts are always more frightening than natural disasters. I then took out the firearms I'd obtained from the armory through the pocket dimension. Human hearts may be frightening, but as long as I have enough firepower, I'm not afraid of any number of enemies. And it even has an 8-power scope for observing the situation in the community. Then I took the sniper rifle to the balcony, ready to practice my rusty shooting skills. But at that moment, two figures appeared in my 8-power scope. Seeing this, a cold smile appeared on my lips. The Heavenly United Gang's bastards finally couldn't help themselves. However, seeing that they were heading towards the community garage. I immediately realized they are probably going for my snowmobile. Unfortunately for them, their efforts are destined to be futile. During the day, I pretended to leave the snowmobile in the garage, but actually, I'd already stored it in the pocket dimension. Just then, Uncle Yu called me to say that the personnel for the defense had been properly arranged, and told me not to take to heart what Sialime had said during the day. She's just a bit talkative. At this, I chuckled. I won't hold grudges against a woman over such things. But Uncle Yu, are you sure you want to raise a child for someone else? I really don't like Sialime but I don't want to ruin my relationship with you either. Uncle Yu just laughed heartily. In these times, finding a woman is already a good thing. You can't ask for too much. Hearing that, I teased. Uncle Yu, you're a strong and healthy man. You've got plenty of women who would like you. You should make an effort so that Siali may has a child for you too. I wouldn't want you to waste all your effort only to have someone else benefit from it. At these words, Uncle Yu looked awkward. He was well aware that men usually care about their own bloodline, but that's something to think about in the future. After all, it's the end of the world and we can hardly get enough to eat, let alone have time to have children. As for other people's family matters, it's not my place to comment, especially when I've got my own problems to deal with. On the other side, a group from the Heavenly United Gang stealthily entered the first floor lobby under the cover of darkness. This time it was led by Huang Tianfang's nephew, Huang Wei, and he brought along eight people. Just as they arrived at the stair, a brick flew right towards him. Fortunately, he reacted quickly and dodged it, but then he heard a series of knocking sounds echoing through the stairwell. Enemy attack! Enemy attack! Those bastards from Heavenly United Gang are here again. Again. Hearing this, Wang Wei was instantly enraged. Brothers, charge with me. Let's finish off these cowards. So saying, he took the lead and rushed towards the stairwell. Little did he know that under my reward policy, the neighbors on duty were as motivated as if they'd been injected with adrenaline. Within moments, they'd taken down several people from the Heavenly United Gang. Seeing how fierce these neighbors were, Wang Wei immediately yelled for the remaining people to retreat. Watching the Heavenly United Gang members fleeing in disarray, the neighbors didn't plan on pursuing them. The snowstorm outside was too severe, and it would be dangerous if they were ambushed. The knocking sounds in the stairwell also woke me up from my sleep. These guys really know how to pick their timing. Just then, a thought suddenly sprang to my mind. Finally, I have a chance to practice my shooting skills. The saying goes, outside a hundred steps, the gun is fast. Within a hundred steps, the gun is both accurate and fast. I immediately took my beloved sniper rifle out from my pocket dimension. Today, none of you are getting away. I quickly set up the cannon and aimed at one of the fleeing goons. With the help of the 8x scope, I could even see the hairs in the man's knock 
nostrils clearly. As my index finger pulled the trigger, a deafening gunshot shattered the silent night, and the bullet hit the escaping thug squarely. Seeing this, I felt very pleased with myself. Am I really a natural born marksman? The remaining people from Heavenly United Gang looked horrified as they saw their companion fall in a pool of blood. Holy shit, someone's shooting. Seeing this, they didn't hesitate and started running like their lives depended on it, back towards their own compound. Watching the scene, I couldn't help but smile. Then I set up the sniper rifle again. Just then, a strange sensation filled me, and it felt like the enemy in the scope was moving at a speed a thousand times slower. As I pulled the trigger again, the fleeing goon got a headshot and went down. Realizing this, it dawned on me. It seems my awakened abilities are not limited to the pocket dimension. Maybe I also have a marksman's talent. To verify this speculation, I fired five consecutive shots. Without exception, each each goon got a headshot and was killed. Seeing this, a smile appeared at the corner of my mouth. With this marksman's talent, all I need in the future is to find an appropriate sniping point, and that will be enough to deal with these intruders. My extraordinary marksmanship also startled everyone in the building, causing the neighbors to abandon any petty ideas they might have had about me. Their respect and offer me shot through the roof at that moment. The next morning, Shokir made me a bowl of noodles. Then, with a nervous face, she asked, was it you who fired the gun last night? Hearing her question, I smiled. That reckless heavenly United Gang tried another sneak attack, so I had to send them to heaven. Upon hearing this, Zhou Kier looked at me with eyes full of admiration. Zhang Yi, you're amazing. Originally, Zhou Kier chose to live under my protection just for survival, but now she was completely captivated by my charm. Outwardly, I kept a calm face, but inside I was thrilled. How did I go from being a simp in my past life to becoming a godlike figure in the eyes of beautiful women? It's a complete reversal. Meanwhile, on the other side, members of the Heavenly United Gang looked at the bodies in the snow and fell silent. Their repeat attempts to raid us had yielded nothing, not even a scrap of food. Instead, they'd lost their men, including Huang Tianfang's nephew. Initially, they could use their brute force to bully people, but now they realized I had such a powerful weapon at my disposal. What could they even play against me? Moreover, given their current situation, they would soon starve if they couldn't get any food. Thinking this, Huang Tianfang hardened his heart, ordering his men to bring back the bodies of Huang Wei and the others. This way, they could prolong their survival for a little longer. On the other side, I was patrolling the building and checking on the neighbor on duty. As usual, after last night's events, everyone's attitude towards me had turned into genuine awe. They were very clear that, under my leadership, they could survive longer in this post-apocalyptic world. Then I rode my beloved snowmobile and left the community again. Not long ago, Uncle Yu had provided me with the location of a nearby army camp. After asking him to take good care of the people in the base, I headed towards the army camp's location. This scene was witnessed by the wolf gang from Building 21. Puzzled them was where I had hidden the snowmobile, because earlier, they had turned the entire underground garage upside down, but found nothing. If they had a snowmobile, they could freely go on shopping sprees in various malls. With more supplies, they could expand their territory and recruit more people, becoming local warlords in this apocalyptic world. On the side, Xiao Lu nodded in agreement. In troubled times, heroes emerge. Now is the perfect time for us brothers to take the throne. Thinking of this, Wang Chang's eyes were bloodshot. We must get our hands on that snowmobile. On the other hand, I rode my snowmobile, galloping through the snow. Before going to the army camp, I decided to first scavenge the materials around the city. Heavy snow had been falling for three months now, and some small shops were already buried. To get supplies, I could only look for a few independent large supermarkets in the city. Then I remembered the Walmart South Warehouse where I used to work. Though the largest warehouse had been emptied by me before the apocalypse, there were still several smaller ones nearby, which were sure to have useful supplies. Soon, I drove to Walmart South Warehouse. Products from hundreds of groups throughout Heavenly Sea City were concentrated here. If I took all the supplies back, it would be enough to sustain thousands of people. People. However, when I broke the skylight, I discovered that most of the supplies had already been moved before the snow disaster. Still, I went down through the skylight to see if there was anything left. Quickly, I found several heavy-duty trucks and a bunch of luxury sports cars inside. Although they seemed useless now, who knows if they might come in handy for showing off later. Then, I went on to scavenge some useful supplies from a few other warehouses. Afterward, I drove to the gas station. I definitely need to use the snowmobile as my daily means of transportation, so I may not have enough fuel in the future. To my surprise, the gas station was so covered in snow that only a signpost remained visible. This is problematic. If only I had an excavator right now. Thinking this, I suddenly stood up from the snow. Didn't I put a few excavators into my alternate space earlier? Immediately, I took out an excavator from my alternate space. The snow had not yet formed a hard ice layer, so digging out the gas station would be easy. Fortunately, I had experienced driving forklifts in the warehouse before, so operating this wouldn't be an issue. Then I started digging towards the gas station with the excavator. After digging for two hours, a clear metallic clang came from the shovel, and the gas station's large roof platform gradually began to appear. Next, I went inside the gas station to find the fuel storage. Generally, fuel storage for gas
gas stations is underground. I then found the basement door and pried it open with a crowbar. However, before entering, I quickly removed any static electricity from my body to prevent accidents. Soon, several large fuel tanks appeared before my eyes. With these fuel reserves, I can gallop through the snow again in the future. I then dismantled the hose on top of the fuel tanks and used plastic wrap to seal the opening of the tanks to prevent gasoline leakage. Just as I was about to put the entire fuel tank into my alternate space, I suddenly realized something very important. Under these meters thick layers of snow, almost everyone was practically immobile, but not me. In addition to freely traversing the snowy landscape, I also had several excavators with me. That is to say, all the resources buried under the heavy snow were now essentially at my disposal. After storing the gas station's fuel into my alternate space, it was already 8 o'clock in the evening. So, I decided to rest here for the night and visit the army camp that Uncle Yu had mentioned during the day. Meanwhile, back in the residential area, a neighbor's child had a high fever, reaching 40 degrees Celsius. At this, Zhou Kier looked helpless because her medicine box no longer had any emergency medications. Just then, Uncle Yu came over with a box of children's fever medicine. This is the fever medicine that Zhang Yi provided before. There's a little left. Let's use it for the child. He then patted the shoulder of the neighbor. Don't worry. When Zhang Yi comes back this time, I'm sure life will get better for everyone. With Uncle Yu's fever medicine, the child's high fever finally subsided. However, Zhou Kier reminded the mother to pay close attention to her baby's condition, as infants are highly susceptible to illness in this extreme cold weather. After giving her advice, Zhou Kier and Uncle Yu began their routine patrol. They had barely taken a few steps when a woman's scream came from behind them. Auntie Lin from the neighborhood committee was seen lunging at the child in the mother's arms with a small knife, shouting, My grandson is dead. Your children shouldn't be allowed to live either. Out of maternal instinct, the mother immediately turned to block the knife. Seeing this, Zhou Kier quickly caught the baby who slipped from the mother's arms, and the mother, entrusting her child to Zhou Kier, collapsed in a pool of blood. At this moment, Auntie Lin pointed at Zhou Kier and yelled, It's all you heartless people who killed my little who. None of you will get away. Seeing Auntie Lin, who was now entirely unhinged, Zhou Kier knew that talking wouldn't help. She immediately ran towards the stairwell while holding the child, but was caught by Auntie Lin who grabbed her ankle. Auntie Lin ranted with her knife in hand, Especially you, Dr. Zhou. You deserve to die for not saving little who. Just as she was about to stab Zhou Kier, Uncle Yu appeared in the nick of time and kicked Auntie Lin to the ground. He was cut by the knife on his left hand, but seeing that Zhou Kier was unharmed, he felt relieved. If anything had happened to Zhou Kier, he wouldn't have the face to explain it to me. By this time, Auntie Lin had completely lost her sanity, biting anyone she could get her hands on. Yu Ji Guang, you coward. It's your fault for not killing Chen Zheng Hao. You owe little who a life too, she yelled. She then turned to the neighbors who were watching. All of you deserve to die, and that Zhang Yi deserves to die too, for not sending medicine to my little who. Hearing this, Uncle Yu instantly became furious. If it weren't for Zhang Yi taking out Chen Zheng Hao, none of us might have survived until now. It's not your turn, you mad dog, to be biting people here. At this point, Zhou Kier stepped forward and said, Zhang Yi did send medicine for you, but by the time I delivered it, it was already too late. Your precious grandson had already been turned into a pot of rice porridge by you. Upon hearing these words, Auntie Lin fell into another frenzy, shouting, It's impossible, it's impossible. Two neighbors stepped forward to mock her. Today we finally see what loving someone too much to even put them in your mouth really means. You always claim to adore your precious grandson, yet this is the extent of your love? You, who have committed countless evils, let us send you on your way. With that, one of the neighbors ignited a lighter, letting Auntie Lin feel some warmth before her death. Meanwhile, on the other side, I yawned as I walked out of the tent. It was time to head to the army camp. Following the guidance of the retired soldier, Uncle Yu, I rode my snowmobile to the nearby military camp. I then took out an excavator from my pocket to Dimension. With the experience from digging out the gas station last time, I got to work smoothly. Soon enough, I had uncovered the entrance to the camp's dormitories. Puzzled me was that the camp was completely empty, given how sudden the snow disaster was. And considering the remote location of the camp, as well as the lack of transportation, the military should not have been able to evacuate in time. But at that moment, a terrifying thought crossed my mind. Could it be that the military had prior knowledge of the coming snow disaster, and had thus evacuated their troops and resources in advance? The thought sent shivers down my spine. If that was truly the case, whoever possessed these large amounts of supplies and weapons post-disaster would be able to establish a new order in this apocalyptic world. I could foresee the setting turning into a battleground for various armed factions vying for control. I must arm myself in advance to prepare for this new era. With that thought, I continued to operate the excavator, digging fervently, accompanied by a booming noise. I made a large hole in the wall of the weapons arsenal, but the next second, I was stunned. Inside was a dazzling array of military supplies. Aside from tons of various types of of firearms and bullets. There were several large boxes of hand grenades. I came in expecting to find some scraps, but ended up with a massive haul. However, tanks and some heavy armored vehicles were not there. Could it be that the military had simply gone out on a mission and took only a portion of the weapons? 
I didn't dwell on it. What I had gathered was more than enough for now. If I needed to replenish my firepower later on, I could just go to another military camp to scavenge. After storing all the military supplies in my pocket dimension, I rode my snowmobile back home. However, the neighbors noticed that I returned empty-handed and immediately started to accuse me. Zhang Yi, you've been out for two days, and you couldn't find any food? Did you hoard it all for yourself? Hearing this, I laughed. Am I giving you guys too much face? Just two days apart, and you all have grown arrogant. Don't forget who saved you ungrateful folks in the first place, since you like to take advantage of kindness. From now on, we're on our own. You can find your own food. Seeing this, a neighbor hurriedly stepped forward to mediate. Brother Zhang, don't take it to heart. That's not what everyone means. It is really hard to find food out there in the snow. You should go back and rest. Meanwhile, inside building 25, when everyone learned that I hadn't brought back any food, resentment quickly filled the air. In their eyes, they had already worked hard enough defending the building for me. They didn't expect me to also show them an attitude. At that point, a person wearing a little red hat stepped forward with feigned sincerity, saying, Zhang Yi, it must be exhausting to go find food all by yourself. Why don't you take some of us with you next time? After all, there's strength in numbers. He has a small knife hidden behind his back. At that moment, two other neighbors stepped forward to back him up. Zhang Yi, if you need us, we're willing to go through hell and high water for you. Hearing this, I couldn't help but scoff internally. These neighbors with ulterior motives, I knew they were up to no good. Then I reached into my pocket. The next second, I pulled out a gun and shot the guy in the little red hat in the head. Don't think I don't know what you're up to. I don't believe a single word, not even the punctuation, from any of you. It looks like I've been too kind to you all, so much so that you've forgotten how you managed to survive this far. Without me, you would have long become food for Chen Cheng Hao and his gang. Hearing this, a few neighbors hastily tried to defend themselves. Zhang Yi, don't go overboard, we just wanted to discuss something with you. Nothing more. But before they could finish, I fired several more shots. In the blink of an eye, the two leading the conversation were taken care of. Seeing this, the remaining few scattered in all directions, fleeing for their lives. The gunshots quickly attracted Uncle Yu and two others. Shou Kier rushed over, her face filled with concern, asking if I was hurt. I squeezed her little hand. Those guys don't have what it takes to hurt me. Uncle Yu, upon learning the reason, was also furious. These fools really deserve to die. A few full meals, and they've forgotten who they should rely on. I just smiled. I've always been a kind person. I can't be bothered to go after the ones who fled. Hearing this, Xiaoli Mei felt a shiver run down her spine. She knew I did this as a warning to others. I then began to plan for the future. After all, relying solely on these expendables won't keep this building secure forever. Upon returning to the safe house, I asked Shou Kier if anything happened during the two days I was away. Shou Kier reported that Auntie Lin had gone mad because of the death of her grandson and had killed a mom who lived upstairs. However, she was also taken care of by two neighbors. There's also someone from Building 9 named Chen Ling Yu who wants to discuss something with you. However, the specific details of the cooperation must be handled by you personally. I was unimpressed. I have supplies and weapons. What could this woman possibly offer to make me want to cooperate with her? Then I I asked Zhou Kier about this woman's identity. From her, I learned that Chen Lingyu was the owner of a cosmetics company in Heavenly Sea City before the apocalypse. Now, using her strong methods, she has completely taken control of Building 9. Upon hearing this, I was quite surprised. This Chen Lingyu must have some real skills. A woman managing an entire building. Zhou Kier noticed my interest and asked, why don't you at least find out what she wants to cooperate on? I'm also curious to know how a woman managed to get an entire building to fall in line. Just then, I received two friend requests on my phone. In addition to Chen Lingyu, there was also one from my company's previous financial director, Li Jian. What could this guy want? As soon as I accepted the friend requests, Chen Lingyu messaged me right away, asking if we could chat. I got straight to the point. If you have something to say, say it. She replied that typing was inconvenient for her and wanted to have a voice chat instead. I promptly refused. Seeing this, she didn't dare to take things lightly. She initially wanted to use her pre-apocalypse persuasion techniques to win me over, but I gave her no chance. Moreover, since we're in the same residential complex, she's well aware of my capabilities and means. So, she had no choice but to communicate via text. She wrote, Mr. Zhang Yi, I've long heard of your reputation. I know you have a snowmobile and can go out to find supplies. Therefore, I hope to cooperate with you in gathering resources. I couldn't help but smile. If we cooperate, what can you offer me? Chen Lingyu responded that the building she manages is relatively harmonious and the number of survivors is quite large. They could provide me with manpower for expanding territories. However, the precondition is that I would need to provide food for these laborers. Before I could reply, Chen Lingyu continued to babble on. Mr. Zhang Yi, you are currently a target for everyone. The reason thousands of people in the entire community haven't attacked Building 25 en masse is that they're weighing the pros and cons. But if you provide us with food, at least you would be rid of the threat from our Building 9. I chuckled after reading the message. So, are you threatening me? If I don't agree, are you planning to launch an attack? Chen Lingyu smugly responded. Mr. Zhang Yi, you're a smart man. Cooperating with us would result in a win-win situation. I smiled. This is the first time I've seen someone one begs so 
boldly. Let me think for a few days. I then stare out the window, deep in thought. Would everyone in the community turn against me? I'm not afraid if they come at me one by one. But if they were to join forces like Chen Ling Yu suggested, they might very well tear down the entire building. Although there isn't enough electricity and heavy machinery outside to destroy the building, it wouldn't be good if a few experts in explosives got involved. Just as I was pondering what to do, I received a new message on my phone. It was my former colleague Li Jian, who went on and on. Mr. Zhang, we sincerely hope to cooperate with you to build a harmonious post-apocalyptic utopia. Under my management, everyone in Building 18 gets along well. However, we're currently lacking food resources and hope to work with you. Beyond that, I can also help you coordinate relationships with other buildings. I smiled after reading the message. Intellectuals sure know how to put things nicely. Not only do they know how to manage, but they can also maximize benefits. Next, I asked Zhou Care about the situation in Building 18. She indicated that Li Jian indeed was very capable. Not only did he unify all the residents after the apocalypse, but his approach of equitably distributing resources also helped the vast majority to survive. I chuckled. All of this is just a facade. Their unity is built on the foundation that they still have food. Once that runs out, who knows what will happen. Then, I looked at other friend requests from building owners on my phone. They were all seeking cooperation as well. Now, I only have two choices. Either go to war with them, or cooperate. I then asked Joe Kier, is there a way to have the best of both worlds? Joe Kier said that while it may be unrealistic, we could just leave this community and start fresh somewhere else. I was speechless at her suggestion, saying that's like not saying anything at all, unless we find a place with no people and become hermits. The next morning, I had Joe Kier dismantle the bulletproof vest to tie it around my legs as makeshift bulletproof pants. After a night of contemplation, I already knew what to do next. Then, I tagged everyone in the community group chat. Our building 25 is facing a major crisis. Some of the nearby buildings are jealous that I can go out and find food for everyone, and they're threatening to attack our building if I don't hand over the food and snowmobile. As soon as this message was posted, the chat exploded. What the hell do they think they're doing? Can't they find food on their own? To ignite everyone's fighting spirit, I continued in the group chat. I only have one snowmobile. If I give it up, everyone will be left to fend for themselves, so we have to defend our food supply at all costs. Seeing this, I felt a sense of relief. I hope these people don't turn on me later. Just then, I received a message on my phone. Chen Ling Yu had added me to a discussion group for community building owners. Looks like they're preparing to confront me. Wang Chang from Building 21 immediately jumped in, sarcastically saying, Zhang Yi, I heard you've been living the good life recently, always having food to eat. You're comfortable but not thinking about us. You're poor neighbors. Wang Tianfang from Building 26 also directly threatened, If you abandon the negotiations now, we can't guarantee what will happen. Only Li Jian from Building 18 acted as a mediator. Then Li Jian stated the conditions for negotiation. First, Zhang Yi, you must provide us with supplies to ensure basic survival. Second, your snowmobile must become communal, allowing everyone to take turns using it. Finally, you must share all known resource locations with everyone. If you don't accept, you'll become the enemy of the entire community. Seeing this, I chuckled. These guys could just rob me, but they pretend it's negotiation. Looks like I need to seize an opportunity to deal with all of them at once, but they are thousands in number. If I were to act, it would be a bit difficult. Just then, an idea occurred to me. Handling thousands of people might be tough, but dealing with a few building owners should be much more manageable. So, I pretended to discuss negotiation locations with them, and began to arm myself. They have no accurate assessment of my firepower. Once they arrive at the agreed location, a single grenade from me will either kill or severely injure them. Then the thousands of residents will be like a dragon without a head, easily defeated. Meanwhile, in the hallway, Uncle Yu was distributing food to neighbors to replenish their strength, because the negotiation time was approaching. Everyone needed to be well-fed to defend Building 25. Neighbors who hadn't had a full meal in days were so moved they shed tears. My appearance immediately caused a sensation among everyone. Can we really return to normal life after these negotiations? I smiled. As long as this negotiation ends successfully, the food problem will be solved, and there will be no more bloodshed. So, everyone needs to be on their A-game today, defending your own posts. Victory is on the horizon. Hearing this, everyone was moved to tears, vowing that in the next life, they would still want to be my loyal followers. Then I led everyone to the agreed negotiation spot, while I hid among the crowd, looking for an opportunity to strike. Soon, parties from various buildings gathered in the center of the community square. Seeing that the opposing side had turned out in full force, my face was filled with surprise. Do you really need this many people for a negotiation? This is clearly meant to pressure me. I immediately called Uncle Yu and asked him to meet them with a team first, while I stayed behind to provide firepower. Saying that, I set up a sniper rifle and acted as a sniper. At this point, people from various sides had already surrounded Uncle Yu and the others. Seeing this, Uncle Yu couldn't help but sweat. These people aren't here for a negotiation. They're clearly here to eliminate us. A nervous neighbor then asked, Uncle Yu, there are too many of them. Even if each of us took on 10 people, it still wouldn't be enough. Uncle Yu assured him not to worry. Their main target is to pressure Zhang Yi into negotiating. Besides, 
streets. We don't have anything they would want. The building owners stood at the front of the crowd with smug faces, thinking the negotiation was already in the back. Chen Lingyu also looked pleased. Zhang Yi might be intimidating alone, but with thousands of us, what's there to fear? On their way to the negotiation, these building owners had already agreed not to give me a chance to isolate any of them. At this point, Wang Chang chuckled. See, we can scare Zhang Yi just by our sheer numbers. He's probably gone back to change his diapers by now. Chen Lingyu, growing impatient, said, Enough with the nonsense. Let's get Zhang Yi out here to negotiate. Once he accepts the predetermined conditions, it's over. Hearing this, Wang Tianfang stepped forward and shouted, Where's Zhang Yi? Get him out here to negotiate now. If he makes us wait any longer, he's going to regret it. Uncle Yu looked at the group and said, Our boss is waiting for you upstairs. Weren't all the building owners supposed to come for the negotiation? Li Jian adjusted his glasses. We've discussed it. The five of us building owners will represent everyone. Hearing this, Uncle Yu didn't say much more. Fine, but only the five of you building owners are allowed in, and you must also consent to a search. Hearing this, Chen Lingyu and Wang Chan burst into laughter. What does Zhang Yi think he is? Making conditions at this time? Do you believe we can wipe all of you out right now? Seeing them act so arrogantly, how could I tolerate it? I immediately called Uncle Yu and told him to have everyone retreat 20 meters. Although he didn't know what I was planning, Uncle Yu still complied and let everyone to move back. Seeing this, Wang Chan threatened, Don't play tricks on us. With so few of you, even our saliva could drown you. Soon both parties were separated by more than 20 meters. But Wang Chang and his group didn't care at all. They had overwhelming numbers and never considered that something unexpected could happen. But the unexpected happened the next second. I blew a whistle from behind Uncle Yu. Here's an appetizer for you guys. I then threw a hand grenade toward the position where Wang Chang and his group were. The grenade landed perfectly in the middle of the crowd before anyone could even curse. A deafening explosion erupted in the middle of the crowd. When the smoke cleared, all that remained was a large hole, about 10 meters wide, and several corpses. Uncle Yu then walked forward with a phone, from which my voice was heard. Think you're all that just because you have more people? I have 200 more boxes of grenades like this. After throwing the grenade, everyone was instantly frozen in shock. No one could figure out where I got the grenades from, let alone what other heavy weapons I might have. Wang Chang glared, speaking into the phone to Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi, we came here to negotiate. What you're doing is completely unacceptable. Zhang Yi scoffed. Do you really need to bring over a thousand people for a negotiation? Is this your sincerity? Zhang Yi glanced at his watch. Less than five minutes left for the negotiation. If I don't see you guys within that time, we're done talking. We'll just start fighting. Upon hearing this, everyone immediately panicked, knowing they wouldn't stand a chance if a fight broke out. They hurriedly ran toward the 13th floor. Zhang Yi stood on the 13th floor, watching the crowd of people running away below. After all, I only have 20 boxes of grenades. Better save them for later. He leisurely waited for Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang and the others to arrive. A few minutes later, several people ran up, panting heavily. Zhang Yi looked at the people in front of him, somewhat disappointed. He had initially wanted to gather all the building owners together for a comprehensive sweep, but now he had only five representatives. He would have to implement his second plan. After everyone was seated, Li Jian threw out the previously discussed proposal, asking Zhang Yi to provide materials for their labor force, while they provided the labor. Otherwise, all the workers would unite to attack Zhang Yi's apartment building. Zhang Yi, uninterested in further discussion, simply pulled out a handgun and slapped it on the table with a loud bang. All five faces changed color, and they subconsciously thought of running away. Wang Chang stuttered, Zhang Yi, what do you mean by this? Even if you kill us, the whole community will not let you go. Zhang Yi smiled faintly, why are you guys so nervous? I just felt that this handgun was in the way, so I took it out to let it air. Everyone, relax, let's sit down and continue the talk, Zhang Yi said with a smile. First of all, your demand is something I can't agree to. Taking responsibility for the supplies of the entire community is an impossible task for anyone. Most importantly, if you've been able to control the residents of a building in these hard times, you're clearly smart people. As far as I know, you're not so charitable as to go hungry yourselves while caring about your neighbors, are you? Zhang Yi slapped the table. Here are my terms for cooperation. If you don't accept them, then we go to war. He raised an eyebrow and continued, I can provide you with food, but here's the catch. Only enough for 10 people per building. Who gets this food and who divides it is up to you and should be settled within your own building. Then Zhang Yi made a helpless gesture. Supplying food for around 300 people daily is already the maximum I can manage. As soon as he finished speaking, Chen Lingyu looked furious. Unacceptable. Are you treating us like beggars? 10 portions of supplies are too few. I have 76 survivors alone, and just among my own company employees, there are over 20. How are we supposed to divide that? Seeing this, I slammed my gun on the table. It seems there's no room for negotiation then. Let the war begin. Upon hearing this, Wang Tianfang quickly stepped forward. Don't listen to this woman's nonsense. She doesn't represent all of us. However, providing for only 10 people per building really isn't enough to go around. Wang Chang on the side also agreed. This amount of supplies is not enough for them to explain to other building owners. Can we add a little more? But I just loaded my gun. Do you really think I'm a saint? Providing food for 300 people daily 
and you still complain? Seeing this, Li Jian quickly approached and said, Zhang Yi, don't be impulsive, let's think about it. You first mention other conditions. I, however, placed my foot on the table. Now, let's have a real talk about what you all should do. If we want sustainable development, just scavenging for supplies won't last forever. No one knows how long this snow will fall. I threw a bag of seeds on the table. Only by working ourselves can we have enough. These are seeds I found outside. I think we can plant crops. Only then can we have a continuous and stable supply of food. Hearing this, Chen Ling Yu and his group were all stunned. Zhang Yi, have you gone mad? It's minus 80 degrees outside. The snow is meters thick. How can anything grow in that? I just smiled. Can't you dig through the thick snow? There's plenty of land outside for you to grow crops. Only this way can we develop sustainably. Who knows how long this snow will continue? Even if I gave you a thousand snowmobiles, the outside supplies will eventually run out. So why not start today and learn from our ancestors to work with our own hands to get food? If I can see tangible progress in your farming, I don't mind giving you more supplies, including tobacco, clothes, and medical supplies. Upon hearing this, both Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang were delighted. Brother Zhang Yi, can you get cigarettes too? You should know these two are heavy smokers. They haven't smoked since the snow disaster began. They are almost suffocating now. I just smiled, pulling out a freshly opened pack of cigarettes from my pocket. Want to try one? Seeing this, the two lit up immediately. Both had expressions of pure enjoyment on their faces. They both said as long as they are provided with cigarettes daily, they'd agree to any conditions. Seeing this, Li Jian on the side wanted to remind them of the main issue, but I interrupted him. No problem, I can provide a pack for both of you every day. Then, I happily reached an agreement with Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang. Seeing this scene, Li Jian and his companions could only sigh in exasperation. These two fools were bought off so easily. Seeing these idiots about to ruin things, Li Jian immediately tried to negotiate for more conditions. However, before he could even speak, Wang Chang interrupted him. What's there to negotiate? The conditions Zhang Yi offered are already very good. We'll do as he said. Wang Tianfang also chimed in. Brother Zhang Yi has already given us a lot of respect. We should also consider his difficulties, don't you think? This left Li Jian speechless. It's not the godlike opponents one should fear, but the pig-headed teammates. At this point, the building owner Zhang Yunian spoke up. It's not up to just the five of us. We should also consult the other building owners who aren't here. Hearing this, Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang once again acted like the inept teammates they were. What are you talking about? Didn't we agree that just the five of us would make the decision? Ignoring their quarrels, I looked out the window. I saw a group of people gathering at the entrance of building 25 where I was. Seeing this, I drew my pistol and shouted, what's the meaning of this? Did you arrange for these people to ambush us during the negotiation? Wang Chang raised his hands in surrender. Brother Zhang Yi, all the building owners are here. Who would dare to ambush? Isn't that just seeking death? Li Jian quickly tried to explain. It seems those people below couldn't wait. They've already started organizing an attack on their own. Seeing this, I pointed my gun at them threateningly. Sit down and stay still. Just then, Uncle Yu arrived with a group of men in the negotiation room. Following my instructions, they temporarily restrained the five of them. I then went to the balcony with my heavy gun. Such fools, not valuing their lives. Without another word, I took aim at the man leading the charge. Being a sniper, I took two out with a single shot, instantly blasting the heads of two lackeys. Seeing this, the group was panicked and disarrayed. Zhang Yi has a sniper rifle. Everyone, take cover. Seeing their fear, I couldn't help but smile. The more scared you are, the more excited I become. Then, I fired several more shots, taking out a few more lackeys. The five in the negotiation room dared not even breathe. After wiping the smoking barrel of my gun, I turned to them and asked, Do any of you have any objections now? Hearing this, Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang were the first to raise their hands, signaling they had no objections. Chen Ling Yu and Zhang Yunian followed suit, agreeing to my terms. Seeing this, Li Jian couldn't say much and reluctantly raised his hand in agreement. I smiled and said, Good, if everyone had been this reasonable from the start, it would have been better, right? Why force me to act? Peace is more profitable. With that, I patted Li Jian on the shoulder. Go back and do as I told you. No tricks. With the negotiations concluded amicably, Li Jian and the others left building 25. Just as my neighbors were concerned about my well-being, I approached them with a smile, saying, Don't worry, everything has been settled. Hearing this, they began to flatter me. These idiots, they deserve a few bullets from a sniper rifle to show them your prowess. I then explained the details of the negotiations to everyone. Upon hearing the terms, my neighbors looked concerned. Why should we provide so much food to these people every day? We barely have enough for ourselves. I simply smiled and responded. If we didn't agree to these terms, do you think you could fight a hundred of their thousands? I continued, speaking with righteous indignation. You all don't need to worry too much. I swear, as long as I, Zhang Yi, am alive, I won't let any of you starve. So please, trust me. Hearing these words, everyone was deeply moved, shedding tears. In this post-apocalyptic world, where food is scarce and warmth is hard to find, having such a leader is a true blessing. They all vowed to follow me to the very end, but Uncle Yu looked puzzled on the side. After all, it's the end of the world. Nobody would choose to play the saint, right? I just smiled and said, don't overthink it. Uncle Yu, cooperating with them is just a temporary measure.
future. I then laid out my original plan to Uncle Yu in detail. My initial idea was to lure all their leaders over and then eliminate them all at once. Without their leaders, the other buildings would be leaderless, making them easy to conquer. But who would have thought they'd only send five representatives? So, we have to play the long game now. While I promise to provide food for 300 of their people daily, this will inevitably lead to unequal food distribution among them. Once internal conflicts arise, they'll turn on each other. At that point, we can simply sit back and reap the benefits. Hearing this, Uncle Yu had a moment of realization. It's always you, Zhang Yi, thinking steps ahead. If it were me, I would have probably gone head to head with them already. I gazed out of the window at the fallen bodies inside. Right now, I'm just using the ample resources in my hands to wear down these adversaries. We don't know what the outside world is like now, but there will certainly be other, more threatening groups. If we want to truly establish ourselves in this post-apocalyptic world, we need ample firepower and a strong fortress. Hearing this, Uncle Yu seemed deep in thought. You're right, Zhang Yi. It's only the beginning of the end. Who knows what challenges lie ahead? At this moment, Uncle Yu, who was standing beside me, chuckled and said, You're asking them to plant corn in this cold weather. Zhang Yi, are you messing with them? I just smiled and said, All I'm doing is depleting their energy. Most people nowadays are starving and can hardly get enough food. Even if they wanted to resist in the future, they wouldn't have the strength to do so. I then looked seriously at Uncle Yu and said, No third person should know about our conversation today. We will proceed as planned. Not only do we need to be wary of outsiders, but we also have to guard against insiders betraying us in this building. Hearing this, Uncle Yu nodded and responded, Don't worry, Zhang Yi, I'll do whatever you say. After all, my family and I rely on you. Then I went back to my safe house. At the moment, Zhou Kier was doing yoga in the bedroom. Seeing me, her face lit up with joy and she asked, Is everything okay? How did the negotiations go today? Without a word, I picked her up and said, It's nothing serious. Just used a few bullets and a grenade, and they conceded. I continued, The outside might be a bit unsafe for a while, so just stay home. Give it some time, and these annoying folks will be gone for good. Hearing this, Zhou Kier took on a damsel-like demeanor and said, You need to be careful too, okay? The next morning, a large group of homeowners gathered in front of Unit 25. Desperate for a meal, they mustered up all their energy to start farming. Meanwhile, my two teammates supervised their work. Just then, I walked out from the entrance of the building. Seeing this, Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang looked excited. Brother Zhang Yi, are you heading out to find supplies? Why not take us with you? We're just idling around here anyway. I smiled in response. My snowmobile can't carry that many people. It's better to use that space for more supplies. You two just wait here for me to return. I then looked at the working crowd and said, You all better do a good job. I'll be checking your progress when I return. If it's not satisfactory, there will be no food. Hearing this, the group immediately worked harder, wielding their hose with determination. But as I left, Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang whispered to each other, We need to find an opportunity to get his vehicle. The first thing I did on my outing was not to find food, but to head to the Tianhai City Pet Hospital. Then I rummaged through the pet hospital's pharmacy. Two minutes later, I found an entire box of rat poison. This poison, when diluted, is colorless and tasteless. It's usually used to euthanize pets that can't be saved. Now, it's perfect for giving a vitamin boost to those shameless people. If I wasn't worried they would tear the building apart, I wouldn't even provide food for three, let alone 300. Everyone should rely on their abilities to survive in this apocalyptic world. Why should I play the saint? I'll take this opportunity to send them off to the hereafter, but I still need to put on a show. So I began looking for living supplies around the city. After a while, I returned to the community with bags of supplies. Seeing this, the neighbors were all astonished. Zhang Yi, where did you find so many supplies? I just smiled and said, the snow outside is getting higher and higher. It's indeed getting hard to find supplies. I was just lucky this time. It might not be the case next time. Then, I took out my phone and notified the owners of the other units, asking them to come and collect today's food. Surprisingly, these people have become more cautious. Each unit only sent one representative. It was evident that they were afraid I might kill them all. Next, I took out a large bag of food. Now, we'll begin the distribution. The representative from the first unit came forward to collect today's supplies. With that, I threw a bag of food at the feet of the representative from Building 1. After distributing all the supplies, I smiled and said, We're all homeowners from the same community. There's no need to be so distant. I hope from today onward, we can work together towards a brighter future. I said this, of course, to let their guard down. As expected, everyone became emotional. Zhang Yi is right. As long as we work together, we can get through this. Then, I clapped my hands to interrupt their cheers. Now that the food has been distributed, everyone can go back, eat well, and prepare to farm diligently tomorrow. Hearing this, the neighbors left joyfully. However, I watched their retreating figures and chuckled coldly. In a little while, these troublemakers will be gone for good. I then returned to my safe house, instructed Zhou Kier to prepare dinner, and headed to the bathroom for a relaxing hot shower. After getting rid of these problematic individuals, I'll need to find a safer place to start anew. Each representative, after collecting their food, immediately returned to their respective buildings. Seeing his underling return with food, Wang Chang instantly became ecstatic, ignoring the questions from his subordinate. He eagerly searched through the food. Soon
soon, Wang Chang found a brand new, unopened pack of cigarettes. Yo! Zhang Yi truly keeps his word. The younger gang members behind him became restless. Brother Chang, give us one too. We can't take it anymore. We're suffocating. Seeing the situation, Wang Chang reluctantly handed out a cigarette to each of his underlings with tears in his eyes. Watching them joyously smoke, Wang Chang felt helpless. If he didn't distribute the cigarettes, he feared his position as the leader would be at stake. He then picked up the food and said, Call over all the brothers. Let's distribute today's food. Soon, a group of underlings were merrily eating in the living room. Seeing this, Wang Chang finally relaxed, thinking that Zhang Yi hadn't poisoned the food. Living off others while doing nothing seemed like a pretty good life. All they had to do was let the deceived homeowners continue working. On the other hand, the homeowners, thinking there was food distribution, worked with full enthusiasm. They believed as long as they worked diligently every day, they'd get food. However, after a day's work, they received nothing. Arguments erupted in every building in the community. Didn't they say if we work, we'd get food? Why is there nothing after a whole day's work? The unit owners just laughed, replying, you slack off all day and then expect food? Where in the world does that happen? The constant quarreling throughout the community woke me from my sleep, but this scene was precisely what I wanted to witness. Once they almost settled their internal disputes, it'd be time for me to take action. After breakfast, I left early. First, I found Uncle Yu and warned him about the looming riots due to uneven food distribution and told him to be careful. Then, I rode my snowmobile to search for supplies. To intensify their internal conflicts, I brought back even less food than before. Smiling, I said, supplies are getting harder to find outside. Please make do with what we have today. I'll try to find more tomorrow. As I predicted, riots broke out in the entire community that night. Desperate for a meal, some homeowners turned against their longtime neighbors, resorting to violence. Some even pushed others off high-rise buildings to alleviate the pressure of food distribution. The neighbors who didn't get food had completely lost their minds. The community had become more chaotic than ever, with cries of fighting and killing echoing everywhere. Yet, I was at home, leisurely listening to classical music, wondering how many would die that night. The next morning, I walked out of the building with Uncle Yu and a few others. Though mentally prepared, the scene still took my breath away. Hundreds of bodies were strewn haphazardly around the community, and the surrounding buildings were stained with blackened, congealed blood. It was clear how intense the riot had been the night before. The expressions of agony on their faces suggested many were forced to jump from tall buildings, only to freeze to death in the cold night. Uncle Yu approached me and asked, Do we still need to work today? I smiled. Why wouldn't we? I pointed to a corpse nearby. Did you really think of me as a saint? I'm not obliged to support you all. If you want food, you have to work for it. I gestured at the bodies on the ground. Of course, if you end up like this, you won't have to work anymore. Hearing this, the group looked shocked. Compared to those who had died, they felt incredibly lucky. At least they didn't have to fight others for a bite to eat. Thinking this, they immediately turned around, indicating their readiness to work. Uncle Yu, looking at the bodies scattered around, sighed and asked, Do we need to call out people from other buildings to work? I just smiled. They probably don't have the time for that now. This riot is just the beginning. Unless the building owners can perfectly solve the food distribution issue, one side will eventually perish. All we have to do now is wait for their internal depletion. Later, I messaged in the building owners negotiation group, If I don't see people from all the buildings working tomorrow, I can't guarantee food and cigarettes. Indeed, after I made that stern declaration, the next day, the community was bustling again. Early in the morning, a large number of people began to cultivate and farm. However, compared to the previous days, the number of workers had decreased by a third. Seeing this, Uncle Yu looked puzzled. They know they might not get any food. Why are they working so hard? I glanced at two men who were moving bodies and smiled. Aren't they addressing the food issue right now? Besides, people are always driven by their interests. Working gives them hope for survival, while rebelling is uncertain. I was about to leave to search for supplies when Chen Ling Yu stopped me. Zhang Yi, wait. I want to discuss a potential collaboration. Chen Ling Yu knew that if things continued in this manner, the community would eventually collapse. She approached me with a proposal for continued cooperation. In her view, unless the food distribution issue was resolved, the casualties would only increase. She believed she could use scientific management methods to help me govern the community and even expand our territory. Establishing a new kingdom in this post-apocalyptic world wouldn't be a problem. However, I just laughed. This current situation is exactly what I wanted to see. And now, you expect me to play the generous king and provide for these 2,000 people for nothing? I grabbed Chen Ling Yu's shoulder. Before the apocalypse, you use this rhetoric to deceive many people into collaborating with you. By now, the grass on their graves must be really tall. Do you really think I'm dumb enough to be your next victim? I pushed Chen Ling Yu away. I'm not interested in any of your plans. Find someone else to play your emperor. Seeing that I wasn't falling for her proposal, Chen Ling Yu pleaded, Zhang Yi, please reconsider. I promise I'll be a good advisor. On the other hand, Li Jian was diligently leading his team to clear and cultivate the land. To my surprise, none of Li Jian's team had suffered any casualties so far. This guy surely had some skills. Seeing me, Li Jian exclaimed, Zhang Yi, what brings you here? I replied with a smile, I'm curious about how you manage your building. The other units have started fighting among
among themselves over food distribution. Li Jian didn't hide much and shared that he had informed everyone about the negotiation results from the start. No matter what happened later, the food would be distributed equally. I strongly disagreed with his approach. You think you're so clever, but if you continue this way, everyone will starve. With your capabilities, you could have chosen and protected the most useful people and abandoned the rest. Yet, even though you can't protect everyone, you still want to play the saint in this post-apocalyptic world. It's your own doing. I didn't wait for his response and just left. Li Jian sighed heavily. He knew that the apocalypse tested human nature, but he couldn't overcome his own inner moral dilemma. At that moment, Wang Chang and Huang Tianfan approached me. Bro Zhang, aren't you going out to find food today? I smiled. Be patient. I'm about to head out and we'll make sure to get some good cigarettes and liquor for you guys. The two brothers were visibly excited. We always knew you were loyal, Zhang Yi. You're our savior in this world. Our lives are in your hands now. I chuckled. Come on. From now on, we're all brothers in this post-apocalyptic world. I'll do my best to provide for everyone. As usual, I distributed food to the representatives of each building. But at that moment, several building owners, who had been hiding and not showing themselves, approached me. Brother Zhang Yi, you can't play favorites. Next time, could you also bring us some cigarettes? We won't trouble you. Just one pack a day will do. Faced with these shameless owners, I reluctantly agreed, promising to provide for them starting tomorrow. With my affirmative answer, the group left contentedly. However, two neighbors who witnessed the scene expressed their discontent. These guys are going too far. You already generously provide them with food, Zhang, and now they want cigarettes too. If they're asking for cigarettes today, tomorrow they'll be demanding liquor. I just smiled. They're right. I shouldn't play favorites. The two stood there, stunned. They never expected someone as ruthless as me to be so amenable at that moment. Jealousy then consumed them. They toiled 18 hours a day to barely get by. So why did these building owners deserve cigarettes? Afterwards, I retreated home, laying on my couch, contemplating my next steps. After the chaos of recent days, over half of the community's population was dead or injured. Those left probably wouldn't turn on each other. If I continued in this manner, things would only get worse for me. It was time to settle things with these people. Early the next day, I went to a supermarket to scavenge supplies. If I was to send them off, I might as well prepare them a lavish last meal. I then laced all the food with a heavy dose of rat poison. A small bite would be enough to end them. However, after doing all this, I felt uneasy. Although I provided food for them every day, it was never enough for everyone. Apart from the the building owners demanding cigarettes. No one else made any other requests. Could it be that they were also waiting for the right moment? But thinking about my safe house and weapons, I felt a bit more reassured, knowing that any devious schemes would be meaningless before overwhelming firepower. Soon, I brought back a heap of supplies to the community. Uncle Yu and his group had been waiting for a while. I then took out my phone and notified the representatives of each building to come and collect today's food. Soon after, a crowd arrived. Seeing this, I smirked internally, thinking, enjoy your last meal. As usual, I distributed food to each representative. This food had been laced with a heavy dose of rat poison. A single bite would be fatal. Enticed by cigarettes and liquor, surprisingly, more than half of the building owners came in person this time. However, just as I bent down to distribute the food, I heard a shout from Wang Chang from behind. Attack! Following his command, he drew a gun and aimed it at me. Damn it! I let my guard down, I thought, realizing he had a weapon. In the nick of time, Uncle Yu shielded me, taking three bullets. I quickly held onto Uncle Yu, who fell, and shouted at Wang Chang and the others. What the hell do you think you're doing. At that moment, a spy hidden in building 25 finally revealed himself, swinging a shovel at me. Reacting quickly, I pulled out a submachine gun from my pocket and said, if you're so eager to die, I'll oblige. I opened fire, hitting several in the front row. Seeing this, the crowd behind panicked. Run, he's got a submachine gun. But I didn't hesitate, continuing my barrage. With my sharpshooting skills, almost every owner was shot in the head by me. After emptying my submachine gun, I pulled out two handguns from my pocket, declaring, it's too late to run now. All of you are going to die. Upon hearing my words, both Wang Chang and Huang Tianfang were paralyzed with fear. Brother Zhang Yi, let us explain. Give us another chance, they pleaded. But in response, they were met with two bullets from my guns. You should have thought of this day, I murmured coldly. Without showing any emotion, I methodically approached the last of them, Chen Ling Yu, who seemed utterly terrified. I had nothing to do with this. I have a family to take care of, she begged. But before she could finish her plea, I pulled the trigger. Even though I knew most people were unaware of the conspiracy, when an avalanche starts, no snowflake is innocent and there was no way I was going to leave any threats behind, potentially causing trouble for me in the future. Surveying the aftermath, I felt nothing. After my rebirth, I had grown accustomed to the cycle of life and death. If not for the arsenal I had prepared in an alternate space, I would be the one lying on the ground. As I prepared to walk away, a faint voice reached my ears. It was Uncle Yu. I hurried to his side in disbelief. How is he still alive after taking three bullets? I wondered. I quickly pulled out an adrenaline shot from my alternate space and injected it into his chest. Noticing two neighbors sneakily walking 
watching. I shouted, what are you staring at? Help me. The two, who had been frightened by the earlier events, hurriedly responded, coming, coming, following my instructions. They transported Uncle Yu to my home on a stretcher. As this was happening, Siali Mei, known for her cunning ways, rushed over with a look of distress. Seeing Uncle Yu unconscious, she burst into tears. Old Yu was perfectly fine. How could this happen? How are my daughter and I supposed to live now? Why did he play the hero and take a bullet for someone else? How can he leave us behind like this? She lamented. I listened, veins popping in anger. Stop your mourning. I snapped. Uncle Yu is not dead. I'll do everything in my power to save him. Xiao Kier is the chief doctor at the city hospital. She'll know what to do. However, tears still streaming down her face. Siali Mei continued. If old you can't be saved, I don't want to live either. My poor daughter will suffer. Johnny, I hope you can take care of her. I looked at her with confusion. We haven't even started the rescue process, and you're already making arrangements for what comes after. Caught off guard by my question, Siali Mei hastily tried to explain. Of course, I hope with all my heart that old you will be fine, but we should be prepared for the worst, right? Deep inside, though, she was thinking, Uncle Yu has been my long-term ticket to a comfortable life. Zhang Yi, you can't let a sacrifice be in vain. Soon, Uncle Yu was brought to the entrance of my home. I suggested that Siali Mei and the others leave and let Zhou Kier perform surgery to remove the bullet from Uncle Yu. However, Siali Mei, feigning concern, said, Old Yu needs me by his side at this time. I can't leave him. Seeing the subtle twitches on Uncle Yu's face, I reluctantly agreed to let her stay. After all, despite all the circumstances, Uncle Yu had saved my life. No matter how heartless I might be, I couldn't just drive away the woman he cared for. Upon feeling the warmth inside the house, Siali Mei shed tears of emotion. This was the place she had dreamt of residing in ever since the snowstorm began. She relished the indoor warmth, enjoying not just the cozy fireplace but also the fresh food available. Anybody who walked in would wish to stay and never leave. Soon enough, Siali Mei made herself at home, heading to the kitchen to pour a cup of hot water. Xiao Kier and I exchanged speechless glances. She really thinks this is her home. Flushed with excitement, Siali Mei asked, Do you have any milk powder? I want to prepare a warm bottle for the baby. Infuriated by her audacity, I snapped, Don't you have your own milk? Are you seriously treating this place as your own? Using Uncle Yu as a shield, Siali Mei retorted, The baby needs to eat. Old Yu adores the baby. Coldly, I responded, Cut the nonsense. Either help out or leave. Without another word, I headed to the generator room room, storing everything inside into my spatial dimension. Then, I retrieved a white foldable bed from the same dimension, converting the area into a makeshift operating room. Siali Mei watched in astonishment. Damn, Zhang Yi, are you performing magic or what? Ignoring her, I turned to show care. Tell me whatever medicines and medical equipment you need. I'll provide whatever I can. We must save Uncle you no matter what. Show care, being the chief doctor at the city hospital, certainly knew her stuff. But first, she had to assess Uncle Yu's injuries. As she removed his shirt, her brow furrowed in concern. The bullet's location suggested potential internal organ damage. Given the current medical conditions, it seemed impossible to save Uncle Yu. Upon hearing the grim prognosis, Siali Mei put on a theatrical display of tears. If old Yu goes, how will my daughter and I survive? I pointed at her angrily. Stop with the theatrics. If your crying affects Uncle Yu's surgery, then you might as well go to hell and join him in mourning. Understand? At my words, Siali Mei wiped her tears. Then, I should probably leave. My presence here is only adding to the chaos. Yet, internally, she thought, it's much more comfortable outside. With hot water and food, why would I want to stay in here? However, I quickly blocked her path. Just a moment ago you said you wouldn't leave Uncle Yu's side, and now you think you're a hindrance? Listen closely. You'll stay right here, and assist where needed. Even if you're just watching, it'll be an encouragement for Uncle Yu. If you dare step out of this room, you'll bear the consequences. With that, I turned away and swiftly made my way to the first floor hall. There, a group of neighbors were fervently explaining their non-involvement in the attempted murder. I had no patience for their excuses. Some had betrayed and ambushed, leading to Uncle Yu's critical injuries. I would make them pay for their treachery. But now, our immediate priority was to launch a counterattack. Those not participating would be considered traitors, facing consequences similar to the dead bodies outside. Hearing this, expressions of unease spread across the neighbors' faces. Not to mention the matter of traitors, but just the sheer number of residents in the complex was intimidating. Their small group would be nothing but a gnat in comparison. I pointed to the combat supplies prepared in advance. Your only responsibility is to guard the exits and monitor the surroundings. If someone tries to flee, finish them off. I'll personally handle those inside the building. They'll soon learn the consequences of crossing me. Soon, our group arrived at the base of building number 21. Meanwhile, Wolfgang on the upper floors had noticed something amiss. Recognizing that I was leading the charge, many of them were already trembling in fear. In this post-apocalyptic world where most only had melee weapons, I could effortlessly whip out a submachine gun. Who would dare oppose me? Still, there were those bold enough to defy. This building was their territory. After all, the hallways were dimly lit, making firearms less effective. I instructed my men to watch all the exits, ensuring that no one could escape by jumping out of the windows. Leaving them behind, I approached building number 21 alone. I first reached the ground floor hall. After ensuring no 
one was around, I retrieved a large pile of wood and clothing from my alternate space, placing them in various corners of the hall. Then, I poured gasoline over everything, connecting all the wood and clothes with gasoline trails. Once done, I lit my lighter, remarking, given how cold it is outside, let's warm things up a bit for these fellows. With that, I tossed the lighter onto the gasoline. Flames quickly spread throughout the ground floor, and I calmly exited the scene. Wolfgang's crew were naively waiting for me to ascend, but as the fire grew more intense, they soon realized something was off. Damn it, Zhang Yi and his gang set the place on fire, open the windows quickly, or we'll suffocate from the smoke. But when they tried to open the windows, they found that the extreme cold had frozen them shut. Without tools, they couldn't break through. By then, I had already calmly walked out of the ground floor hall, pointing to the smoke-engulfed building behind me. I declared, the rest is up to you all. Be thorough, and don't let a single one escape. I emotionlessly stared at the towering inferno. Under the force of hunger and desperation, these people would eventually turn their weapons towards me. They only had their incompetent leader to blame, who had provoked someone he shouldn't have. As the flames intensified, many could not endure the scorching heat and chose to leap from the balconies, crashing heavily into the snow below. Even if they weren't burned alive, the fall likely crippled them. With one leading the charge, more and more residents started jumping. Some from lower floors survived their falls, but little did they realize, they had jumped from the frying pan into the fire. A woman from the crowd, who typically wouldn't even kill a chicken, wasted no time plunging her knife into the body of old Wong, a neighbor she used to spend her days with. Amidst the shocked reactions, Lian only smiled and said, we all have to do what it takes to survive. I can't be left behind. As more people jumped from building 21, Liyun hastily moved forward, eager to ensure no one else would claim her credit. Watching the raging fire, not a shred of pity crossed my heart. Wang Chang's building 21 was doomed. Every day, I provided them with food and cigarettes, and they plotted to kill me from the shadows. They shouldn't blame me for my merciless retaliation. In other buildings, many residents witnessed this horrifying spectacle. Their hearts raced with anxiety, fearing I might use the same method against them. Despite Wang Chang's prolonged plotting, his fate was riddled with bullet holes. However, many clung to the hope that they'd be spared since they hadn't participated in the assassination. They believed I had no reason to wipe them out. Having dealt with Building 21, I led my people towards Building 26, headed by Huang Tianfang. Seeing our approach, the residents of Building 26 frantically tried to distance themselves from the situation. This is all Huang Tianfang's doing. We have nothing to do with it. Zhang Yi, please don't wrongfully accuse the innocent. Upon hearing their pleas, I laughed. You claim this has nothing to do with you? I, for one, don't believe that. And you dare call yourselves good people? To have survived this long, each one of you must have taken a few lives. Without further ado, I repeated the process and gave Building 26 its own barbecue treatment. Soon, residents from other buildings grew restless, as I had set fire to five buildings that had a hand in the assassination attempt. They feared I might go on a rampage, burning every structure in sight. However, to their surprise, I pulled out a megaphone from my pocket. Addressing everyone, I announced, everyone, there's no need to worry. While I, Zhang Yi, may not be a saint, I won't kill without reason. Anyone who treats me with friendliness will be spared. A wave of relief washed over the faces of many residents. Finally, they saw hope of survival. Yet, some remained skeptical. This had nothing to do with us in the first place. I don't believe he could possibly burn down the entire complex. Ignoring their murmurs, I instructed everyone to rest, but these neighbors refused to leave. After enduring the cold for so many months, they weren't going to pass up a chance to warm themselves by the fire. I then approached the bodies of the two spies. It puzzled me. They had once been utterly loyal. What made them betray me? Rummaging through their belongings, I found their phones. Upon reviewing their chat history, realization dawned on me. So, that's how it is. After dealing with the buildings involved in the assassination, I immediately returned to my safe house. The steady rhythm on the heart rate monitor indicated that Uncle Yu was out of danger. I smiled at Joe Care. It's no wonder you're the city's lead surgeon. Not everyone could have saved Uncle Yu like you did. As Joe Care and I chatted, Siali May approached, holding her child. Zhang Yi, could you get something for me? Me and my baby to eat? We've been hungry all day. It dawned on me that the surgery had taken over 10 hours. We should treat our great Dr. Zhou here, I said, pulling out a pack of instant noodles from my pocket. Your uncle used woman, so I won't let you go hungry. I then turned to head out for a meal with Zhou Care, but Siali Mei pressed on. Zhang Yi, do you have anything else to eat? I saw some eggs and chicken legs in the kitchen earlier. I was almost fuming. This cunning girl always wanted more. If it weren't for Uncle Yu, I would have thrown her out. Coldly, I said, it's the end of the world. This pack of noodles is as valuable as gold. Eat it or leave it. After our meal, Zhou Kier and I returned to the bedroom. She sighed, with Siali Mei here, our house has another hassle. I tried to reassure her while massaging her tired muscles. Don't worry, she won't stay long. I then inquired about Uncle Yu's condition. Zhou Kier responded with a mysterious tone. By all logic, Uncle Yu should not have survived with so much blood loss. But just as his heart rate was fading, something strange happened. His wounds began to heal visibly. I was stunned. Could it be that Uncle Yu has awakened some special ability? My spatial ability came about because of the supernova explosion. 
illusion. But what I don't get is, out of thousands of people in our community, why was I the only one to awaken an ability? A sudden realization hit me. Uncle Yu's near-death state mirrored mine from before. Could that be the condition to awaken such abilities? If so, that's quite stringent. Lucky for Uncle Yu he ran into me. Otherwise, he'd need an ability to resurrect on the spot. Otherwise, death is the only outcome. Thinking of this, I patted Joe Kier's shoulder. From now on, administer a dose of sedative to Uncle Yu daily. Show Kier was taken aback. Did Uncle Yu awaken some sort of ability like you did? I nodded. It's unclear what Uncle Yu has awakened to, but if he turns into the Hulk and tears our home apart, it would be a major loss. After instructing Joe Kier to administer the sedatives to Uncle Yu, I got up and headed to the living room. Show Kier, with a worried face, said, Sialime, that cunning mother, only has eyes for herself and her child. Is it wise to let her take care of Uncle Yu? I reassured Joe Kier. Although Sialime is selfish, she knows the stakes. If anything happens to Uncle Yu, she's aware that she'll be kicked out. Meanwhile, Sialime was in the living room, scouting for something to eat. I sternly told her, stop looking. I've put everything away. You'll stay with Uncle Yu and be responsible for his daily needs. Seeing my serious demeanor, Sialime begrudgingly entered the room. What I had to do next was clean out any traitors in the building. I soon found myself fully armed in front of a door. Without hesitation, I shot through the lock and with a powerful kick, burst open the door. A disheveled woman wielding a kitchen knife charged at me. I quickly raised a riot shield to block her attack, then slapped the knife out of her hand. Fang Yuching, it's been a long time. The fact you're still alive suggests you've turned your best friend into clay pot rice, haven't you? But Fang Yuching, bloodshot eyes, cried out hysterically, it's impossible, why can't so many people kill just one of you? I chuckled in response, did you really think colluding with Wang Chang and a few others would be enough to get rid of me? You're so naive. With that, I raised the wooden stick in my hand. Had it not been for this woman's meddling in my past life, I could have lived at least two more years. Thinking this, I viciously struck struck Fang Yuching's left leg with the stick. Next, I dragged her to the window, intending to throw her out. Seeing this, Fang Yuching was finally gripped with fear. Zhang Yi, please spare me. I realize my mistakes and promise never to repeat them. Thinking of the pain of being cannibalized in my past life, I didn't hesitate and let go, allowing Fang Yuching to plummet from the 25th floor. Accompanied by a loud thud, Fang Yuching smashed into the snowy ground, creating a deep crater. Watching this scene, I felt no pity. This was my revenge for my past life. The next morning, I went to the sick room to check on Uncle Uncle Yu. Unexpectedly, after the transformation, Uncle Yu's healing speed was dozens of times faster than a regular person. In just a day, his gunshot wound had mostly healed. I instructed Zhou Kier to always monitor his condition to prevent any unexpected occurrences. Without hesitation, Zhou Kier immediately administered a sedative injection to Uncle Yu. Just then, Sialime approached, hoping I could go to her place to help retrieve her charger and diapers. I smiled, indicating that I had urgent matters to attend to, but I would assist her once I was done. After leaving the room, my expression immediately darkened. This scheming woman is still up to her old tricks. Our two families are only separated by a few floors, yet she still wants my help. Clearly, she fears that once she leaves, she won't be able to return. I need to find a way to deal with this cunning woman. Keeping her around will be a liability sooner or later. I then proceeded to the residential area to continue the purge. Only by eliminating these potential threats could we hope to live safely in this post-apocalyptic world. At that moment, the wealthy second-generation Su Hao approached me nervously, claiming he had crucial information to share. I responded with a smile, I've pretty much cleared the whole compound. What could be so important? Su Hao, looking secretive, whispered, Big Brother Zhang, have you heard about the son of Jiang Nan's richest man spending billions to build a safe house for the apocalypse? My interest peaked instantly. Do you know the location of this safe house? Su Hao made a follow me gesture, implying it wasn't safe to talk openly. I then followed him to his residence. Once there, Su Hao rubbed his hands together and said, the refuge of the richest son, Wang Siming, is located in Yunk Villa. Rumor has it he's hoarded enough supplies to last several lifetimes. I looked at him, puzzled. So what? What's your motive for telling me this? Su Hao patted his chest confidently. Big brother Zhang, I'm doing this to show my loyalty. I wish to be your subordinate and follow you. With your strength, I'm sure you can take over that safe house. Laughing at his statement, I retorted, do you think I'm a fool? A safe house worth billions, and you believe I can just walk in and take it? At that moment, Su Hao continued, in fact, Wang Siming is already aware of you. Big brother Zhang, he asked me to lure you over, intending to ambush you and seize your snowmobile and supplies. Fury I snapped. I knew something was off with you. Now that you've confessed, how do you wish to die? Su Hao quickly waved his hands. Big brother Zhang, I wouldn't dare. I refused him then. Now, I genuinely want to join you and find a way to capture that safe house. Without hesitation, I pulled out a gun and aimed it at his forehead. How do I know this isn't a trap? Seeing my intent, Su Hao was paralyzed with fear. Wait. Big brother Zhang, don't shoot. I swear every word I said is true. Just give me a chance. But before he could finish, I pulled the trigger. Su Hao, scared out of his wits, collapsed. When he finally came to, he noticed the bullet hole was merely a centimeter from his forehead. Desperately, he exclaimed, Big Brother Zhang,
on. Have mercy. I'm telling the truth. I calmly holster my gun. I might consider trusting you, but you have to give me a reason. Taking a deep breath, Su Hao began. After witnessing your abilities, I believe that only by following you can I survive in this post-apocalyptic world. Even if I allied myself with Wan Siming, I'd always be just a disposable pawn in his eyes. He continued, revealing that even before the apocalypse, he was Wang Siming's lackey. In his attempts to curry favor with Wang Siming, Su Hao even sacrificed his own woman for Wang's amusement. Despite all this, Wang Siming never treated Su Hao as a human being. This had instilled deep resentment in Su Hao's heart. Observing Su Hao's rage, I suggested that a collaboration could be possible, but we'd need a solid plan. Su Hao proposed that we deceive Wang Siming, feigning alliance until he opens his doors. Once inside, we could eliminate him. Chuckling, I replied, Are you an idiot? You want to take on someone without even knowing their security details? Su Hao countered that he was well versed with Wang's security details, but there was a catch. I had to promise him a position as my subordinate. Otherwise, he would remain silent. I smirk, If you won't talk, there seems to be no point in keeping you around. As I said this, I pressed the muzzle of my gun against his forehead. Seeing this, Su Hao yelled, I know you'll silence anyone who's no longer useful to you. Information about that safe house is my only lifeline now. Even if it kills me, I won't reveal it. Impressed, I remarked, You're pretty clever. I'll accept your terms, but you must abide by my rules. Su Hao nodded rapidly, swearing his loyalty to me and promising to always follow my orders. I then laid out my conditions. First, Su Hao had to provide a detailed account of the safe house. Second, he had to deal with a particular nuisance for me, someone I couldn't approach directly. After securing Su Hao's loyalty, I didn't immediately task him with my request. Instead, I mentioned, as my subordinate, I have something valuable to bestow upon you. Then I returned to my safe house. Soon after, I arrived at Su Hao's residence, holding a briefcase. Slowly, I began, since you've chosen to be my subordinate, there are certain truths I won't hide from you. I am, in fact, a professional assassin. Understanding Don on Su Hao, no wonder, Brother Zhang, your shooting skills are impeccable. Su Hao's confidence in the future grew. He believed that as long as he remained by my side, he would surely survive in this post-apocalyptic world. At this moment, I pulled out a syringe from the briefcase. This is a slow-acting poison I specifically use for those who are stubborn or have ill intentions. Without an antidote, death is inevitable within a month. Upon hearing this, Su Hao shouted in panic, Brother Zhang, I swear I have no ill intentions. I simply smiled and reassured him, don't worry, as soon as we successfully seize Wang Siming's safe house, I'll provide you with the antidote immediately. Hearing this, Su Hao collapsed. If they didn't take the safe house, he'd surely die. But before he could contemplate further, I swiftly injected the substance into his neck. From this moment, you're truly my subordinate. We're in the same boat now. You don't need to be scared. The poison won't act unless it's time. Drenched in sweat, Su Hao realized he was now irreversibly bound to me. I told him to head back home, mentioning I'd contact him if anything was needed. Watching the trembling Su Hao walk away, I smirked. It seemed I had successfully intimidated him. This made things easier, since he believed that tap water was a deadly poison. The chances of him betraying me had significantly reduced. Meanwhile, in a hospital room, Uncle Yu had just regained consciousness. Siali Mei was whispering in his ear. However, I observed this entire scene through a surveillance feed. Even at death's door, they're still trying to be smart. I then opened the room door, feigning surprise. Uncle Yu, you're finally awake. I'm so glad you're okay. Otherwise, the guilt would have haunted me for life. Upon hearing my words, Uncle Yu gratefully replied, Zhang Yi, you saved my life once again. From now on, my life belongs to you. I chuckled. Oh, come on. It was thanks to you this time. Siali Mei, standing nearby, chimed in with feigned gratitude. Zhang Yi, thank you so much. I don't know how to repay you. I responded with a smile. What are you saying, Sister Xia? From now on, we're one family. I'll take care of the three of you. Hearing this, Siali Mei's face lit up with joy. Now we can officially stay here without any worries. She handed me the baby she was holding. I'll go back to get some of our stuff. Don't lock me out. And with that, she quickly left, dreaming of the warm days ahead with the fireplace. As soon as she left, I took out my phone and sent a message to Su Hao, prepare for action. While playing with the baby, I thought, it's hard on you, little baby, but it's better this way. Otherwise, someone might turn you into a stew one day. On the other side, Siali Mei, all smiles, returned to her door. But as she opened it, Su Hao suddenly lunged at her. Before she could even utter a word in surprise, Su Hao swiftly stabbed her. In desperation, Siali Mei begged, please spare me, I'll give you whatever you want. But before she could finish her plea, Su Hao continued his onslaught, ensuring she was motionless before he ceased. Afterwards, Su Hao texted me, Brother Zhang, it's done, when can I get some food? Seeing the message, I couldn't help but smile, this problem is finally resolved. Otherwise, she might have tried to create discord between Uncle Yu and me. Turning to Uncle Yu, I said, your family can stay here in peace. Whenever you wish to move out, you're free to do so. Uncle Yu looked troubled upon hearing my words. Brother Zhang Yi, this might not be appropriate. Plus, resources are limited. Saving my life is more than enough. I patted his shoulder. We've already been through life and death together. Just stay here and recover. However, before I could finish, the 
baby in my arms began to cry uncontrollably. Despite my best efforts, I couldn't calm the little one. In desperation, I handed the baby to Shokir. Having no experience with children, Shokir appeared completely lost. Suddenly, a thought struck me. Could it be time for a diaper change? I quickly took out a pack of diapers from my storage space and tossed it to Shokir. I then returned to Uncle Yu's room to inquire about his condition, asking if he felt anything amiss. Uncle Yu shook his head, indicating that apart from feeling weak, he didn't notice any other abnormalities. Suddenly, as if recalling something, Uncle Yu said, Zhang Yi, you should check outside. My wife has been gone for quite a while. I'm worried something might have happened to her. I instructed Zhou Kier to look after Uncle Yu, and I went to my room to arm myself. Taking this opportunity, I planned to deal with some pending matters. I then sent a message to all the homeowners, summoning them to room 1301 on the 13th floor. The meeting was meant to distribute resources and decide on the future management of the community. We had successfully taken control of the entire area, and from now on, our word would be the law. Except for Su Hao, the neighbors who received the message rushed to room 1301. Hearing their discussions inside, I couldn't help but smirk. Want to be the community's manager? Talk to the king of hell about that. Without hesitation, I threw two grenades into the room. The unsuspecting neighbors, mid-conversation, were taken aback at the sight of the grenades. What the hell is this? They had no time to react as a massive explosion tore through the room. Outside, I had already positioned a blast shield to protect myself from the impact. I walked into the room, looking contemplative. Using grenades really makes things easier. A surviving neighbor, filled with rage, shouted, Zhang Yi, we helped you so much. Why are you doing this? I responded with a cold smirk. You might be mistaken. Without me, you would have starved to death long ago. Without another word, I made sure he joined the others in the afterlife. Having exacted my revenge, I felt an immense sense of satisfaction. Except for Su Hao, all the neighbors who had wronged me in my previous life had been dealt with. From now on, no one in this community would ever pose a threat to me. All I needed now was to get to Wang Siming's billion dollar safe house, and then I could live the rest of my days in peace and luxury. With a mournful expression, I approached Uncle Yu, Sister Xia. She's gone. I slammed my fist against the wall. I thought there were only a few traitors in this building, but it turns out they were all traitors. But don't worry, Uncle Yu, I've taken care of them all in revenge for Sister Xia. Upon hearing this, tears streamed down Uncle Yu's face. Those ungrateful bastards deserved it. In his anger, he threw a fierce punch at his bed, creating a deep dent. This display of strength sent shivers down my spine. I hurriedly tried to calm Uncle Yu. It's my fault for being too trusting. If only I had noticed their true intentions earlier. Uncle Yu clenched his fists, completely believing my words. After all, he too had witnessed the ingratitude of these neighbors over time. I let out a sigh. It's all my fault for not managing things properly. But Uncle Yu, don't be too devastated. I promise to find you a young and beautiful wife. Upon hearing my words, Uncle Yu gave an awkward smile. I'd prefer someone mature. Just then, Zhou Kier walked in with the crying baby. This little one can't stop crying. What should we do? I glanced at Zhou Kier. If I'm not mistaken, the baby might be hungry for milk. Zhou Kier punched me lightly in the chest. What are you talking about? How would I have milk to feed the baby? I took the baby from her. It seems we might need to find a stepmother for this little one. Zhou Kier agreed with my idea. After all, neither of us has experience with kids. It would be terrible if something went wrong. A moment later, I headed downstairs to the community with the baby, which alarmed the nearby residents. They whispered among themselves, is Zhang Yi coming to kill us? I pointed my gun to the sky and shouted, bring out Li Jian. Shortly after, Li Jian emerged from building 18 and asked me what I wanted. I smiled at him. You've got some guts. Aren't you afraid I'll shoot you on the spot? To my surprise, despite the post-apocalyptic environment where food is scarce and clothes are inadequate, building 18, under Li Jian's management, had the highest number of survivors. I couldn't help but respect that. I handed the baby over to Li Jian. There are mothers in your building, right? I'm entrusting you with the baby's care. As I said this, I placed some baby food, formula, and diapers in front of Li Jian. Without much ado, Li Jian assured me he would do his best to raise the baby. He then handed the baby over to a mother in building 18 to take care of. I approached Li Jian, inquiring about the exact number of survivors in their building and what they would do if I stopped providing them with food. But Li Jian was full of hope for the future. No matter what, as long as people are alive, there's always hope. Upon hearing this, I pointed to the buildings I had cleared out. The supplies there should last you for a while. However, Li Jian shook his head, indicating that they would not resort to that unless absolutely necessary. In his view, once they start down that path, their ultimate fate would be doom, a conclusion neither he nor anyone in his building wanted to see. Hearing this, I sighed deeply. With everything as it is now, nobody knows if death or tomorrow will come first. Yet, this man manages to hold on to his core values. I couldn't help but admire him greatly. Li Jian took a deep breath. If only I were as capable as you, maybe then I could truly lead everyone out of this apocalypse. So, Zhang Yi, can you help us out a bit more? You were able to provide so much food for the entire community before. With so many people gone now, with your assistance, the remaining ones can surely survive. I interrupted him. Everyone is suffering right now. I'm not Buddha or the Virgin Mary. I might help you now, but can I help you?
you forever, and if I make sure everyone is well fed, who can guarantee I won't be bitten by the hand I fed? In this apocalypse, it's already a blessing to survive. I don't have any grand ambitions of being a savior. I then tossed a few packs of seeds in front of Li Jian. Consider these a parting gift. If you want to thrive, you have to work for it. In this apocalyptic world, we all dwell in darkness. Yet, I see a glimmer of humanity in you. You can lead everyone to cultivate these seeds and farm, or you can eat them now. It's your choice. With that, I turned around and walked away. The residents who picked up the seeds looked puzzled. Can we really grow crops in this frigid weather? At that moment, a professor from the agricultural college urged everyone to quickly secure the seeds. These are our future hope. Seeing this, Li Jian also hastily collected the seeds. He asked the professor, Professor Gu, can we really grow crops in such cold conditions? With a determined look, Professor Gu responded, Humanity has achieved countless impossibilities. Why can't we make it work this time? Hearing this, the other residents didn't hesitate any further, and with renewed hope, they gathered the seeds scattered on the ground. Back in my safe house, I stretched out. Finally, the community matters have come to a close. Next, I need to acquire Wang Siming's multi-billion safe house. I then asked Zhou Kier to prepare dinner. I've been busy all day, and I'm quite hungry. Without hesitation, Zhou Kier began cooking. As I watched her graceful figure, I approached her with a playful suggestion. How about we have a child? Who knows how long this apocalypse will last? Having kids is a way to ensure our legacy. Two hours later, I received a message from Su Hao. He had negotiated with Wang Siming and asked when we would initiate our plan. I smiled in response. No need to rush. Come to my place, and we'll discuss it. Soon after, Su Hao arrived at my safe house, clearly enjoying the warmth of my shelter. I motioned for him to sit down so we could discuss our plans. Su Hao was about to kneel on the floor to report the details of his conversation with Wang Siming when I made a silencing gesture. No need to make it complicated. Just show me the chat history between you two. Upon hearing this, Su Hao broke into a cold sweat, seeing that Su Hao was hesitant to bring out his phone. Zhang Yi's smile vanished instantly. So reluctant. Are you hiding something from me? Su Hao clutched his phone tightly, stuttering, I, I haven't hidden anything from you. Growing impatient, Zhang Yi replied, is it so hard to have a proper conversation? Do I really have to get physical with you? Hastily handing over his phone and pleading, Su Hao said, I did badmouth you to Wang Siming, but it was all to deceive him. I hope you won't take it personally, brother Zhang. Zhang Yi swiftly took the phone and went through their chat history. He discovered that Su Hao had been in contact with Wang Siming for two months. Su Hao initially wanted Wang Siming to eliminate Zhang Yi and then help him seize Zhang Yi's safe house and supplies. Surprisingly, Wang Siming had similar intentions. With a cold laugh, Zhang Yi displayed the chat log to Su Hao. How do you plan to explain this? You played both sides quite masterfully. Caught in the act, Su Hao quickly raised his right hand, swearing, Brother Zhang, you've manipulated me too, right? We're two peas in a pod. Why would I betray you? Zhang Yi remained silent, rubbing his chin in thought. Wang Siming only knew about his snowmobile and base. Unaware of his arsenal, perhaps he could exploit this intelligence gap to set a trap. Throwing the phone onto the table, Zhang Yi looked at Su Hao and said, tell me everything about that shelter, especially the weaponry and defenses. I want every detail. Relieved, Su Hao began, rumor has it that the shelter was built using materials from a spaceship. It's practically impenetrable unless attacked with missiles. Inside, there aren't any weapons, but there's gas used for hypnosis. The entrances are rigged with high-temperature flamethrowers. After hearing Su Hao's description, Zhang Yi formulated a plan in his mind. If he's after my vehicle and supplies, then if he doesn't get those things, even if he captures me, he probably won't kill me. At most, he'll torture me. When the time comes, I'll hide the snowmobile in advance, granting myself an extra layer of protection. Although my life may not be significant to him, I suspect he won't kill me before obtaining my snowmobile and supplies. Is there any other offensive mechanism inside that shelter apart from the two you mentioned? Grinning, Su Hao replied, that's all. We can pretend to be hypnotized by the gas, pass the traps, and then take him out. Once we're there, you can pretend to be captured, and I'll seize the chance to stab him, sending him straight to hell. The corners of Zhang Yi's mouth lifted slightly. Su Hao probably didn't know he had a gas mask. But that's okay. After all, it's always wise to be wary. Zhang Yi laid on the sofa, contemplating how to neutralize both the flames and gas. After all, without the upper hand, he couldn't help but feel a bit uneasy. After much pondering, an idea flashed in his mind, his space ability. Time is frozen within this otherworldly space. If he could utilize it in battle, wouldn't it be a powerful advantage? He had always overlooked this ability. It seems he needs to explore it further. Su Hao, sitting on the ground, eagerly awaited Zhang Yi's response. Zhang Yi finally said, all right, go back for now. I'll contact you in a couple of days. Su Hao clung to Zhang Yi's leg. Brother Zhang, I've been poisoned. I'm afraid I can't wait that long. What are you scared of? Zhang Yi responded, the poison takes seven days to take effect. I'll contact you in two or three days at most. Go home and wait patiently. No sooner had he spoken than Zhang Yi ushered him out the door. Brother Zhang, you must remember. Otherwise, I'll be gone in seven days. After seeing off Su Hao, Zhang Yi looked at his special ability in his hand. Apart from storing supplies and precise shooting, he wondered what other surprise 
amazing capabilities it might have. However, his primary concern was how to utilize this power to neutralize the flame and gas. Once that was sorted, he could easily control Wang Siming. Zhang Yi then left the living room and entered an empty house, starting a fire to test his ability. Stretching out his right hand towards the flame, he activated his storage ability. The flames on the ground slowly converged towards him. Seeing that it worked, he extended both palms, aiming to accelerate the absorption process. In no time, the flames were entirely absorbed into the alternate space. Zhang Yi looked at his hands, delighted. I can't believe it actually worked. He stretched his palms forward, intending to try and release the stored fire. The next moment, with a whooshing sound, the flames Zhang Yi had absorbed were instantly expelled forward. His eyes widened in surprise, and he burst into joyful laughter. So, apart from storage, this alternate space can be used like this. It's like a divine defensive technique. Now, Zhang Yi was as elated as a child who had discovered a new toy. Once he mastered this ability, any future attacks would be rendered useless against him. This power was perfect for someone like him, who prioritizes survival above all else. However, a thought crossed his mind. What would happen if he absorbed a living person into the space? Although he had previously tried it with a live fish, that was merely for food storage purposes. Now, when considering its combat potential, he would need to experiment with a live person. Zhang Yi wanted to test the combat capabilities of his alternate space using a living human subject. People in the surrounding buildings were terrified as they reluctantly offered up a sacrifice, who was clueless about whether he would live or die. Zhang Yi tossed him a stick and ordered him to attack him with it. The man was bewildered. Even if he had the courage, he wouldn't dare to attack Zhang Yi. Seeing the man's disbelief, Zhang Yi said, if you manage to hit me with the stick even once, I'll reward you with a piece of bread. Upon hearing the word bread, the man's eyes lit up. You better keep your word, he said, grabbing the stick and taking a swing at Zhang Yi without hesitation. In a flash, Zhang Yi activated his alternate space. Before the man could realize what had happened, both he and the stick were sucked into the alternate dimension. In an instant, he was frozen in place, as if turned into an ice sculpture, maintaining his attack posture. Curiously, Zhang Yi checked his pulse. Holy crap, his breathing and heartbeat have completely stopped. Did he die? With a wave of his hand, Zhang Yi ejected the man from the alternate space. The man came out panting heavily, his face full of dread as if he had just cheated death. Curious, Zhang Yi asked him, how did it feel? The man, sweating profusely, said, I felt like I entered a blank world. It seemed like I was in there for a century. It was terrifying. Zhang Yi immediately understood. The passage of time in this alternate space is much slower than in the outside world. The longer one stays in it, the greater the chance of a mental breakdown. Therefore, living beings can't stay in the alternate space for too long. Otherwise, they'll either die or be severely impaired. Since he couldn't actively absorb living beings into the space, Zhang Yi wondered what would happen if he tried to disassemble some tissues instead. Zhang Yi immediately grabbed the hand of the sacrifice neighbor. With a swift motion, he sliced off two of the man's fingers, eliciting screams like that of a pig being slaughtered. Zhang Yi didn't care about the man's well-being. He was more intrigued by the discovery that while living beings couldn't stay in the alternate space for long, severed fingers could. What could be the principle behind this? He tossed some gauze to the man. Hurry up and bandage yourself. Once you're done, we'll continue the experiment. This time, you'll throw something at me. After several more experiments using the man as a test subject, Zhang Yi had a better grasp of the functionalities of his alternate space. Until now, he had merely used it as a storage facility, which was a waste. His power could open a channel between this world and the alternate space to deflect incoming attacks and then redirect them back at his enemies. The man was now voraciously enjoying the food Zhang Yi had rewarded him with. As he gorged himself, he excitedly thanked Zhang Yi. This was the first full meal he had since the apocalypse. Zhang Yi smiled at him and said, eat slowly, brother. The man's spirits lifted at this. Brother Zhang, if you need anything, just say the word, as long as you feed me. Before he could finish his sentence, Zhang Yi made a quick move. The man collapsed on the ground with a thud, blood pooling around him. Zhang Yi smiled and said, I don't need anything else from you. You should be on your way now, Zhang Yi said. The man on the ground closed his eyes with a smile. He was finally free, no longer having to endure hunger and suffering in this post-apocalyptic world. Without looking back, Zhang Yi walked away. Time was running out for his appointment with Su Hao, and in the next few days, he needed to find some people for combat simulations. Three days later, Su Hao was kneeling in front of Zhang Yi, begging him to join the attack on Wang Siming's sanctuary. Ever since Zhang Yi had forcibly injected him with poison, he felt his body deteriorating day by day. If they didn't act soon, he feared he would die before they could seize Wang Siming's stronghold. Zhang Yi looked at Su Hao coldly, finding the situation amusing. He hadn't expected that a lie he casually made up would have such a devastating effect on Su Hao. The power of psychological suggestion had certainly tormented him. Shrugging, Zhang Yi said, I can inject you with an antidote to temporarily relieve your symptoms. If there's no cure in five days, you will die regardless. I can't wait another minute, Su Hao said urgently, rolling up his sleeves. If I don't get the shot, I feel like I'll die tomorrow. As Zhang Yi administered the injection, he also continued his psychological
psychological manipulation. We can only succeed. Failure will not bode well for either of us. Filled with newfound confidence, Su Hao said, Brother Zhang, rest assured, I'm willing to go through fire and water for you. Su Hao took out his phone. I'll call Wang Siming right now to arrange a meeting time. Everything will go according to your plan, Brother Zhang. Zhang Yi smirked slightly, thinking to himself, you better not pull any tricks. After seeing off Su Hao, Zhang Yi started packing his bags. Shou Kier, standing nearby, watched in a daze. The issues in their community had already been mostly resolved, and she couldn't understand why they needed to go out again, especially with so much luggage. It seemed like they were going on a long trip. Zhang Yi had left enough food for her and Uncle Yu to last half a month, but didn't share details of his plan. Shou Kier didn't dare to ask more questions. Just as Zhang Yi was about to leave, Zhou Kier grew anxious. Was he planning to abandon her? She hugged him tightly, refusing to let go. Chuckling, Zhang Yi pinched her chin. Looks like the silly girl is overthinking things. If it weren't for more pressing matters, he would have stayed and spent more time with Zhou Kier. Suppressing his emotions, he kissed her and told her to behave while he was away. Their lives would undergo significant changes once he accomplished his current mission. With that, he walked out the door. Su Hao had been waiting for some time. Zhang Yi hopped onto his snowmobile and pulled out a rope. Su Hao was puzzled. Brother Zhang, you still don't trust me? My loyalty to you is as clear as daylight. Zhang Yi smiled. Don't misunderstand. I'm tying you up for Wang Siming to see. If he sees us getting along too well, he'd never believe that you've tricked me into this. Su Hao could only helplessly stretch out his hands as Zhang Yi tied him up. They rode away on the snowmobile, the northern wind painfully whipping Su Hao's face. He wanted to ask Zhang Yi for a helmet, but Zhang Yi chuckled. No helmet for you. Just endure it for a bit. Besides, the more miserable you look, the more believable it will be. Sniffling heavily, Su Hao followed Zhang Yi to Yinke Mountain Villa. Zhang Yi looked at the luxurious villas inside, facing the river and backed by the mountains. These buildings are a cut above other high-end villas. The terrain makes this place a natural snow haven. The snow accumulation here is much less than other places. When the apocalypse came, I thought the wealth gap would shrink. How naive I was. Money really is great. Su Hao hurriedly chimed in from behind. Brother Zhang, money is like waste paper now. Their current lives can't compare to yours. Zhang Yi smiled. Nice flattery. Come on, lead the way. The two then headed towards the villa complex. Su Hao was a bit puzzled as he followed, wondering why they didn't ride the snowmobile all the way in. Zhang Yi ignored his question and simply said, we're walking, that's it. Stop talking. Zhang Yi and Su Hao arrive at the Lark Manor riding snowmobiles, attracting the attention of neighbors in the community. At this time, a well-dressed, curvy beauty is staring intently at the two through her window. Her food supply ran out three days ago, and the carbon crystals she has for heat can only last a few more hours. To survive, she must find a way to make the two men outside listen to her and get food for her. At this moment, Zhang Yi and Su Hao have arrived in front of Wang Siming's residence. Zhang Yi raises his weapon and points it at Su Hao's head, threatening him to quickly open the door. Su Hao rushes to the security camera without hesitation, yelling, Brother Wang, open the door, it's me. Wang Siming is currently sipping 1982 Lafayette and watching the security monitor, thinking, weren't we supposed to meet tomorrow? Why are they here today? He scans the area, but doesn't see the snowmobile they talked about, suspecting that he might be getting tricked. Wang Siming hesitates whether to open the door. By this time, Zhang Yi is getting impatient, threatening Su Hao with the gun. Damn it, if you dare trick me, believe it or not, I'll shoot you right now. Su Hao sweats profusely, pleading while saying, Brother Zhang, don't shoot. Even if I had the guts, I wouldn't dare trick you. Then Su Hao speaks into the camera to Wang Siming. We've worked hard for so long, we can't fail now. If we miss this village, there won't be another store. Convinced they won't double cross him, Wang Siming decides that if they do, he will activate a mechanism to incinerate them, leaving not even ashes behind. He presses the button to open the villa's main door. Zhang Yi and Su Hao walk into the spacious villa, marveling at everything, exclaiming, damn, rich people really are different. They even have more ways to have fun. Su Hao points to a passage ahead and says, brother Zhang, let's go in. There's another door inside, and once it's open, we can enter the shelter. Zhang Yi lets Su Hao lead the way, following him closely. Wang Siming, watching through the surveillance, sees that Zhang Yi has entered the range of his trap and doesn't hesitate to activate it. Immediately, exhaust ports above the corridor open. Zhang Yi and Su Hao are shocked. Wang Siming is trying to catch them all in one net. A suffocating gas bursts out from the ventilation pipes. Su Hao quickly covers his nose and mouth, but Zhang Yi remains calm, as he already has a countermeasure in mind. Wang Siming activates the tear gas mechanism, and instantly a cloud of smoke engulfs Zhang Yi and Su Hao. The two are going all out in their act to deceive Wang Siming. Zhang Yi shouts, Su Hao, you mongrel, open the door for me now. Su Hao retorts, stop struggling, Zhang Yi, you're a fool. Even if you kill me, you won't survive. Then two gunshots ring out in the smoke. Wang Siming excitedly watches the two figures in the smoke, thinking, these two idiots who came to my door, do they actually think they can beat me? Let's see how I take care of them. Seizing the opportunity, Zhang Yi drew the smoke into his own alternate space. The voices of the two gradually fade in the smoke, and the passage door slowly opens.
demons. Zhang Yi calmly puts away his gas mask, thinking that as soon as Wang Siming walks in, he'll immediately shoot him. Footsteps approach, and Zhang Yi can hardly contain his excitement. Damn it, it's not Wang Siming. Who the hell is this? Su Hao, you idiot. Why are there other people in the shelter? Ignoring that for now, he continues to play dead until the person comes closer and lifts both of them onto his shoulders, heading toward the passage door. Only then does Zhang Yi realize that this person is Lin Gang from the entertainment industry, who is said to have a good relationship with Wang Siming. Lin Gang dumps the two in front of Wang Siming, who looks at the unconscious pair. Lin Gang ties their arms behind their backs, saying, This guy is as stupid as a pig, he's no effort at all, and he even dared to target your shelter. Wang Siming responds nonchalantly, Well, isn't this to be expected? If I can't even handle some pauper, then my billion dollar shelter is a waste. The two begin to discuss how to get Zhang Yi's snowmobile, as they haven't stepped out of the shelter for more than half a month and Wang Siming is starting to feel cooped up. At this point, Zhang Yi, lying on the ground, activates a different space and secretly releases hypnotic gas. As the two are talking excitedly, they start to sway. Wang Siming looks at Lin Gang and says, If you're excited about going out, there's no need to stagger around like that. Lin Gang, in a daze, replies, Brother Wang, I'm not swaying. Why have you multiplied into six people? Then both of them collapse onto the ground. By this time, Zhang Yi has successfully untied the ropes. Looking at the two men on the ground, he thinks, Taking you two down was effortless. He picks up Wang Siming's expensively crafted pure gold handgun and says to himself, The toys rich people play with are really different, but it's all show and no go. Having dealt with Wang Siming and the others, Zhang Yi begins to explore the rooms, thinking, Let's see what the wealthy play with. As soon as he enters a room, he's flabbergasted and thinks, Oh my god, this level of luxury is unimaginable. He continues to walk in and finds another door leading to a room filled with green plants. It's like a whole ecological chain here. He muses, a smug smile on his face. From today on, this place is mine. Zhang Yi starts to inspect the rooms one by one. Each room has a different label. Game room, pet room, entertainment room, you name it. He walks into a water bedroom filled with voluptuous women lying around, but unfortunately, they are all dead. Seems like things are not as peaceful here as I imagined, he thinks. He then proceeds to the basement where a room designated for cats and dogs is set up. Wang Siming even cares for pets in this apocalyptic world. He opens the door and is stunned. I've underestimated this. It turns out these cats and dogs are actually playboy bunnies and cat women. They are lying around, covered in unidentified fluids, and needles scattered all over the floor. One of the bunnies crawls toward him as if he's her savior, begging, Master, we were wrong. Give me a little more. I'll do whatever you want. I'm your bunny. Zhang Yi kicks her away, thinking, this Wang Siming really knows how to play. But I, Zhang Yi, don't need this. He then shoots them all dead. Next, Zhang Yi moves to the control room, thinking that it might be the core of the entire shelter. Unfortunately, he's not a computer engineer. He sees that the basement also has sports facilities and thinks they could be used to test his abilities in the future. As he continues to patrol, he reaches a room where the system prompts, identity verification failed, cannot pass through this area. Guess I'll need Master Wang's help after all, he thinks, before splashing water on the two men to wake them up. Wake up, sweetheart, Zhang Yi says mockingly. At this point, Wang Siming looks at Zhang Yi in disbelief. How did you do this? Zhang Yi smiles slightly. The rich rely on technology, we poor folks rely on mutations. How else would we survive in the apocalypse? He points his weapon at Wang Siming. All right, my lord, now is not the time for chit-chat. Let's get down to business. Zhang Yi leans down. For example, how to let me live comfortably in this villa. That's the only way you'll save your life. Wang Siming, visibly tense, says to Zhang Yi, I'll give you whatever you want. Just let me go. Zhang Yi replies casually, don't worry, I don't have a habit of killing. I just want to find a stable place to live. Your place is so big, one more person won't make a difference. Wang Siming looks at him skeptically. You just want to move in? You don't want to kill me and take over? Zhang Yi chuckles. Killing you is pointless. Besides, I'm not a murderer, and this snow disaster won't last forever. Once things go back to normal, I'd like to be in your good graces. Upon hearing this, Wang Siming perks up, so this bumpkin wants to be friends with me. In their eyes, society will get back to normal sooner or later. If I give these country bumpkins a little help then, rising to the top is only a matter of time. These bumpkins sure know how to plan, but I'm no pushover either. If you want to be friends, hurry up and untie me. My hands are numb. Zhang Yi smiles. Untying you is simple, but you have to hand over control of this shelter's systems to me. Wang Siming hesitates. If I give you control, can you promise not to kill us? Zhang Yi reassures him again. Don't worry, bro. I promise you'll live the high life cooperating with me. With no other options, Wang Siming gives up complete control of the shelter's operating systems. Zhang Yi grandly sweeps his hand over the control panel. From now on, I'm the master here. Wang Siming, who is beside him, says, Yes, yes, you're the master now. Please untie me. My whole body is numb. Zhang Yi ominously stands up. Just hold on a second, my lord. I'll relieve you shortly. He takes out a knife from behind him and slashes it across Wang Siming's neck in a flash. Blood spurts out, and Wang Siming looks at Zhang Yi in disbelief. You promised not to kill me. You broke your word. Zhang Yi looks at him 
mockingly, relax. You might feel a bit dizzy at first, but the pain will be over soon. Wang Siming falls to the ground and stops breathing. Zhang Yi looks at him, sorry, I forgot to mention, I don't keep useless people around. While cleaning the blood off the floor, Zhang Yi ponders how to deal with Su Hao. Killing Wang Siming resolved one issue, but he's still undecided about Su Hao. After all, he did help him seize Wang Siming's residence. At this point, Su Hao groggily wakes up and sees Zhang Yi cleaning the bloodstains. He gets excited, bro Zhang, we did it, didn't we? He gets up and sees Wang Siming's body on the floor, stepping on it while laughing. I never thought this day would come for you, you damn dog. Not killing you myself was too merciful. Zhang Yi points to a backpack on the sofa. Inside is your reward. Upon hearing there's a reward, Su Hao eagerly opens the bag, which is full of food. His eyes light up as he begins to feast. Bro Zhang, you're really like my own brother. From now on, I'll follow you wherever you go. Your word is law. Zhang Yi sighs. This is all that's left in Wang Siming shelter, and there's not much energy left to keep it running either. Su Hao immediately gets anxious. What are you saying? This is all that's left in the shelter? Are you joking? I've been with you through thick and thin to get rid of Wang Siming, and you want to fob me off with this? You want to monopolize everything and kick me out? No way! I was the one who provided you with the intel on the shelter. Zhang Yi chuckles. I have no reason to lie to you. Wang Siming squandered all the resources. Su Hao insists. I don't know if you're lying or not, but you had everyone in the community spinning in circles. If you're planning to kill the donkey after it has done its job, I'll expose your superpowers. Someone will come for you. Zhang Yi's face turns cold. Seems like I've been too lenient with you. He raises his hand and shoots Su Hao. I gave you a chance, and you squandered it. What use are you to me now? Su Hao falls to the ground, still not understanding why this is happening as he dies. Zhang Yi looks at the dead Su Hao. Be a good person in your next life. If you don't have the power, don't make empty threats. He picks up his backpack. I intended to let you live a little longer, but you seem keen on forgetting everything. I can only send you on your way. Sitting in the entertainment area, Zhang Yi fantasizes, it would be great to survive here until the apocalypse is over. It would be even more interesting if I had brought Zhou Kier along. As for Uncle Yu, I have other plans for him. Zhang Yi opens a bottle of red wine and turns on the TV. To his surprise, an image of a foreign woman appears, and he switches through dozens of international channels. Given the storm, how did Wang Siming manage this? After some thought, he understands and finds a hidden door connected to some cables. Inside, he finds an independent server. His eyes light up instantly. Judging by the strength of the signal, the system's transmission speed is global. With this high-end network infrastructure, I can now get accurate information from the outside world. He then sits down to browse through the information. In just one month, only a quarter of the 8.5 billion people in the world are left. Zhang Yi feels extremely grateful for having prepared supplies in advance. At this rate, it would be good if 5% of the population survives in the future. However, he suddenly sees numerous reports on mutated humans. Many countries have reported individuals with mutations, both good and bad. Some can conjure flames and summon bears, while others turn into green giants. Yet, only a few have obtained special abilities. Most have been physically deformed by gamma radiation. After reading all the information, Zhang Yi is convinced that there are others like him hiding their true strength. This means the outside world is incredibly dangerous. He becomes even more committed to staying in the shelter and plans to first go back to the safe house to get Zhou Kier. Zhang Yi steps out and starts his snowmobile. Just then, an enchanting voice rings out, could you please wait a moment? Instantly drawing his gun, Zhang Yi aims at the newcomer. To his surprise, it's the red-hot actress Yang Mi, who has been setting the entertainment world on fire. She is a dream woman for many men and now stands in front of him, pleading to take her away. Looking at Yang Mi, Zhang Yi thinks the snowstorm has made life hard for everyone. If you want me to take you, you need to give me a good reason, he says. Yang Mi, looking soft and tender, replies, take me with you, give me something to eat, and I'll agree to any condition. She then puckers her lips and kisses Zhang Yi on the face. His face turns red, and his heart is won over by Yang Mi. Having one more woman to warm the bed in this apocalypse doesn't seem like a bad idea, he thinks, taking her to his new residence. Yang Mi notices how skilled Zhang Yi is as he enters Wang Siming's place. She pretends to be surprised and asks, isn't this Wang Siming's residence? What's your relationship with him? Zhang Yi doesn't answer her question, but cautiously asks, do you know Wang Siming well? He thinks, if she has any ties with Wang Siming, he will kill her on the spot to avoid future trouble. Yang Mi changes her tone, I don't really know Wang Siming well. You know how it is in our circle. We meet at events and just nod and greet each other. Zhang Yi pours tea, thinking, smart move. I'll let you off the hook for now. He hands the tea to Yang Mi. In any case, this place is mine now. Don't ask questions you shouldn't be asking. Yang Mi gulps down the tea, savoring its warmth. This is the first cup of hot water I've had in days. She then coyly asks Zhang Yi if she can use the bathroom for a hot shower. Zhang Yi naturally doesn't refuse. Yang Mi undresses and leaves her clothes in the living room, enjoying the long missed hot shower. Her body instantly relaxes, and she begins to think of ways to make Zhang Yi serve under her. She figures that with her beauty, it won't be hard to win him over, and compared to some greasy, middle-aged men she knows, Zhang Yi is quite the catch. She thinks her good luck hasn't run 
out yet. Even if she has to be with Xiang Yi for a few months, she's willing. After her shower, Yang Mi walks out barefoot. She's made up her mind. She'll do whatever it takes to stay. She's very clear about what's going to happen next and mentally prepares herself, telling herself it's just a transaction. Once the snowstorm is over and everything returns to normal, she'll still be a top-tier celebrity and nobody will know about this. She wraps herself in a towel and walks seductively up to Zhang Yi, coquettishly asking if she can stay. She promises to serve Zhang Yi well if he lets her stay. Seeing that Zhang Yi remains unmoved, she takes his hand and pleads, Don't worry, I won't cause you any trouble. Once the snowstorm is over, I'll leave quietly. Zhang Yi shakes off her hand, realizing that she sees his place as a stepping stone and plans to leave once the snowstorm ends. He takes a sip of red wine and says sarcastically, leaving aside whether the snowstorm will even end, even if the ice age passes, do you think the world will go back to the way it was? Yang Mi suddenly becomes anxious, asserting, of course things can go back to how they were. As she says this, it's as if she's reassuring herself. If the world can't return to its former state, wouldn't all her previous achievements be in vain? Zhang Yi isn't interested in arguing with her. If you think things can go back to normal, then they will. But for now, if you're staying in my house, you'll follow my rules. Zhang Yi pulls Yang Mi close. She whispers, I understand. Zhang Yi doesn't stand on ceremony anymore. Since she came to him, he has no reason to refuse. After the matter is done, Zhang Yi takes out a piece of clothing from a different dimension and throws it to Yang Mi. She stares at him, dumbfounded. What kind of superpower is this? You can summon objects out of thin air? Zhang Yi is about to turn away when Yang Mi grabs his arm. Don't go, big brother Yi. He looks at her amused. What? Not satisfied yet. I have some things to do. I'll deal with you later tonight. Yang Mi blushes and shouts. You misunderstand. I have something important to discuss with you. Zhang Yi feels a bit hungry at this point. Fine. Let's go to the dining area and talk while we eat. Yang Mi obediently sits at the dining table. Zhang Yi instantly summons some food from another dimension and places it on the table. Since we're going to be living together, let's set some ground rules. He says calmly. My home is quite large. Adding one more woman won't make a difference. I have only one requirement. Obey me. You're smart. You should know what I mean. Yang Mi certainly understands what Zhang Yi is getting at. He's clearly setting up some unspoken rules. But she didn't become a top-tier celebrity by being naive. She straightens her back and says slowly, I can agree to your terms, but I also have some principles that I hope you'll respect. Zhang Yi spreads his hands, amused. All right, let's hear it. Yang Mi seriously says, whatever happens between us stays confined to this snowstorm period. If we part ways, you can't disclose what we've done. As a public figure, my reputation would be ruined if people found out. Zhang Yi, casually eating, understands her concerns and agrees readily to her terms. Summoning courage, Yang Mi states her second condition. You can't force me to do things I'm uncomfortable with or make outrageous demands unless I agree. She blushes and awkwardly shifts her feet after saying this. Zhang Yi appears puzzled. You were the one who approached me and now you're acting as if you're the victim here. He's not naive either and pulls her close. Don't act all innocent here, especially when you're an actress. Ever heard of quid pro quo? How did you become a top-tier celebrity with such poor acting skills? Yang Mi falls silent, unable to respond to Zhang Yi's rebuke. He picks her up and places her on the dining table, whispering in her ear, Don't worry, I don't have any weird fetishes, but thanks for the reminder. Yang Mi has seen far more bizarre behavior in her industry. In comparison, Zhang Yi has been quite reasonable. They then spend the night discussing a script in great detail. Early the next morning, Zhang Yi prepares to head out. He suddenly remembers that his friend Uncle Yu is still single and asks Yang Mi, Most of the people living here are rich women and celebrities, right? She nods, Yes, you have to be wealthy or high status to live here. Zhang Yi smiles, I have a friend who's a good person but got cheated by a scheming woman recently. He could use some female companionship to heal his wounded heart. Could you maybe help find someone suitable in your circle? Upon hearing this, Yang Mi looks taken aback. What are you treating me as? She quickly thinks, realizing that the only women left in the wealthy neighborhood are slightly older. Zhang Yi recalls that Uncle Yu has a preference for mature women, so Yang Mi eagerly says, that makes things easy. She promptly contacts the famous Zhou Haime. Zhang Yi brightens up upon hearing the name. Damn, Uncle Yu, you owe me big time. Zhou Haime is a dream woman for many. Yang Mi promises Zhou Haime a feast if she agrees to spend time with Uncle Yu. Zhou Haime considers it. She's been hungry for days and would do anything for food. Without further ado, Zhang Yi produces food from another dimension and Zhou Haime starts eating voraciously. Zhang Yi looks at both women. We're all smart people here. From now on, I'll take care of your food. But if anyone leaks information from here, forget food. You'll owe me your life. Saying this, he leaves to transfer useful items and people, including Zhou Kier and Uncle Yu, to his current location. Meanwhile, in another village called Su Family Town, young people are busy drilling through the ice layer underground. Sled dogs are running hard. Suddenly, with a loud noise, they break through the ice, and small fish jump out. The workers collect the fish, seeming quite proficient. A young man asks, Uncle, do you think people in the city have frozen to death in this cold? The uncle sighs. Those city folks don't even know how to farm. They usually rely on us for food. They're probably starving by now, if not already dead. 
it. Luckily, we rural people have some food reserves and stamina. We can survive, although the cold is daunting. Just then, a rumbling noise is heard in the distance. The uncle becomes alert. In this cold, you rarely see any living person. Is that the sound of a snowmobile? At that moment, Zhang Yi zooms by on a snowmobile. He's surprised to see people in Su family town fishing by breaking the ice. He also notices their sleds. Zhang Yi is amazed at how quickly people have adapted to this icy apocalypse. Had he not seen it, he would have thought Eskimos had moved to Su family town. The villagers spot Zhang Yi's snowmobile, a Rolls Royce equivalent in the snowy environment. Without a word, they urge their sled dogs to chase, entering berserk mode. Zhang Yi suddenly panics and quickly throttles up, speeding away. Meanwhile, on the river, eight dogs are chasing him down, tongues lolling out. Their eyes turn red upon seeing Zhang Yi. If Zhang Yi is caught by this group of people, he's definitely in for some trouble. Suddenly, a fisherman hurls a harpoon towards Zhang Yi, who instantly gets furious. Damn it, if that harpoon hits my arm, it would either cripple or kill me. Zhang Yi swerves sharply, and due to the inertia, Zhou Haime is flung off. The fishermen catch up and confront Zhang Yi. Leave the woman and the snowmobile, then you can go. Zhang Yi coldly looks at them and swiftly pulls out a handgun, aiming it at them. The fishermen suddenly get nervous. Hey man, let's talk. No need for knives and guns. However, seeing the beautiful woman and the snowmobile, they are reluctant to let him go. This is Sioux family town territory. To pass through, you have to pay a toll. Leave the woman or the vehicle. It's your choice. Zhang Yi sneers. What if I don't want to choose either? The fisherman instantly turns serious. Even if you have a gun, it's useless. We have so many people and dogs. How many bullets do you have? Zhang Yi's eyes grow colder. He knows he has to end this quickly. If other fishermen from the village come, escaping would be difficult. Taking a deep breath, he mutters, you forced me into this. Zhang Yi then pulls out another weapon. You brought this upon yourselves. Don't blame me. He raises both guns and fires. Bang, bang, bang. Several people from Su family town fall down. Uncle Su is shocked. This guy is serious. He then commands, and the ferocious dogs swarm towards Zhang Yi. But Zhang Yi is already prepared. He opens his hand, waiting for the perfect moment. With a thought, he activates another dimension, and all eight frenzied dogs are sucked in. Seizing this window of opportunity, Zhang Yi picks up Shou Haime from the ground, starts the snowmobile, and speeds off. Looking back at the villagers who are arriving one after another, Zhang Yi thinks, that was close. I almost got bitten by those mad dogs. Good thing I was smart enough to use the other dimension as a weapon. These dogs will suffocate and die in that space soon enough. This also gives me the chance to measure the time flow difference between the other dimension and the real world. On the other side, the arriving villagers see the dead bodies on the ground and are shocked. We've encountered a tough one. They look around and notice something else amiss. Where are the dogs? Our eight snow dogs are missing. They find it extremely strange because the dogs had been tamed and wouldn't stray without orders. Not only are we down four lives, but eight snow dogs have vanished as well. We're in big trouble. The leading uncle speaks. This person not only had a gun and a snowmobile, but also killed so many people from Su family town. He must be extraordinary. Maybe he even has superpowers like our village's Chun Lei. Let's not act recklessly. Go back and consult with the village head. Returning to Su family town, the village head gathers a group and goes to Chun Lei, who is found sleeping soundly, clutching a 2D anime doll. The village head becomes red-faced upon seeing a room full of 2D dolls and scolds Chun Lei. You're a grown man, culling fake dolls? Aren't you ashamed? Our village girls are far more beautiful than these dolls. Chun Lei stretches lazily. Grandpa, you're way off base. Are the village women even to be called young ladies? Besides, it's my hobby. Why do you care? Now, what do you want? Suda High interjects. This morning, we encountered a young man while fishing. He killed four of us and took our snow dogs. The man was incredibly powerful. He might have superpowers like you. Our village may no longer be safe. Chun Lei thinks. We've just ended fights with nearby villages. And now this? When will we have some peace? Meanwhile, Zhang Yi safely drops Zhou Haime at the base of an apartment complex. Leading the way, Zhang Yi says, The man you will meet is in this building. Come upstairs with me. Zhou Haime agrees, although reluctantly. In this apocalyptic world, having someone to team up with isn't a bad choice. While talking, Zhang Yi has already entered his safe house. At this moment, Zhou Kier is as happy as a child. Zhang Yi, you're finally back safely. Congratulations. She quickly helps Zhang Yi out of his coat. When Zhou Kier notices the woman behind Zhang Yi, she senses some kind of threat. She immediately starts fussing over Zhang Yi. Are you tired? Are you thirsty? Would you like something to eat? Zhang Yi temporarily ignores Zhou Kier and asks Zhou Haime to sit down first. Zhou Kier, with a woman's intuition, feels that something is different about Zhang Yi. I now understand. You prefer mature women, don't you? Zhang Yi smiles faintly. Don't overthink it. This woman is here to take care of Uncle Yu, but you're right about me preferring mature women. Zhou Kier looks stunned. Zhang Yi is more concerned about Uncle Yu's condition. Zhou Kier quickly responds. Uncle Yu has mostly recovered. It's miraculous. Normally, it would take at least three months. I also gave him muscle relaxants as you instructed, but it doesn't seem to suppress his strength. Zhang Yi nods, just as I suspected. Uncle Yu has an enhancing type of mutation. How is his mental state now? After pondering for a moment, Zhou Kier says, he seems 
fine. His mental state appears to be normal. No issues have been discovered. Hearing this, Zhang Yi strokes his chin. I've read online about people experiencing dangerous physical mutations after gaining superpowers. I'm glad Uncle Yu didn't go through that. Zhang Yi then visits Uncle Yu's room and sees that he's fine, which eases his concerns. He also tells Uncle Yu about capturing Wang Siming shelter the day before. Upon hearing this, Uncle Yu remarks, rich people sure know how to have fun. Zhang Yi calmly responds, there are plenty of wealthy people both domestically and internationally, and many of them would have built shelters. In that sense, it's easier for the rich and powerful to survive in this post-apocalyptic world. Uncle Yu lowers his head. Zhang Yi, how can I ever thank you? I wouldn't be alive now if it wasn't for you. Zhang Yi's eyes flicker slightly. No need for formalities. By the way, Uncle Yu, have you noticed any changes in your body these past few days? Uncle Yu lifts his shirt. It's strange. With such severe gunshot wounds, it should take months to heal, but I've recovered in just a few days, and my strength has increased tremendously. Saying this, he lifts a sofa next to him with one hand. Zhang Yi looks at Uncle Yu with delighted astonishment. What incredible strength. Uncle Yu looks at himself puzzled, feeling like some kind of monster. Zhang Yi reassures him cheerfully. Don't worry too much. You've just awakened a powerful ability. It's like a tadpole successfully transforming into a frog. Uncle Yu stares at Zhang Yi, bewildered. Zhang Yi smiles. Don't be surprised. I've also awakened some abilities. Saying this, he takes out some food from another space. Uncle Yu is completely dumbfounded. No wonder you always seem to have endless resources. Uncle Yu became excited all of a sudden. With a strong push of his hand, he overturned the bed. He then heavily fell to the ground. Zhang Yi advises Uncle Yu to get used to his new body before making any moves. Seeing the condition Uncle Yu is in, Zhang Yi is overjoyed. The stronger Uncle Yu becomes, the safer I'll be. Meanwhile, Zhou Kier and the superstar, Zhou Haime, are busy in the living room. Zhang Yi gets back to the point. Uncle Yu, I've found you a wife. Are you interested? Uncle Yu glances at Zhou Haime in the living room and his eyes widen in disbelief. This is every man's dream goddess. Zhou Haime, am I seeing things? Zhou Haime approaches and greets Uncle Yu with a smile. Hello, Mr. Yu. Uncle Yu, elated, nods furiously. His dream goddess is actually speaking to him. Zhang Yi looks at both of them. Given the current exceptional circumstances, let's skip the pleasantries. You two should pair up and live together. I'll leave this house to both of you, while Zhou Kier and I will move out. Uncle Yu becomes anxious. Zhang Yi, this won't do. I've received too much from you already. This house is your safety. I can't take it from you. Zhang Yi reassures Uncle Yu. Don't be formal with me. Uncle Yu, I've found a better place to stay. You can bring your wife over to visit anytime. After settling Uncle Yu, Zhang Yi and Zhou Kier head downstairs to go to their new home. Finally, a wedding gift for you. Saying this, he takes out a snowmobile from another space. Uncle Yu is astonished. This is your vital means of transportation. How can I take this from you? What will you do without the snowmobile? He absolutely refuses to accept it. Zhang Yi says, don't be formal, Uncle Yu. I can manage without the snowmobile. Saying this, he takes out an off-road snow vehicle from another space. Everyone is left speechless. Is this what Zhang Yi means by managing? Meanwhile, in Su family town, there's widespread anxiety. Everyone is waiting for the village's star of hope, Chun Lei, to make a decision. Chun Lei thinks he's the chosen one, destined for greatness. This must be a sign from the heavens to make me stronger. The village head expresses his concern. That guy is too strong. We can't beat him. Chun Lei, you are our village's hope. The whole of Su family town is relying on you. Please don't disappoint us. Chun Lei gets carried away. Don't worry, village head, Uncle Three, I've got this. At this moment, Zhang Yi and Zhou Kier are driving towards their new villa in the off-road vehicle. Zhou Kier curiously asks, what's the new house like? Knowing you, I can't imagine you would just give away a secure house that you put so much effort into, and you even found a beautiful wife for Uncle Yu. Zhang Yi smiles, our new home is huge, many times more comfortable than where we live now. But be prepared, there is one more person in our new home now. Upon hearing this, Zhou Kier gets nervous, is it another woman? Zhang Yi, have you changed your feelings for me? Zhang Yi pats her hand. Don't overthink it. I'm just worried you might be too busy, so I found someone to help share the load with you. Zhou Kier finally relaxes, snuggling close to Zhang Yi. I knew you loved me the most. Zhang Yi smiles at Zhou Kier. Well, what's done is done. It was consensual, so just be obedient and everything will be fine. Zhang Yi revs up the engine, driving forward through increasing snow and wind, even more intense than when the snowstorm first started. Suddenly, a whirlwind strikes the rear of the off-road vehicle. Zhang Yi quickly realizes something is wrong. This snow is too unnatural. Then a loud bang, as a gust of wind hits the vehicle, causing it to veer off track. Gripping the wheel tightly, Zhang Yi floors the gas pedal. Hold on tight, he tells Zhou Kier, extending his left hand. He opens a different space with a whoosh, sucking in the attacking snowstorm. Damn, it's a tornado. Heavenly Sea City hasn't seen a tornado in centuries. This is definitely an attack, not a natural disaster. Zhang Yi immediately calms down. His ability is ultimate defense. As long as he doesn't panic, the opponent won't be able to kill him. He begins to think, realizing that the attack attacker must be nearby. He skillfully turns the vehicle around and once again opens a different space, sucking in the attacking tornado. Meanwhile, Chun Lei in the shadows realizes something is
is wrong. The tornado had hit the vehicle. Why did it suddenly stop? The tornado drains a lot of his energy, and he is not sure how strong the other party is. The more Chun Lei thinks, the more he believes this guy is not easy to deal with. He might have superpowers too. Worst of all, he's already shown his trump card, but knows nothing about the other person. Two villagers by his side sense that something is off. Chun Lei, what's going on? Why didn't your superpower work this time? Chun Lei replies, damn, we've run into a tough one. We need to find another way. Let's retreat for now. At this moment, Zhang Yi in the vehicle is ready for action. He takes a sniper rifle with a high magnification scope out of a different space. You think you can attack me and run? Watch how I take you down. Lifting the sniper rifle, he aims and fires two shots. One of the villagers falls to the ground. Chun Lei and the other villager are instantly dumbfounded. This guy has a sniper rifle, and he could hit from such a long distance. This defies all logic. Zhang Yi raises the sniper rifle again, and Chun Lei hides behind a snow mound in fear. Zhang Yi smiles. Since you're hiding, let me return the gift you just gave me. With that, he raises his left hand and releases the absorbed tornado back out. Chun Lei sees a tornado that looks exactly like his own superpower and is dumbstruck. Damn, this kid has the same superpower as mine. Just as he's about to be swept up by the tornado, Chun Lei musters the last of his strength and releases his superpower again. The two tornadoes collide and cancel each other out. Chun Lei takes this opportunity to escape. Zhang Yi watches the retreating figures and decides to let them go for now. I can't chase them into the villagers' territory, especially with Zhou Care in the car. A small mistake could be disastrous. If you want revenge, come find me. But next time, it will be on my home turf. Zhang Yi doesn't linger. He continues driving towards Lark Manor. Meanwhile, he feels that he learned a lot from this battle. The future world is likely to be dominated by people with superpowers. Zhou Care, concerned, asks if those who weren't killed would come back for revenge. Zhang Yi assures her, don't worry, our new refuge is very secure. Even if a superpower like a tornado were to bury it, it won't affect our lives. Elsewhere, Su Dipan and others are helping the injured walk towards Su Family Town. Ever since my superpower awakened, I've been the one doing the beating. This is the first time someone's chased and attacked me. I almost lost my life. At that moment, Yang Mi, dressed in sexy lingerie, is lying on the bed. She's not used to suddenly being kept like a canary, and is wondering how to pass the time when the door clicks open. Zhang Yi walks in and says, Get up, I want to introduce you to a friend. Yang Mi is startled. Is he planning to pass me on to someone else? Zhang Yi laughs at her reaction. In the order of who came first, you should call her sister. Yang Mi looks surprised again. So, is she your girlfriend? She nervously asks. Zhang Yi hands her some clothes. Close enough. Yang Mi starts to think. Me, an international A-list star, sharing a man with another woman? I can't lose to a village girl. She applies beautiful makeup to herself. I may lose in other ways, but not in poise. Watch how I trample you underfoot. Meanwhile, Zhou Kier also meticulously prepares herself. A woman's charm is the best weapon. The competition has just begun. After a long time of meticulous preparation, Yang Mi finally arrives in the living room. However, the moment the two women lock eyes, both are shocked and dismayed. It's you. At this moment, Zhang Yi stands in the middle, puzzled. Do you two know each other? Zhou Kier angrily tells Zhang Yi, this person is my cousin, but the relationship between the two women appears strained. Yang Mi pulls Zhang Yi aside and whispers, Zhang Yi, please, whatever you do, don't let Zhou Kier know about us. Zhang Yi scratches his chin and smiles. Us? What about us? Yang Mi is instantly infuriated. The transaction between us. Zhang Yi finds himself in an increasingly interesting situation as he looks at a furious Zhou Kier and a cautious Yang Mi. As it turns out, both the Zhou and Yang families are renowned for their scholarly traditions, boasting numerous talented individuals. Yang Mi chose the entertainment industry to become famous, willing to be an actress. Zhou Kier looks at Yang Mi disdainfully. If you were truly talented, you would rise through your own works. No one in the family would have such strong reservations. Don't you know why you're famous? People in the upper circles mock our family, because everyone knows you're like a public bus. The shame it brings is nauseating just to hear, let alone see you. Zhang Yi finds Yang Mi's expression behind him somewhat amusing. He waves his hand dismissively. I don't care about your past grievances. There are no more distinguished families or top celebrities here. You are now simply neighbors in adversity. The two women reluctantly shake hands, agreeing to live and let live. Then Zhang Yi takes them to the underground garden, filled with lush vegetables and plants. He tells them, your daily tasks, besides household chores, are to take good care of these plants to secure our logistics. Both nod happily, glad to have something to do to avoid idleness and potential conflict under the same roof. Afterwards, Zhang Yi sends Zhou Kier upstairs to tidy up the bedroom, leaving a grateful Yang Mi behind. She says, thank you for keeping our secret just now. I already owe my cousin so much. If she finds out that I'm competing with her for a boyfriend, she'll be heartbroken. So could we keep our relationship a secret from her going forward? Zhang Yi has other plans in mind. With only three people in such a large shelter, staying hidden would be no easy feat. Zhang Yi quickly agrees to Yang Mi's request. To show her gratitude for keeping their secret, Yang Mi offers to cook for Zhang Yi. He's somewhat taken aback. A big star knows how to cook? Yang Mi heads to the kitchen. Don't assume all celebrities are useless. 
Actually, I find cooking relaxing when I'm bored. However, to her dismay, she finds the kitchen devoid of ingredients. It's the proverbial case of no rice to cook even for a clever woman. Yang Mi searches fruitlessly, finding nothing. Watching Yang Mi pace back and forth, Zhang Yi can't help but admire her figure. He walks up behind her and exhales lightly. Yang Mi stands up nervously and dodges back, glancing worriedly upstairs. Her face turns red as she asks, What are you doing? Didn't we agree not to act like this? What if our relationship gets discovered? Zhang Yi smiles. I can't help it. You're too captivating. He then produces a heap of ingredients from another space and places them on the table. Yang Mi's eyes widen in amazement. Oh my god, how do you have so much stuff? I can't believe my eyes. Food is so abundant even in this apocalyptic winter. It feels a bit too luxurious. Zhang Yi playfully pats Yang Mi's hips. No worries. We'll eat like this from now on. After some cooking, Yang Mi calls Zhang Yi and Zhou Kier to eat. Zhang Yi looks at the spread before him with great satisfaction, while Yang Mi and Zhou Kier each have their own thoughts. Zhou Kier tastes the base and immediately frowns in disdain. Too much salt. How can anyone eat this? Yang Mi eats her rice, her head down, feeling somewhat guilty. After all, under such circumstances, it's not easy to get the seasoning right. Zhang Yi watches all this unfold, smiling internally. He's purposely fueling a rivalry between the two women to ultimately benefit himself. He quickly picks up a dish with his chopsticks and feeds it to Zhou Kier. Kier, this one is less salty. Feeling pleased, Zhou Kier eats it and immediately starts to act lovey-dovey. Food always tastes better when Brother Yi feeds it to me. Yang Mi, sitting off to the side, watches the pair's performance with a heavy heart. That night, Zhou Kier nervously asks Zhang Yi, who's better, Yang Mi or me? She saw what happened in the kitchen earlier that day. Using his player-like acting skills, Zhang Yi reassures her, don't think too much, baby, you're the one I love the most. Upon hearing this, the innocent Zhou Kier immediately hugs Zhang Yi tightly. I knew it, Brother Yi loves Zhou Kier the most. Zhang Yi thinks to himself, you really are naive. Although he appears passionately devoted to Zhou Kier, he's never truly been in love with her. Being with her simply satisfies his basic needs as a man. Love, to him, is just a disease that makes people lose their reason. For the past few days, Zhang Yi has been leisurely practicing shooting at Lark Manor. Suddenly, his phone rings. As he's about to answer, he realizes it's not a voice call, but a regular phone dialing. Considering all electrical grids have been down since the apocalypse, and virtually everyone he knew is gone, he's curious about this unknown number. Even if you're a god, I can't be bothered, he mutters, promptly hanging up and blocking the number. Oddly enough, within two minutes, the same number calls again. This time, Zhang Yi is unnerved. What's going on? I blocked this number. How could it call again? Thinking maybe he didn't block it properly, he blocks it again. Right on cue, the phone rings once more. This time, Zhang Yi is genuinely panicked. What the hell is happening? Is this some sort of haunting? Just as he's freaking out, the call answers itself. The voice on the other end starts questioning Zhang Yi. Why aren't you answering my calls? Although Zhang Yi is panicking internally, he tells himself to stay calm. This person on the other end of the phone is no small fry compared to the riffraff he's encountered before. The voice on the other end begins to recite detailed personal information about Zhang Yi, from his birth date and family address to his current residence at Lark Manor and even his previous workplace. At this point, Zhang Yi can't hold it in any longer. Who are you, and how do you know so much about me? The man on the other end, fat bro, chuckles. Don't worry, just give me the supplies you have, and I won't expose your information. Upon hearing this, Zhang Yi bursts into laughter. Did you take the wrong medication? You think you can blackmail me for supplies based on this information? Go ahead and expose it. I couldn't care less. Fat bro continues. What if people find out you have the supplies that went missing from the South City warehouse? What then? Gritting his teeth, Zhang Yi starts to play dumb. So you say I have them and that makes it true? Who would believe you? Besides, I'm just a small-time supervisor. How could I possibly be connected to the theft at the South City warehouse? Fat bro calmly replies. Don't try to play games with me. I might as well tell you. I'm Lu Fengda from Intelligent Cloud Group. Hearing this name, Zhang Yi freezes. Lu Fengda is a top dog in the domestic information field. The fact that he's caught the attention of someone like Lu Fengda makes it crystal clear that hacking his phone would be child's play for him. Suddenly, a thought strikes Zhang Yi. If this guy can hack into his phone so easily, what about the computer systems at home? Has he hacked into them as well? But then he reassures himself that the probability is low. Like him, Lu Fengda is also trapped in Lark Manor, which would limit him to basic operations like hacking a phone. If he had indeed compromised the computer systems at home, he wouldn't need to call and threaten Zhang Yi over the phone. Thinking quickly, Zhang Yi decides to play it cool with Lu Fengda. Lu Fengda then boldly states, since you can support two women, you should have no problem supporting me as well. As long as you provide me with the supplies I need to live, I will keep your secret safe. Additionally, I can help you maintain your cybersecurity to protect against other hackers. Smiling, Zhang Yi responds, Mr. Lu, you must be joking. I did work as a warehouse supervisor for a while, but a minor supervisor like me doesn't have much authority. Lu Fengda immediately fires back, Zhang Yi, don't try to outsmart me. I've been around long enough and seen enough to know that you must have those stolen supplies from the warehouse. I can gather 
a lot of information about you through your phone. Fuming internally, Zhang Yi thinks, this damn old man, I must find a way to take him down. Realizing he can't hide the truth anymore, he admits, I do have some supplies, but not many. As you know, my living space is limited. I've already packed and sold the excess supplies. Lu Fengda doesn't care about the amount, he just wants his needs met. If Zhang Yi doesn't agree, he threatens to leak the information and have people with special abilities target him, the consequences of which are obvious. Rubbing his forehead, Zhang Yi realizes he's up against a tough adversary this time. Regardless, he's made up his mind to deal with Lu Fengda once and for all. Verbally agreeing, he says, I can provide you with some supplies, but you have to keep the secret. Upon hearing this, Lu Fengda happily replies, Don't worry, I'm not foolish. Only you and I need to know about this. Right now, I need things like food, liquor, cotton socks, and underwear. Have them sent to Villa 302 in Lark Manor. And don't try any tricks. If I'm not pleased, I'll leak the information and you'll be in big trouble. After hanging up, Zhang Yi already has a plan in mind. This Lu Fengda must die. He walks into the living room where Zhou Kier is sitting on the couch. Taking a big gulp of water, he says, Zhou Kier, I have something to discuss with you. As Zhou Kier leans in, Zhang Yi explains that their location has been discovered. He briefly fills her in on Lu Fengda's actions, mentioning how Lu Fengda knows that he has a large amount of supplies and is therefore trying to blackmail him. After hearing everything, Zhou Kier also feels that the situation is complicated. She thinks for a moment and says, I have indeed come across such people. They may not be as cunning as one might think, but they're certainly highly intelligent. Their moral standards, however, are quite low. Otherwise, they couldn't be real businessmen. Zhang Yi is a bit at a loss for what to do. He really wants to kill this guy. However, he was worried that this bastard might have a backup plan, making him hesitant to act. The idea of being continuously blackmailed if he let him live was something Zhang Yi couldn't bear. Zhou Kier nods. If this information leaks, it will definitely pose a threat to you. This makes things tricky. She recalls cases she has heard of where corrupt officials had internet moguls killed to eliminate evidence, only for the evidence to be released online the next day. Zhang Yi has heard similar stories. These desperados always have a contingency plan. They set up a trigger to automatically leak insider information if something happens to them. That's why their opponents hesitate to make a move. Shou Kier, concerned, throws herself onto Zhang Yi, saying, Oh well, if we can't think of a good solution right now, let's not think about it. Let me help you relax. But Zhang Yi is in no mood to think about anything else. As long as this issue is unresolved, he will be uneasy. The longer the issue drags on, the more disadvantageous it becomes for them. Just then, Yang Mi walks in. Zhang Yi thinks it's the perfect time for everyone to sit down and discuss a strategy. After listening to the whole story, Yang Mi frowns. This is indeed a headache. This is what we call creating rumors is easy, but debunking them is hard. We in the entertainment industry utterly despise such behavior. Suddenly, Zhang Yi becomes excited. You just mentioned rumors, right? Yang Mi looks puzzled. Yes, isn't spreading information about you similar to the unethical media spreading rumors about celebrities? Sitting aside, Zhou Kier dismissively says, at times like this, even if it's a rumor, people will most likely choose to believe Lu Fengda. Zhang Yi, supporting his chin with both hands, thinks quickly, although Lu Fengda holds information on me, it's not conclusive evidence, but if this information gets out, it will certainly cause me a lot of trouble, since I can't stop him from releasing the information, why not muddy the waters? Let's treat this situation as if it's a rumor. Zhou Kier and Yang Mi look curiously at Zhang Yi and ask in unison, what are you planning to do? Zhang Yi gives a mysterious smile and turns to make preparations. He heads to the control room and calls Lu Fengda. Is your stuff ready? Zhang Yi asks impatiently. What's the rush? Do you really think I have a lot of supplies? If you didn't have something on me, I'd really want to kill you. On the other end of the phone, Lu Fengda bursts into laughter. You want to kill me? You're too green for that. If something happens to me, your secret will automatically be sent to every person's phone in Heavenly Sea City. You better weigh the consequences. At this moment, Zhang Yi's brain works at top speed, and he comes up with an idea. Fine, you win. Wait there, I'll bring the stuff over. He hangs up the phone, a faint smile appearing at the corner of his mouth. He turns on his computer and posts multiple threads on the few remaining forums in Heavenly Sea City. The mystery of the Walmart warehouse theft. Did Walmart steal from itself? Was the stock moved back to the country? Where did Walmart's billions of dollars of supplies go? According to eyewitnesses, armed forces appeared that night, highly confidential escort, police are mum on the issue, and various other sensational news. The best way to bury the truth is to bury it among lies. The end result is that nobody can tell what's real and what's not. In this way, even if Lu Fengda tells the actual truth, naturally, no one will believe him. Up to this point, Zhang Yi has employed every means he could think of. Whether it will be successful or not now depends on luck. But one thing is clear, Lu Fengda must die. Following Lu Fengda's instructions, Zhang Yi places the prepared supplies at Lu Fengda's residence. After completing these tasks, he slowly leaves the villa and takes cover behind a pine tree. He aims his sniper rifle at the backpack left at the front door. As soon as Lu Fengda comes out to take the backpack, he plans to shoot him dead. Having set everything up, he sends a text message to Lu Fengda. The stuff is at your door. Then he intently watches the entrance, 
silently waiting in the shadows for Lu Fengda to appear. However, time passes and there is no movement at Lu Fengda's front door. Zhang Yi senses that something is off. Did the old man not get his message? He reaches for his phone, intending to make a call, but then he hesitates. If he calls or texts again now, it would suggest that he knows Lu Fengda hasn't picked up the package. Doing so would surely make Lu Fengda suspicious that he is nearby. Zhang Yi takes a slow breath. I'll wait a little longer. This old fox wanted supplies from me despite the risks. He will come out. Zhang Yi maintains his position, never taking his eye off the bag, silently waiting for the fish to take the bait. Time ticks away. About 15 minutes later, the door to Villa 302 is slowly pushed open. The barrel of a shotgun appears first, scanning the area for threats. Only then does a small old man cautiously step out. At that moment, Lu Fengda is jubilant, thinking he has finally gotten some supplies, and that his elaborate planning hasn't been in vain. Just as he's about to pick up the backpack, there's a loud gunshot. Lu Fengda's head is pierced by a bullet, creating a large hole. He crashes against the door and falls to the ground, dead. Seeing his shot hit the mark, Zhang Yi quickly rushes over to Villa 302. Upon reaching Lu Fengda, he takes aim at his forehead and fires several more rounds. You old bastard, thinking you can play me? Looks like you've grown tired of living. After that, Zhang Yi locates Lu Fengda's computer. Just as he's about to smash it with his gun, he hesitates. The old man's computer must contain a wealth of valuable information. With a sudden idea, he decides to store the computer in an alternate dimension, effectively preventing any information from being sent out. Sighing deeply, Zhang Yi thinks, well, this is the best I can do. The man's dead. The stuff is taken. If he had family, I'd send them to join him in the afterlife. All this nonsense over with. I'd rather go home and spend time with my two ladies and continue to be an internet troll, creating false narratives online. Even if information leaks out, Zhang Yi is prepared to brazenly lie and frame others. His goal is to clear his own name by any means necessary. Stretching, he leaves the control room. Shou Kira asks with concern, Zhang Yi, what have you been busy with? I've made you a soup with oxtail and kidney. Come have some. Once seated, both women surround him. Are you tired? Let me give you a back massage. They offer. Zhang Yi feels truly content having two women at home, and he hopes this happy life will continue indefinitely. Casually, Zhang Yi asks, did either of you receive any messages on your phones? Shou Kira looks puzzled. A bunch of jumbled messages. I don't know what they mean. Yang Mi also finds the messages to be somewhat confusing and perhaps intentionally misleading. Taking a sip of his fish soup, Zhang Yi says, they are meant to be misleading. I released those as smoke screens. Starting now, hundreds of similar messages will be sent out to every forum in Heavenly Sea City and to everyone's phones. Since he couldn't stop Lu Fengda from sending out the real information, his alternative is to cover up the truth with lies. Shou Kir looks doubtful, but wouldn't this raise more suspicion? Yang Mi also thinks that suddenly blowing up this topic would easily draw people's attention. Eating a fishball, Zhang Yi looks calm as he speaks. Drawing attention is inevitable. Whether or not I send these messages, Lu Fengda certainly would have. So, by sending out these smoke screens, I can at least muddle the waters. Most people don't have the time or interest to discern truth from fiction. They just want to spectate. Yang Mi's eyes light up. She looks at Zhang Yi and says, you're really clever. She gazes at him with admiration, thinking that her judgment was spot on. Zhang Yi is not just handsome, but also intelligent. At that moment, Zhou Kir looks at her phone and questions, but these messages were sent from your computer. What if someone tracks the IP address? Won't they find out it's you? She's right. Zhang Yi may have used multiple accounts to send the messages, but his IP address is unique. Certain organizations could easily trace it back to him, making him the prime suspect. Without betraying any emotion, Zhang Yi continues to sip his soup. Zhou Kir senses the shift in atmosphere and hastily apologizes, thinking she might be overly concerned. She speculates that not many people left in Heavenly Sea City would have the expertise to counter-investigate. Your approach is still very effective, she quickly adds. Picking up some food with his chopsticks, Zhang Yi says cryptically, unless this snow disaster plunges the world back into the Stone Age, covering my tracks entirely is nearly impossible. I never harbored illusions about fooling everyone completely, but by doing this, I can at least prevent most people from suspecting me directly. Encountering organizations with strong cyber capabilities is inevitable in the future, and I've been prepared for that. If it weren't for Lu Fengda's appearance, this day would have come much later. However, this shelter cost a whopping billion dollars and is reputedly nuclear strike resistant. Given that Zhang Yi had an endless supply of food, he would only truly worry if confronted by top-tier armed forces. I smiled and glanced at Yang Mi. Don't be too complacent. Even though I'm confident about the shelter's defenses, you won't be idle in the coming days. Upon hearing this, Yang Mi's face turned a shade of red. Her shy eyes seemed to suggest, there are others present, it's not appropriate to do such things in front of them. I was utterly speechless, wondering what she was constantly thinking about. But Yang Mi appeared innocent, given that she had been here for quite some time and hadn't really been much of a help in other aspects. I gave her a playful smack on the head and said, I'm talking about setting traps. Holding her head with a look of innocence, Yang Mi replied, we don't know how to set traps. I stood up and spread my hands. While this house boasts top-notch defenses, it seems 
seems to lack countermeasures against human threats. We are seriously lacking in defensive weapons inside the shelter. So, I plan to lay a tight network of traps around the shelter. If anyone dares to target me, they'll find it a one-way trip. Upon hearing this, both women seemed instantly invigorated. Ever since Yang Mi's arrival, Zhou Kira had also gradually become more security conscious. They both eagerly nodded, competing to assure, whatever it takes to keep you safe, we will do it. Yang Mi added, I might not understand traps, but I'll do my best. Nodding, I stood and took out a large pile of hardware from another dimension. Most of it consisted of items like steel nails and animal traps. I picked up a steel nail and began to instruct them on its usage, reminding them to remember the trap's layout. Shou Kier and Yang Mi realized the looming danger and were particularly attentive during the lessons. Just scattering nails on snow won't pierce anyone, I explained, taking out a wooden board and nailing a spike onto it. This way, it'll puncture the foot, but steel nails are too smooth, they can be easily pulled out. I then produced a box of screws. If combined with these screw threads, they'll be much harder to remove, inflicting more damage. We need at least a thousand of these spike traps around the villa, leaving no blind spots. I then picked up an animal trap. This is a great tool. In this weather, if someone gets caught in this, they're basically done for. I meticulously explained to them the techniques for trap placement and how to maximize the trap's damage potential. Following my instructions, the two women immediately got to work, creating a large number of spike board traps with gusto. I wasn't idle either. Standing by the window, I familiarized myself with the terrain surrounding us. There were two essential routes leading to our villa. At this moment, I remembered the two landmines I had retrieved from the weapon storage, which could be placed perfectly at those two access points. Such detonation landmines could instantly obliterate tanks and armored vehicles. If a person were to trigger them, they'd be reduced to mere fragments. I mentally noted that I would have to be careful and avoid these mines when stepping out in the future. However, these spike board traps are only effective once and can easily be figured out by an adversary. I needed a way to ensure that anyone who approaches doesn't leave unscathed. In no time, a large number of spike boards were ready. Yang Mi's hands had blisters from the effort, yet she didn't complain. She understood that her skills couldn't compare to Shou Kier, a doctor, and wanted to prove her worth. I appreciated her efforts. We then moved outdoors, and I personally demonstrated how to set up the traps, emphasizing the importance of placement depth. With the ongoing snowfall, the traps couldn't be buried too deep or too shallow. I then proceeded to the vital pathways, dug a deep pit with a military shovel, and carefully placed a landmine inside, covering it with accumulated snow. With a little more snowfall, traces of the trap would be virtually invisible. The next step was to counter any devices or tools the enemy might use to clear out the traps. I had a brilliant idea, connecting the pins of hand grenades with steel wires and placing them beneath the snow. If anyone tripped over it, the steel wire would trigger a chain explosion. This should serve as a significant deterrent. Unless the enemy is a well-trained military unit, approaching the shelter would be a daunting task. Even if someone managed to get past the exterior traps, there's still a defense corridor of over 10 meters inside the shelter, boosting my confidence. Additionally, I had an ace up my sleeve, my spatial ability. After returning indoors, Yang Mi seemed eager and excitedly asked, Zhang Yi, when will the enemies come? I looked at her, dumbfounded. I'd prefer if these traps were just for show, but from your enthusiasm, it seems like you're actually hoping for someone to attack us, but I don't think they'll come anytime soon. After all, it's been so long since the apocalypse started. If anyone can stay in their own territory and survive, that's already an achievement. Unless it's absolutely necessary, no one would attack others. After all, anyone who's managed to survive until now isn't simple. Yang Mi rested her chin in her hand, seeming conflicted. She wasn't sure if she hoped for someone to fall into her traps or if she wanted the safety of their current environment to continue. Lost in thought, she was suddenly jolted out of her reverie by a shrill noise. Turning, she saw Zhang Yi using a welder to install bolts on a door in the corridor. Curious, she approached him. What are you doing? Aren't these thick metal doors secure enough? The recent incident with Lu Fengda had made Zhang Yi more cautious. As he worked, he explained, all the facilities in this villa are controlled by computers. If someone hacks our system, they can easily open these doors. So, to be completely safe, I'm adding these bolts. Finishing his work, Zhang Yi stated seriously, even if someone breaches the corridor, they won't get through these doors quickly. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Yang Mi looked at the meticulous Zhang Yi with admiration. Even if his methods seemed a bit over the top, she believed that he would undoubtedly outlive most. Zhang Yi, now reassured by their fortified setup, had only one lingering concern, cybersecurity. He muttered, if only we had a cyber expert with us, we'd be entirely secure. Upon hearing this, a sorrowful expression crossed Yang Mi's face. Yang Xinxin was pretty skilled in that area. It's a shame. Before Yang Mi could finish, Zhou Kier interrupted, 
You know Yang Xingqin? Is she still alive? Yang Xingqin had always been frail, her legs paralyzed due to childhood polio. However, her mind was brilliant, especially when it came to computers. By 16, she had swept international computer awards, and was considered a top hacker. As Zhang Yi listened to Zhou Ke's account, he couldn't help but feel wistful. If they could find Yang Xingqin, everything would fall into place. Yang Mi shook her head. I lost contact with Yang Xingqin a long time ago, especially after the snow disaster. I fear the worst. Teasingly, Zhang Yi remarked, maybe she just didn't want to deal with you. After all, apart from being pretty, you don't offer much. In the eyes of geniuses like her, who would seek your help in a crisis? Yang Mi, bewildered, playfully punched Zhang Yi in the chest, exclaiming, Zhang Yi, you're terrible. Zhang Yi felt a tinge of regret. If this Yang Xingqin were still alive and could join their group, or more precisely, his harem group, it would be an excellent choice. Given the good looks of the two sisters, the younger sibling would likely be just as beautiful. Now, all that was left to do was wait. After dealing with Lu Funga, he predictably set up a program in advance. He sent a text message to everyone in Heavenly Sea City. My smoke bomb successfully drowned out this message. Not even a ripple was stirred. Moreover, the content of Lu Funga's text message merely revealed my identity and address, as well as the possibility of possessing stolen goods from the Walmart warehouse, and in huge quantities. Huge quantities doesn't mean all of it. Such ambiguous expression lacks a clear quantitative standard. After all, how could he know about spatial abilities? And I've sent hundreds of fabricated messages. It's very hard for ordinary people to discern which is true. If someone does manage to find me, they won't be just any ragtag group, or they might have top computer experts. I continue practicing with my bow and arrow. After nearly half a month of relentless training, I seem to have expanded my spatial ability, developing some unique powers. This ability can attach to weapons and projectiles, enhancing their power and accuracy. With the aid of this ability, I can hit a target 400 meters away with a single arrow. Then, I had an idea. What if I apply this ability to close combat weapons, or even to my body? The results were surprisingly good. With the ability enveloping my body, the air resistance I faced greatly reduced. My speed increased manifold. With greater speed, my dodging ability also improved, making escapes much quicker. I've grown to like the abilities I possess. Though they seem simple, they have infinite developmental potential. I can even feel that I've only scratched the surface of an iceberg. I can't imagine how powerful it would be if fully developed. Suddenly, my stomach growled. I quickly took out two chocolate bars and stuffed them into my mouth. It seems this ability does consume a lot. After all, power comes from cells. To maintain strength, I must replenish with food. That means, the strength of a mutant depends on the amount of food they have. No matter how powerful the opponent's abilities, without food, they can't use them. Thinking of the inexhaustible supplies in my own space, in that case, am I not invincible? At least, I can wear them down with unlimited supplies. Meanwhile, in an underground shelter, Chen Xinyan, the leader of the West Mountain Organization, is worried about the base's energy problems. Just then, the Secretary Garou enters with a stack of documents, slowly saying, the information we received earlier has been investigated. All messages come from Heron's River District, Lark Manor, mostly from Villa 101 and Lark Manor. However, one message is special. It came from the mobile phone of Lu Funga, chairman of the Intelligent Cloud Group. His home is in Lark Manor, Villa 302. Chen Xinyan takes the report and ponders for a moment. Give me a detailed report on Zhang Yi mentioned in the report. I want to know what a mere warehouse manager can stir up. Secretary Garou meticulously reports Zhang Yi's information to Chen Xinyan. Upon learning that he's just a small warehouse manager, Chen Xinyan's expression immediately becomes uninterested. Just a petty thief. Most likely, he's been embezzling using his position. He's probably hoarded a lot of stolen goods until now. Even if this matter is somewhat related to him, the goods in his possession can't be that much. This guy definitely isn't the mastermind behind the warehouse theft case. Garou immediately started flattering. The leader is absolutely right. How could such a small fry have such capabilities? Chen Xinyan smiled slightly, showing a look of seeing through everything. This must be a foreign conspiracy. They must have received intelligence in advance, and thus withdrew the materials beforehand. Later, unable to justify themselves, they staged these self-directed dramas. Garo continued to butter up. The leader's judgment is indeed brilliant. How could these little tricks ever deceive the leader's legal eye? So, should I look into this Zhang Yi? Chen Xinyan pondered for a moment. We haven't searched the Heron's River District area yet. Send a few people to take a look. Maybe we'll find clues about that batch of materials. After his last battle with me, his abilities were questioned by the villagers. Chun Lei himself was deeply affected. He thought he was the chosen one in the script, possessing top-level abilities, then opening a harem and reaching the pinnacle of life. But he never imagined he would be so vulnerable. The sensitive Chun Lei became increasingly decadent, rewarding himself five or six times a day, and whining about the world with his phone in hand. One day, browsing his phone out of boredom, the sudden influx of fake messages he received days ago seemed unusual to him. He vaguely felt this might be related to the mysterious person who scared him that day. As an otaku, Chun Lei had some tricks up his sleeve regarding computers. He quickly spotted something fishy in the messages.
messages. The IP information source caught his attention. Zhang Yi, warehouse manager, Walmart South warehouse theft case. This was the biggest news just before the apocalypse. Chun Lei always thought it was a self-directed farce, but now it seems it wasn't unfounded. Did he really empty the Walmart warehouse all by himself? Chun Lei suddenly became excited. The imaginations of Otaku are naturally wild, and being a mutant himself, everything became understandable. This man named Zhang Yi might have awakened a spatial domain ability, like a vacuum cleaner with infinite capacity, capable of taking in a large amount of objects. The ice and snow he controlled disappeared in front of him that day, but later the ice and snow were released again. It wasn't as simple as a rebound attack. It was like my attack was taken into another space, then released in the opposite direction. At this moment, Chun Lei had a realization. He must be a spatial mutant. The stolen goods from the Walmart warehouse must be in his alternate space. No wonder he owned a luxurious snowmobile rarely seen in the South. Thinking of this, Chun Lei felt a huge blow. He actually possesses spatial abilities. How enviable compared to his. My abilities are several levels inferior. Is he the real protagonist? Am I just a weak antagonist? Will I become his experience bag? Chun Lei's mood took a great hit. After all, compared to such rare abilities, his ice and snow powers seemed too effeminate, and his abilities were completely countered by Zhang Yi's. It seems he really was just a small fry, destined to become Zhang Yi's experience bag. Chun Lei also realized the gap between his strength and Zhang Yi's. At that moment, an idea came to him. Since he couldn't defeat Zhang Yi, he decided to join him. That way, he could still be a secondary character. Thinking this, Chun Lei sprang up from his bed. I need to warn the villagers first. Don't provoke him. After all, there are too many fearless fools in the village. Chun Lei jogged all the way to the village chief Su Dongshan's house. Breathlessly, he shouted urgently, Third Grandpa, there's trouble. I have something very important to report to you. In the past, the village chief hardly bothered with a waste like Chun Lei. But now, since he awakened his ice and snow abilities, becoming the strongest fighter in the village, the chief had to give him some respect. Chun Lei immediately shared all the information he had with the chief. We are no match for Zhang Yi. Lark Manor is too close to us. I suggest telling the villagers to stay away from there and better not to fish around that area either. However, the village chief seemed indifferent to these warnings, more intrigued by one piece of news. He looked at Chun Lei with wise eyes. Are you saying the notorious Walmart warehouse theft case before the apocalypse was done by that guy and all those billions worth of goods are in his hands? Chun Lei nodded repeatedly. It's very likely. He might have awakened a spatial ability and sneakily put all the goods into his alternate space. Hearing this, Su Dongsheng's eyes lit up. Muttering to himself, he said, if we could seize those goods, our Su family town would never have to worry about food again. Chun Lei was shocked. We really shouldn't be eyeing his goods. But Su Dongsheng looked disdainful. You're too cowardly. Our village has thousands of people. Are we really afraid of one young boy? Chun Lei was speechless for a moment. The chief continued thoughtfully, you coward, afraid of death. When I was young, fighting with neighboring villages over water and land, didn't we always end up bloodied? Now, in these do or die times, for our Su family town, even if it costs a few lives, so what? Chun Lei was extremely frustrated. His good intentions had backfired. Meanwhile, in Lark Manor, I was tasting the newly opened 1982 law fight with two sisters. If not for the dangers outside, life in this villa was like a paradise. Even Yang Mi, who had always fantasized about leaving after the apocalypse, was gradually immersed in this bliss, unable to extricate herself. Just then, a scream from outside shattered the tranquility. I suddenly stood up, wondering if someone was attacking us. I immediately sensed something was off and headed towards the balcony on the second floor. Taking out my infrared binoculars, I scanned the villa's surroundings. I saw a large group of shadows converging on the villa. Their identities were clear to me. They must be the villagers from the Sioux clan across the river. Considering the incident happened just two days ago, only such rash people would rush over without investigation. I retrieved a sniper rifle from my alternate space. Since they were so eager to court death, I was ready to oblige. They came in such numbers, clearly with ill intent. Anyone disturbing my peaceful life deserved death. However, these ordinary people were not much of a threat. The only concern was their mutant villager. If he also came, I would seize the opportunity to eliminate him as well. I searched the crowd for that mutant, letting the rest test the power of my traps. Meanwhile, the Sioux family town's advance team had reached the edge of the traps. Looking at the brightly lit villa not far away, it felt like a dream. After the frozen apocalypse, they had survived on stored food and fishing. How could they imagine that, just across the river, in the affluent area, someone was living such a lavish life? One villager, lost in thought, walked forward. Suddenly, with a scream, intense pain shot up from his foot. The group quickly looked and found he had stepped on a board, its dense, sharp nails piercing through his foot. In such freezing temperatures, such a wound could be fatal. The team leader urgently ordered him to be carried away, alerting others to beware of traps. The village chief, commanding from the rear, heard the news and immediately issued orders. It seemed the other party had prepared in advance, but this couldn't stump Su Dongshan. He instructed, use branches and sticks to probe ahead, and advance slowly. I watched all this from afar, a 
amused at their cleverness. The show was just getting started. Indeed, they managed to clear quite a few nail traps, and soon they were slowly closing in. Seeing the village chief cleverly counter the first wave of traps, the villagers got encouraged, gradually letting their guard down. Just at that moment, someone felt a resistance near their foot, as if they had tripped over a rope. The next second, a fireball shot into the sky. A huge explosion echoed through the heavens, instantly blowing a dozen people away. The villagers retreated in fear, but some hadn't walked far when they suddenly felt intense pain in their chests and faces. Lifting their clothes, they found they had avoided the explosion, but not the flying shrapnel. The injured villagers panicked, falling to the ground, rolling around and screaming. The team became chaotic. Suddenly, another loud bang. Someone carelessly triggered a grenade trap. The villagers were terrified, frantically scrambling back. But the snowy ground still harbored many nail traps. In the darkness, everyone was in disarray, losing their sense of direction. The scene was filled with whales, and was extremely bloody. After the first attack, the villagers suffered heavy casualties. Continuous nail traps and explosions turned the scene into a horrific spectacle. Some villagers began to retreat. They had never been so embarrassed in previous battles. Only then did the villagers realize the seriousness of the situation. They had to call Chun Lei. After all, Chun Lei, who could manipulate ice and snow, was like a human cheat code in these icy conditions. The villagers surrounded the village chief. Chief, quickly asked Chun Lei to help. We can't afford more casualties. Su Dongxing's expression turned grim. He thought about how Chun Lei had warned him in the afternoon not to mess with Zhang Yi, and how he had scolded Chun Lei for being cowardly. But now, the first wave of attack had left the villagers bewildered. Meanwhile, I was quietly observing all this with a sniper rifle in hand, wondering why the ice and snow mutant hadn't made a move yet. There were so many people, I couldn't tell which one was the mutant. The villagers were less than 200 meters from me. Killing them was as easy as flipping a hand. Even if that mutant hit and attacked from behind, as long as he was within 2,000 meters, I could still snipe him. Su Dongsheng was caught between a rock and a hard place. But asking Chun Lei for help was out of the question. He had already boasted in front of Chun Lei, claiming he could take down Zhang Yi without his help. Moreover, asking a grandson for help was simply unthinkable for him. Su Dongsheng steeled his heart and loudly scolded, Do we really become useless without Chun Lei, who hasn't set traps in the mountains when we were young? These child's play traps are only good for fooling wild boars. His house is just ahead, the monk may run, but the temple can't. Su Dongsheng, for the sake of his own pride, chose to confront directly. He then handed a pair of binoculars to a villager. Take a good look at that villa, see what's inside. Upon seeing the scene inside the villa, the villagers couldn't believe their eyes. The brightly lit house, the dining table laden with steaming delicacies, the luxurious furniture, and two fairy-like women leisurely enjoying their dinner. The villagers were tempted, but still apprehensive. After all, the snowy ground was full of traps. It still seemed better to call Chun Lei. With Chun Lei's abilities, just a slight effort would reveal all the traps in the snow. Hearing this, the village chief became furious. You useless lot, it seems our village, except for Chun Lei, is filled with cowards. If you're scared, then go back home now. Don't embarrass yourselves here. This reverse psychology worked wonders. The villagers' blood boiled, and they declared they were not cowards. They picked up their tools and continued clearing the traps. Seeing this, Su Dongxing nodded in satisfaction. That's more like it. These child's play traps are nothing to be afraid of. With a bit of caution, they're harmless. After the village chief Su Dongxing's provocation, the villagers bravely continued to clear the traps. Learning from the first round of painful lessons, they quickly grew smarter. They started throwing snow blocks ahead from a distance, indeed triggering several traps. This boosted their confidence. Just a hundred meters more, and all the food and beauties inside will be ours. Su Dongxing also showed a smug smile. I told you these childish traps are nothing. Shotgun team, keep up. They must have noticed us. Chun Lei said they have guns. If they dare to shoot, we'll return fire immediately. The chief's cousin, a retired soldier, volunteered eagerly. If that guy shows his face, I'll blow his head off. I watched all this through the scope, thinking they weren't too stupid. This method of clearing traps indeed hadn't crossed my mind. But the real show was yet to come. Primitive methods can only clear primitive traps. The upcoming high-tech ones should give them a real challenge. Yang Mi, having just finished eating, panicked upon seeing this situation. There are so many people. If they break in, we're done for. Show Kier, on the other hand, was calm. I wonder how many will die this time, she said, not forgetting to mock the terrified Yang Mi. Look at you, so cowardly. With that mouse-like courage, how will you ever follow our brother Zhang in the future? The mountains of corpses and rivers of blood that Zhang Yi had created in the community to show care. All this was indeed a minor scene. As they entered my controllable distance, I immediately activated the villa's active noise cancellation feature. The noise outside seemed to vanish in an instant. Then, I decisively pressed the landmine activation button. A massive roar erupted in the middle of the road, and in the instant of the fiery explosion, the entire villa area was as bright as day. Though I couldn't hear the screams outside, I could clearly see the gruesome scene. Body parts and blood were scattered everywhere. Yang Mi instantly broke out in a cold sweat. Accustomed to a life of luxury, she had never seen such a scene.
scene and started vomiting violently against the table. Even Zhou Kier, who had seen much, turned away, unable to bear the sight. Seeing this, I felt no ripples in my heart. After all, they brought this upon themselves. The elders commanding from the rear were stunned, their minds blank. They couldn't accept the reality before them. How could this be? A young man, mentally unhinged by the blast, ran over, grabbing the village chief's leg. Shaking, he stuttered. Third grandpa, everyone's dead, their bodies blown to pieces. Let's run away. The village chief, shocked by the scene, collapsed to the ground. Is he a devil? We just wanted to rob his goods and wife. How could he kill hundreds of our Sioux family? So many dead. As the village chief and instigator, he knew he couldn't escape responsibility. Overwhelmed, he knelt in the snow, babbling incoherently. I watched all this from the shelter, certain the ice and snow mutant hadn't come. With no need to keep these brutes alive, I took out a compound bow. After donning my cold weather gear, I commanded the shelter's AI system, open the front window. As the command was issued, the large bulletproof glass window slowly lifted. I then placed three arrows on the string. After over ten days of training, with the enhancement of my spatial ability, I had mastered shooting three arrows simultaneously. Standing in the darkness, I began a merciless hunt. As the arrows flew, three villagers were instantly pierced through the head. The already powerful modern compound bow, boosted by my ability, was even more lethal. The silent arrows reaped life after life. The panicked crowd didn't realize they were being hunted. Finally, someone noticed and shouted to the villagers, there's a hunter. The villagers with shotguns hurriedly aimed, but in the darkness, they couldn't determine the direction. I, however, could aim precisely with my infrared tactical scope. Seeing someone with a gun, I mercilessly prioritized hunting them. The villagers couldn't understand. The shelter was nearly 200 meters away. The wind and snow so heavy. How could any bow shoot so far and with such power? Watching the villagers fall one by one, Su Dongcheng was filled with regret. Recalling Chun Lei's earlier advice, he realized how arrogant and conceited he had been. He raised his hand and fiercely slapped his own face. I truly deserve to die. I have let down the ancestors of the Su family. I am the sinner of the Su family. I watched this through the scope thinking if that's the case, I might as well grant him his wish. I drew the crossbow, ready to take him down, when suddenly a fierce snowstorm arose, quickly forming a tornado, blocking the path between the villagers and the shelter. I put away my bow and arrow, thinking, why come only now? As the ice and snow mutant finally decided to intervene, I immediately switched to a sniper rifle, knowing that in such a storm, arrows would be ineffective. As a mutant, Chun Lei knew the gap between the villagers and Zhang Yi better than anyone. Hearing the huge explosion, the timid Chun Lei gathered his courage and came over. He exerted all his strength to control the snow, blocking the shelter's line of sight, while shouting to the villagers, run, run, I can't hold this for long. In the shelter, seeing all this, I gave up shooting. With the view obstructed, blindly firing would only waste precious bullets, especially since there were only a few hundred boxes of ammunition left in the alternate space. Maintaining such a large-scale blizzard must be exhausting, and with about a kilometer to escape back across the river, I thought he couldn't hold on for long. Thinking this, I took various protective gear from the alternate space, then fully armed, I went downstairs to bid farewell to my two wives. You two go take a bath. Wait for me to come back. Watching the decisive Zhang Yi, Yang Mi felt a strong sense of security. Meanwhile, Chun Lei was still struggling to maintain the blizzard. Realizing the gunfire had stopped, he secretly rejoiced. As he stopped chasing, thinking his tactic worked, but then a loud roaring sound of an engine echoed. Everyone heard it, the sound of an engine. A snow SUV suddenly burst out from the snow. I engaged the auto drive and took out an assault rifle for indiscriminate firing. The villagers screamed in terror. Chun Lei, he's coming. Use the blizzard to stop him. I looked in the direction of the voice, trying to spot the mutant among the crowd. Soon, a chubby figure caught my attention. While everyone was frantically running, only he occasionally turned back and gestured towards me. It's you. With a loud bang, a bullet whizzed past Chun Lei's ear, barely missing death. Chun Lei, terrified, broke into a cold sweat. Then a makeshift sled rushed over. Chun Lei, get on. I sat in the car, pondering for two seconds, thinking this was the perfect opportunity to eliminate the opposing mutant. I had no reason to let him go. With this in mind, I once again revved up the engine and chased fiercely. If I killed this mutant, the other villagers would be like lambs to the slaughter. But Chun Lei still maintained the blizzard around them, especially around himself, blocking it tightly. However, he only managed to visually impair my attack. The range of the blizzard was limited, unable to protect everyone. With that, I simply turned my gun and started shooting the panicking villagers. Watching the villagers fall one by one, Chun Lei was in immense pain, but he was powerless to save everyone while protecting himself. I watched this scene with a sinister smile, wanting to see whether he valued his own life or his villagers more. In my relentless pursuit, the villagers' dog sled stood no chance against my luxury snow SUV, especially since they were dragging the bodies of their kin, intending to bury them properly, which slowed them down considerably. It was then that Chun Lei realized the problem and urgently told the villagers to discard the bodies. Reluctantly, they did so, as burying the dead properly was of great importance to them, but they had no choice in this dire situation. These bodies slightly hindered my chase, but it wasn't a big problem.
problem. The auto drive's obstacle avoidance was quite strong, only slightly affecting my aim. Still, my shots were almost always on target, and the military sniper rifle, enhanced by my abilities, was extremely powerful, capable of penetrating two heads with a single bullet. Watching the villagers fall, Chum Lei was in agony. Everyone looked at him with pleading and hopeful eyes, now depending solely on him. Chun Lei, think of something. In a moment of near despair, Chun Lei had a flash of inspiration. Opening his right hand, a blue light shone from his eyes and palm. Suddenly, a crack appeared in the ice right in front of my chase path. Under Chun Lei's continued effort, the crack widened, forcing me to temporarily halt my pursuit. Leaning out of the car window, I saw the crack extending for dozens of meters, effectively blocking my path. Standing on the car roof, I felt a chill thinking of the mutant's power to crack such thick ice. Fortunately, his ability didn't seem strong enough to completely break it open, or I might have ended up in the river with my car. I randomly fired a few more shots, killing a few more villagers, until the crowd disappeared from my scope. I sighed deeply, realizing that fighting him on ice in the future was not an option. An ability to control ice and snow in this ice age was unimaginable. I had to use the alternate space to right the snowmobile and return to the shelter. The traps were mostly destroyed and needed reinstalling, but it wasn't a big loss, considering the number of invaders killed. Back home, Yang Mi was still weak from the gruesome scene, having vomited her meal. Shou Kier asked with concern, did you get rid of that mutant? Sitting on the sofa, I replied nonchalantly, that guy was too sneaky. I barely saw his figure. His ability is disgusting for escaping. Killing him is not easy. But mainly, I was too cautious, letting him slip away. At that moment, Yang Mi asked with a weak voice, Zhang Yi, are we being too cruel? After all, killing is a crime. Aren't you afraid of being held accountable after the apocalypse? I touched Yang Mi's cheek noncommittally. What do you think? Meanwhile, having just returned home, I also felt a bit hungry, so I asked Zhou Kier to prepare some food, specifically asking for pit brain, duck gizzards, and large intestines. Hearing these dish names and recalling the bloody scene, Yang Mi began to vomit uncontrollably again. I teased her, are you too weak? Do you want some nutritious food tonight or replenish your body? After the chaotic return to their village, everyone was terrified. They had expected the heroes to return laden with spoils, but the reality was a disheveled retreat, with nearly half the people missing. There were cries of despair everywhere. Some were searching for their husbands, others for their sons. Both survivors and the bereaved were in profound grief. Chun Lei, not knowing what to do, stood in the snowstorm. He had warned them beforehand. Then, his cousin grabbed Chun Lei's arm, urgently shouting, Quick, check on third grandpa. He looks like he can't hold on. He wants to see you. Hearing that Su Dongsheng, his third grandpa, was in bad shape, Chun Lei's heart skipped a beat, and he immediately ran towards his house. At Su Dongsheng's door, it was crowded with people. All the villagers looked at Chun Lei with complex eyes. Although the survivors knew Chun Lei had saved them, others did not share the sentiment. Their faces showed no gratitude, but rather blame and even disgust. A woman, wiping her tears, said bitterly, Of all the Su family, only you are lucky, possessing extraordinary powers. But why didn't you go at the start? You caused my son's death. Some even cursed him openly. You coward. Give me back my husband's life. Chun Lei helplessly replied in a low voice. I didn't ask them to go. They didn't listen to my advice and insisted on going. This response only angered the villagers more, as they pointed fingers at him and accused. You coward. If you had charged in at the beginning, using your special abilities, we wouldn't have been bombed to death. Chun Lei was furious, but he was used to being timid in the village and didn't dare to retort in front of the family elders. Then, a scholarly elder came out of the house and said, let's say a few words less. This isn't Chun Lei's fault. Come in. The elder is calling for you. At this moment, Su Dongsheng was lying on the bed, barely clinging to life. Seeing Chun Lei arrive, he spoke with a face full of guilt. It's all my fault. If I had listened to your advice, so many of our Su family members wouldn't have died. I've really become senile. Now I understand that our village was able to stand firm after the snow disaster entirely because of your abilities. Su Dongsheng had an epiphany, but it was too late. He held Chun Lei's hand and said, I've explained to the others in the family. This operation was entirely my responsibility. Let them blame me, this old man. I know the villagers are saying things about you, but I hope you won't hold it against them. Our Su family can't afford to fight among ourselves. We can't break the lineage of the Su family. As Su Dongsheng spoke, tears streamed down his face. So, I only ask one thing of you before I go. Protect the Su family well. Chun Lei, tears in his eyes, nodded repeatedly. After I'm gone, I entrust the Su family to you. That's it. I need to rest for a while. You can go out. With that, Su Dongsheng passed away. Chun Lei quickly called the people waiting outside. Seeing Su Dongsheng with his eyes closed, the Su family members immediately burst into tears. Noticing no one paid attention to him, Chun Lei quietly left the house. After receiving his third grandpa's last request, Chun Lei walked back with a strange feeling in his heart. He knew that if Zhang Yi really came to kill them, he had no choice but to flee. He thought he was the chosen one, only to find out he was just cannon fodder. Just as he dejectedly reached his home, he saw a young woman waiting at his doorstep. Seeing Chun Lei, the girl quickly approached him. Are you brother Chun Lei? Chun Lei's face turned red, and he stammered, Yes, that's me. Who are you? The girl's eyes were filled 
filled with gratitude. I'm Su Lily. I came to thank you for saving my father. He told me that you risked your life to save him today. Chun Lei, not knowing what to do, scratched the back of his head. It's nothing. It's what I should do. It was then that Chun Lei realized he was not a sinner, but a hero of the village. Su Lily said shyly, looking down, my father is still injured and couldn't come himself, so he asked me to thank you in person. But we didn't have anything to bring as a gift, so I came empty-handed. Chun Lei waved his hands shyly. Don't be so formal. We are all part of the Su family. I'll definitely help if I can. After a few moments of small talk, Su Lily turned and disappeared into the snow. At that moment, Chun Lei was still unable to calm down, his heart racing uncontrollably. He felt that he had deeply fallen in love with Su Lily, even thinking of names for their future children. This otaku, who had sworn never to fall for a three-dimensional woman, had so easily betrayed his own belief. Chun Lei, with a determined look, clenched his fists, resolving to protect the Su family villagers and provide a stable environment for Su Lily and their future child. Back home, Chun Lei had to think of a strategy. Two encounters with Zhang Yi had made him acutely aware of Zhang Yi's terrifying nature. However, he had promised third grandpa to protect the village. And now, with love in his life, he couldn't let that demon ruin his happiness. But he feared Zhang Yi might come in a fit of rage to annihilate the village. How should he handle this? A direct confrontation would surely result in his instant defeat. After much thought, he concluded that there was only one way to resolve this situation definitively negotiation. Excited by this idea, although risky, he was ready to risk it all for the Su family and his beloved Su Lily. He hurriedly started searching for Zhang Yi's contact information on his computer, fantasizing that Su Lily must like him as he had saved her father's life. According to TV drama plots, she must have a secret crush on him. The next morning, I cautiously stepped out, fixing the damage traps, thinking the Su family was unlikely to dare another attack. Still, I prepared for a potential second wave of enemies. Ordinary people posed almost no threat to my shelter, but I had to be wary of awakened mutants. Thinking about the ice and snow mutant, I still harbored a bit of admiration for him, as his style was somewhat similar to mine, both very cautious about our lives. However, since I couldn't use him for my own purposes, I had to eliminate him beforehand. Shou Kier has been wholeheartedly devoted to me for a long time, and Yang Mi, after the Su family town battle, lost her hope for the apocalypse's end. She used to believe the snow disaster was temporary, and the world would return to its former state, where she would be a dazzling star again. However, witnessing the brutal deaths of over a hundred people shook her belief. She chose to rely on me, not superficially, but genuinely wanting to be close. Just then, a phone call suddenly came in, startling me. Instantly, I thought of Lu Fengda and how my biggest secret had been exposed. Who could be contacting me now? But this time, I was much more composed as I answered the phone. Before I could speak, an excited voice came through. Hello, Zhang Yi. This is Chun Lei from Su Family Town. Do you have a moment? I have something to discuss with you. Hearing it was someone from Su Family Town, I instantly became alert. After yesterday's attack, I had no good feelings towards their village and was planning when to annihilate them. Chun Lei continued, I was wondering if we could reconcile and avoid troubling each other in the future. Hearing this, I laughed. I never troubled you. It was always you who provoked me. What? Now you realize you can't beat me and want to make peace. You're quite optimistic. On the other end of the phone, Chun Lei immediately became nervous. He was already very fearful in his heart. After two encounters, he had come to view the other party as a powerful and deadly figure. He then spoke in a trembling and submissive voice. I called you this time to apologize. All this is our village's fault. Could you please spare our simple villagers, considering we haven't caused you any harm and have suffered heavy losses ourselves? You can set any conditions, and as long as we can meet them, we will. I found the other party's overly respectful tone strange and wondered why they sent such a weakling for negotiations. It sounded like a rookie just entering society. I then asked loudly, first weigh yourself, do you even have the right to represent Su Family Town? Chun Lei then revealed his identity. Actually, I am the mutant who has clashed with you twice. Hearing this, I immediately became serious. So it's you? Yes, it's me. Do you think I'm qualified now? I thought, if it's him, he indeed has the right to negotiate, being the only person I'm wary of. My tone instantly became more amicable. You just said that as long as I agree to reconcile, you can fulfill any of my requests, right? Chun Lei, sensing a chance, responded with a silly smile. As long as our village can do it, we will try our best to satisfy you. After this battle, Chun Lei was almost certain that I must be holding a large amount of supplies from the Walmart warehouse. He figured the village's offerings wouldn't interest me. I also sensed that this chubby guy was not stupid. His ice and snow abilities were a powerful weapon in this frozen apocalypse. If I could recruit him, he would be very useful. I then said seriously, I only want one thing from you, that's you, Chun Lei. Startled, Chun Lei yelped in fear, I'm straight, don't be like this. I was speechless, while Zhou Kier and Yang Mi laughed nearby. Don't misunderstand, I just find your ice and snow abilities unique. If you're sincere about making peace, come to my shelter in person, I added with emphasis. Otherwise, if I'm in a bad mood one day, I might just wipe out your village. You should know that your abilities are completely ineffective against me. Destroying your village would be as easy as flipping my hand. Chun Lei, 
away, terrified, stood up from his chair, his whole body trembling. Don't be hasty. Wiping out our village wouldn't benefit you, right? Moreover, our village and your villa area are interdependent. If there's an external enemy in the future, we can help each other. I disdainfully replied, don't talk to me about enemies. Aren't you my biggest enemy right now? If you can win, you rob me of my supplies and wife. If you can't, you come seeking peace. Your calculations are so loud, I can hear them from my house. If you want to make peace, show your sincerity. What do you mean by calling me? Are you just informing me? If you're serious about making peace, come to my shelter at 2.30 p.m. Only you, Chun Lei, need to come. From the conversation, I got a grasp of this chubby guy's character, probably a timid, weak, and cowardly otaku, clearly not a shrewd and strong person, so I directly forced him to make a choice. Whether you come or not is up to you. If you don't, I'll find time to come over and wipe out your village. Hearing this, Chun Lei was immediately terrified, losing all rhythm in the negotiation. The horror in his heart was magnified, and the scene of yesterday's massacre resurfaced in his mind. He blurted out tremblingly, Okay, okay, I'll go. After saying this, I hung up the phone directly, not giving Chun Lei a chance to back out. Chun Lei was stunned and collapsed to the ground, his legs giving way. This is it. Going there is almost certain death. My pure love. My life of cheats. Is it all going to end here? After hanging up, I also became serious, starting to plan the afternoon meeting. This guy's abilities indeed had limitless potential and could be a huge threat, but if he could become my subordinate, that would be a good choice. I decided to test him in the afternoon. After all, his abilities posed no threat to me. I would decide then whether to kill him or not. After my rest, I went to the balcony, fully armed, waiting for this chubby guy with my sniper rifle. Soon, a figure appeared in my scope, the portly figure I recognized from last night's tactical sight. My aim was already locked on his head. The moment he entered my shooting range, I could blow his brains out, but before he had walked a few steps, the chubby guy slipped and fell, making me burst into laughter. Is this the powerful ice and snow mutant? The one with limitless potential? But I couldn't let my guard down and continued to watch him. Just as he got up, he fell again. It seemed he was really scared stiff. Seeing he posed no threat, I relaxed and prepared to meet this interesting mutant downstairs. Chun Lei then called. Your house is surrounded by traps. I dare not come. No need for you to come, I said. And before the words had even faded, I appeared right in front of Chun Lei. Upon seeing me, Chun Lei's legs went weak. Are you Zhang Yi? He hadn't expected the fearsome killer he imagined to look like a scholarly person. Gathering his courage, Chun Lei said, I've complied with your request and came alone. That should show enough sincerity, right? Let's not fight anymore. This was a meaningless battle to begin with. Hearing this, I laughed. You initiated the attack and now you're seeking peace. And you say it's meaningless. Do you really mean that? Chun Lei awkwardly touched the back of his head and said with a silly smile, Indeed, it's our village's fault. So, what conditions do you want for making peace? I want to know, what can you offer to earn my forgiveness? Chun Lei sheepishly replied, Except for the lives of our Su family members, you can ask for anything. I thought to myself that I lacked nothing in terms of supplies, and there was nothing in their village that I wanted, but I still needed to assert my authority. Hand over the initiator of this attack. That person must die. Otherwise, there's no deal. To my surprise, Chun Lei became excited. The initiator of the attack was our village chief, and he's already been scared to death by you. Are you satisfied now? I was somewhat speechless. I killed over a hundred people yesterday. Weren't any of them your relatives? Don't you want to avenge them? Chun Lei then spoke with a tinge of sadness. My parents died soon after the snow disaster. My dad had a heart condition and fell ill on the first day of the snowstorm. There were no ambulances due to the heavy snow, and he died at home. My mom passed away in bed a week later. And the others, they are not my direct relatives. They generally look down on me. In their eyes, I'm just a useless person who plays games at home all day. So, I don't really have feelings for other Sioux family members. That's why I don't hold a grudge against you for killing hundreds of Sioux family people. On the contrary, I kind of admire you. The way you chased us in your car last night was really cool. Having heard this, I decided to give this chubby guy a chance. I can agree to make peace, but I'm not interested in your village. Those villagers pose no threat to me. However, you, the chubby guy, are somewhat interesting. For your sake, I can spare your village. Chun Lei immediately became incredibly excited, rushing over to hug me, as being acknowledged by someone as powerful as me was a huge honor for him. I repeatedly waved my hands to stop him. Don't get excited. I have conditions. From now on, you have to follow my orders and comply with any of my requests. Hearing this condition, Chun Lei was terrified. What if you covet my body? I was speechless at his reaction. Seeing Chun Lei hesitating, I pulled out my trump card, directly taking out a limited edition figurine from the alternate space. Here, this is for you. Working for me won't leave you shortchanged. Chun Lei's eyes lit up immediately. Such a rare figurine was almost irresistible to an old otaku like him. I have many more of these. As long as you follow me loyally, you'll have enough limited edition figurines, body pillows, games, and cartridges. Chun Lei, blissfully hugging the figurine, nodded repeatedly, okay, okay, whatever you want. And just like that, I successfully recruited Chun Lei as my subordinate. I also had a natural liking for this chubby guy. Being with a straightforward, heartless fat guy always gave a sense of reliability. But most importantly, I valued his ice and snow abilities. In this ice age apocalypse,
apocalypse. His potential was limitless. Since you're here, help me with something, I said. Chun Lei perked up, thinking, so quickly a task. It feels good to be valued. I then took out a snow SUV from the alternate space. Chun Lei was stunned and, in his surprise, began to flatter earnestly. Time does not exist. Space is king. Brother Zhang's abilities are surely invincible globally. This made me inadvertently think of something. When I was on the brink of death, I returned to a month earlier. Wasn't that time travel? Maybe I had an unexplored time travel ability related to my spatial abilities. After driving for a while, we arrived in front of a large building, originally a major gas station. The shelter consumed several times more energy than a safe house, so I needed to stock up in advance. After confirming the location, I instructed Chun Lei, clear all this snow. Eager to prove himself, Chun Lei used all his strength. With a loud bang, the thick snow cracked open. The snow in front of us started to shake violently, and then huge chunks of ice and snow rose into the air before being tossed to the sides. At first, Chun Lei seemed relaxed, but gradually he started to struggle. I observed Chun Lei from behind. Although he had become my capable subordinate, I still needed to understand his skills, as it's always wise to be cautious of others. Soon after, the deeply buried gas station was cleared out. Chun Lei, gasping for air, collapsed on the ground. I was secretly thrilled inside. With Chun Lei, a top-tier tool person, gathering resources in the future would be much easier. I handed him a piece of chocolate, and seeing the chocolate bar, Chun Lei's eyes lit up. He tore open the wrapper and started munching on it eagerly. Meanwhile, I quickly slid into the freshly cleared snow pit, planning to take all the stored oil into my possession. After the job was done, Chun Lei started flattering me again. Brother Zhang, you are truly amazing. I felt a bit embarrassed hearing this because, after all, the main work was done by this chubby guy. I merely stretched out my hand to put the oil cans into the alternate space. I pulled up Chun Lei and asked, haven't you tried using your abilities to dig up resources before? Of course, I have. But in this extreme cold weather, we can't go far. Our dogs aren't purebred Siberian huskies either, so we can only dig up some resources nearby. But for us, that's already enough. There's no need to risk our lives going further away. I looked at Chun Lei as if he were a treasure. This is truly a top-tier tool person. With you following me, these issues are no problem. You just stick with me, and I'll make sure you live well. I then pulled out a backpack. Here, take these supplies as a reward for today. Chun Lei, holding the heavy backpack, was overjoyed and his eyes welled up with tears. Brother Zhang, just give the word for any task. If I hesitate even for a second, I don't deserve the Su surname. After saying this, I prepared to drive back. On the way, I casually asked Chun Lei about his process of awakening his abilities. To my surprise, as soon as I asked, Chun Lei's face turned red as if it was something unspeakable. He stammered, after my parents passed away. I didn't feel like living either, but I didn't have the courage to commit suicide, so I just lay in bed, ready to starve myself to death. Did you awaken your abilities when you were about to starve to death? Chun Lei's face turned even redder. I was lying there and found the bed quite comfortable. Then I thought, since I'm ending my life anyway, why not enjoy myself one last time? A friend once told me excessive rewards harm the body, but I thought, since I'm not going to live, why care about the harm? So I unrestrainedly indulged myself. How many times? Chun Lei's face almost buried under the car seat. I've forgotten the exact number, maybe around 20-something times. In the end, I almost lost consciousness. However, after losing consciousness, my body mysteriously underwent a strange transformation. I covered my face, unable to look directly at this chubby guy. So, that's how he awakened his ice and snow abilities. Truly bizarre. I dropped Chun Lei off by the river. It's only a few hundred meters away from their village. Chun Lei, puzzled, asked me, Brother Zhang, can you take me across the river? With this weather and my physique, walking back is quite tough. It's just a press of the gas pedal for you. Hearing this, I smiled deeply. My car tends to slip on the river surface, so I won't go over. In my mind, once across the river, it's Chun Lei's home turf. Although he seems to have surrendered to me on the surface, I still need to be extra cautious. His control of the ice last night, trapping my car on the river, made me wary. Chun Lei found the slipping excuse far-fetched. Last night, when Zhang Yi was chasing us in his car with a sniper rifle, he looked pretty cool. But now, as my diehard fan, he thought my concerns were not unreasonable, so he didn't question it further and obediently unbuckled his seatbelt to get out of the car. Before he left, I called out to him, Chun Lei, there's something you need to be careful about. Hearing his name called directly, Chun Lei felt a sense of closeness. I patted his shoulder and spoke earnestly. In this apocalyptic world, danger lurks everywhere. Your Su family town is known in the city for its vegetables and food. I guess it's inevitable that you'll attract attention, so you must be extra vigilant. After thanking me, Chun Lei got out of the car and walked towards the village. My kind reminder to Chun Lei obviously had a deeper purpose. I'm not so kind-hearted to care about the lives and deaths of the Su family. However, my shelter and Su family town are interdependent, so it doesn't hurt to make them more cautious. By instilling this idea in him, any stranger appearing nearby would be treated as a potential enemy by him, adding an extra layer of natural protection to my shelter. Upon returning to the village, Chun Lei, excited, ran to report the good news to the current village chief, expecting praise from Su Dongtang. However, he was met with a harsh scolding instead. This reaction clearly 
quickly doused him in cold water. Chun Lei, puzzled, said, Sixth Grandpa, I did this to protect our village from being attacked. After all, Zhang Yi is so strong, we have no power to resist. Su Dongtang sneered, If you hadn't played the coward yesterday, we wouldn't have suffered such heavy losses. Your third grandpa died because of you. Now you're making decisions on your own to negotiate peace. You've truly lost the face of our Su family ancestors. Chun Lei was momentarily unable to retort, feeling incredibly disheartened. But I promised third grandpa to protect Su family town. We really can't fight against Zhang Yi. There's no choice but to seek peace. To his surprise, Su Dongtang suddenly scolded him harshly, slamming his hand on the table to interrupt Chun Lei. Who is the clan leader? You or me? You think you're smart. From now on, all actions must be reported to me first. You can't make decisions on your own. Chun Lei was reprimanded like a cat that had done something wrong, but he had just thought of himself as a meritorious figure. In the midst of self-doubt, Su Dongtang suddenly came over, patted Chun Lei's shoulder, and said solemnly, Sixth Grandpa knows you have no ill intentions, but you're still too young. Many things lack thorough consideration. This time, it's because of you that Su family suffered heavy losses. If I hadn't spoken up for you in front of the clan, you would have been driven out of the village by now. Staying in the village now is also to atone for your sins. So, you must obediently follow my orders from now on. Su Dongtang emphasized this last part. Chun Lei shuddered, repeatedly assuring that he understood. Su Dongtang then showed a satisfied expression. You can go back now. Remember, never act on your own again. Watching Chun Lei walk away, Su Dongtang adjusted his glasses, thinking to himself, young people are so arrogant and presumptuous. They shouldn't think they can disregard their elders just because they've gained some skills. He then took out his phone and sent messages to various branches of the clan, taking all the credit for negotiating peace with Zhang Yi. The branches, who had been worried about Zhang Yi attacking, were finally relieved. They unanimously praised Su Dongtang's capability, even saying that they should have supported Sixth Grandpa as the clan leader earlier to avoid Third Grandpa's foolish mistakes. They lamented that hundreds had to die to accompany that old man in his errors, praising Sixth Grandpa for his foresight and wisdom. Su Dongtang felt greatly satisfied inside, muttering to himself, this good-for-nothing who hides at home playing games all day thinks he can play games with me, he's too naive. Back at the shelter, to ease their worries, I briefly shared with the two sisters what had happened after I left. Yang Mi clapped her hands in approval after hearing it. This is really great, now we don't have to worry about them attacking anymore. Zhou Kier, however, was used to such events and looked at Yang Mi with disdain. My brother Zhang didn't annihilate them all, which is already the greatest mercy he could show them. There's nothing to be afraid of. But since you, the scaredy cat, think this way, I can understand. Otherwise, you wouldn't have nearly vomited bile yesterday. Yang Mi, frustrated, stamped her foot. That's not true. I just didn't want to see such a bloody scene again. Zhou Kier didn't bother to listen to her explanation, coming over to hug me and praising me enthusiastically. My brother Zhang is so powerful. Those small fries couldn't possibly threaten us. But I have started to worry. Last time we went to the defense camp for weapons, we found that the people there had already evacuated in an orderly manner, taking a lot of heavy weapons with them. These well-trained organizations are the most troublesome. Yang Mi, not to be outdone, pressed herself against me with her most prominent feature. Don't always think of the worst. At least we've solved our current problem, which is worth celebrating. Saying this, Zhou Kier walked over to the bar to get some drinks. If we're celebrating, we must have a few drinks to enjoy it properly. Yang Mi also offered to cook some of her signature dishes, thinking to herself that she was a well-known social butterfly in the entertainment industry and had developed a good tolerance for alcohol. Today I'm going to teach you both a lesson. I said with a laugh, just have a bit for the sake of it. My alcohol tolerance is quite average. Hearing this, the two of them became even more excited. No problem, we'll stop when it's enough. In less than two hours, the two women lay unconscious on the sofa. Watching the two drunken cats who tried to get me drunk, I couldn't help but laugh out loud. I forgot to tell you, before I was a warehouse manager, I used to sell alcoholic beverages, slightly tipsy. I approached them and started getting busy with Yang Mi, who was in my arms. Yang Mi opened her sleepy eyes, surprised to find me on top of her. How can you do this? Sister Zhou Kier is right beside us. I ignored her and continued with what I was doing for two or three minutes before satisfactorily falling asleep. A few days later, Chun Lei suddenly sent me a message, asking me to take him out on a mission, complaining that staying at home was too boring. He also suggested forming a five-person superpower team, using colors to represent each member's name, which could be called the Rainbow Squad. He even thought of the names, you'll be the king of no color, and I'll be the king of blue. I was speechless, but to completely win people's hearts, I reluctantly endured the disgust to chat with this fat guy and extract some useful information. Gradually, I found it increasingly unbearable. This guy probably didn't have a girlfriend and clearly had too much energy. I burst out cursing him directly. You, this fatso, are you just bored out of your mind? But Chun Lei didn't feel offended. Instead, he felt he had gotten even closer to his big brother, sending me an emoji. Awesome, my brother. How did you guess I'm bored all day? Everything is indeed within your expectations. You are my god. Holding my face, I was completely speechless. This kind of otaku is basically on the fringes of society, so when they encounter someone, 
someone who is even slightly nice to them, they are ready to give their all. Even if I spoke harshly to him, he would only think positively about it. Over time, I really couldn't bear to scold this fat otaku anymore, so I turned on the smart reply software. As long as he sent three or five messages, it would automatically reply with a O oh or hm. Even with such perfunctory responses, this fat guy could be as happy as a 300 pound child. During the boring times in the shelter, I always go to the control room to oversee everything, meticulously checking for any security risks. Yang Mi has now managed the ecological botanical garden quite well. It seems that surviving in this shelter indefinitely is not a big problem. However, there's one issue that I can't help but worry about the cybersecurity problem. This supercomputer controls all the programs of the shelter. Without it, the entire shelter would instantly become paralyzed. It's understandable that Lu Fengda could hack into my phone, but even the Otaku Chun Lei could find my number, which shows there are significant vulnerabilities in the shelter's network security. If the network is hacked by top experts, my shelter might collapse without being attacked. Meanwhile, Yang Mi and Zhou Kier seem to have started arguing. Yang Mi, somewhat agitated, says, Zhou Kier, you must help with this. You've been with Zhang Yi for a longer time, and he will definitely listen to you if you ask him. Zhou Kier looks helpless. I know Zhang Yi too well. He is such a cautious person. He wouldn't risk even the slightest danger, especially since we rely on him for our livelihood. If something happens to him, none of us can survive. After a moment of contemplation, Yang Mi asserts, regardless, I have to try. Now, all I have is this body of mine. Zhou Kier looks at her disdainfully, in plain terms, you're planning to seduce him, aren't you? As Zhou Kier stands up in anger, she says, don't think I don't know what you two have been up to behind my back, and now you want me to help you? What? Should we both do it together? To her surprise, Yang Mi weakly nods her head, for my sister, I don't mind. I, who have been eavesdropping at the door, suddenly enter the room and jokingly ask, why aren't you sleeping in the middle of the night? What are you talking about? Yang Mi, trying to act calm, grabs my hand, we are just talking about family matters. I probe further, then tell me about it too. There's no one else here anyway. Is it because you still have living relatives you want to bring over to live together? Zhou Kier shakes her head in panic. No, that's not it. I lost contact with my family after the disaster. I came to Heavenly Sea City alone, so I've been out of touch with my family for a long time. They are most likely no longer alive. At this point, Yang Mi stammers out, it's me. It's my family. My sister has contacted me. She's in danger and asked me to find a way to save her. It turns out her sister contacted her yesterday, saying she was in a very dangerous situation, so she hopes I can find a way to save her. Upon hearing this, I just chuckled. What can you two ladies possibly do to save someone? Don't tell me you're planning to put this on my shoulders, expecting me to risk my life to save someone unrelated? I'm not that altruistic. Knowing that the matter was already out in the open, Yang Mi, dropping all pretenses, clung to me, pleading, she might be my only surviving relative. I can't just watch her die, since she's Yang Mi's sister, she's naturally also related to Zhou Kier. So, Zhou Kier also came over, looking at me with a pleading face. She's our family. If she dies because we didn't save her, we'll feel guilty for the rest of our lives. I looked helplessly at the sisters. You both know what the situation is like outside. My information is no longer a secret. I don't know how many people are eyeing my supplies in this super shelter. I sat up straight. There's no discussion about this. Asking me to take such a high risk for a stranger. Even if you try to seduce me, it won't work. Don't think that living with me for a while will influence my judgment. Seeing my firm refusal, the sisters panicked and began to cry, clinging to my legs. Please, if you agree to save her, we will fulfill any of your requests unconditionally. Show Kira whispered in my ear. Have you ever tried a threesome? Hearing this, my eyes lit up. Are you serious? The sisters looked at me with hopeful eyes, waiting for my nod. I took a deep breath, about to refuse. When Yang Mi continued, my sister Yang Xinxin is physically disabled. It's a miracle she's survived this long. She must be desperate to seek help from me, her useless sister. She's so pitiful. I hesitated, about to speak, then held back. Are you talking about the genius hacker Yang Xinxin you mentioned before? I thought to myself, an 18-year-old, beautiful, genius hacker, isn't that the ideal network engineer I've been looking for? My heart surged with excitement. The biggest headache for me right now is the cybersecurity issue. Most importantly, reliability is key. She's the sister of these two women here, so there's no doubt about her loyalty. Thinking of this, I grasped the hands of the two women, looking at them affectionately. Don't worry, since she's your sister, she's like my sister too. I, Zhang Yi, am not one to fear death or stand by idly. Upon hearing my words, the two sisters were overjoyed. Shou Kier even had a starstruck look on her face. In her view, Zhang Yi had always been a refined egoist. He's helping me now. He must be in love with me, she thought. Yang Mi was also instantly moved to tears. I don't know how to repay your kindness. I looked at them proudly. In your eyes, am I, Zhang Yi, really so heartless? You're all wrong. I'm actually a person who appears cold on the outside, but warm on the inside. I genuinely cherish the people around me. The two women blushed, their perception of me undergoing a huge transformation. Shou Kier fell even deeper, while Yang Mi was instantly smitten, at a loss for words. Sensible as she was, she slowly knelt before me. After a whole night of intense discussion, I agreed to rescue their sister Yang Xinxin. Of course, the most important reason wasn't this seduction tactic.
tactic. After all, my biggest problem right now is cybersecurity. If I could rescue this genius hacker and have her work for me, all the problems would be solved. I then asked the two to discuss the rescue plan with me. Tell me about your sister's situation. Yang Mi spoke seriously. Yan Xinxin is currently trapped in Azure Sky Academy. You might have heard of it. Azure Sky Academy is a top-tier aristocratic school, offering integrated education from kindergarten to university. It usually only nurtures the children of the elite, but also admits a few geniuses. Graduates from there usually become pillars in both political and business circles. Hearing this, I couldn't help but wonder, how did a paraplegic girl survive under such extreme cold conditions? After all, schools are densely populated places and generally don't have much food storage. It's hard to imagine her surviving in such a brutal apocalypse. Yang Mi continued, such high-level aristocratic schools have their special food supply channels, and there's quite a bit of food stored in their warehouses. Yang Xinxin happened to hide in the cafeteria early in the snow disaster, which is why she didn't starve to death. But I still have many doubts. Why did she wait until now to contact you? In a crisis, one would seek help from anyone possible. Why did she think of contacting you, her sister, almost two months after the apocalypse began? As soon as I said this, Yang Mi was also stunned. I don't know why either. Let me call her right now. I was too anxious yesterday. There were many things I didn't get to ask. But after trying to call several times without success, she remembered that she had also tried to contact her before, but couldn't get through, so she didn't hold much hope. At this point, Zhou Kier mocked with a covered mouth. Maybe Yang Xinxin thought you were already dead, so she didn't take you seriously at all. I then asked Yang Mi, how far is Azure Sky Academy from us? Seeing Yang Mi's clueless expression, I took out my phone and opened the map. Nowadays, signals are poor, and satellite positioning is also problematic, so we can only check distances through the map. I found out that Azure Sky Academy is located in West Mountain District, about 23 kilometers in a straight line from the villa area. Being able to call you is already a miracle under the current long-distance communication breakdown, but it's also possible she thought you were dead, so she never thought of contacting you, her useless sister. Come with me to the control room. Nowadays, ordinary mobile phones can't transmit signals through the nebula chain, but the supercomputer in the control room might be able to. After dialing Yang Xinxin's number, a harsh electronic noise followed, indicating that the signal over there was extremely unstable, seemingly under some strong interference. However, after a few seconds, the call successfully connected, and the two sisters immediately became excited. Yang Xinxin, it's Sister Mei. Quickly tell me your situation. Your sister will find a way to rescue you. The voice on the other end was intermittent, and the noise was significant. We only heard her say she was at the school cafeteria, and it seemed she was in a very dangerous situation. I urgently asked, Quick, what kind of danger are you in? Only to hear disjointed phrases coming through, Run, monsters. Following that, amid the chaotic electronic noise, a chilling, terrifying sound emerged, something not human. It was like a roar from some giant monster. The call was suddenly cut off amidst the noise, leaving only a busy tone echoing anxiously. Initially, I thought it was just a simple mission to retrieve someone from a school, but the call revealed a terrifying monster noise. The sound of limbs and bones being torn apart, something I've only heard in zombie movies, was followed by an abrupt end to the call, leaving only a beeping sound echoing in the control room. It seems Azure Sky Academy has monsters. Could animals have mutated too? Seeing my hesitant expression, Yang Mi clung to me again, pleading in a soft, coaxing voice, Brother Zhang Yi, you promised us. You can't go back on your word. To this, I smiled slightly. I said I would save her, and I will. Don't worry. It seems the situation has become somewhat tricky. I must call two mutant allies to help. I'll have Uncle Yu, a meat shield, lead the way. Chun Lei controlling the ice and snow in the middle, while I can lurk in the back to find opportunities for surprise attacks. If things go south, I can be the first to flee. This formation is simply perfect. Thinking this, I quickly called Chun Lei. Chun Lei had been eager to get out and was already impatient to start the mission. Uncle Yu also agreed readily. I thought that the eerie noise might be from a mutated person or some other mutant creature. Although it sounds terrifying, considering that a paraplegic girl managed to cope with it for over a month, we, being three mutants, should not find it too difficult. However, I still need to be more cautious, as the opponent is an unknown mutant. Early the next morning, the sisters had already prepared a full table of delicious food. I didn't indulge myself in gluttony, as eating a mix of things can easily cause diarrhea, and I couldn't drink too much either, as it would affect my mobility. However, I still needed to replenish enough physical energy. My alternate space was also prepared with food for timely replenishment. All my weapons and equipment were fully loaded and ready. After making all the preparations, Chun Lei called me. I'm already by the river. Hurry up and come pick me up. He knew that my house was surrounded by traps and didn't dare to come close. He still has several relatives buried in the snow in front of my house. I told him I'd be right there. After hanging up the phone, I said to the two women, to ensure your safety, you'll have to stay in the basement for a while. Yang Mi, not understanding, asked, why the basement when the house is so secure? Show Kier, instantly understanding, pulled Yang Mi by her clothes. Don't ask too many questions. Just do as you're told, she said, pushing Yang Mi towards the basement. Show Kier knew the man's intentions. After all, the 
The information was provided by her and her sister, and the person being rescued was their sister. He was worried that this might be a trap they had concocted together. This is his usual way of handling things. I locked the two of them in rooms made of alloy, using the highest authority to lock the doors from the outside. No one but me could open the doors. Yang Mi began to understand what this meant. Although a bit uncomfortable, she was still going to save her sister, and she cheered and encouraged me. I also promised them that as long as their sister was still alive when we got there, we would definitely bring her back safely. Leaving the basement, I sighed inwardly. Actually, I didn't want to be so cautious in everything, and I certainly didn't want to be constantly wary of even those closest to me. But in order to live securely in this post-apocalyptic world, one cannot afford the slightest bit of carelessness. The mysterious West Mountain base has finally surfaced. They found out that I possess a massive amount of materials. Consequently, I've been targeted by this powerful underground force. After dealing with Lu Funga, he predictably set up a program in advance. He sent a text message to everyone in Heavenly Sea City. My smoke bomb successfully drowned out this message. Not even a ripple was stirred. Moreover, the content of Lu Funga's text message merely revealed my identity and address, as well as the possibility of possessing stolen goods from the Walmart warehouse, and in huge quantities. Huge quantities doesn't mean all of it. Such ambiguous expression lacks a clear quantitative standard. After all, how could he know about spatial abilities? And I've sent hundreds of fabricated messages. It's very hard for ordinary people to discern which is true. If someone does manage to find me, they won't be just any ragtag group, or they might have top computer experts. I continue practicing with my bow and arrow. After nearly half a month of relentless training, I seem to have expanded my spatial ability, developing some unique powers. This ability can attach to weapons and projectiles, enhancing their power and Accuracy. With the aid of this ability, I can hit a target 400 meters away with a single arrow. Then, I had an idea. What if I apply this ability to close combat weapons, or even to my body? The results were surprisingly good. With the ability enveloping my body, the air resistance I faced greatly reduced. My speed increased manifold. With greater speed, my dodging ability also improved, making escapes much quicker. I've grown to like the abilities I possess. Though they seem simple, they have infinite developmental potential. I can even feel that I've only scratched the surface of an iceberg. I can't imagine how powerful it would be if fully developed. Suddenly, my stomach growled. I quickly took out two chocolate bars and stuffed them into my mouth. It seems this ability does consume a lot. After all, power comes from cells. To maintain strength, I must replenish with food. That means, the strength of a mutant depends on the amount of food they have. No matter how powerful the opponent's abilities, without food, they can't use them. Thinking of the inexhaustible supplies in my own space, in that case, am I not invincible? At least, I can wear them down with unlimited supplies. Meanwhile, in an underground shelter, Chen Xinyan, the leader of the West Mountain Organization, is worried about the base's energy problems. Just then, the Secretary Garou enters with a stack of documents, slowly saying, the information we received earlier has been investigated. All messages come from Heron's River District, Lark Manor, mostly from Villa 101 in Lark Manor. However, one message is special. It came from the mobile phone of Lu Funga, chairman of the Intelligent Cloud Group. His home is in Lark Manor, Villa 302. Chen Xinyan takes the report and ponders for a moment. Give me a detailed report on Zhang Yi mentioned in the report. I want to know what a mere warehouse manager can stir up. Secretary Garou meticulously reports Zhang Yi's information to Chen Xinyan. Upon learning that he's just a small warehouse manager, Chen Xinyan's expression immediately becomes uninterested. Just a petty thief. Most likely, he's been embezzling using his position. He's probably hoarded a lot of stolen goods until now. Even if this matter is somewhat related to him, the goods in his possession can't be that much. This guy definitely isn't the mastermind behind the warehouse theft case. Garou immediately started flashing Flattering. The leader is absolutely right. How could such a small fry have such capabilities? Chen Xinyan smiled slightly, showing a look of seeing through everything. This must be a foreign conspiracy. They must have received intelligence in advance, and thus withdrew the materials beforehand. Later, unable to justify themselves, they staged these self-directed dramas. Garo continued to butter up. The leader's judgment is indeed brilliant. How could these little tricks ever deceive the leader's legal eye? So, should I look into this Shang Yi? Chen Xinyan pondered for a moment. We haven't searched the Heron's River District area yet. Send a few people to take a look. Maybe we'll find clues about that batch of materials. After his last battle with me, his abilities were questioned by the villagers. Chun Lei himself was deeply affected. He thought he was the chosen one in the script, possessing top-level abilities, then opening a harem and reaching the pinnacle of life. But he never imagined he would be so vulnerable. The sensitive Chun Lei became increasingly decadent, rewarding himself five or six times a day, and whining about the world with his phone in hand. One day, browsing his phone out of boredom, the sudden influx of fake messages he received 
received days ago seemed unusual to him. He vaguely felt this might be related to the mysterious person who scared him that day. As an otaku, Chun Lei had some tricks up his sleeve regarding computers. He quickly spotted something fishy in the messages. The IP information source caught his attention. Zhang Yi, warehouse manager, Walmart South warehouse theft case. This was the biggest news just before the apocalypse. Chun Lei always thought it was a self-directed farce, but now it seems it wasn't unfounded. Did he really empty the Walmart warehouse all by himself? Chun Lei suddenly became excited. The imaginations of otaku are naturally wild, and being a mutant himself, everything became understandable. This man named Zhang Yi might have awakened a spatial domain ability, like a vacuum cleaner with infinite capacity, capable of taking in a large amount of objects. The ice and snow he controlled disappeared in front of him that day, but later the ice and snow were released again. It wasn't as simple as a rebound attack. It was like my attack was taken into another space, then released in the opposite direction. At this moment, Chun Lei had a realization. He must be a spatial mutant. The stolen goods from the Walmart warehouse must be in his alternate space. No wonder he owned a luxurious snowmobile rarely seen in the South. Thinking of this, Chun Lei felt a huge blow. He actually possesses spatial abilities. How enviable compared to his. My abilities are several levels inferior. Is he the real protagonist? Am I just a weak antagonist? Will I become his experience bag? Chun Lei's mood took a great hit. After all, compared to such rare abilities, his ice and snow powers seemed too effeminate, and his abilities were completely countered by Zhang Yi's. It seems he really was just a small fry, destined to become Zhang Yi's experience back. Chun Lei also realized the gap between his strength and Zhang Yi's. At that moment, an idea came to him. Since he couldn't defeat Zhang Yi, he decided to join him. That way, he could still be a secondary character. Thinking this, Chun Lei sprang up from his bed. I need to warn the villagers first. Don't provoke him. After all, there are too many fearless fools in the village. Chun Lei jogged all the way to the village chief Su Dongshan's house. Breathlessly, he shouted urgently, Third Grandpa, there's trouble. I have something very important to report to you. In the past, the village chief hardly bothered with a waste like Chun Lei. But now, since he awakened his ice and snow abilities, becoming the strongest fighter in the village, the chief had to give him some respect. Chun Lei immediately shared all the information he had with the chief. We are no match for Zhang Yi. Lark Manor is too close to us. I suggest telling the villagers to stay away from there and better not to fish around that area either. However, the village chief seemed indifferent to these warnings, more intrigued by one piece of news. He looked at Chun Lei with wise eyes. Are you saying the notorious Walmart warehouse theft case before the apocalypse was done by that guy and all those billions worth of goods are in his hands? Chun Lei nodded repeatedly. It's very likely. He might have awakened a spatial ability and sneakily put all the goods into his alternate space. Hearing this, Su Dongsheng's eyes lit up. Muttering to himself, he said, if we could seize those goods, our Su family town would never have to worry about food again. Chun Lei was shocked. We really shouldn't be eyeing his goods. But Su Dongsheng looked disdainful. You're too cowardly. Our village has thousands of people. Are we really afraid of one young boy? Chun Lei was speechless for a moment. The chief continued thoughtfully, you coward, afraid of death. When I was young, fighting with neighboring villages over water and land, didn't we always end up bloodied? Now, in these do or die times, for our Su family town, even if it costs a few lives, so what? Chun Lei was extremely frustrated. His good intentions had backfired. Meanwhile, in Lark Manor, I was tasting the newly opened 1982 La Fight with two sisters. If not for the dangers outside, life in this villa was like a paradise. Even Yang Mi, who had always fantasized about leaving after the apocalypse, was gradually immersed in this bliss, unable to extricate herself. Just then, a scream from outside shattered the tranquility. I suddenly stood up, wondering if someone was attacking us. I immediately sensed something was off and headed towards the balcony on the second floor. Taking out my infrared binoculars, I scanned the villa's surroundings. I saw a large group of shadows converging on the villa. Their identities were clear to me. They must be the villagers from the Sioux clan across the river. Considering the incident happened just two days ago, only such rash people would rush over without investigation. I retrieved a sniper rifle from my alternate space. Since they were so eager to court death, I was ready to oblige. They came in such numbers, clearly with ill intent. Anyone disturbing my peaceful life deserved death. However, these ordinary people were not much of a threat. The only concern was their mutant villager. If he also came, I would seize the opportunity to eliminate him as well. I searched the crowd for that mutant, letting the rest test the power of my traps. Meanwhile, the Sioux family town's advanced team had reached the edge of the traps. Looking at the brightly lit villa not far away, it felt like a dream. After the frozen apocalypse, they had survived on stored food and fishing. How could they imagine that, just across the river, in the affluent area, someone was living such a lavish life? One villager, lost in thought, walked forward. Suddenly, with a scream, intense pain shot up from his foot. The group quickly looked and found he had stepped on a board, its dense, sharp nails piercing through his foot. In such freezing temperatures, such a wound could be fatal. The team leader urgently ordered him to be carried away, alerting others to beware of traps. The village chief, commanding from
from the rear heard the news and immediately issued orders. It seemed the other party had prepared in advance, but this couldn't stump Su Dongshan. He instructed, use branches and sticks to probe ahead and advance slowly. I watched all this from afar, amused at their cleverness. The show was just getting started. Indeed, they managed to clear quite a few nail traps, and soon they were slowly closing in. Seeing the village chief cleverly counter the first wave of traps, the villagers got encouraged, gradually letting their guard down. Just at that moment, someone felt a resistance near their foot, as if they had tripped over a rope. The next second, a fireball shot into the sky. A huge explosion echoed through the heavens, instantly blowing a dozen people away. The villagers retreated in fear, but some hadn't walked far when they suddenly felt intense pain in their chests and faces. Lifting their clothes, they found they had avoided the explosion, but not the flying shrapnel. The injured villagers panicked, falling to the ground, rolling around and screaming. The team became chaotic. Suddenly, another loud bang. Someone carelessly triggered a grenade trap. The villagers were terrified, frantically scrambling back. But the snowy ground still harbored many nail traps. In the darkness, everyone was in disarray, losing their sense of direction. The scene was filled with whales, and was extremely bloody. After the first attack, the villagers suffered heavy casualties. Continuous nail traps and explosions turned the scene into a horrific spectacle. Some villagers began to retreat. They had never been so embarrassed in previous battles. Only then did the villagers realize the seriousness of the situation. They had to call Chun Lei. After all, Chun Lei, who could manipulate ice and snow, was like a human cheat code in these icy conditions. The villagers surrounded the village chief. Chief, quickly asked Chun Lei to help. We can't afford more casualties. Su Dongxian's expression turned grim. He thought about how Chun Lei had warned him in the afternoon not to mess with Zhang Yi, and how he had scolded Chun Lei for being cowardly. But now, the first wave of attack had left the villagers bewildered. Meanwhile, I was quietly observing all this with a sniper rifle in hand, wondering why the ice and snow mutant hadn't made a move yet. There were so many people, I couldn't tell which one was the mutant. The villagers were less than 200 meters from me. Killing them was as easy as flipping a hand. Even if that mutant hit and attacked from behind, as long as he was within 2,000 meters, I could still snipe him. Su Dongsheng was caught between a rock and a hard place, but asking Chun Lei for help was out of the question. He had already boasted in front of Chun Lei, claiming he could take down Zhang Yi without his help. Moreover, asking a grandson for help was simply unthinkable for him. Su Dongsheng steeled his heart and loudly scolded, Do we really become useless without Chun Lei, who hasn't set traps in the mountains when we were young? These child's play traps are only good for fooling wild boars. His house is just ahead, the monk may run, but the temple can't. Su Dongsheng, for the sake of his own pride, chose to confront directly. He then handed a pair of binoculars to a villager. Take a good look at that villa, see what's inside. Upon seeing the scene inside the villa, the villagers couldn't believe their eyes. The brightly lit house, the dining table laden with steaming delicacies, the luxurious furniture, and two fairy-like women leisurely enjoying their dinner. The villagers were tempted, but still apprehensive. After all, the snowy ground was full of traps. It still seemed better to call Chun Lei. With Chun Lei's abilities, just a slight effort would reveal all the traps in the snow. Hearing this, the village chief became furious. You useless lot, it seems our village, except for Chun Lei, is filled with cowards. If you're scared, then go back home now. Don't embarrass yourselves here. This reverse psychology worked wonders. The villagers' blood boiled, and they declared they were not cowards. They picked up their tools and continued clearing the traps. Seeing this, Su Dongxing nodded in satisfaction. That's more like it. These child's play traps are nothing to be afraid of. With a bit of caution, they're harmless. After the village chief Su Dongxing's provocation, the villagers bravely continued to clear the traps. Learning from the first round of painful lessons, they quickly grew smarter. They started throwing snow blocks ahead from a distance, indeed triggering several traps. This boosted their confidence. Just a hundred meters more, and all the food and beauties inside will be ours. Su Dongxing also showed a smug smile. I told you these childish traps are nothing. Shotgun team, keep up. They must have noticed us. Chun Lei said they have guns. If they dare to shoot, we'll return fire immediately. The chief's cousin, a retired soldier, volunteered eagerly. If that guy shows his face, I'll blow his head off. I watched all this through the scope, thinking they weren't too stupid. This method of clearing traps indeed hadn't crossed my mind, but the real show was yet to come. Primitive methods can only clear primitive traps. The upcoming high-tech ones should give them a real challenge. Yang Mi, having just finished eating, panicked upon seeing this situation. There are so many people. If they break in, we're done for. Show Kier, on the other hand, was calm. I wonder how many will die this time, she said, not forgetting to mock the terrified Yang Mi. Look at you, so cowardly. With that mouse-like courage, how will you ever follow our brother Zhang in the future? The mountains of corpses and rivers of blood that Zhang Yi had created in the community to show care. All this was indeed a minor scene. As they entered my controllable distance, I immediately activated the villa's active noise cancellation feature. The noise outside seemed to vanish in an instant. Then, I decisively pressed the landmine activation button. A massive roar erupted in the middle of the road, and in the instant of the fiery explosion, the entire villa area was 
was as bright as day. Though I couldn't hear the screams outside, I could clearly see the gruesome scene. Body parts and blood were scattered everywhere. Yang Mi instantly broke out in a cold sweat. Accustomed to a life of luxury, she had never seen such a scene, and started vomiting violently against the table. Even Zhou Kier, who had seen much, turned away, unable to bear the sight. Seeing this, I felt no ripples in my heart. After all, they brought this upon themselves. The elders commanding from the rear were stunned, their minds blank. They couldn't accept the reality before them. How could this be? A young man, mentally unhinged by the blast, ran over, grabbing the village chief's leg. Shaking, he stuttered. Third grandpa, everyone's dead, their bodies blown to pieces. Let's run away. The village chief, shocked by the scene, collapsed to the ground. Is he a devil? We just wanted to rob his goods and wife. How could he kill hundreds of our Su family? So many dead. As the village chief and instigator, he knew he couldn't escape responsibility. Overwhelmed, he knelt in the snow, babbling incoherently. I watched all this from the shelter, certain the ice and snow mutant hadn't come. With no need to keep these brutes alive, I took out a compound bow. After donning my cold weather gear, I commanded the shelter's AI system, open the front window. As the command was issued, the large bulletproof glass window slowly lifted. I then placed three arrows on the string. After over ten days of training, with the enhancement of my spatial ability, I had mastered shooting three arrows simultaneously. Standing in the darkness, I began a merciless hunt. As the arrows flew, three villagers were instantly pierced through the head. The already powerful modern compound bow, boosted by my ability, was even more lethal. The silent arrows reaped life after life. The panicked crowd didn't realize they were being hunted. Finally, someone noticed and shouted to the villagers, there's a hunter. The villagers with shotguns hurriedly aimed, but in the darkness, they couldn't determine the direction. I, however, could aim precisely with my infrared tactical scope. Seeing someone with a gun, I mercilessly prioritized hunting them. The villagers couldn't understand. The shelter was nearly 200 meters away. The wind and snow so heavy. How could any bow shoot so far and with such power? Watching the villagers fall one by one, Su Dongsheng was filled with regret. Recalling Chun Lei's earlier advice, he realized how arrogant and conceited he had been. He raised his hand and fiercely slapped his own face. I truly deserve to die. I have let down the ancestors of the Su family. I am the sinner of the Su family. I watched this through the scope thinking if that's the case, I might as well grant him his wish. I drew the crossbow, ready to take him down, when suddenly a fierce snowstorm arose, quickly forming a tornado, blocking the path between the villagers and the shelter. I put away my bow and arrow, thinking, why come only now? As the ice and snow mutant finally decided to intervene, I immediately switched to a sniper rifle, knowing that in such a storm, arrows would be ineffective. As a mutant, Chun Lei knew the gap between the villagers and Zhang Yi better than anyone. Hearing the huge explosion, the timid Chun Lei gathered his courage and came over. He exerted all his strength to control the snow, blocking the shelter's line of sight, while shouting to the villagers, run, run, I can't hold this for long. In the shelter, seeing all this, I gave up shooting. With the view obstructed, blindly firing would only waste precious bullets, especially since there were only a few hundred boxes of ammunition left in the alternate space. Maintaining such a large-scale blizzard must be exhausting, and with about a kilometer to escape back across the river, I thought he couldn't hold on for long. Thinking this, I took various protective gear from the alternate space, then fully armed, I went downstairs to bid farewell to my two wives. You two go take a bath. Wait for me to come back. Watching the decisive Zhang Yi, Yang Mi felt a strong sense of security. Meanwhile, Chun Lei was still struggling to maintain the blizzard. Realizing the gunfire had stopped, he secretly rejoiced as he stopped chasing, thinking his tactic worked, but then a loud roaring sound of an engine echoed. Everyone heard it, the sound of an engine. A snow SUV suddenly burst out from the snow. I engaged the auto drive and took out an assault rifle for indiscriminate firing. The villagers screamed in terror. Chun Lei, he's coming. Use the blizzard to stop him. I looked in the direction of the voice, trying to spot the mutant among the crowd. Soon, a chubby figure caught my attention. While everyone was frantically running, only he occasionally turned back and gestured towards me. It's you. With a loud bang, a bullet whizzed past Chun Lei's ear, barely missing death. Chun Lei, terrified, broke into a cold sweat. Then a makeshift sled rushed over. Chun Lei, get on. I sat in the car, pondering for two seconds, thinking this was the perfect opportunity to eliminate the opposing mutant. I had no reason to let him go. With this in mind, I once again revved up the engine and chased fiercely. If I killed this mutant, the other villagers would be like lambs to the slaughter. But Chun Lei still maintained the blizzard around them, especially around himself, blocking it tightly. However, he only managed to visually impair my attack. The range of the blizzard was limited, unable to protect everyone. With that, I simply turned my gun and started shooting the panicking villagers. Watching the villagers fall one by one, Chun Lei was in immense pain, but he was powerless to save everyone while protecting himself. I watched this scene with a sinister smile, wanting to see whether he valued his own life or his villagers more. In my relentless pursuit, the villagers' dog sled stood no chance against my luxury snow SUV, especially since they were dragging the bodies of their kin, intending to bury them properly, which slowed them down considerably. It was then that Chun Lei realized the problem 
man urgently told the villagers to discard the bodies. Reluctantly, they did so, as burying the dead properly was of great importance to them, but they had no choice in this dire situation. These bodies slightly hindered my chase, but it wasn't a big problem. The auto drive's obstacle avoidance was quite strong, only slightly affecting my aim. Still, my shots were almost always on target, and the military sniper rifle, enhanced by my abilities, was extremely powerful, capable of penetrating two heads with a single bullet. Watching the villagers fall, Chun Lei was in agony. Everyone looked at him with pleading and hopeful eyes, now depending solely on him. Chun Lei, think of something. In a moment of near despair, Chun Lei had a flash of inspiration. Opening his right hand, a blue light shone from his eyes and palm. Suddenly, a crack appeared in the ice right in front of my chase path. Under Chun Lei's continued effort, the crack widened, forcing me to temporarily halt my pursuit. Leaning out of the car window, I saw the crack extending for dozens of meters, effectively blocking my path. Standing on the car roof, I felt a chill thinking of the mutant's power to crack such thick ice. Fortunately, his ability didn't seem strong enough to completely break it open, or I might have ended up in the river with my car. I randomly fired a few more shots, killing a few more villagers, until the crowd disappeared from my scope. I sighed deeply, realizing that fighting him on ice in the future was not an option. An ability to control ice and snow in this ice age was unimaginable. I had to use the alternate space to right the snowmobile and return to the shelter. The traps were mostly destroyed and needed reinstalling, but it wasn't a big loss, considering the number of invaders killed. Back home, Yang Mi was still weak from the gruesome scene, having vomited her meal. Sho Kier asked with concern, Did you get rid of that mutant? Sitting on the sofa, I replied nonchalantly, That guy was too sneaky. I barely saw his figure. His ability is disgusting for escaping. Killing him is not easy. But mainly, I was too cautious, letting him slip away. At that moment, Yang Mi asked with a weak voice, Zhang Yi, are we being too cruel? After all, killing is a crime. Aren't you afraid of being held accountable after the apocalypse? I touched Yang Mi's cheek noncommittally. What do you think? Meanwhile, having just returned home, I also felt a bit hungry, so I asked Zhou Kier to prepare some food, specifically asking for pit brain, duck gizzards, and large intestines. Hearing these dish names and recalling the bloody scene, Yang Mi began to vomit uncontrollably again. I teased her. Are you too weak? Do you want some nutritious food tonight or replenish your body? After the chaotic return to their village, everyone was terrified. They had expected the heroes to return laden with spoils, but the reality was a disheveled retreat, with nearly half the people missing. There were cries of despair everywhere. Some were searching for their husbands, others for their sons. Both survivors and the bereaved were in profound grief. Chun Lei, not knowing what to do, stood in the snowstorm. He had warned them beforehand. Then, his cousin grabbed Chun Lei's arm, urgently shouting, Quick, check on third grandpa. He looks like he can't hold on. He wants to see you. Hearing that Su Dongsheng, his third grandpa, was in bad shape, Chun Lei's heart skipped a beat, and he immediately ran towards his house. At Su Dongsheng's door, it was crowded with people. All the villagers looked at Chun Lei with complex eyes. Although the survivors knew Chun Lei had saved them, others did not share the sentiment. Their faces showed no gratitude, but rather blame and even disgust. A woman, wiping her tears, said bitterly, Of all the Su family, only you are lucky, possessing extraordinary powers. But why didn't you go at the start? You caused my son's death. Some even cursed him openly. You coward. Give me back my husband's life. Chun Lei helplessly replied in a low voice. I didn't ask them to go. They didn't listen to my advice and insisted on going. This response only angered the villagers more, as they pointed fingers at him and accused. You coward, if you had charged in at the beginning, using your special abilities, we wouldn't have been bombed to death. Chun Lei was furious, but he was used to being timid in the village and didn't dare to retort in front of the family elders. Then, a scholarly elder came out of the house and said, let's say a few words less. This isn't Chun Lei's fault. Come in, the elder is calling for you. At this moment, Su Dongsheng was lying on the bed, barely clinging to life. Seeing Chun Lei arrive, he spoke with a face full of guilt. It's all my fault. If I had listened to your advice, so many of our Su family members wouldn't have died. I've really become senile. Now I understand that our village was able to stand firm after the snow disaster entirely because of your abilities. Su Dongsheng had an epiphany, but it was too late. He held Chun Lei's hand and said, I've explained to the others in the family. This operation was entirely my responsibility. Let them blame me, this old man. I know the villagers are saying things about you, but I hope you won't hold it against them. Our Su family can't afford to fight among ourselves. We can't break the lineage of the Su family. As Su Dongsheng spoke, tears streamed down his face. So, I only ask one thing of you before I go. Protect the Su family well. Chun Lei, tears in his eyes, nodded repeatedly. After I'm gone, I entrust the Su family to you. That's it. I need to rest for a while. You can go out. With that, Su Dongsheng passed away. Chun Lei quickly called the people waiting outside. Seeing Su Dongsheng with his eyes closed, the Su family members immediately burst into tears. Noticing no one paid attention to him, Chun Lei quietly left the house. After receiving his third grandpa's last request, Chun Lei walked back with a strange feeling in his heart. He knew that if Zhang Yi really came to kill them, he had no choice but to flee. He thought he was the chosen one, only to find out he was just cannon fodder.
daughter. Just as he dejectedly reached his home, he saw a young woman waiting at his doorstep. Seeing Chun Lei, the girl quickly approached him. Are you brother Chun Lei? Chun Lei's face turned red, and he stammered, Yes, that's me. Who are you? The girl's eyes were filled with gratitude. I'm Su Lily. I came to thank you for saving my father. He told me that you risked your life to save him today. Chun Lei, not knowing what to do, scratched the back of his head. It's nothing. It's what I should do. It was then that Chun Lei realized he was not a sinner, but a hero of the village. Su Lily said shyly, looking down, my father is still injured and couldn't come himself, so he asked me to thank you in person, but we didn't have anything to bring as a gift, so I came empty-handed. Chun Lei waved his hands shyly, don't be so formal, we are all part of the Su family, I'll definitely help if I can. After a few moments of small talk, Su Lily turned and disappeared into the snow. At that moment, Chun Lei was still unable to calm down, his heart racing uncontrollably, he felt that he had deeply fallen in love with Su Lily, even thinking of names for their future children. This otaku, who had sworn never to fall for a three-dimensional woman, had so easily betrayed his own belief. Chun Lei, with a determined look, clenched his fists, resolving to protect the Su family villagers and provide a stable environment for Su Lily and their future child. Back home, Chun Lei had to think of a strategy. Two encounters with Zhang Yi had made him acutely aware of Zhang Yi's terrifying nature. However, he had promised third grandpa to protect the village, and now, with love in his life, he couldn't let that demon ruin his happiness. But he feared Zhang Yi might come in a fit of rage to annihilate the village. How should he handle this? A direct confrontation would surely result in his instant defeat. After much thought, he concluded that there was only one way to resolve this situation definitively negotiation. Excited by this idea, although risky, he was ready to risk it all for the Su family and his beloved Su Lily. He hurriedly started searching for Zhang Yi's contact information on his computer, fantasizing that Su Lily must like him as he had saved her father's life. According to TV drama plots, she must have a secret crush on him. The next morning, I cautiously stepped out, fixing the damage traps, thinking the Su family was unlikely to dare another attack. Still, I prepared for a potential second wave of enemies. Ordinary people posed almost no threat to my shelter, but I had to be wary of awakened mutants. Thinking about the ice and snow mutant, I still harbored a bit of admiration for him, as his style was somewhat similar to mine, both very cautious about our lives. However, since I couldn't use him for my own purposes, I had to eliminate him beforehand. Show care has been wholeheartedly devoted to me for a long time, and Yang Mi, after the Sioux family town battle, lost her hope for the apocalypse's end. She used to believe the snow disaster was temporary, and the world would return to its former state, where she would be a dazzling star again. However, witnessing the brutal deaths of over a hundred people shook her belief. She chose to rely on me, not superficially, but genuinely wanting to be close. Just then, a phone call suddenly came in, startling me. Instantly, I thought of Lu Fengda and how my biggest secret had been exposed. Who could be contacting me now? But this time, I was much more composed as I answered the phone. Before I could speak, an excited voice came through. Hello, Zhang Yi. This is Chun Lei from Su Family Town. Do you have a moment? I have something to discuss with you. Hearing it was someone from Su Family Town, I instantly became alert. After yesterday's attack, I had no good feelings towards their village and was planning when to annihilate them. Chun Lei continued, I was wondering if we could reconcile and avoid troubling each other in the future. Hearing this, I laughed. I never troubled you. It was always you who provoked me. What? Now you realize you can't beat me and want to make peace. You're quite optimistic. On the other end of the phone, Chun Lei immediately became nervous. He was already very fearful and his heart. After two encounters, he had come to view the other party as a powerful and deadly figure. He then spoke in a trembling and submissive voice, I called you this time to apologize. All this is our village's fault. Could you please spare our simple villagers, considering we haven't caused you any harm and have suffered heavy losses ourselves? You can set any conditions, and as long as we can meet them, we will. I found the other party's overly respectful tone strange and wondered why they sent such a weakling for negotiations. It sounded like a rookie just entering society. I then asked loudly, first weigh yourself. Do you even have the right to represent Su Family Town? Chun Lei then revealed his identity. Actually, I am the mutant who has clashed with you twice. Hearing this, I immediately became serious. So it's you. Yes, it's me. Do you think I'm qualified now? I thought, if it's him, he indeed has the right to negotiate. Being the only person I'm wary of, my tone instantly became more amicable. You just said that as long as I agree to reconcile, you can fulfill any of my requests, right? Chun Lei, sensing a chance, responded with a silly smile. As long as our village can do it, we will try our best to satisfy you. 
you. After this battle, Chun Lei was almost certain that I must be holding a large amount of supplies from the Walmart warehouse. He figured the village's offerings wouldn't interest me. I also sensed that this chubby guy was not stupid. His ice and snow abilities were a powerful weapon in this frozen apocalypse. If I could recruit him, he would be very useful. I then said seriously, I only want one thing from you, that's you, Chun Lei. Startled, Chun Lei yelped in fear. I'm straight. Don't be like this. I was speechless, while Zhou Kier and Yang Mi laughed nearby. Don't misunderstand. I just find your ice and snow abilities unique. If you're sincere about making peace, come to my shelter in person, I added with emphasis. Otherwise, if I'm in a bad mood one day, I might just wipe out your village. You should know that your abilities are completely ineffective against me. Destroying your village would be as easy as flipping my hand. Chun Lei, terrified, stood up from his chair, his whole body trembling. Don't be hasty. Wiping out our village wouldn't benefit you, right? Moreover, our village and your villa area are interdependent. If there's an external enemy in the future, we can help each other. I disdainfully replied, don't talk to me about enemies. Aren't you my biggest enemy right now? If you can win, you rob me of my supplies and wife. If you can't, you come seeking peace. Your calculations are so loud, I can hear them from my house. If you want to make peace, show your sincerity. What do you mean by calling me? Are you just informing me? If you're serious about making peace, come to my shelter at 2.30 p.m. Only you, Chun Lei, need to come. From the conversation, I got a grasp of this chubby guy's character, probably a timid, weak, and cowardly otaku, clearly not a shrewd and strong person, so I directly forced him to make a choice. Whether you come or not is up to you. If you don't, I'll find time to come over and wipe out your village. Hearing this, Chun Lei was immediately terrified, losing all rhythm in the negotiation. The horror in his heart was magnified, and the scene of yesterday's massacre resurfaced in his mind. He blurted out tremblingly, Okay, okay, I'll go. After saying this, I hung up the phone directly, not giving Chun Lei a chance to back out. Chun Lei was stunned and collapsed to the ground, his legs giving way. This is it. Going there is almost certain death. My pure love, my life of cheats, is it all going to end here? After hanging up, I also became serious, starting to plan the afternoon meeting. This guy's abilities indeed had limitless potential and could be a huge threat, but if he could become my subordinate, that would be a good choice. I decided to test him in the afternoon. After all, his abilities posed no threat to me. I would decide then whether to kill him or not. After my rest, I went to the balcony, fully armed, waiting for this chubby guy with my sniper rifle. Soon, a figure appeared in my scope, the portly figure I recognized from last night's tactical sight. My aim was already locked on his head. The moment he entered my shooting range, I could blow his brains out. But before he had walked a few steps, the chubby guy slipped and fell, making me burst into laughter. Is this the powerful ice and snow mutant? The one with limitless potential? But I couldn't let my guard down and continued to watch him. Just as he got up, he fell again. It seemed he was really scared stiff. Seeing he posed no threat, I relaxed and prepared to meet this interesting mutant downstairs. Chun Lei then called. Your house is surrounded by traps. I dare not come. No need for you to come, I said. And before the words had even faded, I appeared right in front of Chun Lei. Upon seeing me, Chun Lei's legs went weak. Are you Zhang Yi? He hadn't expected the fearsome killer he imagined to look like a scholarly person. Gathering his courage, Chun Lei said, I've complied with your request and came alone. That should show enough sincerity, right? Let's not fight anymore. This was a meaningless battle to begin with. Hearing this, I laughed. You initiated the attack and now you're seeking peace. And you say it's meaningless. Do you really mean that? Chun Lei awkwardly touched the back of his head and said with a silly smile, Indeed, it's our village's fault. So, what conditions do you want for making peace? I want to know. What can you offer to earn my forgiveness? Chun Lei sheepishly replied, Except for the lives of our Su family members, you can ask for anything. I thought to myself that I lacked nothing in terms of supplies, and there was nothing in their village that I wanted, but I still needed to assert my authority. Hand over the initiator of this attack. That person must die. Otherwise, there's no deal. To my surprise, Chun Lei became excited. The initiator of the attack was our village chief, and he's already been scared to death by you. Are you satisfied now? I was somewhat speechless. I killed over a hundred people yesterday. Were any of them your relatives? Don't you want to avenge them? Chun Lei then spoke with a tinge of sadness. My parents died soon after the snow disaster. My dad had a heart condition and fell ill on the first day of the snowstorm. There were no ambulances due to the heavy snow, and he died at home. My mom passed away in bed a week later. And the others, they are not my direct relatives. They generally look down on me. In their eyes, I'm just a useless person who plays games at home all day. So, I don't really have feelings for other Sioux family members. That's why I don't hold a grudge against you for killing hundreds of Sioux family people. On the contrary, I kind of admire you. The way you chased us in your car last night was really cool. Having heard this, I decided to give this chubby guy a chance. I can agree to make peace, but I'm not interested in your village. Those villagers pose no threat to me. However, you, the chubby guy, are somewhat interesting. For your sake, I can spare your village. Chun Lei immediately became incredibly excited, rushing over to hug me, as being acknowledged by someone as powerful as me was a huge honor for him. I repeatedly waved my hands to stop him. Don't get excited. I have conditions. From now on, you have to follow my orders and comply with any of my requests. Hearing this condition, 
ammunition. Chun Lei was terrified. What if you covet my body? I was speechless at his reaction. Seeing Chun Lei hesitating, I pulled out my trump card, directly taking out a limited edition figurine from the alternate space. Here, this is for you. Working for me won't leave you shortchanged. Chun Lei's eyes lit up immediately. Such a rare figurine was almost irresistible to an old otaku like him. I have many more of these. As long as you follow me loyally, you'll have enough limited edition figurines, body pillows, games, and cartridges. Chun Lei, blissfully hugging the figurine, nodded repeatedly. Okay, okay, whatever you want. And just like that, I successfully recruited Chun Lei as my subordinate. I also had a natural liking for this chubby guy. Being with a straightforward, heartless fat guy always gave a sense of reliability. But most importantly, I valued his ice and snow abilities. In this Ice Age apocalypse, his potential was limitless. Since you're here, help me with something, I said. Chun Lei perked up, thinking, so quickly a task. It feels good to be valued. I then took out a snow SUV from the alternate space. Chun Lei was stunned and, in his surprise, began to flatter earnestly. Time does not exist. Space is king. Brother Zhang's abilities are surely invincible globally. This made me inadvertently think of something. When I was on the brink of death, I returned to a month earlier. Wasn't that time travel? Maybe I had an unexplored time travel ability related to my spatial abilities. After driving for a while, we arrived in front of a large building, originally a major gas station. The shelter consumed several times more energy than a safe house, so I needed to stock up in advance. After confirming the location, I instructed Chun Lei, clear all this snow. Eager to prove himself, Chun Lei used all his strength. With a loud bang, the thick snow cracked open. The snow in front of us started to shake violently, and then huge chunks of ice and snow rose into the air before being tossed to the sides. At first, Chun Lei seemed relaxed, but gradually he started to struggle. I observed Chun Lei from behind. Although he had become my capable subordinate, I still needed to understand his skills, as it's always wise to be cautious of others. Soon after, the deeply buried gas station was cleared out. Chun Lei, gasping for air, collapsed on the ground. I was secretly thrilled inside. With Chun Lei, a top-tier tool person, gathering resources in the future would be much easier. I handed him a piece of chocolate, and seeing the chocolate bar, Chun Lei's eyes lit up. He tore open the wrapper and started munching on it eagerly. Meanwhile, I quickly slid into the freshly cleared snow pit, planning to take all the stored oil into my possession. After the job was done, Chun Lei started flattering me again. Brother Zhang, you are truly amazing. I felt a bit embarrassed hearing this because, after all, the main work was done by this chubby guy. I merely stretched out my hand to put the oil cans into the alternate space. I pulled up Chun Lei and asked, haven't you tried using your abilities to dig up resources before? Of course, I have. But in this extreme cold weather, we can't go far. Our dogs aren't purebred Siberian huskies either, so we can only dig up some resources nearby. But for us, that's already enough. There's no need to risk our lives going further away. I looked at Chun Lei as if he were a treasure. This is truly a top-tier tool person. With you following me, these issues are no problem. You just stick with me, and I'll make sure you live well. I then pulled out a backpack. Here, take these supplies as a reward for today. Chun Lei, holding the heavy backpack, was overjoyed and his eyes welled up with tears. Brother Zhang, just give the word for any task. If I hesitate even for a second, I don't deserve the Su surname. After saying this, I prepared to drive back. On the way, I casually asked Chun Lei about his process of awakening his ability. To my surprise, as soon as I asked, Chun Lei's face turned red as if it was something unspeakable. He stammered, after my parents passed away. I didn't feel like living either, but I didn't have the courage to commit suicide, so I just lay in bed, ready to starve myself to death. Did you awaken your abilities when you were about to starve to death? Chun Lei's face turned even redder. I was lying there and found the bed quite comfortable. Then I thought, since I'm ending my life anyway, why not enjoy myself one last time? A friend once told me excessive rewards harm the body, but I thought, since I'm not going to live, why care about the harm? So I unrestrainedly indulged myself. How many times? Chun Lei's face almost buried under the car seat. I've forgotten the exact number, maybe around 20-something times. In the end, I almost lost consciousness. However, after losing consciousness, my body mysteriously underwent a strange transformation. I covered my face, unable to look directly at this chubby guy. So, that's how he awakened his ice and snow abilities. Truly bizarre. I dropped Chun Lei off by the river. It's only a few hundred meters away from their village. Chun Lei, puzzled, asked me, Brother Zhang, can you take me across the river? With this weather and my physique, walking back is quite tough. It's just a press of the gas pedal for you. Hearing this, I smiled deeply. My car tends to slip on the river surface, so I won't go over. In my mind, once across the river, it's Chun Lei's home turf. Although he seems to have surrendered to me on the surface, I still need to be extra cautious. His control of the ice last night, trapping my car on the river, made me wary. Chun Lei found the slipping excuse far-fetched. Last night, when Zhang Yi was chasing us in his car with a sniper rifle, he looked pretty cool. But now, as my dive hard fan. He thought my concerns were not unreasonable, so he didn't question it further and obediently unbuckled his seatbelt to get out of the car. Before he left, I called out to him, Chun Lei, there's something you need to be careful about. Hearing his name called directly, Chun Lei felt a sense of closeness. I patted his shoulder and spoke
spoke earnestly. In this apocalyptic world, danger lurks everywhere. Your Sioux family town is known in the city for its vegetables and food. I guess it's inevitable that you'll attract attention, so you must be extra vigilant. After thanking me, Chun Lei got out of the car and walked towards the village. My kind reminder to Chun Lei obviously had a deeper purpose. I'm not so kind hearted to care about the lives and deaths of the Sioux family. However, my shelter and Sioux family town are interdependent, so it doesn't hurt to make them more cautious. By instilling this idea in him, any stranger appearing nearby would be treated as a potential enemy by him, adding an extra layer of natural protection to my shelter. Upon returning to the village, Chun Lei, excited, ran to report the good news to the current village chief, expecting praise from Su Dong Tang. However, he was met with a harsh scolding instead. This reaction clearly doused him in cold water. Chun Lei, puzzled, said, Sixth Grandpa, I did this to protect our village from being attacked. After all, Zhang Yi is so strong, we have no power to resist. Su Dong Tang sneered, If you hadn't played the coward yesterday, we wouldn't have suffered such heavy losses. Your third grandpa died because of you. Now you're making decisions on your own to negotiate peace. You've truly lost the face of our Su family ancestors. Chun Lei was momentarily unable to retort, feeling incredibly disheartened. But I promised third grandpa to protect Su family town. We really can't fight against Zhang Yi. There's no choice but to seek peace. To his surprise, Su Dong Tang suddenly scolded him harshly, slamming his hand on the table to interrupt Chun Lei. Who is the clan leader? You or me? You think you're smart. From now on, all actions must be reported to me first. You can't make decisions on your own. Chun Lei was reprimanded like a cat that had done something wrong, but he had just thought of himself as a meritorious figure. In the midst of self-doubt, Su Dong Tang suddenly came over, patted Chun Lei's shoulder, and said solemnly, Sixth Grandpa knows you have no ill intentions, but you're still too young. Many things lack thorough consideration. This time, it's because of you that Su family suffered heavy losses. If I hadn't spoken up for you in front of the clan, you would have been driven out of the village by now. Staying in the village now is also to atone for your sins. So, you must obediently follow my orders from now on. Su Dong Tang emphasized this last part. Chun Lei shuddered, repeatedly assuring that he understood. Su Dong Tang then showed a satisfied expression. You can go back now. Remember, never act on your own again. Watching Chun Lei walk away, Su Dong Tang adjusted his glasses, thinking to himself, young people are so arrogant and presumptuous. They shouldn't think they can disregard their elders just because they've gained some skills. He then took out his phone and sent messages to various branches of the clan, taking all the credit for negotiating peace with Zhang Yi. The branches, who had been worried about Zhang Yi attacking, were finally relieved. They unanimously praised Su Dongtang's capability, even saying that they should have supported Sixth Grandpa as the clan leader earlier to avoid Third Grandpa's foolish mistakes. They lamented that hundreds had to die to accompany that old man in his errors, praising Sixth Grandpa for his foresight and wisdom. Su Dongtang felt greatly satisfied inside, muttering to himself, this good-for-nothing who hides at home playing games all day thinks he can play games with me? He's too naive. Back at the shelter, to ease their worries, I briefly shared with the two sisters what had happened after I left. Yang Mi clapped her hands in approval after hearing it. This is really great. Now we don't have to worry about them attacking anymore. Zhou Kier, however, was used to such events and looked at Yang Mi with disdain. My brother Zhang didn't annihilate them all, which is already the greatest mercy he could show them. There's nothing to be afraid of. But since you, the scaredy cat, think this way, I can understand. Otherwise, you wouldn't have nearly vomited bile yesterday. Yang Mi, frustrated, stamped her foot. That's not true. I just didn't want to see such a bloody scene again. Zhou Kier didn't bother to listen to her explanation, coming over to hug me and praising me enthusiastically. My brother Zhang is so powerful. Those small fries couldn't possibly threaten us. But I have started to worry. Last time we went to the defense camp for weapons, we found that the people there had already evacuated in an orderly manner, taking a lot of heavy weapons with them. These well-trained organizations are the most troublesome. Yang Mi, not to be outdone, pressed herself against me with her most prominent feature. Don't always think of the worst. At least we've solved our current problem, which is worth celebrating. Saying this, Zhou Kier walked over to the bar to get some drinks. If we're celebrating, we must have a few drinks to enjoy it properly. Yang Mi also offered to cook some of her signature dishes, thinking to herself that she was a well-known social butterfly in the entertainment industry and had developed a good tolerance for alcohol. Today I'm going to teach you both a lesson. I said with a laugh, just have a bit for the sake of it. My alcohol tolerance is quite average. Hearing this, the two of them became even more excited. No problem, we'll stop when it's enough. In less than two hours, the two women lay unconscious on the sofa, watching the two drunken cats who tried to get me drunk, I couldn't help but laugh out loud. I forgot to tell you, before I was a warehouse manager, I used to sell alcoholic beverages, slightly tipsy. I approached them and started getting busy with Yang Mi, who was in my arms. Yang Mi opened her sleepy eyes, surprised to find me on top of her. How can you do this? Sister Zhou Kier is right beside us. I ignored her and continued with what I was doing for two or three minutes before satisfactorily falling asleep. A few days later, Chun Lei suddenly sent me a message, asking me to take him out on a mission, complaining that staying at home was too boring. He also suggested forming a 
five-person superpower team, using colors to represent each member's name, which could be called the Rainbow Squad. He even thought of the names, you'll be the king of no color, and I'll be the king of blue. I was speechless, but to completely win people's hearts, I reluctantly endured the disgust to chat with this fat guy, and extract some useful information. Gradually, I found it increasingly unbearable. This guy probably didn't have a girlfriend, and clearly had too much energy. I burst out cursing him directly, you, this fatso, are you just bored out of your mind? But Chun Lei didn't feel offended. Instead, he felt he had gotten even closer to his big brother, sending me an emoji. Awesome, my brother. How did you guess I'm bored all day? Everything is indeed within your expectations. You are my god. Holding my face, I was completely speechless. This kind of otaku is basically on the fringes of society, so when they encounter someone who is even slightly nice to them, they are ready to give their all. Even if I spoke harshly to him, he would only think positively about it. Over time, I really couldn't bear to scold this fat otaku anymore, so I turned on the smart reply software. As long as he sent three or five messages, it would automatically reply with a oh or hm. Even with such perfunctory responses, this fat guy could be as happy as a 300 pound child. During the boring times in the shelter, I always go to the control room to oversee everything, meticulously checking for any security risks. Yang Mi has now managed the ecological botanical garden quite well. It seems that surviving in this shelter indefinitely is not a big problem. However, there's one issue that I can't help but worry about the cybersecurity problem. This supercomputer controls all the programs of the shelter. Without it, the entire shelter would instantly become paralyzed. It's understandable that Lu Fengda could hack into my phone, but even the otaku Chun Lei could find my number, which shows there are significant vulnerabilities in the shelter's network security. If the network is hacked by top experts, my shelter might collapse without being attacked. Meanwhile, Yang Mi and Zhou Kier seem to have started arguing. Yang Mi, somewhat agitated, says, Zhou Kier, you must help with this. You've been with Zhang Yi for a longer time, and he will definitely listen to you if you ask him. Zhou Kier looks helpless. I know Zhang Yi too well. He is such a cautious person. He wouldn't risk even the slightest danger, especially since we rely on him for our livelihood. If something happens to him, none of us can survive. After a moment of contemplation, Yang Mi asserts, regardless, I have to try. Now, all I have is this body of mine. Zhou Kier looks at her disdainfully. In plain terms, you're planning to seduce him, aren't you? As Zhou Kier stands up in anger, she says, don't think I don't know what you two have been up to behind my back. And now you want me to help you? What? Should we both do it together? To her surprise, Yang Mi weakly nods her head. For my sister, I don't mind. I, who have been eavesdropping at the door, suddenly enter the room and jokingly ask, why aren't you sleeping in the middle of the night? What are you talking about? Yang Mi, trying to act calm, grabs my hand. We are just talking about family matters. I probe further. Then tell me about it too. There's no one else here anyway. Is it because you still have living relatives you want to bring over to live together? Shou Kier shakes her head in panic. No, that's not it. I lost contact with my family after the disaster. I came to Heavenly Sea City alone, so I've been out of touch with my family for a long time. They are most likely no longer alive. At this point, Yang Mi stammers out, it's me. It's my family. My sister has contacted me. She's in danger and asked me to find a way to save her. It turns out her sister contacted her yesterday, saying she was in a very dangerous situation, so she hopes I can find a way to save her. Upon hearing this, I just chuckled. What can you two ladies possibly do to save someone? Don't tell me you're planning to put this on my shoulders, expecting me to risk my life to save someone unrelated? I'm not that altruistic. Knowing that the matter was already out in the open, Yang Mi, dropping all pretenses, clung to me, pleading, she might be my only surviving relative. I can't just watch her die, since she's Yang Mi's sister, she's naturally also related to Zhou Kier. So, Zhou Kier also came over, looking at me with a pleading face. She's our family. If she dies because we didn't save her, we'll feel guilty for the rest of our lives. I looked helplessly at the sisters. You both know what the situation is like outside. My information is no longer a secret. I don't know how many people are eyeing my supplies in this super shelter. I sat up straight. There's no discussion about this. Asking me to take such a high risk for a stranger, even if you try to seduce me, it won't work. Don't think that living with me for a while will influence my judgment. Seeing my firm refusal, the sisters panicked and began to cry, clinging to my legs. Please, if you agree to save her, we will fulfill any of your requests unconditionally. Shou Kier whispered in my ear, have you ever tried a threesome? Hearing this, my eyes lit up. Are you serious? The sisters looked at me with hopeful eyes, waiting for my nod. I took a deep breath, about to refuse, when Yang Mi continued, my sister Yang Xinxin is physically disabled. It's a miracle she's survived this long. She must be desperate to seek help from me, her useless sister. She's so pitiful. I hesitated, about to speak, then held back. Are you talking about the genius hacker Yang Xinxin you mentioned before? I thought to myself, an 18-year-old, beautiful, genius hacker, isn't that the ideal network engineer I've been looking for? My heart surged with excitement. The biggest headache for me right now is the cybersecurity issue. Most importantly, reliability is key. She's the sister of these two women here, so there's no doubt about her loyalty. Thinking of this, I grasped the hands of the two women, looking at them affectionately. Don't worry, since she's your sister, she's like my sister too. I, Zhang Yi, am not one to fear
fear death or stand by idly. Upon hearing my words, the two sisters were overjoyed. Xiu Kier even had a starstruck look on her face. In her view, Zhang Yi had always been a refined egoist. He's helping me now. He must be in love with me, she thought. Yang Mi was also instantly moved to tears. I don't know how to repay your kindness. I looked at them proudly. In your eyes, am I, Zhang Yi, really so heartless? You're all wrong. I'm actually a person who appears cold on the outside, but warm on the inside. I genuinely cherish the people around me. The two women blushed, their perception of me undergoing a huge transformation. Xiu Kier fell even deeper, while Yang Mi was instantly smitten, at a loss for words. Sensible as she was, she slowly knelt before me. After a whole night of intense discussion, I agreed to rescue their sister Yang Xinqin. Of course, the most important reason wasn't this seduction tactic. After all, my biggest problem right now is cybersecurity. If I could rescue this genius hacker and have her work for me, all the problems would be solved. I then asked the two to discuss the rescue plan with me. Tell me about your sister's situation. Yang Mi spoke seriously. Yang Xinxin is currently trapped in Azure Sky Academy. You might have heard of it. Azure Sky Academy is a top-tier aristocratic school, offering integrated education from kindergarten to university. It usually only nurtures the children of the elite, but also admits a few geniuses. Graduates from there usually become pillars in both political and business circles. Hearing this, I couldn't help but wonder, how did a paraplegic girl survive under such extreme cold conditions? After all, schools are densely populated places and generally don't have much food storage. It's hard to imagine her surviving in such a brutal apocalypse. Yang Mi continued, such high-level aristocratic schools have their special food supply channels, and there's quite a bit of food stored in their warehouses. Yang Xinxin happened to hide in the cafeteria early in the snow disaster, which is why she didn't starve to death. But I still have many doubts. Why did she wait until now to contact you? In a crisis, one would seek help from anyone possible. Why did she think of contacting you, her sister, almost two months after the apocalypse began? As soon as I said this, Yang Mi was also stunned. I don't know why either. Let me call her right now. I was too anxious yesterday. There were many things I didn't get to ask. But after trying to call several times without success, she remembered that she had also tried to contact her before, but couldn't get through, so she didn't hold much hope. At this point, Zhou Kier mocked with a covered mouth. Maybe Yang Xinxin thought you were already dead, so she didn't take you seriously at all. I then asked Yang Mi, how far is Azure Sky Academy from us? Seeing Yang Mi's clueless expression, I took out my phone and opened the map. Nowadays, signals are poor, and satellite positioning is also problematic, so we can only check distances through the map. I found out that Azure Sky Academy is located in West Mountain District, about 23 kilometers in a straight line from the villa area. Being able to call you is already a miracle under the current long-distance communication breakdown, but it's also possible she thought you were dead, so she never thought of contacting you, her useless sister. Come with me to the control room. Nowadays, ordinary mobile phones can't transmit signals through the nebula chain, but the supercomputer in the control room might be able to. After dialing Yang Xinxin's number, a harsh electronic noise followed, indicating that the signal over there was extremely unstable, seemingly under some strong interference. However, after a few seconds, the call successfully connected, and the two sisters immediately became excited. Yang Xinxin, it's sister me. Quickly tell me your situation. Your sister will find a way to rescue you. The voice on the other end was intermittent, and the noise was significant. We only heard her say she was at the school cafeteria, and it seemed she was in a very dangerous situation. I urgently asked, quick, what kind of danger are you in? Only to hear disjointed phrases coming through, run, monsters. Following that, amid the chaotic electronic noise, a chilling, terrifying sound emerged, something not human. It was like a roar from some giant monster. The call was suddenly cut off amidst the noise, leaving only a busy tone echoing anxiously. Initially, I thought it was just a simple mission to retrieve someone from a school, but the call revealed a terrifying monster noise. The sound of limbs and bones being torn apart, something I've only heard in zombie movies, was followed by an abrupt end to the call, leaving only a beeping sound echoing in the control room. It seems Azure Sky Academy has monsters. Could animals have mutated too? Seeing my hesitant expression, Yang Mi clung to me again, pleading in a soft, coaxing voice, Brother Zhang Yi, you promised us, you can't go back on your word. To this, I smiled slightly, I said I would save her, and I will. Don't worry, it seems the situation has become somewhat tricky. I must call two mutant allies to help. I'll have Uncle Yu, a meat shield, lead the way. Chun Lei controlling the ice and snow in the middle, while I can lurk in the back to find opportunities for surprise attacks. If things go south, I can be the first to flee. This formation is simply perfect. Thinking this, I quickly called Chun Lei. Chun Lei had been eager to get out, and was already impatient to start the mission. Uncle Yu also agreed readily. I thought that the eerie noise might be from a mutated person or some other mutant creature. Although it sounds terrifying, considering that a paraplegic girl managed to cope with it for over a month, we, being three mutants, should not find it too difficult. However, I still need to be more cautious, as the opponent is an unknown mutant. Early the next morning, the sisters had already prepared a full table of delicious food. I didn't indulge myself in gluttony, as eating a mix of things can easily cause diarrhea, and I couldn't 
drink too much either as it would affect my mobility. However, I still needed to replenish enough physical energy. My alternate space was also prepared with food for timely replenishment. All my weapons and equipment were fully loaded and ready. After making all the preparations, Chun Lei called me. I'm already by the river. Hurry up and come pick me up. He knew that my house was surrounded by traps and didn't dare to come close. He still has several relatives buried in the snow in front of my house. I told him I'd be right there. After hanging up the phone, I said to the two women, to ensure your safety, you'll have to stay in the basement for a while. Yang Mi, not understanding, asked, why the basement when the house is so secure? Show here. Instantly understanding, pulled Yang Mi by her clothes. Don't ask too many questions. Just do as you're told, she said, pushing Yang Mi towards the basement. Show Kier knew the man's intentions. After all, the information was provided by her and her sister, and the person being rescued was their sister. He was worried that this might be a trap they had concocted together. This is his usual way of handling things. I locked the two of them in rooms made of alloy, using the highest authority to lock the doors from the outside. No one but me could open the doors. Yang Mi began to understand what this meant. Although a bit uncomfortable, she was still going to save her sister, and she cheered and encouraged me. I also promised them that as long as their sister was still alive when we got there, we would definitely bring her back safely. Leaving the basement, I sighed inwardly. Actually, I didn't want to be so cautious in everything, and I certainly didn't want to be constantly wary of even those closest to me. But in order to live securely in this post-apocalyptic world, one cannot afford the slightest bit of carelessness. What kind of terrifying mutant requires the combined effort of three special ability users to tackle? To ensure absolute success, I had to call in two helpers. Chun Lei was already restless at home and arrived early at the riverside to wait. Seeing me approach, Chun Lei hurriedly waved. I am somewhat helpless regarding Chun Lei. We agreed to meet at 8, but he called at 6 to say he had arrived. I reached for the snow off road vehicle and said, Get in the car quickly. Have you been freezing here all this time? After I turned on the heating, Chun Lei immediately relaxed and asked, You mentioned yesterday about going to save someone. One. Is that person a relative or a friend? She must be very important to you. I thought to myself that Yang Xinxin's computer skills are indeed very important to me now. But before I could respond, Chun Lei started his non-stop chatter, seemingly wanting to recount every trivial event of his life. Su Lily from our village must be secretly in love with me. The way she looks at me is different from others, probably because I saved her father last time. She thinks I am a man worth entrusting her life to. She must have a secret crush on me. But Su Lily is shy and doesn't dare to confess. Do you think I should make a move? I was exasperated. If it weren't for this guy's usefulness, I would have wanted to kick him out of the car. I quickly changed the subject. What do the people in your village think of me now? I asked intentionally. Sure enough, Chun Lei suddenly fell silent, his face turning complex. He hesitated for a long time without a clear answer. I thought to myself that I had nearly wiped out half of the young and middle-aged population of his village. The villagers must absolutely despise me. If it weren't for the fear of my power, they would definitely seek revenge. These were words Chun Lei obviously couldn't say, and my ears were finally at peace. Soon, a snowmobile appeared ahead. I hurriedly got out of the car to greet him. Uncle Yu, you look in great spirits. Seems like you and Zhou Jaime are living quite comfortably. Uncle Yu raised his hand and said, I also feel a huge change in my body. My physical and mental strength is even stronger than when I was 20. After some pleasantries, I introduced the two to each other. Surprisingly, all three of them turned out to be individuals with special abilities. In this early stage of the apocalypse, having even one awakened person was already a rarity, let alone three. Uncle Yu couldn't help but ask, what kind of opponent requires the combined effort of three of us with special abilities. I gestured for them not to worry, explaining, we're just going to a school to rescue a female student. I managed to contact her yesterday. She's currently at Azure Sky Academy. However, something's off there. I think I heard mutant creatures. To ensure absolute success, I called you two to join me. Chun Lei immediately caught on to a key point. Mutant creatures, not mutated humans. I looked at them seriously and said, who said only humans can mutate? With the diversity of species in Heavenly Sea City and the presence of various pets and seafood like fish and crabs in the market. Any cellular organism has the potential to mutate. Uncle Yu expressed his doubts. Do you know what it is? Something even you can't handle? I reassured them. There's no need to be overly worried. Based on the sounds I heard on the phone yesterday, this mutant is not human. Even if it's a mutated human, it would likely be in a frenzied state. Those kinds of sounds couldn't possibly be made by a normal human's vocal cords. However, with the three of us teaming up, no matter what kind of terrifying creature it is, it won't be able to harm us. With that, the three of us drove towards Azure Sky 
Sky Academy. Meanwhile, at Azure Sky Academy, thick snow had already covered the entire campus, with only the rooftops of some tall buildings visible. In the gymnasium, a group of surviving students were exhausted from the continuous encounter with a terrifying monster. Some started to blame Yang Xinxin, who was in a wheelchair. More and more students are dying. Why are you, the cripple, still alive and well? The terrifying creature appeared unpredictably, and the teacher who had been protecting them always took special care of Yang Xinxin. Gradually, all the students started to see her as a burden, even blaming her for the deaths of their classmates. A female student, in despair, exclaimed, Do we even have a chance to survive? From over a hundred survivors, after the snow disaster, only about forty remained. Counting the names of their departed classmates, everyone felt an unbearable chill in their hearts. At this moment, a girl with big wavy hair caught sight of Yang Xinxin in her wheelchair, and a strong sense of disgust arose within her. Why have so many died? Yet this crippled waist remains unharmed, she yelled, pointing at Yang Xinxin. Because teacher Liang was particularly affectionate towards Yang Xinxin, always ensuring she was taken along during every escape, the others saw this as an opportunity to vent their frustrations. Yang Xinxin quickly became the target of everyone's resentment. Some even suggested throwing her out to feed the monsters. Although they realized that even if Yang Xinxin died, the monsters would not spare them, they thought that if the monsters appeared again, leaving her behind to attract them could at least give her sacrifice some meaning. The class monitor, feeling helpless, said, Everyone, please stop. Teacher Liang cares for each of us equally, and always hesitates to leave anyone behind. But still, more and more of us are dying. Even if Yang Xinxin dies, how can you be sure that you won't be the next one? A girl with a ponytail stepped out from the crowd, a strange smile on her face. She walked up to Yang Xinxin, looking down at her. Yang Xinxin, seemingly frightened of this person, stuttered, Zhang Mingning, what do you want to do? Zhang Mingning leaned down with a venomous look in her eyes, and said to Yang Xinxin, you crippled waste, just go die, stop dragging us down. Yang Xinxin was stunned by this scene, her eyes wide in bewilderment, and tears uncontrollably started to flow. Instead of stepping in to condemn Zhang Mingning, the crowd around them began clapping and cheering. At this moment, a short-haired girl quickly stood in front of Yang Xinxin. She was Yang Xinxin's best friend, Liu Karen, who had been pushing Yang Xinxin's wheelchair all this time. Zhang Mingning, we are all classmates, don't go too far. Zhang Mingning, however, laughed wildly and pointed accusingly at Liu Karen. What are you? Someone who got in through connections doesn't deserve to talk to me. Liu Karen, infuriated, retorted, at a time like this, your family's money is just worthless paper. Where do you get your sense of superiority from? This only angered Zhang Mingning further, who snapped back, shut up, no matter what, you lowly people don't have the right to talk back to me. She then turned her fury back to Yang Xinxin, you cripple, it's because of a burden like you that we lost so many classmates, you might as well end it yourself. Yang Xinxin kept her head low, silent under the vicious curses of her classmates. Liu Karen continued to argue, Yang Xinxin is a human too, she has the right to live, the deaths of the other students have nothing to do with her. A girl with an innocent look then slowly spoke up, her disability does indeed make her a burden for everyone, so Zhang Mingning does have a point. The students began to argue among themselves again, some even accusing Yang Xinxin of morally blackmailing them because of her disability. Really, a pitiful woman. We've been dragging this dead weight for so long. It's about time you found a place to die. Hearing this, Liu Karen angrily countered, I have been the one taking care of Yang Xinxin all this time. None of you have done anything for her. What right do you have to blame her? Zhang Mingning mockingly said, at least Yang Xinxin is a distinguished young lady from a prominent family. You are just a student who got in through connections. If it weren't for her disability, she wouldn't even bother with someone like you. She's just using you to satisfy her twisted sense of superiority. Liu Karen retorted, Yang Xinxin is not like what you think. Meanwhile, Yang Xinxin remained silent, her head bowed, as the incessant accusations gave her a splitting headache and tears continued to flow. At that moment, a girl with delicate features stepped forward from the crowd. Let's all say less. At a time like this, we should be more united and help each other. Shin Niaoka, the class committee secretary from a distinguished family, said, although you are indeed a bit of trouble, we will not abandon you. I hope you won't hold a grudge against everyone. Let's continue to be friends. She extended her right hand sincerely. Suddenly, there was a loud clang. A metal window was pushed down from above, and a monstrous hand, several meters long, reached in through the window. The claw grabbed a student's head and easily lifted him up. The gymnasium erupted in screams of terror. Everyone desperately ran towards the back of the gym. Before the student could cry for help, he was swiftly pulled out of the window. The creature, a large cat-like beast, licked its blood-red tongue and then put the student in its mouth. Everyone was petrified, running for their lives towards the back of the gym, leaving Yang Xinxin behind, with only Liu Karen struggling to push her wheelchair. When they reached the back door, they found it frozen shut, impossible to open. Some students were so anxious they wet themselves. Everyone's face turned pale with fear. The beast, now inside the gym, played with the male student in its mouth, before biting off his head with a crunch. The girls, witnessing this scene, were completely stunned and collapsed to the ground. The beast threw the remains aside and roared menacingly at the crowd, as if sizing up its prey. The student
students realized that the creature before them was a highly intelligent monster. It had taken the opportunity to attack them while the teacher protecting them had gone to find food. All the students were cornered in one part of the gym, too scared to fight back. Suddenly, someone unexpectedly pushed Yang Xinxin's wheelchair out into the open. Caught off guard, Yang Xinxin fell to the ground. Liu Karen wanted to help her up, but was paralyzed with fear and unable to move. The big cat-like creature was indeed attracted by this action and slowly approached Yang Xinxin. The student who had pushed her wheelchair, seeing an opportunity, tried to run towards the door. However, the creature, having observed everything, revealed a mocking smile and swiftly swatted the fleeing student with its paw, causing severe internal injuries with what seemed like a gentle strike. This student, born into a prominent family, had always been seen as a winner in life, but now faced a tragic and sudden end. Barely alive, he called for help, but no one dared to come forward. Liu Karen, mustering her courage, went to help Yang Xinxin up. The others realized that while Li Yong had tried to run and was killed, Yang Xinxin, who appeared to be lying still, had survived the attack. It seemed the monster targeted moving objects first. Knowing they couldn't just play dead, the students decided they had to alert teacher Liang to come back, or they would all perish. While the creature was preoccupied with Li Yong, not killing him outright, but playing with him like a toy, the class monitor instructed everyone to scatter and run. However, just as they were about to seize the opportunity to escape, the dying Li Yong, seeing everyone abandoning him, cried out in despair. They are here. They are trying to run. Then, with a spiteful roar, he yelled, if I'm going to die, you're all going down with me. The sudden shout from Li Yong indeed caught the big cat's attention. It swiftly turned and knocked down two more boys. Li Yong, with blood in his mouth, laughed maniacally, if I have to die, we all die together. You all will be my funeral companions. While the big cat was distracted by these two groups, the class monitor, along with two others, dashed out of the gymnasium. Their faces were filled with relief, having narrowly escaped death. The two accompanying the class monitor complimented him. It's all thanks to your smart strategy of letting others distract the creature, giving us a chance to escape. The class monitor, while running, explained, I noticed that the creature seemed to be a mutated cat. Cats play with their prey before eating, and unless they are extremely hungry, they aren't much interested in dead prey. Seeing the class monitor escape, other students also tried to flee. However, the big cat's tail, over 10 meters long, whipped out with a loud crack, brutally striking one of them. Several girls collapsed an emotional breakdown, screaming in pain and terror. Just then, an angry shout resonated, you damned wild cat, don't harm my students. Hearing this, the students who had lost all hope suddenly saw a glimmer of light. It was Teacher Liang. Teacher Liang had finally returned, wielding an ancient longsword and charging fearlessly towards the big cat. The cat let out a piercing screech, dodging her attack. Teacher Liang's eyes filled with immense sorrow upon seeing the bodies of the students, but considering the safety of those still inside the gymnasium, she decided to lure the creature outside to avoid further casualties. Teacher Liang was a top-level swordmaster, having served as a personal bodyguard to a leader's wife, and her strength had only increased after awakening her special abilities. As a specially appointed teacher at Azure Sky Academy, she had voluntarily taken on the responsibility of protecting the students. The big cat seemed to understand Liang Yu's intent and, grabbing the body of a student in its jaws, quickly disappeared outside the gymnasium. Holding her sword with both hands, Liang Yu cautiously walked towards the door, well aware of the big cat's intelligence and the need not to underestimate it. Stepping outside, she found that the creature had vanished, leaving only a chaotic trail of massive footprints. It seemed to have moved away, and Liang Yu couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, though a wave of indescribable exhaustion washed over her. In the two months since the apocalypse began, more than half of the students had died. If not for her fortuitous awakening of special abilities, she would have lost this deadly game of cat and mouse long ago, and everyone, including herself, would have been dead. Liang Yu threw the hard-earned food in front of the students. Class monitor, please divide the food, she said, then found a corner to sit down wearily. She was extremely tired. The majority of the school had perished since the apocalypse, and she had been protecting the surviving students from monster attacks while also fetching food from the school's warehouse. The strain had taken its toll. At this moment, Zhang Mingning lashed out at Yang Xinxin again. Why are you still alive? You're the most useless one here. Liu Karen stepped up once more, indignantly responding, Can you please be reasonable? What does the monster attack have to do with Yang Xinxin? But Zhang Mingning was relentless. I just can't stand her. The cripple. What about it? Shen Miaoka tried to calm things down. Let's all say less. She suggested, taking a portion of the food to give to Yang Xinxin. But before she could hand it over, Zhang Mingning knocked it to the ground and snapped viciously, giving her food as a waste. The school's food supply is limited. This cripple will be eaten by the monsters sooner or later anyway. It's better to save the food for the rest of us. Teacher Liang Yu, who had been resting with her eyes closed, slowly opened them. She had become accustomed to the conflicts among the students and was too exhausted to deal with these trivial matters. As long as there was no loss of life, she had to conserve her energy to focus on the mutated big cat. Suddenly, a girl, overwhelmed with despair, screamed, Stop arguing. It's all pointless. I've realized we're all going to die. We're just food that the monster is keeping. 
it comes periodically to pick a few of us to eat, never killing too many at once because it prefers its prey alive. There's no hope left in this world, and no rescue is coming. The class monitor looked at the food in her hand. I don't believe it. There must be hope. We are the future elites of society. We won't just die here. He looked at the snow-covered rooftops. If we can just contact the outside world, my dad will surely send someone to rescue us. At that moment, the sound of a car engine broke the silence. The three special ability users, following the navigation, had finally arrived at Azure Sky Academy after an hour. As I got out of the car, I drew my pistol, reminding the others to stay alert. Uncle Yu, a former soldier and the eldest of the three, felt it was his duty to protect the others. He stood at the forefront, his physique the strongest among them. But faced with the snow-covered campus, it was impossible to determine where the person they were supposed to rescue was. I tried contacting Yang Xinxin on my phone, but there was no signal. Then, I suggested to the others, this school spans 3,000 acres. According to the 3D map, there should still be high-rise buildings visible above the snow. Let's get back in the car and search slowly. Uncle Yu's suggestion to split up for efficiency was met with my caution. There's no need to rush. I shook my head. She survived two months already. A little longer won't hurt. It's safer for us to stay together. We continued to search the area by car and soon discovered a visible spire, likely the school's astronomy center, which was some distance from the cafeteria and dormitories. Chun Lei speculated, they're probably hiding in a lecture hall or gymnasium. Those places are more spacious and have enough oxygen. Plus, there's the risk of snow collapsing the roofs. I pondered. During the call, there was mention of a gymnasium and cafeteria, but this campus is huge, with several cafeterias and gymnasiums. The search might be quite challenging. While I was deep in thought, Chun Lei excitedly shouted, John, over here. We might be able to get in. He used his abilities to clear the observatory's skylight, and then crawled inside. John, there's a lot of astronomical equipment here. Should we collect it? I was somewhat exasperated. We're here to rescue people, not collect supplies. But since we're here, we might as well store it in my extra-dimensional space. Chun Lei, encouraged, worked with Uncle Yu to enter through the window. Just then, I felt a sudden chill behind me, like being watched by a beast. I immediately raised my gun, ready for combat. A giant creature, over 10 meters tall, appeared on the snowy field, its eyes fixed on me, seemingly ready to pounce at any moment. We stood off for several seconds, but I didn't sense any intent to kill from it. In the midst of my contemplation, Chun Lei and Uncle Yu emerged from the snow, intending to ask me for some ropes to access the observatory. Chun Lei, upon seeing the monstrous creature, instinctively unleashed his ice-based abilities. Countless ice spikes formed and hurtled towards the creature. My attempt to stop him was too late. The snow was Chun Lei's element, and his attack was swift and decisive. The ice spikes hit the creature, eliciting a pain screech. Enraged, the creature lunged at Chun Lei with incredible speed, belying its massive size. I immediately activated my abilities, covering my body in a protective layer and enhancing my speed. Leaping into the air, I fired three shots at the creature's head with my gun. Surprisingly, the bullets, even armor-piercing ones, barely did any damage, sparking off its hide. As the creature neared Chun Lei, Uncle Yu stepped forward, his body radiating a golden light as his muscles expanded, transforming him into a towering figure. He delivered a powerful punch to the creature's head, causing the ice beneath him to crack. The beast's head twisted almost 90 degrees, and it staggered back, letting out a pain meow. Realizing we were dealing with a mutated giant cat, I switched to a sniper rifle. The creature's defense was extraordinary, its fur-like steel spikes, rendering the handgun ineffective. The beast, having taken a punch from Uncle Yu, turned and charged at me. I raised my sniper rifle and fired. The creature, sensing danger, couldn't dodge fast enough and was hit squarely on the cheek. Now thoroughly enraged, the creature's killing intent surged, and it slowly approached me with a twisted expression. Then, unexpectedly, it curled into a massive ball and rolled towards me at high speed. Stunned by this unexpected move, I couldn't help but exclaim in shock, what in the world is this tactic? As the mutated cat charged towards me with incredible speed, I quickly opened a dimensional portal, intending to trap it in my extra-dimensional space where even the mightiest would be worn down by the static world inside. However, I underestimated the creature's acute sense of danger. It detected the threat and, with a swift jump, evaded my attack, then darted towards a snow pile, leaving behind several dark holes in the snow. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu hurried over. John, are you alright? I raised my sniper rifle, keeping an eye on the cat. This creature is cunning. Be careful. Suddenly, the cat let out a few piercing cries, sounding almost like cursing, laden with a high degree of animosity. Uncle Yu, slightly bewildered, remarked, this beast seems to be cursing, and it's the kind with a high fuck content. The three of them were speechless. Then, they saw the big cat turn around, wiggle its butt, and it disappeared right into the snow. How did it vanish so suddenly? Uncle Yu wondered aloud. Chun Lei, equally astonished, speculated, could this creature possess space-related abilities too? I lowered my sniper rifle thoughtfully. Unlikely, if it had space abilities, it would have used them earlier. I'm also very sensitive to spatial fluctuations. It seems the cat just ran away. Approaching the spot where the cat disappeared, we realized it had burrowed into the ground. Chun Lei, looking serious, said,
dead. It seems the person we're trying to rescue encountered this creature, but it's strong and seemingly intelligent. How did ordinary people survive until now? John, are you sure about your information? My contemplation was deepened by Chun Lei's analysis. Even as a special ability user, he had nearly been overpowered by the creature. Considering its massive size and the consequent amount of food it would require, it seemed unlikely it could have survived this long by solely preying on the people at the school. But there's a puzzling detail. The creature didn't show hostility at first. It was provoked by your ice attack. It seems its intelligence has evolved, possibly to a level comparable to humans. We looked at the large burrows, speculating, perhaps these tunnels are what allowed air circulation underground, enabling survivors to avoid suffocation. With this in mind, I stood up. Let's go down and check. Chun Lei was alarmed. Go down there? That's its territory. I looked at him with a hint of disdain. Aren't you an ice ability user? Snow is your element. If that cat dares attack, just use your powers to bury it alive. Chun Lei, embarrassed, replied, right, I forgot about my abilities. We then jumped down into the cavern, finding an extensive network of tunnels under the snow, suggesting the creature had indeed been living there for a long time. With the complex network of tunnels, Chun Lei worried about getting lost, but I took out a box of colored pencils to mark our path. Uncle Yu sniffed a faint scent of blood. This must be the smell from that creature. Chun Lei, hesitant again, suggested, let's search in areas with less of that smell. I rolled my eyes at him. If you're scared, go back. We're three ability users. There's nothing to fear. If we encounter it, it's likely to be the one running away. I then took out a gleaming golden pistol, a desert eagle, one of the most powerful handguns in the world, and loaded it with ammunition. Uncle Yu, the veteran, recognized it at a glance. This is the famous desert eagle, one of the most powerful handguns in the world today. Its lethality is almost ten times that of a regular police handgun. This is a limited edition, custom ordered by Wang Siming for a hefty price. Its kinetic energy is comparable to a sniper rifle. Uncle Yu, your tracking skills are strong. Let's follow the scent of blood. If it's hunting, it will be near living people. Finding it should lead us to the location of the survivors. At this moment, Chun Lei still had a face full of fear. The power of his special ability did not make his courage any bigger. I looked at this timid fat man with a look of contempt. Stand at the back then. What are you afraid of? If we do encounter it, just use your ice abilities to trap it. We'll handle the rest. But we need to gauge its intentions first. If it remains passive, fine. If it attacks, we take it down without hesitation. My words seemed to reassure Chun Lei a bit. Meanwhile, inside the gymnasium of Azure Sky Academy, Lian Yu had been vigilantly guarding the students for three days and nights, wary of another attack by the giant cat. Aware that the creature was lurking nearby, she knew that leaving her post would expose her students to imminent danger. Pushed to her physical limits after three days without food, she realized that they couldn't continue this way. Starvation posed a greater threat than the creature itself. While she was deep in thought, the class monitor and Shinyaka approached her. Teacher Liang, shouldn't you go out and find some food? We're all starving, the class monitor said. Shinyaka, looking pitiful, added, you are our only hope for survival. You can't rest anymore. If we don't freeze to death, we'll die of hunger. She fought to keep her emotions in check, reminding herself that as a teacher, she should not lose her temper with her students. Taking a deep breath, she struggled to stand up despite her exhaustion. What if the creature attacks while I'm gone? She asked them. Shinyaka, frowning slightly, urged, that's why you must be quick this time and come back as soon as possible. The class monitor interjected, holding back Shinyaka and speaking calmly. Teacher Liang, I have a plan. We will do our best to protect the other students. To himself, the class monitor harbored contempt for Liang Yu's self-sacrificing attitude. At this point, the teacher still wants to play the saint, protecting students. If it were me, I wouldn't care about the life or death of others. I could have all the school stored food to myself, but it's also a blessing to have someone like her around. Otherwise, I might have died a long time ago. Shin Miao pleaded with a desperate look. Teacher Liang, you're our only hope. Please save us. We'll starve without food. Liang Yu, supporting herself with her longsword, decided, then, I'll make a trip outside. Be careful on your own. Wu Chen Yu, the class monitor, had his own plans. Over the past month, he had observed the creature's behavior, toyed with its prey, and usually took only two or three students at a time. He had already selected a few expendable individuals to use as a diversion in case the creature attacked. As Liang Yu left the gymnasium, she was aware that the creature was likely nearby, waiting for an opportunity. She didn't venture far, determined to face the creature in a do-or-die battle. Today, either the creature or I will survive. If necessary, I'm prepared to sacrifice myself to take it down. Back in the gymnasium, Lu Karen continued to care for Yang Xinxin. Does your hand still hurt? Yang Xinxin looked at her only friend with gratitude. In this weather, I can hardly feel the pain. Lu Karen encouraged her with a resolute gaze. Believe that we can survive this. Don't give up hope. At this moment, another wave of mocking laughter came from behind. Really wishful thinking. Do you think you'll always be this lucky? I really don't see any point in you being disabled, living. If I were you, I would have ended it all by myself by now. Yet you're still here, disgusting everyone else. The other students also join in with their cold and hot mockery. You're just a burden, persisting like this. The next time the monster appears, it will be your end. Yang Xinxin remained silent. She was a girl not adept at arguing, except maybe online. 
Liu Karen couldn't stand it anymore and wanted to speak up for Yang Xingqin. But just as she looked up, she saw a huge shadow suddenly appear outside the window. She suddenly stood up and, pushing Yang Xingqin, yelled, run fast. At the same time, a large claw broke through the window, reaching in wildly. Wu Qingyu and others, although frightened, had already planned for this. He had rallied a few physically stronger classmates, grabbing a few unlucky ones to push towards the monster. The pushed students were instantly squashed into a pulp with a plop. The students were terrified and fled in panic. Outside the gymnasium, the monster had not noticed Liang Yu behind it. Liang Yu's eyes were sharp, and she held a long sword in her hand, charging fiercely towards the monster. By the time the big cat reacted, it was already too late. With a swoosh, a blade light harshly slashed across the big cat's neck. The big cat let out a piercing scream. The students, watching this scene, were too scared to move. They could do nothing but run behind teacher Liang, loudly cheering her on and encouraging her. Liang Yu also firmly blocked the entrance to the gymnasium, not giving the monster a chance to approach. Just then, Zhang Yi and others arrived at the entrance, following the noise. Their appearance caught the attention of both the person and the monster. Liang Yu's eyes suddenly lit up with hope. These are all strangers. They must have come from outside to rescue us. Thinking this, Liang Yu shouted, Quick, come over and help. Upon seeing a young and beautiful woman, Chun Lei was about to make a move, but her hand was held back by Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi watched the woman intently, realizing her exceptional combat skills. Such sharp swordsmanship was not something an ordinary person could achieve. She must be a powerful individual with special abilities. It was unclear whether she was a friend or foe. Most importantly, their goal was to find people, and there was no need to get involved in unrelated battles. The big cat was no good creature, and acting rashly could put all three of them at risk. Let's not meddle in others' affairs for now. Our priority is to find people. This woman seems capable enough to handle herself. Uncle Yu also noticed the situation, thinking that this woman could probably beat him too. Her swordsmanship looked painful even to watch. It was better to stay away from this woman. The three of them turned a blind eye and left directly. Liang Yu was speechless. They were all humans, so why wouldn't they help fight the monster together? She angrily shouted, aren't you guys men? But the three continued to ignore her. Soon, with a bang, Uncle Yu kicked open the gymnasium door. The students screamed at first, but upon seeing three humans, they felt much more relieved. Zhang Yi quickly spotted the girl in the wheelchair. Good thing we arrived in time, or it would have been a wasted effort. Just then, Wu Qing Yu approached them. Are you from West Mountain Base? Did my father send you to pick me up? What is West Mountain Base? Zhang Yi heard this for the first time. Wu Qing Yu said, my father is Wu Jiangwo, the leader of Heavenly Sea City. You must be familiar with this name. Zhang Yi scoffed, never heard of it. He found the young man in front of him somewhat amusing. Although his clothes were expensive, he clearly hadn't bathed or changed clothes in two months, looking no different from a street beggar, yet still trying to act like a young master. The contrast was quite amusing, but Zhang Yi wanted to gather some information about West Mountain Base, a place he had heard about from Wang Siming and Su Hao. So, he asked, what do you know about West Mountain Organization? Tell us about it. Wu Chen Yu was a bit taken aback. Are you from another shelter? Then he mused to himself, West Mountain Base is the closest to the school, so why did they send you? Hearing this, Zhang Yi became interested. He was aware that Heavenly Sea City had several emergency shelters, but clearly, they were not the ones Wu Chen Yu mentioned. Recalling that Wang Siming had also mentioned something similar, Zhang Yi thought that there must indeed be higher level shelters in Heavenly Sea City, and not just one. Deciding to play along to see how much information he could get from Wu Qing Yu, Zhang Yi casually asked, What do you know about the shelters? Wu Qing Yu, not as naive as he seemed, immediately sensed something was off and waved his hand, saying, Been studying in this closed off school. When the snow disaster first started, I didn't think it would be this serious, or else I would have gone there earlier. Observing Wu Qing Yu, who looked more like a beggar than a rich young master, Zhang Yi thought that he probably didn't have any valuable information. After all, he had been trapped there for so long. If there was a way to contact the outside world, his influential father would have rescued him by now. Seeing Wu Qing Yu as no longer valuable, Zhang Yi ignored him and approached Yang Xingqin. The other students, seeing that Zhang Yi and his companions didn't seem like bad people, gathered around them, eagerly proposing offers. If you take me out, I can give you as much money as you want. My dad is the chairman of Chongming Group. I can even get my dad to arrange an official position for you, they said. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu looked embarrassed amidst these energetic young men and women. They felt somewhat reluctant to hurt these youths' feelings. Even a girl approached Uncle Yu, asking, Do you have a partner? If your wife doesn't mind, I am willing to be the third party. However, they did not dare to speak as the decision lay with Zhang Yi. When Zhang Yi reached Yang Xinxin and confirmed her identity, he prepared to take her away. But Yang Xinxin stopped him, asking, Can you do me a favor? Zhang Yi smiled gently and said, Sure, as long as it's not something like saving your entire class. Yang Xinxin looked towards the corridor outside the gymnasium. Can you please stop them from continuing to fight? I'm worried it might be dangerous. Zhang Yi immediately sensed the underlying meaning. Just to stop them? Why not ask me to help your teacher? But Zhang Yi didn't want to probe further. After all, he would need her to help maintain cybersecurity in the future, and this was a good opportunity to earn her favor. He then gestured for Chun Lei 
and Uncle Yu to come over and the three of them headed towards the outside of the gymnasium. At that moment, Liang Yi was fiercely battling with the big cat, with the cat's fur scattered all over the ground. Zhang Yi casually collected a few strands into his alternate space, thinking they might be worth studying later. He then gave Chun Lei a look, and he instantly understood, using his ice and snow abilities. A giant crack suddenly appeared above the corridor. In the next second, a massive collapse of ice and snow occurred, separating the person and the cat. The big cat vanished in an instant. Liang Yu, shaking with anger, turned and glared at Zhang Yi and Chun Lei, shouting, What are you doing? Chun Lei, frightened, quickly hid behind Zhang Yi, who casually replied, You don't need to thank me. It's only natural for humans to help each other. Liang Yu raised her long sword in fury. Why did you do that? I was about to subdue that monster. Why did you save it? She had been burning her physical energy for this final battle, ready to fight the big cat to the death. Now, she was furious at Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi appeared innocent. We wanted to help you, afraid that the monster might hurt you. Pointing at Yang Xinxin, he added, It was your student who asked me to intervene. Otherwise, do you think I would bother? As he turned to push Yang Xinxin, Liang Yu, unable to contain her anger, shouted for him to stop and, like lightning, swung her long sword towards him. Zhang Yi, seeing her murderous intent and feeling his safety threatened, knew he had to retaliate, regardless of the reason. He instantly drew his golden desert eagle. The gun's massive recoil made him step back. But what happened next stunned him. Liang Yu, with a swing of her long sword, created a fan-shaped afterimage, splitting the bullet in two. Zhang Yi was astonished. How is that possible? She split the bullet with her bare hands. But Liang Yu continued her relentless assault, swiftly moving towards Zhang Yi with her sword. Zhang Yi's mouth curved into a strange arc. Now, he quickly opened a dimensional gate in front of him. Liang Yu, realizing the danger too late, vanished into the gate. The massive inertia knocked Zhang Yi over. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu moved to help him, but Zhang Yi gestured for them to keep their distance. After about two seconds of having Liang Yu in the alternate space, Zhang Yi quickly reopened the dimensional gate to release her. Liang Yu lay on the ground, weakened, as time in the alternate space nearly stops, and staying there too long can be lethal. There was no need to be so ruthless in front of Yang Xinxin. Zhang Yi spread his hands with a hint of frustration. Why are you always so fierce? I tried to help you out of goodwill, and you treat it like an ungrateful act. Picking up Liang Yu's long sword lying nearby, he joked, to prevent any more trouble from you, I better keep this dangerous thing for now. Holding the long sword, he mused that it must be an extraordinary weapon, capable of splitting bullets, and thought it might be useful for cutting vegetables back at the shelter. Liang Yu struggled to get up, demanding, give me back my dragon's roar. Zhang Yi turned to the crowd and waved, can a few of you help your teacher to rest in the corner? Liang Yu, weak and powerless, was helped to a corner, continuing to utter threats feebly. Who exactly are are you? What are you doing here? Pointing at Yang Xinxin, Zhang Yi explained, she's the sister of my girlfriends. I came to take her away. Hearing this, Liang Yu's expression changed instantly, becoming pleading, then can't you take everyone with you? The students, seizing a lifeline, began to plead excitedly, take us away too. That monster has already eaten thousands of people in the school. My dad is a bureau chief. My dad is a department head. I can arrange whatever you want. Amidst the clamor, Zhang Yi, losing patience, raised his voice, enough. I'm only taking Yang Xinxin. I can't be responsible for anyone else. I'm only taking my own family. You can contact your own families, can't you? The students became anxious, explaining that there was no phone signal and they hadn't been able to contact their families. Observing the state of Zhang Yi and his companions, along with their previous actions, Liang Yu realized they were extraordinary. She pleaded, please, save these lovely children. They are the future hope of our country. Hearing their pleas, Zhang Yi couldn't help but laugh. They've been raised with the finest education and born with silver spoons in their mouths. Children of high officials and wealthy magnates. Maybe they can score or high marks. But what real contribution can they make to society? I haven't found any value in them. Are you sure you want to entrust the hope of the nation to these kinds of people? He waved his hand jokingly. I'm just a commoner. I can't save these elites. I'm only here to save my own family. As he prepared to leave with Yang Xinxin, a few students harbored malicious intentions and quietly approached her. Suddenly, one of them grabbed her neck. Lu Karen was also pinned down by a male student. Xiang Mingning, with a ferocious look, threatened, if you don't take us with you, I will strangle her right now. Liang Yu urgently tried to intervene. Stop Stop it. We are all classmates. You can't do this. But they were deaf to Liang Yu's words, seeing her merely as a bodyguard. Zhang Yi, looking resigned, turned to Uncle Yu and Chun Lei and said with a laugh, They dare to threaten me. Don't they know the last person who threatened me is now under two meters of snow? While appearing casual, Zhang Yi had already switched to two police pistols and, without hesitation, fired four shots, dropping the four perpetrators. The surrounding students screamed in horror, having never witnessed such a scene. Liang Yu was also shocked, trembling as she said, These are just kids. How can you be 
she's so cruel. You monster. Xiangyi scoffed. Do you think they're still kids? They know how to take classmates as hostages. You call that childish? He ignored their moral blackmail and approached Yang Xinxin, who was now expressionless, evidently shocked by the recent events. But as long as her mind was still functioning, it shouldn't be a big problem after her sister talked to her. He then extended his hand towards Yang Xinxin. Let's go. Your brother-in-law will take you home. Yang Xinxin, snapping out of her daze, hesitantly said. Can you also take my friend? She looked towards Lu Karen. Zhang Yi thought to himself that Lu Karen seemed like an innocent and naive girl. Although Lu Karen looked pretty, he didn't need someone just to eat his food. Seeing Zhang Yi's hesitation, Yang Xinxin quickly added, Lu Karen was also specially admitted like me. This school only admits two types of students, children of high officials and wealthy magnates, and geniuses recruited for their talents to enhance the school's reputation. Lu Karen is a genius in the field of mechanics, having won numerous awards, both domestically and internationally. Her abilities are on par with a PhD from MIT. This wheelchair I'm using was custom made for me by her. It's perfect. Hearing this, Zhang Yi took a second look at Lu Karen, realizing that his shelter could indeed use a skilled mechanic. The combination of their skills in hardware and software could offer endless possibilities. He then looked at Lu Karen seriously and asked, Tell me, what value can you provide? Lu Karen's eyes lit up as she quickly responded, I have a deep understanding of automotive industrial design and maintenance, and I've also studied various firearms. If you take me with you, I can use my skills to modify cars and firearms for you. Plus, I've been studying forging techniques since I was young, so I'm also very skilled in crafting cold weapons. Anything you need, I can handle. Zhang Yi felt like he had found a treasure. He admitted that this girl had intrigued him. His shelter truly needed a talent like hers. Standing up and pushing Yang Xinxin's wheelchair, he feigned reluctance, but was inwardly delighted. For the sake of Yang Xinxin's sister, I'll take you with us. Lu Karen nearly jumped for joy, knowing that staying behind would mean enduring her classmates' harassment. This was her only chance for survival. She quickly and sensibly helped Zhang Yi with the wheelchair. Seeing Lu Karen earn Zhang Yi's favor through her abilities, other students started to crowd around, eagerly trying to promote themselves. Mr. Zhang, I can be useful too. I'm an excellent driver. I can drive for you. I'm fluent in eight languages. I can be your translator. They pleaded. While it was undeniable that there were indeed many talented individuals among the students, Zhang Yi struggled to see how their skills would be of use in the post-apocalyptic world. Suddenly, a long-haired girl bravely stepped forward from the crowd, blocking Zhang Yi's path. You can't just leave like this. Teacher Liang was close to killing that monster. It was your interference that allowed it to escape. If you're going to leave, at least help us deal with the monster first. She was Shen Miaoka, the class committee leader. Zhang Yi, holding his gun, spoke coldly. I admire your courage, but let me be clear. Whether I came or not, your fate would be the same. Death. Seeing his firm stance, the other students dared not say more. Before leaving, Yang Xinxin looked at Liang Yu. Teacher Liang, thank you for taking care of me all this time. Although none of her classmates were good people, Teacher Liang had indeed been a responsible and caring teacher. Yang Xinxin knew that Liang Yu would never abandon the other students to leave with them, so she didn't invite her. After Zhang Yi and his group had walked some distance, Liang Yu suddenly got an idea. Let's follow them. I'm severely injured, and that monster won't be in a good condition either. It probably won't dare to come out for a while. Following them, at least we can find a way out of here. So, they followed Zhang Yi's group from a distance. Chun Lei asked softly, Is it okay for them to follow us like this? Zhang Yi scoffed, If you feel sorry for them, go save them. If you want to get rid of them, a slight effort from you would be enough to bury them all alive right here. Chun Lei was startled. They've done nothing to me. I couldn't do such a thing. Zhang Yi quickened his pace. When you're poor, you look after yourself. When you're rich, you can have many wives and concubines. I can't afford to take care of these pampered sons and daughters of privilege. Chun Lei nodded quickly, and soon they reached the surface. Zhang Yi turned to Chun Lei. You go with Uncle Yu on the motorcycle. Chun Lei appeared reluctant. It's going to be freezing. Zhang Yi handed him a helmet. You, an ice and snow ability user, are afraid of the cold? Wouldn't that be a joke to others? Chun Lei then realized it might not be so bad. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed a ride. As Zhang Yi gently placed Yang Xinxin in the front passenger seat, Lu Karen tactfully took the back seat. They then left Azure Sky Academy swiftly. Back on the surface, Liang Yu and her group, witnessing the departing vehicle, were stunned. Shen Miaoka, looking lost, asked, What should we do now? Everything around us is covered in snow. At least going back, we have shelter from the wind and snow. Wu Chen Yu stepped forward with a smile, unlocking his phone. Let me handle this. As expected, there's signal outside. He planned to contact his influential father to arrange for them to be taken to West Mountain Base. Inside the warm car, Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen were immersed in comfort. Zhang Yi waved his hand, and two bottles of drinks and some bread appeared before them. You must be starving. Go ahead and replenish some energy, but don't eat too quickly. We don't want any stomach issues, he advised. The girls, moved to tears, gratefully accepted the food. Brother Zhang, you're really kind, they said before eagerly beginning to eat. Once they finished, Zhang Yi started a conversation with them. Yang Xinxin, you're really impressive, he said, catching her off guard. How am I impressive? I've always been seen as a burden by everyone. If it
it weren't for Teacher Liang and Lu Karen always protecting and taking care of me, I probably would have died long ago. Lu Karen quickly joined in. We're good sisters. No need to be formal. Zhang Yi smiled enigmatically. Anyway, I think you're definitely extraordinary. Despite being disabled from a young age, you've survived two months in the post-apocalyptic world under the threat of that monster. Once or twice could be attributed to luck, or Lu Karen's protection, but this long duration seems quite intriguing. I don't think it's just a coincidence. Am I right? Lu Karen looked confused, while Yang Xinxin's innocent smile gradually faded, replaced by a slightly disturbed expression. She responded, Brother Zhang Yi, you really are extraordinary. No wonder you've managed to survive so stylishly until now and even take care of my two clumsy sisters. Zhang Yi laughed, all these coincidences coming together, it's hard not to be suspicious, especially earlier, during the battle between Teacher Liang and the Big Cat. You only asked me to stop them, not to protect Teacher Liang. This suggests your goal might have been to protect that monster, without harming Liang Yu. So I deduce that the Big Cat is a pet you've raised, right? And your classmates are its living food, aren't they? Yang Xinxin's expression turned profound. Brother Zhang, you're indeed not simple, but you've only guessed about 60 or 70 percent correctly. I'm not as cruel as you imagine. I'm not the owner of Flower. I never thought of hurting my classmates. However, Flower has indeed been protecting me. At this, Lu Karen realized, Flower is the stray cat you used to feed, right? So the monster is Flower, mutated. Yang Xinxin confirmed this, explaining that Flower had never attacked them because of their previous connection. Lu Karen was in disbelief. Every time the monster appeared, it scared her so much she could barely stand, yet it never harmed them. She always thought they were just lucky. Zhang Yi's interest in the big cat grew. When he first arrived at Azure Sky Academy, it was difficult to locate Yang Xinxin, but the appearance of the big cat seemed to guide him, leading him quickly to the gymnasium. This high intelligence mutant animal, if tamed, could be an excellent asset, given that animals are often more loyal than humans. Looking at Yang Xinxin with a playful expression, Zhang Yi said, So you mean that the cat didn't attack you just because you had fed it and it felt grateful? I think there's more to it than that. Yang Xinxin's awkward smile revealed a deeper cunning. Brother Zhang indeed has keen insight. After mutating, Flower's intelligence evolved, and it even understands human language. I had informed it in advance that someone would come to pick me up and told it not to attack strangers rashly. Fortunately, Brother Zhang is powerful, so no harm came to you. Zhang Yi pressed further. So, the deaths of your classmates were also orchestrated by you through the big cat. Yang Xinxin denied any direct involvement. There were indeed people among my classmates whom I disliked, but I never wished them dead. Most of them died, because they had previously mistreated Flower when it was still a stray cat. Plus, Flower needed to feed. However, the situation gradually spiraled out of control. Many classmates started to distort their mentality, thinking I, as a disabled person, was dragging everyone down, even deliberately pushing me out as a human shield. As she spoke, Yang Xinxin's face twisted into a sinister smile. These ridiculous fools. They never realized that Flower would never harm me. Every time I survived and scathed, those with malicious intentions towards me grew more resentful. I enjoyed watching them hate me and ultimately meet their tragic end. Lu Karen fell silent, recalling the numerous narrow escapes, now realizing that everything indeed made sense. Yang Xinxin, playing with a bottle in her hand as if petting a cat, continued, so eventually, I stopped caring. The people who bullied me dying was better off. Later, Flower played with them, eliminating them one by one. I can't say it was entirely unrelated to me. Suddenly, she looked at Zhang Yi with anticipation. So, do you think what I did was cruel? Zhang Yi stared at her for two seconds. Cruel? This young lady is a kindred spirit. If it were me, I would have been far more ruthless. He then sneered. I came to rescue you solely because your sisters begged me, and because of your computer skills. I'm not concerned with the other matters. Yang Xinxin found his reasoning acceptable. After all, in this post-apocalyptic world, those without value were inevitably discarded. Zhang Yi shifted the conversation back to practical matters. As long as you follow my instructions and demonstrate your value in the team, I'll ensure you're well taken care of. That's not difficult for me. The girls, clearly impressed, continued their enthusiastic admiration. Zhang Yi then pondered another question. Yang Xinxin, if you had the means to contact the outside world all this time, why wait until now? And how did you solve the issue with the signal? Yang Xinxin smiled cunningly. Brother Zhang, I am one of the world's top hackers. Solving a signal issue is child's play for me, especially with Flower's help. As for contacting you, I never counted on my foolish sisters. You, Zhang Yi, were my target all along. This revelation left Zhang Yi feeling outmaneuvered in terms of intellect. The rescue he thought he was conducting had been a trap set by the genius girl. He asked, you say I was your target from the start, but we had no prior connection. How so? Yang Xinxin, with a hint of pride, explained, I thought my stepsister had died long ago. Given her dim-witted nature, she was only fit for the entertainment industry. I never expected her to save me. It was only when I started receiving some junk messages. While speaking, Yang Xinxin pulled out a cell phone from her pocket. This phone had a very unique design, unlike any model available on the market, suggesting it was a custom-made device. No wonder it had such powerful signal reception capabilities. Yang Xinxin continued, 
dude, don't underestimate this phone in my hand. Its performance is comparable to a supercomputer. With just a flick of my finger, all your secrets are no secrets to me. As she said this, Yang Xinxin suddenly took on a love-struck expression. Brother Zhang, you are my idol. A mere warehouse manager, thriving in this post-apocalyptic world. Zhang Yi felt a chill down his spine, realizing the ease with which a top hacker like Yang Xinxin could access someone's secrets in this information age. Zhang Yi began to panic and asked uneasily, What do you know? Yang Xinxin, poking at her phone, confidently replied, You could say I know everything. From the Walmart theft to your bank transfer records, from building your safe house to almost killing the entire neighborhood, and then later going to the shelter in Su family town. As she spoke, Yang Xinxin's face turned red with excitement, her eyes filled with adoration. After reading your story, I just think you're so amazing, brother. You're like my idol. Zhang Yi, with a speechless expression, thought to himself, turns out she's a Yandera. I can't handle someone like this. Being involved with her could be either good or bad. He took a sharp breath and asked, so, you used your two sisters to contact me, asking me to save you? Yang Xinxin, acting cute, nodded, something like that. But even if you hadn't come to save me, I would have definitely come to you. Based on all your actions, I figured you were the cautious type. I wasn't sure if you'd come, but you did, and I'm so happy and touched. Hearing this, Zhang Yi started to doubt his life. He had always thought he was in control, only to fall into someone else's trap. This girl's cunning is terrifying, but such a person is better as an ally than an enemy. Then, with a smile, Zhang Yi asked, I can see you're close with that mutated cat named Flower. Does it completely obey your orders? Yang Xinxin shook her head. It seems you've never had a cat, brother. Cats can only be friends. If you're good to it, it will be good to you. But if you want to be its master, that's nearly impossible, especially with a stray cat. Zhang Yi sighed. Too bad. I thought if I could make this powerful cat mine, it would be perfect. Just then, a huge figure appeared in the rearview mirror, the mighty mutated cat. Zhang Yi muttered to himself. It seems this cat is quite attached to Yang Xinxin. Is it worried about its master? Zhang Yi couldn't help but feel secretly delighted. The big cat had indeed followed them. Although he knew that such stray cats were extremely difficult to tame and wouldn't easily trust humans, he had plenty of high-quality cat food and dried fish in his warehouse. Coupled with his relationship with Yang Xinxin, there was still a chance he could win the cat over. Seeing Flower chasing after the car, Yang Xinxin even opened the window. Even Lu Karen, who was initially terrified of this creature, started to find the cat cute. Soon, the group returned to the shelter. To thank Chun Lei, Zhang Yi gave him a pillow, which made him as happy as a 300-pound child. For Uncle Yu, Zhang Yi brought out two large barrels of refined oil, exactly what he needed. Both Uncle Yu and Chun Lei left happily, promising to help whenever needed in the future. After they parted ways, Zhang Yi led the two girls into the shelter. As soon as they entered, Lu Karen became so excited that she started crying, exclaiming, Brother Zhang, you are so amazing. This place is like heaven. It's hard to imagine such a happy place exists in a post-apocalyptic world. Yang Xinxin also looked around with wide eyes, full of astonishment. Zhang Yi, patting Lu Karen on the shoulder, said, as long as you two behave and help me solve problems, you'll always have a place in this shelter. I'll make sure you're well-fed and clothed. Suddenly, Yang Xinxin blushed and asked, does helping you solve problems include personal matters? Zhang Yi was speechless. This girl really dares to ask, he thought. Oblivious Lu Karen didn't understand the implication. Zhang Yi then knelt down, pinching Yang Xinxin's cheek affectionately and said, you're quite knowledgeable, aren't you? But don't feel pressured. Your main task is to maintain the shelter's cybersecurity. I won't force you into anything else. Zhang Yi knew his limits. Despite finding the girl attractive, he wasn't the type to fall for everyone he met. After hearing Zhang Yi's words, Yang Xinxin felt a sense of loss. She looked at her disabled legs and wondered if he was rejecting her because of her disability. Just then, Yang Mi rushed down from upstairs, excitedly shouting, Brother Zhang, you really saved Yang Xinxin. I'm so glad you're alive. She then grabbed Yang Xinxin's hand. You silly girl, why didn't you contact me earlier? Do you know how worried your sister was? Yang Xinxin abruptly shook off Yang Mi's hand, saying, what's the use of contacting you earlier? You're just an actress who became famous by exploiting men's fantasy. Do you need me to tell you your own worth? If I hadn't found out you were with brother Zhang Yi, I wouldn't bother contacting someone like you. Yang Mi was visibly embarrassed, while Zhang Yi sat on the sofa, disinterestedly eating melon seeds, thinking to himself that the relationship between these cousins seemed rather strained. He understood why Yang Xinxin, a highly intelligent computer genius, would look down on a celebrity like Yang Mi, who gained fame through her physical appearance. Show Kier, listening to their conversation, focused on the fact that Yang Xinxin referred to Zhang Yi as brother Zhang Yi. She felt a pang of jealousy. Knowing Yang Xinxin's high IQ of 180 made her respect for someone quite rare. Since when has she been so polite to anyone, she wondered. The shelter became lively with their arrival. After some introductions, it turned out that Lu Karen also came from a highly educated family, both parents being university professors. She was polite and complimented her two new sisters, praising their family's strong genes and their beauty, which made both of them quite pleased. Zhang Yi then stood up and patted Yang Mi, instructing her to prepare a meal to welcome the newcomers. He also asked Joe Care to prepare rooms for
for Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen. The girls went to take a bath, and soon, the meal was ready. After bathing, they seemed to look at Zhang Yi with more affection, grateful for his help and the comfortable home he provided. During the meal, Zhang Yi began assigning tasks. Yang Xinxin, from now on, you'll handle the shelter's cybersecurity. That's not too difficult for you, right? Yang Xinxin confidently responded, Don't worry, brother Zhang Yi, I've got this. Then Zhang Yi turned to Lu Karen, who immediately tensed up and sat up straight, hands on her knees. Since you're an expert in mechanics, making weapons and ammunition shouldn't be hard for you, right? Zhang Yi looked intently at Lu Karen, who shyly replied, Well, it's not difficult for me, but I need specialized equipment, and ammunition materials are strictly controlled. It's hard for ordinary people to access them. However, if it's about making cold weapons, that's much simpler. With the right metal and forging equipment, I can handle it. Zhang Yi smiled faintly, No problem, come with me. He then led Lu Karen to a spacious room on the underground level. With a swift motion, he revealed a large array of heavy machinery. Zhang Yi wasn't very familiar with these machines himself. Take a look and see if these will be useful. If not, I have more, or I can find some from outside factories if necessary. Lu Karen's eyes lit up at the sight of the advanced equipment. These are no ordinary machines. Most are imported high-end equipment, costing millions. Excitedly, Lu Karen assured Zhang Yi, this is more than enough. There are a few machines that might not be useful, but I can dismantle them for parts. Despite her delicate appearance, as a genius in the field of mechanics, her knowledge was extensive, and her hands-on skills were exceptional. She flexed her well-toned biceps, reassuring him, Don't worry, brother Zhang Yi, I've got this under control. Seeing her enthusiasm, Zhang Yi felt genuinely pleased. Since you're an expert in mechanics, you must be familiar with materials too. He then took out the long sword he had taken from Liang Yu. Could you check this for me? See if there's anything special about this long sword. Maybe it's some ancient divine weapon. When I took it, your teacher looked like he wanted to devour me. Lu Karen took the sword, her face alight with excitement as if she were examining a rare treasure. This is a masterpiece of modern cold weaponry, the dragon's roar. Lu Karen, with a sense of reluctance, sheathed the dragon's roar and excitedly explained, this sword, named Dragon's Roar, was personally forged by the greatest swordsmith, Yuan Lin. It's not an ancient divine weapon, but a pinnacle of modern technology. It's made from adamant and alloy, a metal developed just ten years ago, and the hardest material known so far. Zhang Yi couldn't help but marvel, seems like my trip to Azure Sky Academy was indeed fruitful. Lu Karen continued, adamant alloy's hardness is comparable to the legendary vibranium, but it's extremely expensive to produce and not suitable for mass military manufacturing. When crafted by a master into a cold weapon, it can easily cut through iron and even split diamonds. This long sword is particularly exceptional. It was awarded to Teacher Liang as a high honor for bravely protecting a leader while serving as a bodyguard. It's of great significance to him, almost more important than her life. Holding the extraordinary sword, Zhang Yi felt secretly thrilled. No wonder that fierce woman could fight a demonic cat with her mortal body. Having such a treasure for self-defense is perfect. As dinner time approached, Zhang Yi prepared a lavish feast to welcome Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen. They hadn't enjoyed a warm meal in a long time. At first, they ate modestly, but gradually their dining became more extravagant. Lu Karen, biting into a large piece of meat, mumbled, the school was actually quite well stocked. With only a few hundred teachers and students, it had numerous high-end cafeterias and a warehouse full of international ingredients. There were even several large convenience stores. Zhang Yi smiled faintly. The concept of such an elite school was beyond his understanding. Then Lu Karen looked at Zhang Yi with admiration. I'm so glad brother Zhang Yi came. In this cold weather, even with the school's supplies, we might have frozen to death eventually. Zhang Yi looked at Lu Karen with a brotherly gaze. You took shelter in the spacious gymnasium, huddling together for warmth, so it wasn't too cold. But now that you're here, just prove your worth, and I assure you'll be well fed and clothed. After dinner, everyone relaxed on the sofa while Zhang Yi turned on the TV. Among the few news broadcasts still airing, they received unsettling news. The extreme cold weather, persisting for two months, had caused global disruption. Regions were fighting fiercely for resources, and the concept of nation-states had all but collapsed. Some armed organizations had rapidly risen, using force to control resources and even enslaving survivors. This news undoubtedly cast a shadow of oppression over them. Zhang Yi grew tense, realizing the situation was worse than he had thought. Yang Mi, seeking comfort, clung to him and said anxiously, What should we do? I'm so scared. How did things suddenly turn out like this? Zhang Yi, maintaining his composure, replied, This was expected. Previously, these armed forces had some restraints, at least respecting decisions from national leaders. But now, everyone has realized that this ice age won't end soon, so they've become fearless in their actions, relying on their own military strength. Yang Xinxin added, It's like the rules and regulations of some organizations. They are there, and even if not everyone follows them, their existence deters extreme actions. But now, there's no order left. Zhang Yi nodded in agreement with Yang Xinxin and sighed. The only outcome is that local armed forces may transform into warlords. This means a warlord era is likely approaching soon. Once it reaches that stage, the lives of ordinary people will become as insignificant as 
grass. Then, he wheeled Yang Xinxin to the control room. Her eyes lit up at the sight of the massive supercomputer, resembling something out of a sci-fi movie. Zhang Yi patted her shoulder. The shelter's cybersecurity is now your responsibility. Yang Xinxin, transfixed on the holographic screen, nodded repeatedly. Zhang Yi, watching her intense focus, thought to himself, having such a high IQ computer genius, who is paraplegic, in this control room is perfect. He granted Yang Xinxin operational authority just below his own, ensuring she couldn't alter core system components, but could maintain network security. Yang Xinxin began to work her fingers like a pianist. Zhang Yi, standing behind her, couldn't understand what she was doing, but felt impressed by her expertise. In just two minutes, Yang Xinxin completed a thorough check of the shelter's entire network. She paused her work and shared her analysis. This system was the world's most advanced personal network system a decade ago, and remains top tier even now. Its artificial intelligence is incredibly powerful, capable of self-repairing vulnerabilities, theoretically leaving no security loopholes. Her tone shifted, however, that's true only for ordinary hackers. Top hackers can still find vulnerabilities. In these past 10 days alone, there have been thousands of attempted network attacks. Had I not arrived, I estimate your firewall would have been breached in a couple of weeks, crippling the entire shelter. Zhang Yi felt a chill hearing this. I was right to be concerned. After the Lu Fengdai incident, the shelter has probably been under surveillance, and the attackers are no ordinary people. Anxiously, Zhang Yi asked Yang Xinxin, can you fend off these attacks? Yang Xinxin smirked confidently, brother Zhang Yi, I am a world-class top hacker. Cybersecurity is my forte, not to mention offensive hacking. The attackers might be skilled, but to me, they're just amateurs. I'll start by setting up basic defenses, creating a new encrypted network. We can't use the old routers anymore since wireless networks are the easiest to breach. Within a few minutes of efficient work, Yang Xinxin turned back to Zhang Yi and triumphantly declared, brother, I've done it. Her beaming face seemed to say, praise me now. Zhang Yi, understanding the cue, smiled and gently patted her head. Yang Xinxin, you're truly impressive. Then, Yang Xinxin turned back to her work, a hint of disdain on her face. Let's see who dares to invade my network. Now it's my turn to invade theirs. As a top-level hacker, constantly tackling more challenging tasks was her instinct. Zhang Yi, still cautious, advised, if you're not sure, it's better to just protect our own network. There's no need to take unnecessary risks. However, his curiosity about the organizations spying on them was piqued. If you can gather some intelligence about them, try it. Yang Xinxin assured him with a smile. Don't worry, brother. Judging by their previous attempts, they are nowhere near my level. Even if I can't breach their network, I can at least mask my own tracks. They won't be able to trace me. Just then, Zhou Kier burst into the control room, her voice trembling. There's a monster outside the shelter's door, as tall as a building. Zhang Yi and Yang Xinxin exchanged a glance and chuckled. Seems like your cat really can't let go of you. It even found its way here. Yang Xinxin tilted her head. Flower trusts only me now. It must be worried and followed me here. Zhang Yi contemplated. This might be the perfect opportunity to tame it. We need to do it, or the people across the river at Su Family Town might be in danger. With this in mind, Zhang Yi wheeled Yang Xinxin out of the control room. Zhou Kier, pale with fear, clung to Zhang Yi for comfort. There's a huge cat, lying outside the window, staring inside. Lu Karen said we need Yang Xinxin to come out. Zhang Yi reassured her. It's okay. This big cat is a friend of Yang Xinxin. He then pushed Yang Xinxin towards the floor-to-ceiling window. Flower lay quietly in the snow, seemingly without malice, occasionally meowing as if asking for food. Upon seeing Yang Xinxin, it closed its eyes, appearing tired, and began to doze off. It seemed to have been waiting there for a while, covered in a layer of snow. Zhang Yi thought, this cat must be exhausted from its fight with Liang Yu, with many sword wounds on its body. Now it's tired, hungry, and in pain. This might be the best time to tame it. Deciding this, Zhang Yi prepared to take Yang Xinxin outside. Let's go feed this poor big cat. When Yang Xinxin appeared, the big cat indeed showed a look of joy. However, upon seeing Zhang Yi behind her, it cautiously stepped back. After all, they had faced each other directly when they first arrived at Azure Sky Academy. Zhang Yi noticed the big cat's wariness and immediately opened a portal to another dimension. With a whoosh, heaps of cat food and dried fish fell out. Zhang Yi picked up a bag of cat food and began to tease the big cat, saying, Wanna try some? It's chaotic outside now. Why don't you become my pet? I have plenty of this cat food. The big cat stared intensely at the cat food in Zhang Yi's hand, unable to stop swallowing its saliva. Zhang Yi was secretly pleased, thinking, It's just a cat after all. It's not hard to deal with as long as there's food, but he was quickly proven wrong. The big cat suddenly stood up, its eyes instantly becoming alert as if to say, You think you can tame me with just a bit of cat food? You're underestimating me. Yang Xinxin, sitting in a wheelchair, smiled and said, Brother Zhang Yi, stray cats are much more cautious than pet cats. It took me several months to become friends with it. Zhang Yi had plenty of time to build trust with the big cat. He was just worried it might attack the village across the river. He wasn't concerned about the lives of the people in Su family town, but was afraid of spoiling his relationship with Chun Lei, since it was they who had lured the cat here. After some thought, Zhang Yi said to Flower, Although you don't trust me yet, I can still provide 
provide you with food. In return, you have to promise not to attack the villagers across the river. Can you do that? The cat, indeed intelligent, quickly understood Zhang Yi's request and nodded happily. Having reached an agreement, Zhang Yi returned to the shelter, thinking there was plenty of pet snacks in the other dimension to feed the creature. However, with such a large cat, those snacks wouldn't last long, so he would need to find other food to feed it in the future. Just as he returned to the living room, he heard Zhou Kier and Yang Mi's surprised and delighted exclamations. Zhang Yi looked out the window to find the big cat had disappeared. Zhou Kier excitedly pulled Zhang Yi to look at the pile of cat food. Zhang Yi widened his eyes in surprise. The creature could change its size at will. The originally over 10 meter long giant mutant cat had turned into a normal sized tabby cat. Zhang Yi was quite pleased as this would save a lot on food. That's when Lu Karen suddenly realized something, explaining, if it has always been this size, our deceased classmates wouldn't have been enough to fill its stomach, right? Yang Xinxin also analyzed, saying, every time flower appears, it's very sudden, which is completely illogical. With such a large size, it's impossible to be so silent, even avoiding detection by a master like Teacher Liang. All signs indicate that it has always been able to change its size at will. Suddenly, Yang Xinxin furrowed her brows in worry and said, there seems to be blood on flower. Zhang Yi immediately bent down for a closer look. Indeed, there is a cut on flower's body. Although the blood is frozen, the wound looks quite deep. This must be the injury inflicted by Liang Yu's dragon's roar. No wonder it looks so listless, but flower doesn't seem to care much about this wound. After all, for a stray cat, such injuries might not be a big deal. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment. It seems I should prepare some medicine for it tomorrow and take the opportunity to build some trust, but I definitely can't go now. Cats are very wary when eating and could see me as a threat to their food. Of course, I can't let Yang Xinxin do it either, as I need to build a good relationship with the cat myself. That night, Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen shared a room. Lu Karen, lying in the warm, spacious room, joked with Yang Xinxin, Am I dreaming? This morning we were freezing and starving in a snow cave, and now we're in a heavenly room. Yang Xinxin smiled gently. All this is thanks to brother Zhang Yi. He's my idol. To have such a super shelter in this post-apocalyptic world. Hearing this, Lu Karen clenched her fists with resolve. I must prove my worth in the future and not disappoint brother Zhang's care for me. Curious, Yang Xinxin asked, What did you do today? Lu Karen excitedly replied, I familiarized myself with the equipment. Next, I might need to craft some weapons. However, brother doesn't seem to lack conventional firearms. Bullets and bombs might be more useful to him, so I'll focus on researching these kinds of weaponry. Lu Karen, grateful and aware of the debt she owed, spent the whole night contemplating Zhang Yi's potential needs. Early the next morning, Lu Karen shared her ideas with Zhang Yi, which coincided with his own thoughts. Zhang Yi also felt that the traps outside were too rudimentary. They might deter the brutes from Su family town, but were inadequate against more organized groups. Therefore, landmines and explosives were precisely what he needed. Lu Karen confidently assured him, no problem, leave it to me. After Zhang Yi and his group left Azure Sky Academy, Liang Yi led the students to the surface. Wu Qingyu, elated, took out his phone to call his father, Wu Jianwo, for rescue. The signal was stronger on the surface, and he soon contacted his father. After learning about their situation, Wu Jianwo told them to stay put and not move, as he would arrange for someone to come for their rescue. The students cheered at the news, thrilled at the prospect of leaving the dreaded place. Some also tried contacting their families, but received no responses, leading them to fear the worst for their loved ones. However, some students felt a sense of unease. They wondered why Wu Qingyu's father, if he had the capability to rescue them, hadn't come to search for them earlier. Why wait until now? And if he didn't have the ability to save his son, why would he promise to do so? These questions also left Liang Yu extremely puzzled. The mysterious West Mountain base finally made its move. As Wu Chenyu and others were quietly waiting at the cave entrance, suddenly, a strange noise came from outside, and Wu Chenyu became incredibly excited, scrambling out of the cave entrance while excitedly shouting, My dad has finally sent someone. The other students also got up and hurriedly followed, as if afraid of being left behind. Liang Yu, with Chen Yauka's support, also slowly walked out of the snow cave to see a long dog sled just stopping. These dogs were clearly extraordinary, resembling well-trained military dogs. At that moment, Liang Yu immediately noticed something amiss. Seven or eight soldiers, wearing special uniforms and exuding an exceptionally strong presence, indicating they were seasoned and elite veterans, disembarked. Instead of approaching them directly, the soldiers talked among themselves, eyeing the group of students as if inspecting animals. An excited Wu Qingyu approached and asked, did my father send you to pick me up? One among the crowd lifted his helmet to reveal a somewhat haggard face and excitedly said, little Yu, I'm here. Wu Qingyu was initially in disbelief, taking a few seconds to vaguely recognize 
recognize, is this really my dear dad? It wasn't his fault for not recognizing him immediately. His father, as a top official in Heavenly Sea City, usually had an appearance of prosperity, while this man before him had become almost unrecognizably thin. Wu Chingyu, confused but still overjoyed, embraced his father and said, Dad, you finally came. Do you know what I've been through these past two months? Expressing some resentment, Wu Chingyu pushed his father away, angrily shouting, Why didn't you come to pick me up sooner? Do you know I almost died here? Wu Jiangwo looked cowardly and embarrassed, saying, Let's not talk about that now. The important thing is you're safe. Let's go home with Dad first. At this moment, a soldier approached with a condescending tone, asking, We heard your school warehouse has quite a few supplies. Please lead the way. These supplies must be taken back to the base. It was only then that Leon Yu realized something was amiss. These people don't seem like they're here to rescue us. They seem only interested in the supplies. Wu Chinyu, in a feigned diligent manner, said, There are indeed many supplies under the snow, but there's also a mutated big cat inside. We are no match for it. The soldiers discussed among themselves for a while, and the captain declared, No big deal about a monster. We have experience dealing with mutated creatures. Just lead the way, and you can leave the rest to us. Wu Chinyu panicked at this. He had no desire to return to that perilous snow cave. Certain these soldiers couldn't ensure his safety. Thinking this, Wu Chinyu pointed at Liang Yu and said, All the supplies for us students were found by teacher Liang. She knows the location of the supplies better. In a bid for his safety, Wu Chinyu did not hesitate to betray Liang Yu. Liang Yu sighed deeply and took the initiative, saying, I'll lead you there then. Soon, the soldiers followed her towards the cave entrance. The anxious students asked, Can we go back first? But a soldier coldly rebuked, Just stay put. Once we find the supplies, arrangements will be made for you. Sensing a subtle shift in the atmosphere, the students grew uneasy. Not long after, sounds echoed from the cave entrance, and a soldier popped his head out, shouting, You boys, come over and help carry some things. The boys had no choice but to comply. The soldiers then directed the students to load all the found supplies onto the sleds. Some students began to whisper complaints. Weren't they supposed to rescue us? Why does it feel like we're being used as labor now? The students, daring not to speak out loud, quietly complained to class leader Wu Chingyu. Didn't you say your father was a leader? Why are we doing this hard labor? Wu Chingyu, equally embarrassed, had always bragged about his father being the top person at West Mountain Base. But given the current situation, it seemed his father's position within the West Mountain organization wasn't that high after all. He quietly explained, it must be due to a shortage of manpower. In an icebound apocalypse, there won't be any extra hands. We can rest once we get to the base. Soon, all the pack supplies were moved onto the sled, and the soldiers quickly set off with the fully loaded sleds, leaving behind two soldiers who waved at Liang Yu and the students, saying, let's go. Watching the sleds disappear into the distance, the students were dumbfounded. Founded. Is there no other sled arranged for us? Do we have to walk there? These were kids used to comfort and luxury. The West Mountain base was at least a dozen kilometers away. One girl immediately protested, We've been starving and suffering for so long. How can we possibly walk that far? Listening to the students' back and forth protests, the two soldiers were filled with scorn. Shut the hell up. One of the soldiers suddenly bellowed, his military authority and aura of decisiveness instantly subduing the students. Follow me if you don't want to die, or else crawl back to the cave, he said before turning away impatiently. The other soldier coldly added, Let me remind you, no matter if you were children of high officials or wealthy tycoons before, it's all worthless now in the apocalypse. If you want to survive, just obey. After dropping a bag of energy bars, he turned and left. Some students were instantly devastated, clearly unable to accept this harsh reality. Liang Yu picked up the energy bars and encouraged, Let's gather our spirits and follow them. The school's food has been taken away. Staying here means certain death. West Mountain Base is our only hope for survival. Teacher Liang is their moral support. A glimpse of hope began to kindle in everyone's hearts. Thus, the students proceeded, supporting each other, consuming an energy bar when they couldn't go on. Two hours later, they finally reached the entrance of West Mountain Base, a giant iron door slowly opening. Guided by the two soldiers, the students hurriedly entered, seeing this place as a safe haven and a hope for a better life. Descending along the staircase, Liang Yu and the others didn't know how long they walked until they reached a spacious room, much warmer than outside. Both excited and scared, the students wondered, what are we going to do next? Liang Yu reassured them, don't worry, they wouldn't have brought us all the way here to harm us. Just then, a door opened, and a group of people in protective suits, carrying devices resembling pesticide sprayers, emerged and began to spray the students vigorously. Following them, a formidable middle-aged woman stepped forward, cleared her throat, and commanded loudly, everyone, line up, we are disinfecting you as a precaution. A full body check will follow, for the safety of everyone in the base, please cooperate fully. Following that, two medical staff arrived at the scene. Under the orders of the stout woman, everyone had their blood samples taken for testing. Then, under the guidance of the soldiers, they were led into a room. After the arduous trek through miles of snow, everyone was exhausted. The soldiers, menacing with their weapons, commanded obedience without question, and no one had the energy or courage to speak up. Liang Yu and the students found themselves
confined in a spacious room. Soon, a person in protective clothing brought in a large basin of food. The students exchanged wary glances. This white, viscous liquid, what is it? It smells decent though. Driven by hunger, they grabbed spoons and began to eat ravenously. It tastes a bit like yogurt, but it's definitely not yogurt. Just as they had replenished some of their strength, the door suddenly opened, and Wu Jiangwo, accompanied by the stout woman, entered. Wu Chengyu, upon seeing his father, excitedly called out to him. The stout woman glanced at Wu Chengyu, a sinister smile crossing her face. She turned to Wu Jiangwo and remarked, Is this young fellow your son? He looks robust. Wu Jiangwo replied obsequiously, Yes, Director Su. Director Su then announced loudly with her hands behind her back, The blood sample tests are back. Everyone is healthy, no infectious diseases or suspicious viruses. Indeed, college students have good resistance, but everyone still needs to undergo a thorough cleansing, after which you will be assigned to the fourth survival pod. As the staff directed, everyone lined up for the deep cleaning. At that moment, Director Su pointed at Wu Chengyu and said, You, come with me. Wu Chengyu's eyes lit up, and he began boasting to his classmates. I told you my father has a significant position here. He'll make sure I'm well taken care of. I'm not like the rest of you. The classmates looked at him with envy. Wu Jiangwo then whispered in his ear, Little you, these are extraordinary times. You must abide by the rules here. You cannot refuse what the leaders ask of you. Remember that. Wu Chengyu nodded, somewhat puzzled, thinking he might be assigned to some important position. Then, Director Su warmly put an arm around Wu Chengyu's shoulder, saying, Wu Chengyu, right? Come with me. Watching Wu Chengyu receive special treatment, everyone else was filled with envy. Wu Chengyu followed Director Su through the shelter, marveling at the vastness of West Mountain Base. The temperature underground was much warmer, around 6 or 7 degrees Celsius, a stark contrast to the outside cold. Soldiers in white uniforms guarded every door, making the place seem extremely solemn and secure. Director Su led Wu Chengyu to a room and directed him to the bathroom. Go take a shower. Wu Chengyu, not having bathed for two months, didn't think twice. Excited for a hot shower, he rushed into the bathroom and indulged for a full half hour. However, upon emerging from the bathroom, wrapped only in a towel, he was stunned. The room was bathed in a suggestive pink light, and Director Su was dressed in a scanty outfit, her eyes filled with seductive intent. Before Wu Chengyu could react, she pulled him close. What are you waiting for? Come here. After the encounter, Director Su, seemingly satisfied, dressed and left the room. Wu Jiangwo had been waiting outside the whole time. As Director Su exited, he approached obsequiously. Director Su, was my son to your satisfaction? She gave a thumbs up. He's definitely the son of Director Wu. I'm quite pleased with his talents. Did he inherit them from you? Wu Jiangwo responded with a foolish smile. Please, don't call me Director anymore. Those days are behind me. Director Su commanded, clean up the tissues and such inside. I'll arrange for extra supplies to be issued to you. Wu Jiangwo was overjoyed, bowing deeply in gratitude. Thank you for your generosity. Director Su, call on me anytime you need, and I'll bring my son right over to serve you. Meanwhile, Liang Yu and the other students had just completed their deep cleaning and were dressed in new clothes, which they found quite unfashionable. These styles and colors are so outdated, they complained. Just then, a leader-like woman with glasses entered. Everyone, follow me. I'll take you to where you'll be working and living. Behind the woman with glasses stood two armed soldiers, casting a gloomy aura over everyone. The students, lined up and following the leader, felt a growing sense of unease. Deep underground, under the dim lighting guarded by armed soldiers, a palpable sense of oppression made it hard for them to breathe. They huddled together, looking to Liang Yu for guidance. As a large iron door rose, they were presented with a massive workspace filled with bicycles. To their astonishment, inside were thousands of people pedaling vigorously. Every face was empty, numb, and exhausted, yet no one dared to stop. A privileged young lady, stunned, asked, What are these people doing? The woman with glasses glanced over her shoulder and explained, This is your workplace. Your job will be to generate electricity for the base. These bicycles are connected to the power system. You will each receive a manual of the base's regulations, which you must adhere to strictly or face severe consequences. Her expression was ice cold, not impatient, but terrifying enough to chill one's bones. You better work hard. Your ration is linked to the amount of electricity you generate. If you want to survive, don't slack off. Suddenly, a girl collapsed to the ground, crying bitterly, clutching at teacher Liang's hand, repeatedly calling out to her. All the girls began to cry, their tears flowing freely. Accustomed to a life of luxury, these young women had never experienced such hardship and instinctively looked to their only teacher for hope. They reminisced about the better days at Azure Sky Academy, where teacher Liang had taken care of everything, protecting them and finding food. Now, the environment was akin to the sweatshops of old societies. The female leader was indifferent to their crying. Save your pity party. I advise you to conserve your energy for generating power. Otherwise, I guarantee you won't even have the energy to cry. Liang Yu comforted the students, saying, Even though I have special abilities, with these armed soldiers right next to us, I dare not revolt. Liang Yu then realized, this place is no longer the so-called official refuge. It has become a tool for some power organization. We students can't get proper placement. It seems my previous thoughts were too naive. Elsewhere, after directing
director Su closed the door and left. Wu Jiangwo rushed into the room, concerned for his son. Wu Qingyu lay on the bed, exhausted, his eyes no longer focused. Wu Jiangwo looked at his son with a pain expression and said, Lil Yu, are you alright? He then sighed deeply, the rules of the game are like this now. If you want to survive standing, you must be prepared to accept everything lying down. You'll get used to it eventually. Wu Qingyu, tears streaming down his face, looked at his father and asked, how could it turn out like this? Aren't you the chief? Why didn't you tell me about the situation here earlier? Wu Qingyu thought that coming here, he could continue living as a privileged second generation official. Wu Jiangwo, with a heavy voice, said, after the apocalypse, all the rules changed. The so-called chief position is now worthless. He then began to recount what had happened since the apocalypse. Initially, the people who came to the base were from the top of the pyramid and heavenly sea city. Everyone respected each other, and researchers speculated that the snow disaster would end soon, and everyone could return to their positions, restoring their former status and cooperation. But soon, scientists discovered that the effects of the supernova explosion were far beyond anyone's expectations. The Earth had entered an ice age, which might not end for decades or even centuries. This meant that the past status and identity would cease to exist. At that moment, a group of people awakened powerful special abilities, widening the class gap. Those in control of armed forces rebelled and seized control of West Mountain Base, eventually imposing a hierarchy. Wu Jiangwo continued gravely, wherever there are humans, there will be hierarchies. What happened to you today is the first lesson of your life and death struggle in the future. Now, we are at the bottom, so we must unconditionally submit to the rulers. To survive, these sacrifices are actually nothing. Meanwhile, Liang Yu and her students had a busy day and finally got some rest. Only now did they start to grasp the full extent of their situation. After pedaling bicycles for an entire day, they were rewarded with only a bowl of some protein paste-like food. The students, accustomed to a life of luxury, couldn't adapt to the intense labor and oppressive environment. They gathered around teacher Liang, lamenting, we've pedaled all day and our backsides are sore. When will this end? I'd rather die than continue like this. Seeing her students in such agony, Liang Yu felt deeply pained, but was at a loss for what to do. Under these circumstances, just being alive is already quite difficult. Look at those pedaling with us. All were once people of status. A world where everyone is happy and enjoys life simply doesn't exist. But don't be too pessimistic. At least you are alive and able to fend for yourselves. Liang Yu had come to accept this way of life and even found it less burdensome than before. Previously, she had to care for all the students while constantly guarding against attacks from supernatural beings. One of the students, filled with indignation, declared, we are the elite of society. Why should we work like slaves for them? Teacher Liang, with a look of helplessness, realized that the students still couldn't grasp their new reality. I'm just a teacher. What can I do? Any random person from the power station was a director or leader before. I have no say here. At that moment, the door suddenly opened, and Wu Chinyu walked in, looking dispirited. Everyone quickly surrounded him, asking, your dad is a leader at the base. Can he look out for us? We don't want to pedal the bicycles anymore. Even clerical work would be better. Wu Chinyu, looking grim, responded, don't be delusional. Everyone at the base has a specific role, and your task is to generate power. Teacher Liang approached and asked, Wu Chinyu, what have you done today? Clenching his fists, Wu Chinyu was haunted by the humiliating events of the day. Today, I got a better understanding of the base's current situation with my father. Our position is quite dangerous now. Wu Chinyu, disheartened, shared the current state of the base with Liang Yu. Teacher Liang, we will have to rely on you from now on. Liang Yu, after some thought, seemed to understand Wu Chinyu's implication. Being a martial arts expert and now awakened with special abilities, she knew it was only a matter of time before she became important in the current hierarchy of the base. Wu Chinyu then relayed the intelligence he had gathered. The leader of the West Mountain Organization is Chen Xinyan, a former high-ranking official controlling the armed forces of Heavenly Sea City. Many of his subordinates have awakened special abilities and quickly took control of the entire base, restructuring its order. To manage the organization more effectively, Chen Xinyan divided the base into four tiers of living capsules. The first tier houses Chen Xinyan and his relatives, enjoying the best living conditions. The second tier is mostly top scientists and medical professionals, whose living conditions are comparable to pre-apocalypse standards. The third tier houses the armed forces, originally the elite warriors of Heavenly Sea City, now including powerful squads with special abilities, living in a relatively carefree state. The bottom tier is where we are, the fourth tier, making up the majority of the West Mountain organization, doing the hardest work yet receiving the least resources. We have no way out, closely monitored by the guard team from the third tier. Any act of defiance is tantamount to suicide. The students were stunned by the revelation. One girl, overcome with despair, cried out, does this mean we are trapped here for life? What's the point of living then? Wu Qingyu coldly responded, they agreed to bring us here to replenish their labor force. If you want to end it all, no one will stop you. They don't care about our lives. They can easily replace us with more survivors from outside. At this moment, a tall male student angrily grabbed Wu Qingyu's collar, accusing him, isn't this all your fault? You exposed our location, leading to our resources 
resources being stolen and us being captured to this hellish place to toil. Wu Chenyu, with an impassive expression, simply stared back at him. Do you think staying at Azure Sky Academy would have spared you from being devoured by the cat demons? The boy was left speechless. Wu Chenyu pushed him away forcefully, then turned to Liang Yu and said, Our only hope now is Teacher Liang. You're different from us. You're a special ability user. At West Mountain Base, ability users enjoy privileges. So, Teacher Liang, you must help us. Wu Chenyu's words awakened the students, who quickly surrounded Liang Yu, pleading in a flurry, Teacher Liang, you are our teacher. Looking after students is your responsibility. We can't handle hard labor. If this continues, we'll go insane. Liang Yu, looking helpless, replied, I will ensure your safety, but I'm afraid I can't do much about the division of labor in the base. After a day's rest, her physical strength had mostly recovered. With her current combat ability, she could easily defeat armed soldiers, but she wouldn't lose her reason over it. She even thought that the order of the base was reasonable. Then, she turned and lay on her bed, saying, everyone, rest up. We still have to get up and work tomorrow, or we'll be drained. Reluctantly, the students returned to their beds. Liang Yu felt a bit sorry for them and was willing to try changing the situation if there was a chance. The next morning, the dormitory's loudspeaker went off promptly, and everyone hurriedly prepared, then lined up for the cafeteria. The woman with glasses, accompanied by a few soldiers, took a megaphone and shouted, Good morning, everyone. We've survived another day. Let us thank our great leader, Chen Xinyan, for living happily until now. Everyone excitedly cheered. Long live leader Chen Xinyan. Even Liang Yu's students couldn't help but join in a chant, making her scalp tingle. This is brainwashing, she thought. The woman with glasses continued through the megaphone. Yesterday, the base rescued another group of survivors. Now we're all one big family. Now, let's have our new family members introduce themselves. Welcome. Everyone's eyes turned to Liang Yu and the others, starting to applaud warmly. Liang Yu felt a cold sweat, familiar with this type of brainwashing. This is the famous herd effect. Don't think that just being vigilant will prevent assimilation. Once you integrate into the collective, you'll slowly identify with everyone and everything around you, eventually being unable to extricate yourself. This is why so many intelligent college students fall into scams they once looked down upon. Liang Yu took a deep breath. Although she understood the situation well, she felt helpless and could only lead her students to introduce themselves one by one. The woman with glasses then arranged a morning meeting, starting with a grand chorus of praising the organization, followed by a few enjoyable games. Throughout the morning meeting, Liang Yu noticed subtle changes in her students' expressions. They seemed to be slowly accepting this new group, even starting to chat with the workers they met during the games. Liang Yu found a bittersweet comfort in this, thinking, living in such oblivion is better than waiting for death at Azure Sky Academy. At that moment, a young woman in a black suit, followed by two armed soldiers, entered. The woman with glasses immediately approached her with a flattering demeanor. Secretary Gu, what an honor to have you here. There's no need for you to come to such a place personally. Just send a message, and I'll take care of it for you. Secretary Gu didn't even give the woman a glance, took the megaphone, and announced loudly, we rescued a new group of survivors yesterday. Is Miss Liang Yu here? Liang Yu stood up calmly. I am Liang Yu. Hearing their teacher's name, the students looked towards her with eyes full of hope. Liang Yu walked over slowly. Secretary Gu approached and shook hands with Liang Yu, introducing herself. I am Gu Rou, the secretary of leader Chen Xinyan. Our leader would like to meet you. As soon as these words were said, the entire cafeteria erupted into commotion. Everyone started discussing wildly. The leader of the West Mountain Organization actually wants to meet a newcomer, and even sent a personal secretary to deliver the message. Isn't this treatment a fast track to soaring high? The students were especially thrilled, urging, Teacher Liang, please don't forget about us. Amidst the noisy discussions, Secretary Go looked up slightly, her gaze was stern, and the cafeteria fell silent instantly. She then smiled at Liang Yu and said, Miss Liang, please follow me. Liang Yu was curious about who Chen Xinyan really was, but she knew any opportunity to leave the power plant was a good one. Led by Guru, she quickly arrived at Chen Xinyan's office, where she met a kind-faced, middle-aged man, about 50 years old. As soon as he saw Liang Yu, he walked over with a smile and took her hand, showering her with compliments. Miss Liang is such a responsible and great teacher, leading so many students to survive through such hardships. It's truly admirable. Liang Yu was somewhat overwhelmed by this sudden warmth, and didn't quite understand the situation before Chen Xinyan, still holding her arm, invited her to sit and expressed his desire to seek her advice. His gentle and kind demeanor made Liang Yu feel a sense of warmth she hadn't felt in a long time. After a round of comprehensive compliments, Chen Xinyan shared with Liang Yu his vision for West Mountain Base, including its planned four-tier life pod structure, gradually gaining her approval. Chen Xinyan then earnestly said to Liang Yu, I hope to leverage your strength to maintain this base and preserve the spark of human civilization. Upon hearing this, Liang Yu immediately felt the nobility of Chen Xinyan's intentions and readily agreed, for the future of humanity, I will not shirk from any place where I can be of use. Chen Xinyan's smile deepened, and he called Secretary Guru and indirectly arranged for Liang Yu to be placed in the second life pod, a structure akin to a high-end office building with spacious
spacious corridors and bright lighting, almost making one forget it was hundreds of meters underground. Liang Yu felt she had made the right decision, though the students laboring away on the bicycles generating electricity seemed to have slipped from her mind. Meanwhile, at Lark Manor, Zhang Yi's main task during this period had been feeding the cat. That day, he prepared premium cat treats and even a fresh, golden fish, pleading gently with flour, I've been feeding you for a week now, be my pet, will you? If you agree to come back with me, I'll make sure you're fed well every day. After Flower quickly finished the food, Zhang Yi continued to coax, My place is very warm, you know, there's a cozy fireplace to sit by, why suffer in the cold outdoors? Flower also looked through the French window into the house, observing the warm and comfortable scene inside. For the first time, it showed a hesitant expression. Zhang Yi noticed the change in its eyes and felt hopeful, so he stood up and slowly walked towards the main door. Sure enough, Flower cautiously followed. At that moment, Zhang Yi was as gentle as an old father, step by step trying to lure it inside. Flower indeed followed him into the house. Zhang Yi was ecstatic inside. Once Flower entered the house, it began to wreak havoc without restraint, jumping and scratching everywhere. It even tore at the million dollar sofa. But Zhang Yi watched with a smile, even encouragingly saying, Go ahead and make yourself at home. This is your home now. Meanwhile, Zhou Kier jealously remarked, It's a good thing this cat can't turn into a woman, or I'd have no status at home at all. Fresh into the shelf, Flower was filled with curiosity, causing trouble all day long. Zhang Yi was extremely tolerant, letting it leave footprints everywhere and even not minding when it smashed a million dollar antique vase. It wasn't until Flower, tired from playing, curled up on the chair to rest that Zhang Yi finally breathed a sigh of relief. He knew that building initial trust was most important when dealing with cats. Once that process fails, it's hard to make up for it later. Zhang Yi took a deep breath, thinking, I've never been this tired even when I was groveling in the past. Then he tried to reach out to pet Flower, but before he could touch it, Flower turned around and yelped alert. They awkwardly made eye contact for two seconds before Flower finally lowered its guard and settled down. Zhang Yi took another deep breath, contentedly succeeding in petting Flower. Flower let out a comfortable purr, finally acknowledging Zhang Yi as its owner. Zhang Yi was completely relieved, thinking, I've never been this tired even when groveling to Fan Yuching before. Gaining Flower's trust brought indescribable joy to Zhang Yi. After Flower joined the big family, the shelter was filled with a new kind of happiness. The girls competed to pet the cat daily. Yang Mi even took it with her during her showers. Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen even let it sleep between them. During this time, Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen were not idle either. With Yang Xinxin maintaining the shelter's cyber security, no one in the world dared to breach it. And as a top hacker, Yang Xinxin was not satisfied with just defense. She used her powerful hacking skills to initiate counter invasions along the trails of any attempted breaches. After discovering important information, she immediately notified Zhang Yi. Proudly smiling, Yang Xinxin revealed to Zhang Yi, brother Zhang Yi, that rookie who tried to invade our network has been located by me. She showed him a map in front of Zhang Yi, which he recognized at a glance as the Heavenly Sea City map, clearly marking their own location and another flashing red dot, likely indicating the invader's location. South close, it seems to be in the southwestern frontier of the West Mountain area, just over 30 kilometers from Lark Manor. However, Yang Xinxin coolly remarked, their technology is crude compared to mine, and their equipment isn't very advanced either. I easily breached their system with our supercomputer. The data on their computer is encrypted, though, so it will take some time to crack. But what's certain is that there is a huge organization in the West Mountain area of Heavenly Sea City. Given their proximity, conflict seems inevitable. Zhang Yi crossed his arms and took a deep breath. What's meant to come will always come. I, Zhang Yi, don't seek trouble but am not afraid of it either. If anyone dares to target me, no matter who they are, I'll make sure they pay dearly. Xin Xin, continue to crack that information. The more intelligence we gather, the better. I'm going to check on Karen, he said, heading to the mechanical work shop on the basement level. Upon calling over Lu Karen, who was busy at work, she greeted him with a bright smile, clearly grateful and dedicated to Zhang Yi's instructions. The workshop was noisy and swelteringly hot. She then turned and fetched something from a shelf. Brother Zhang Yi, look what I've got for you, she said, handing him a silencer for a sniper rifle. Zhang Yi was thrilled. The silencer was crucial for him. His already enhanced firearms potency could theoretically allow him to snipe enemies from 300 meters away. The only issue had been the loud noise revealing his position, but now that problem problem was solved. With a thumbs up, Zhang Yi praised, Karen really knows me well. Flattered and blushing, Lu Karen shyly replied, try it and see if it works well. I can adjust and modify it based on your feedback. Just tell me whatever you need in the future, and I'll do my best to make it for you. In the midst of the conversation, Zhang Yi suddenly put his arm around Lu Karen's shoulder, asking in a serious tone, I came specifically for this, but can you make landmines, grenades, and the like? Her heart raced with Zhang Yi's warm hand on her shoulder. She looked at him hesitantly, and a bit defiantly said, is that all you need? I'm an expert in mechanics. The technology in these things is less than that of a new energy battery. Aren't you underestimating me? I learned how to make those in primary school. Their child's play first.
for me. Feeling a bit embarrassed, Zhang Yi thought, even geniuses need recognition. Asking for something without challenge might be an insult to her. Liu Karen saw the bewilderment on Zhang Yi's face and quickly explained, those things are actually outdated. They are single combat equipment from hundreds of years ago. Hardly useful now. Basically, they are just gunpowder. With the right materials, an average middle school student could make them. Zhang Yi suddenly became serious. Times have changed. After the arrival of the extreme cold tide, modern high-tech weapons have become useless. Aircraft carriers and planes are almost scrap metal. Instead, these primitive thermal weapons will become very useful. I just went to Yan Xinxin's place. Our shelter has been targeted. Although we don't understand the opponent's background yet, it's likely a powerful armed organization. So, we have to prepare thoroughly in advance and set up tight traps around the shelter to be foolproof. Hearing this, Liu Karen's expression also turned serious. She suddenly felt that these were not child's play and was filled with a sense of mission. Zhang Yi smiled and stroked her hair. But don't worry, just do as I say. I can handle everything else. With me here, I will protect you, he said, pinching Lu Karen's cheek tenderly and affectionately. The naive Lu Karen was overwhelmed by this and teared up instantly. Zhang Yi continued, actually, I've always wanted to tell you, from the first time I saw you, I felt a special connection. You look so much like my sister, and you always give me the urge to protect you. Lu Karen's eyes filled with tears as she sniffed and said excitedly, really? Zhang Yi gently smiled and replied, absolutely true, when have I ever lied? But at this moment, Lu Karen felt a twinge of disappointment, thinking, just a sister? Before she could ponder further, Zhang Yi continued his affectionate gestures, softly caressing her cheek, just help your brother with his work, leave everything else to me, as long as I'm here, I won't let you suffer a single bit of harm. Seeing Zhang Yi's resolute gaze, Lu Karen's heart fluttered, it was the first time she had been treated so intimately by a man, and she was momentarily lost for words, only managing to nod in agreement repeatedly. Zhang Yi stood up, ready to leave, he said, I won't disturb you any longer, remember, rest when you're tired, drink more water when you're thirsty, and take good good care of yourself, don't overwork yourself. Then, Zhang Yi left the studio, leaving behind his lingering presence in her dazed eyes. Once outside, Zhang Yi took a deep breath, feeling he had once again stirred the emotions of an innocent girl. He thought to himself that with a girl as precious as her, using some benign tactics was necessary. Even leveraging his charm was acceptable when it came to securing dangerous items like weapons, which needed to be firmly in his hands. To heighten the vigilance of Chun Lei and Uncle Yu, Zhang Yi sent them a message urgently, recently, through the supercomputer. We've discussed discovered some unknown forces. They might possess strong military capabilities, and are only 30 kilometers away from me. You two must be very careful in your actions. The country has already collapsed, and anyone claiming to represent the state is 100% a scammer. Do not trust anyone. He also reminded them crucially, most importantly, never reveal your special abilities. Uncle Yu and Chun Lei promptly responded with a sense of urgency, received, and showed concern for Zhang Yi's safety as well. Zhang Yi pondered, it's still unclear how much information the other party has so I dare not leave the shelter rashly. As long as I don't go out, no matter how powerful they are, they can't do anything to me. But then, considering Chun Lei's position across the river, he realized that if the force from the West Hills truly coveted his shelter, Su Family Town would be right on their path. With this in mind, he quickly sent a private message to Chun Lei. If your village encounters danger you can't handle, remember to run in my direction. In this ice-cold apocalypse, Zhang Yi knew the value of an ice ability user and the importance of keeping such a loyal and capable ally safe. Meanwhile, Chun Lei, reading the warning from Zhang Yi, seemed somewhat unconcerned. He mumbled to himself, Brother Zhang is really something. Right across is the big villa area. How could they possibly be interested in my poor village? Meanwhile, about 30 kilometers west of Su Family Town, once a development zone with many buildings under construction, a tall and robust man stepped out of a building, complaining, Why won't this snow stop? If it continues like this, the entire earth will be covered. Beside him, Xia Huanwan smiled faintly and responded, Lu Ziang, stop worrying unnecessarily. We need to focus on completing our mission. Besides, after two months of heavy snow, the moisture in the air has almost condensed and consumed. The snow should stop soon. Xia Huanhuan caught a snowflake in her hand. It said that even the equatorial regions in Africa are now dozens of degrees below zero. From now on, it will only get colder, and snowfall will become increasingly rare. Fortunately, the heavy snow will soon stop. This is probably the creator's last mercy on the world. Lu Ziang, not quite appreciating the poetic sentiment, directly sat on a snow sled. In contrast, Xia Huanhuan Huan mounted a large dog, her petite figure posing no burden to the animal. She took out a device from her pocket, reported the completion of a task from a few days ago, and received new instructions. We were initially limited to the West Mountain area, but according to new orders, we need to make a special search in another place. Although the target isn't specifically mentioned, Xia Huan Huan pondered for a moment, it's probably not a particularly important task. We'll just go through the motions, and then return to base. After a long journey, Xia Huan Huan suddenly stood up and looked into the distance towards Lark Manor where Zhang Yi resided. That
that should be our destination. She then settled herself on the sled. Let's be alert. After searching here, we can finish up. At Xia Huangwan's whistle, for large sled dogs rushed towards their destination. Their initial destination was Zhang Yi's Lark Manor, but the sight of the snow village, especially the enormous ice castle at its center, took Xia Huanghuan and Lu Xiang by surprise. After the heavy snowfall, Chun Lei, using his ice abilities, had helped the villagers construct ice dwellings, particularly his anime-inspired castle in the middle of the village. The arrival of Xia Huanghuan and Lu Xiang alerted the village's sled dogs, whose barking quickly attracted a large group of villagers. Since the battle at Lark Manor, the villagers had been on edge, and any slight commotion brought them out in force, armed and ready. Xia Huanghuan and Lu Xiang were once again astounded. It's incredible to see so many survivors in this extreme cold apocalypse. A leading village Villager, armed with a homemade firearm, confronted them with three critical questions. Who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing here? Xia Huanhuan stepped forward with a slight smile and said, We are from a government organization, dispatched to search for survivors of the snow disaster. Please don't be too nervous. As she spoke, she took out her own credential. She was well aware that these survivors still harbored some hope in the government, and therefore, they had already prepared so-called credentials in advance. The acting village head, Su Dong Tang, examined the credentials and, impressed by their uniform and demeanor, decided to trust them. He quickly turned hospitable. So you are officials. Would you like to come into the village for a visit? He signaled the villagers to prepare food and drink and instructed them to donate some of their stored food to treat these two officials properly. However, some villagers were skeptical. These two are of unknown origin. Is it necessary to treat them this way? Su Dong Tang, with a hint of depth in his words, reassured them. All I need to know is who they represent, not who they are. In these chaotic times, Su East Village has barely survived. If we can establish a connection with influential people, people, it might be the making of the Sioux family. Besides, we're only offering some food, they won't eat much. The villagers, understanding the strategy, brought out their best hidden treasures to treat the guests. Xia Huanhuan and Lu Xiang were taken aback by the lively and well-organized community, seemingly unaffected by the heavy snow and apparently well-supplied. They inquired of village head Su Dong Tang, your village is so well-managed, how did you achieve this? I'm curious. Upon hearing the query, Su Dong Tang puffed out his chest, ready to impress the so-called officials. Firstly, it's the indomitable spirit of self-reliance and resilience of our Sioux family. A mere snow disaster can't defeat us. Of course, as the village head, I've played a significant role. I always remind the villagers to have foresight and be prepared. Hence, most of us haven't worried about food. Su Dong Tang boasted proudly, I don't mean to brag, but no one has starved to death in our village since the snow disaster. Some of the village elders nearby were speechless at his claim, thinking to themselves, this Su Dong Tang really doesn't shy away from claiming credit. He's been village head for less than a week. How did all the achievements suddenly become his. It was all under the command of the old village head, and has nothing to do with Su Dong Tang. Xia Huanhuan casually asked, So, your village has accumulated a lot of food? Su Dong Tang, more self-assured now, replied, Little sister, you seem not very familiar with the agricultural market of Heavenly Sea City. Let me tell you, in the past, one-third of the vegetables in Heavenly Sea City were supplied by our Su family town. Just as he was about to boast further, he caught himself, realizing he shouldn't so easily reveal the village's food reserves. He might inadvertently invite trouble if the the authorities decided to claim them. Quickly shifting his tone, Su Dong Tang said evasively, it's been snowing for over a month and most of the grain and vegetables are nearly spoiled. The villagers are basically struggling to make ends meet. Xia Huanhuan, not easily fooled, commented, for a village as large as Su family town, probably housing hundreds of families, maintaining subsistence is impressive. Su Dong Tang, swelling with pride, continued, actually, it's mainly our Su East village that's managed well. Look at the ice houses we've built. I directed everyone to construct them. Perfect solving our housing problem. Other villages' houses have been buried under the snow. Their village heads didn't have the foresight like me, resulting in many freezing to death. The other villagers watched Su Dongtang's performance, speechless from disbelief, yet due to his status as the village head, they refrained from pointing out the absurdity. Xia Huanhuan and Lu Xiang were incredulous, secretly marveling. I never thought this old man would be so prescient. Lu Xiang remarked as he looked out at the ice castle outside the window. It's incredible that such a structure could be built in this icy apocalypse. Your village's craftsmen must be really skilled. Su Dong Tang started to get carried away. We have many skilled workers in the village. This little skill is nothing to us. However, Su Dong Tang's blatant self promotion inadvertently led to the deliberate overlooking of Chun Lei's presence. In order to entertain the so called leaders, the villagers lined up to bring out long treasured delicacies from their homes. They had been eating compressed food for weeks and now couldn't help but marvel at the feast before them, thinking how wealthy the village must be. At this moment, Su Dong Tang approached with a sycophantic smile to pour wine 
wine, offering as many years treasured drink. Do the two leaders have any insider news? When does the government plan to address the snow disaster? Are there any disaster relief materials being distributed? The two continued to eat and drink silently until Xia Huanhuan said indifferently, We've already made plans for the disaster relief. It should be implemented soon. Hearing this, Su Dongtang and the villagers looked forward with hope. That's wonderful news. These days are too hard to endure. If this continues, our whole village will either freeze or starve to death. Has any expert analyzed when this snow disaster will end? Xia Huanhuan continued nonchalantly. It should be soon. Haven't you noticed the snow has lessened a lot recently? The experts say it will stop soon. Lu Xian couldn't help but glance at Xia Huanhuan, thinking, with her calm and steady demeanor, if I didn't know some inside information, even I would believe her. Suddenly, Xia Huanhuan asked, after the snow disaster, did anyone in your village experience any strange changes? Su Dongtang and the villagers were momentarily stunned, all aware she was referring to Chun Lei. Fortunately, Su Dongtang wasn't too foolish and responded with a forced laugh, everything is normal in our village. Strange changes? We've never heard of such things. Xia Huanhuan and Lu Xiang's mission was to seek resources, but more importantly, to find mutants and bring them back to the base. The villagers' changing expressions did not escape the observant Xia Huanhuan. She put down her wine glass and said indifferently, after the snow disaster, some individuals have undergone mutations and acquired extraordinary abilities. The government highly values these individuals. If you can provide useful information, the organization will reward you generously. The villagers hesitated, not daring to speak in front of the village head, Su Dongtang. He was internally debating whether to disclose Chun Lei's situation, considering he hadn't yet received any tangible benefits. Curious, Su Dongtang asked, may I inquire what the organization plans to do with these individuals? Xia Huanwan's certainty of mutants in the village strengthened. She replied warmly, these powerful mutants will become the backbone of our organization, crucial for rebuilding our community in the future. If you provide useful information, the organization will acknowledge your contribution significantly. Su Dongtang pondered, cynically thinking that promises were easier said than done. He thought to himself, Chun Lei is the village's treasure. Without him, our village would have been doomed after the snow disaster. I can't just hand him over so easily. He then took out his phone. Give me your contact details. If we discover anything unusual, I will report to the leaders immediately. Just then, Xia Huanwan's expression suddenly changed. She stared intently at Su Dongtang with a smile that wasn't quite a smile and said, Village Chief Su, is there something you're not telling us? The sudden change in Xia Huanwan's demeanor scared Su Dongtang, and the atmosphere turned incredibly tense. Su Dongtang's hand froze midair as he stuttered. We are all law-abiding citizens here. I assure you there's no falsehood in our words. Xia Huanhuan, imposingly, tapped the table and pressed. Are you sure there are no mutants in your village? Think carefully before you answer. The organization is taking this matter very seriously. If you dare to hide any information, I guarantee you won't get away with it. Realizing his lie was caught, Su Dongtang looked embarrassed, but quickly thought of a way out and whispered to Xia Huanhuan. Actually, we do know of a strange person, but he's not from our Su East village, so I didn't dare to mention it carelessly. The fellow's name is Zhang Yi, and he lives in Lark Manor across from our village. Upon hearing this, Xia Huanhuan's eyes lit up. The name matched the target mentioned in her special mission. Overjoyed by the coincidence, she thought, this is a perfect opportunity to gather more information. To cover his verbal slip-up, Su Dongtang divulged everything he knew, that Zhang Yi is like a merciless devil. His home is surrounded by traps. A few days ago, we just wanted to borrow some resources from him, and without a word, he killed hundreds of our people. The villagers, fueled by indignation, chimed in one after another. That devil is definitely not normal. His methods are extremely cruel. Observing the villagers' unrestrained anger, Xia Huanhuan thought, this doesn't seem like an act. My final task is to find Zhang Yi, and then I can return to the base for a comfortable life. Eager for any information about Zhang Yi, she inquired, but surprisingly, the whole Su family town knew virtually nothing about him. They couldn't provide age, height, or appearance details because the battle against him was at night. That night, Zhang Yi, like a ghostly sniper, was elusive, and nobody got a clear look at him. They were too busy fleeing in terror. Lu Xiang added urgently, but you must know something about his abilities, right? Su Dongtang helplessly replied, we don't understand these abilities or mutations. We just think that his capabilities are beyond a normal person. His home is surrounded by traps, and he has a snowmobile and a sniper rifle. But as for these matters, you'll need to investigate yourselves. We are just honest, simple farmers. Hearing this, Xia Huanwan's eyes flickered with disappointment. Understanding a mutant's abilities is key to dealing with them, and without this information, her excitement was premature. Seeing no valuable information was forthcoming, Xia Huanhuan and Lu Xiang finished their meal and prepared to leave. Su Dongtang, ever obsequious, escorted them to the village entrance. Leaders, don't forget about Su family town when distributing any good policies in the future. Xia Huanhuan promised with a smile, with such good management of your village, I will definitely report to my superiors. You won't lack rewards after the disaster. Overjoyed, Su Dongtang generously handed them more of his treasure.
treasured wine. Once out of the village, Xia Huanwan quickly pulled out her device to report to the base about Su Family Town. Discovered a large village, Su Family Town, with an approximate survivor count of 2,000. It is estimated to have a considerable stockpile of food. No traces of mutants detected. Lu Ziang, puzzled, asked, why mislead them with false promises of reconstruction and relief plans? Isn't that all nonsense? Disdain, Xia Huanwan looked at Lu Ziang and said, if I didn't deceive them, do you think they would have treated us so well? Without a little intimidation, would they have provided us with accurate information? Lu Ziang, somewhat naively, scratched his head and chuckled, but those villagers seemed so simple and honest. Isn't it too cruel to deceive them like this? Xia Huanwan replied with a meaningful tone, this is why you're just my subordinate. I tell them what they want to hear, as long as they are grateful to me, I don't care about the rest. Lu Ziang, still not convinced, added, what if they find out everything you said was a lie? What will you do then? Xia Huanwan confidently responded, to them, we represent the government, whatever we say is taken as legitimate. When that time comes, I'll have a new script ready. Now, knowing their target was in Lark Manor across the river, Xia Huanhuan and Lu Ziang prepared to meet this Zhang Yi. Lu Ziang pulled out his binoculars, observing Lark Manor carefully. Our trip to Su East Village wasn't fruitless. At least we know his home is surrounded by traps. Xia Huanhuan couldn't help but admire. To live in such a luxurious villa during the apocalypse is indeed enviable. Lu Ziang scoffed. What's there to envy in this godforsaken weather? It's freezing outside. With such a big villa, he can't possibly have enough fuel to keep warm. The temperature inside won't be much better, not to mention the daily necessities. Our base is much more comfortable. Xia Huanhuan thought disdainfully, Umph, if the mastermind behind emptying the southern warehouse is truly Zhang Yi, then whether he has enough supplies or not is really uncertain. Xia Huanhuan said to Lu Ziang, take me over there. She agilely jumped onto his shoulders. Subsequently, Lu Ziang made a sudden leap. They both landed steadily on the wall of the shelter. Once inside the compound, Xia Huanhuan couldn't help but admire this shelter. Built by the wealthy Wang Siming is not only luxurious in appearance but nearly impregnable, comparable to a military fortress. But unfortunately for you, there is no fortress I can't breach in this world. Lu Ziang, concerned, suggested, shouldn't we try to negotiate first? It might be dangerous to barge in like this, especially since your ability isn't combat-oriented. Xia Huanhuan was slightly irritated. Are you teaching me how to do my job? Don't forget, even without mutant abilities, I'm still a special forces soldier. Lu Ziang didn't argue further, just caution her to be careful and to signal him if there was trouble. Confidently, Xia Huanhuan assured him, don't worry, Zhang Yi would never expect someone to invade in this manner. She then slipped through the wall and found herself in the shelter's living room. The warmth of the shelter enveloped her immediately, and she was astonished. This place is even warmer than the West Mountain base. Looking at all the lavish furnishings and appliances, living here is even better than a fairy tale. Xia Huanhuan was now certain that Zhang Yi must possess a wealth of resources, whether food or energy. As she was about to continue exploring, a sudden cat's cry startled her. Considering everything inside was unknown and recognizing the shelter's significance, she decided it was wiser to return and report back. However, unwilling to leave without making her presence known, she placed a military knife on the table as a warning to Zhang Yi, then phased through the walls to leave the shelter. Seeing Xia Huanhuan return safely, Lu Ziang immediately asked, what's the situation inside? Xia Huanhuan, with excitement in her eyes, replied, there's a significant discovery. We need to report back to the base immediately. I'll explain on the way. Lu Ziang, surprised by their abrupt retreat, questioned, we've taken down powerful factions before with ease. Why retreat now? It's not like you to back down, Xia Huanhuan. Is Zhang Yi that formidable? After some thought, Xia Huanhuan explained, judging by the situation inside, my instinct tells me we are no match for him. Besides, I'm not particularly skilled in combat. This is the last mission, and it's prudent to ask for reinforcements from the base rather than take unnecessary risks. Accepting the command, Lu Ziang didn't question further and prepared for their departure. Meanwhile, the noise had awoken Zhang Yi. Opening his eyes, he saw Flower, the cat, on high alert. Its fur bristled as it meowed at the door. Recognizing the cat's unusual agitation, Zhang Yi, with his instincts kicking in, drew his pistol and soothingly asked, What's happened? Do you hear something outside? Although Flower understood human speech, it couldn't communicate back, just anxiously meowed and looked around. Zhang Yi checked his phone for any surveillance, but found nothing unusual. However, Flower seemed eager to go outside. Once the door was opened, Flower jumped onto the bar and directed Zhang Yi's attention to the military knife. Picking up the knife, Zhang Yi examined it, realizing, This is military grade. It's not from my collection, and unlikely anyone else here would have such an item. Zhang Yi's pupils dilated in shock, a chill running down his spine. How could someone have placed this here? And more terrifyingly, how did they bypass the shelter's defenses so silently? As these thoughts raced through his mind, he quickly opened the surveillance footage, replaying the past 10 minutes. The scene that unfolded left him dumbfounded. A woman had casually walked through the living room, seemingly emerging from the wall itself. Zhang Yi was astounded. Such an ability was beyond his comprehension, especially in a world increasingly filled with incredible 
incredible and inexplicable phenomena since the emergence of mutants. He realized the gravity of the threat. This woman must be eliminated. As long as she lives, I won't be able to sleep peacefully. Turning to Flower, Zhang Yi said, You're coming with me. We're going to eliminate that intruder. He then armed himself fully, checking the external surveillance and spotting Xia Huan Huan and Lu Xiang preparing to leave. Just two people. I must eliminate them, especially the woman. Her leaving that knife was a declaration of war, and I can't afford to be lenient. Meanwhile, Xia Huan Huan and Lu Xiang were quickly making their way back on a snow sled, with Xia Huan Huan visibly elated. This reconnaissance mission has been extremely fruitful. Not only did we find a populous and resource-rich village, but we also uncovered secrets about Zhang Yi. Reporting this to the higher-ups will surely be a significant achievement. Curious, Lu Xiang asked, What exactly did you find inside? You've been smiling ever since we left the villa. Xia Huan Huan's excitement was palpable. She turned to Lu Xiang and said, Old Lu, you're just a regular soldier in the team, and there are some things you aren't clear to know. I'm in a good mood today, so I'll let you in on some secrets. This Zhang Yi is likely connected to the theft from the southern warehouse of Walmart before the snow disaster. This news was a hot topic right before the snow disaster, and even Lu Xiang, still in the military then, was aware of it. Isn't that the brand with thousands of supermarkets, and the southern warehouse stored nearly half of their goods? Xia Huan Huan continued, the estimated value of those goods exceeds 10 billion, enough to sustain a city for over a decade. Lu Xiang, initially without much concept of the enormity, was now genuinely startled. Are you saying that Zhang Yi knows the inside story of this theft? Lu Xiang asked. Xia Huan Huan smiled cryptically. The higher-ups at the base seem to think so. They just sent us to investigate Zhang Yi, hoping to track the stolen goods. But when I entered his house, I realized the situation was far more complicated. His living standards are exceptionally high, even more luxurious than the base leader's number one life pod. Without substantial resources, who would dare live so extravagantly in these apocalyptic times? This makes me think that we were wrong in our initial approach. Consider it. How could an ordinary person survive so long in the apocalypse, fend off thousands of villagers single-handedly, and kill hundreds? Zhang Yi is likely a powerful mutant, and when you connect this to the warehouse theft, which is an extraordinary event, it all starts to make sense. Lu Xiang was astounded. So you mean he has some ability to conceal resources, and might have emptied the warehouse? Xia Huan Huan responded gravely. These are just my personal speculations, but the likelihood is very high. Even if there's just a 1 in 10,000 chance, it's worth the base taking action. Once I report back, even a quarter of Team A's force should be enough to destroy any resistance. No matter how fortified his house is, all defenses are virtually useless against me. Indeed, Xia Huan Wan's ability held infinite potential, especially in siege warfare where throwing in explosives or poison gas could quickly determine the outcome. Lu Xiang looked at the confident Xia Huan Huan, his eyes filled with admiration. You naturally mutated people are just so lucky, not like me. Watching a disheartened Lu Xiang, Xia Huan Huan quickly comforted him, Old Lu, don't be too downhearted. Once I make some achievements and get promoted to a high position at the base, I will certainly not forget about you. Lu Xiang gave a simple smile, then I'll be counting on Sister Huan's support in the future. At that moment, Lu Xiang noticed Xia Huan Huan's head suddenly tilt, and a stream of blood sprayed out from her temple. The smile still remained on her face as she collapsed lifelessly on the sled. Zhang Yi, mounted on the demon cat flower, held a sniper rifle. With the aid of his supernatural ability, he sniped the wall passing woman in one shot. Watching his old partner and leader die in front of him, Lu Xiang instinctively drew his pistol, but he couldn't locate Zhang Yi. As he hesitated, Zhang Yi had already reloaded, ready to take down the robust man with one shot. But as the shot fired, the man disappeared from the sled like a ghost, taking Xia Huan Huan's body with him. Zhang Yi felt a chill on his scalp. This guy is also a mutant. Two mutants attacking at the same time. The opposing force must be huge. No matter what, I can't let him take back any information about me. Zhang Yi jumped off Flower's back, wondering, what now? It seems too late to contact Chun Lei. Then he thought of Flower. You go force that person out. I'll support you with the sniper here. When we get back, I'll reward you with a hundred dried fish. At that moment, Lu Xiang also guessed that the sharpshooter was Zhang Yi. He must have followed us to silence us. With that thought, Lu Xiang quickly took out his device and sent a distress signal to the base. Just then, Lu Xiang heard a thunderous roar, and what he saw next made his pupils constrict in fear. What was this thing? Flower had transformed into a gigantic steel spiked ball, rolling ferociously towards Lu Xiang, carving a deep trench in its path. Before Lu Xiang could catch his breath, Flower, who had halted momentarily, turned around and lunged at him fiercely. Lu Xiang pulled out an AK from his pants and began firing. However, ordinary bullets seemed to do no harm to Flower. From a distance, Zhang Yi, with his sniper rifle ready, took shots whenever he saw an opportunity. But Lu Xiang, with his peculiarly agile movements, narrowly dodged the bullets each time. Zhang Yi guessed this guy's ability must be related to speed and agility. Despite the situation, Zhang Yi wasn't worried. As a feline, Flower had top-tier agility and speed, along with unmatched stamina. Lu Xiang was forced to face the combined assault of Zhang Yi and Flower. He had to dodge bullets 
bullets from afar and evade the huge beast up close. Using his abilities also consumed a significant amount of his stamina. Soon, he began to falter, and with the power-enhanced bullet's lethality and precision, Lu Ziang barely dodged a bullet only to be immediately pounced on by Flower, who bit down on his shoulder. As he faced death, Lu Ziang swung his fist at Flower's eye, attempting to take him down with him, but Zhang Yi swiftly fired another shot, hitting him right in the forehead. After both mutants had fallen, Zhang Yi casually walked over. Suddenly, Flower howled at the bodies on the ground. Zhang Yi looked closely and saw the woman they called the Wall Passer, her body surrounded by a golden glow. As Zhang Yi reached out to touch it, he was overwhelmed by an indescribable sensation that rushed to his brain, as if some instinct had awakened. It seemed like he had absorbed the woman's power, realizing that mutants' powers could be consumed by one another. Zhang Yi excitedly hugged Flower, showering him with kisses, despite Flower's look of disdain. After absorbing Xia Huanwan's power, Zhang Yi, somewhat puzzled, looked at Lu Ziang's body. Isn't this guy also a mutant? Why didn't I feel any energy shift when I touched him? He collected the bodies into a different space and cleaned up the bloodstains at the scene, contemplating, this world is becoming increasingly incomprehensible. Every step is fraught with danger. My life is destined to be a precarious journey. Can I make it to the other side? After dealing with two mutants, Zhang Yi hurried back home. It turned out that Zhou Kier and three others were also awakened by Flower's calls. Realizing Zhang Yi and Flower had left, the four anxiously waited in the living room. Upon seeing Zhang Yi return, everyone finally breathed a sigh of relief. At this moment, Zhang Yi started to assign tasks. I just killed two mutants with Flower. It's very likely that we will face retaliation from a powerful force, so we need to make thorough preparations. After a brief arrangement, Zhang Yi went straight to sleep until noon the next day. As soon as he walked into the living room, Yang Xinxin informed him of a significant discovery based on the analysis of the devices on those two people you brought back last night. I found out that they come from an organization called West Mountain Base. This organization is vast, with thousands of survivors, a strict hierarchical structure, and a powerful armed force, including a group of elite aces, seemingly comprised of special forces and people with supernatural abilities. This wasn't far from what Zhang Yi had expected, but he was still quite shocked by Yang Xinxin's briefing. Ordinary soldiers are not a big threat to us. As long as there isn't a second woman who can face through walls, my shelter can withstand ordinary weapons. As long as I don't go outside, no one can do anything to me. Finally, a smile appeared on Zhang Yi's face. He had always imagined those unknown forces to be too powerful. Now, having Yang Xinxin gather intelligence was really great. He patted Yang Xinxin on the head. Yang Xinxin, you are truly amazing. Yang Xinxin wore a proud face. This is nothing. Just give me a little more time, and I will soon be able to hack into the entire network of West Mountain Base. At this moment, Zhou Kier came into the living room. Brother Zhang Yi, come with me to the lab. There's a significant discovery. After seeing Zhang Yi praising Yang Xinxin, she was eager to show off her research achievement that she had been working on all night. The two arrived next to a microscope. Zhou Kier explained, I found that the cell activity of these two people is ten times that of ordinary people from the body slices. Moreover, the way their glycogen reacts to release energy is also unusual, especially in the brain cells. Therefore, I deduce that the source of the supernatural abilities is likely from the brain. At this moment, Zhang Yi also had a sudden realization and casually praised, No wonder I felt such a strong impact in my brain when I was devouring the phasing woman last night. This discovery is quite interesting. Shou Kier became a bit angry. This significant discovery that I've worked so hard on only earns such a perfunctory praise? You have no idea how important this is. Shou Kier seriously added, Up until now, it seems that the mutations in humans are influenced by gamma rays, but the probability is extremely low, and many mutations are negative. However, if someone could understand the principles of these mutants' mutations, then through cell transplantation or some other means, it might be possible to transform normal people into mutants. This statement piqued Zhang Yi's interest. Are you saying that in the future, the world will be full of mutants? Shou Kier held up Lu Ziang's slice. This person is likely a man-made mutant, as he only has localized cell mutations, completely different from the natural cell mutations of the woman. His body is filled with a lot of malignant cells. It seems to be a defective product. Hearing this, Zhang Yi breathed a sigh of relief, so it's a man-made thing. No wonder it only enhanced speed and agility. Uncle Yu and that Liang Yu could totally outmatch him. In that case, the so-called elite squad of West Mountain Base is probably made up of these defective products. That makes them much easier to deal with. Then, Zhang Yi went to Lu Karen's workshop, where he had her list the materials needed to make explosives. After reviewing the list, he nodded. Finding these items shouldn't be difficult. Afterwards, Zhang Yi went to the underground training ground. He was eager to know the extent to which his abilities had improved after absorbing the phasing woman's power. Zhang Yi drew his compound bow to full draw. With a whoosh, the arrow, now carrying supernatural abilities, seemed faster, sharper, and more formidable. It hit the bullseye and shattered the target. What surprised Zhang Yi even more was that the sound of the target breaking only reached his ears after the fact, indicating his arrow's speed 
had surpassed the speed of sound. Astonished by such a significant enhancement, he looked at his powerful hands and murmured to himself, I never thought that simply plundering the power from one mutant could increase my ability faster than months of strenuous training. After Lu Ziang successfully sent out a distress signal, West Mountain Base immediately went into an emergency state. The information department notified his direct team leader, Ling Feng, as soon as possible. It was the first time the base had received a distress signal since its operation. We have confirmed the direction of the signal, but we can't act rashly. We must get approval from Mr. Chen first. Determined to save his subordinates, Ling Feng rushed to the first life capsule to seek guidance from Chen Xinyan. Many of their comrades had died in the snowstorms and in the experiments conducted on the modified humans after the apocalypse, making each special forces member as close as siblings. But as soon as he arrived at Chen Xinyan's residence, the secretary Garou stopped him. Team leader Ling, Mr. Chen is already resting. Please wait till tomorrow morning for any matters. Ling Feng was visibly anxious. My two subordinates encounter danger while on a mission and have sent a distress signal to the base. It's urgent. I must see Mr. Chen immediately to ask for support. Garou smiled faintly. I understand your feelings at this moment, but we cannot disturb Mr. Chen's rest. At this, Ling Feng grew angry. My team members must be in mortal danger or they wouldn't have sent a distress signal. Any further delay and they might die. However, Garou remained composed with a smile. You should trust the abilities of your teammates. They are all excellent special forces members with good combat training. They can take care of themselves. The special forces members present were visibly furious, almost wanting to punch her for her smile. But Garou maintained her composure, her tone authoritative. If Mr. Chen doesn't rest well, it will affect the security of the entire base. Here at West Mountain Base, the leader is above everything. Ling Feng persisted. Human life is at stake. Can't you make an exception and notify him? They are valuable talents of the base. Garou bowed slightly. I am just following the leader's orders. There is nothing I can do. Ling Feng reluctantly had to return, as they were all originally soldiers and obeying orders was their duty. Garou watched them leave, her smile fading as soon as they were out of sight, continuing her vigil in front of Chen Xinyan's residence. However, just a while away, Chen Xinyan was busily indulged in admiration from two girls who clung to her, adoringly commenting, it must be hard managing so much every day. Chen Xinyan enjoyed the adulation, posing as a leader burdened with the worries of her people and the base. It's my duty to govern in my position. For the future of the thousands of people in West Mountain Base, a little hardship is nothing. After the session ended, Chen Xinyan called Garou in, inquiring about the noise outside. Was someone looking for me just now? Garou informed her it was Ling Feng, whose subordinates had sent a distress signal to the base. Chen Xinyan waved it off. Just two special forces members, and they are asking for help. Did they encounter an enemy they couldn't even escape from? But to appease Ling Feng, who is a useful asset, allow them to send a team for reconnaissance, but do not deploy any team leader level forces. Meanwhile, in the special forces meeting room, Ling Feng had already called together seven team leader level figures, and Liang Yu, who had recently joined, Garou entered. I woke Mr. Chen specially for you. He agrees to send a team for reconnaissance, but no team leader level personnel. Eager and with no time to waste, Ling Feng had to be content with sending a few soldiers to scope out the situation. After the meeting dispersed, as they were heading back to the living quarters, Liang Yu spotted two familiar faces, Meng Zixuan. Liang Yu instinctively called out to them. Meng Zixuan, seeing it was Liang Yu, beamed with joy. Teacher Liang, it's so great to see you again. Liang Yu, however, was surprised. How did you end up in the second life capsule? Meng Zixuan smirked. We have our own skills. As long as we serve Mr. Chen well, we can live in the second life capsule just like you. Otherwise, we would end up like the other classmates you left behind written off. Liang Yu was confused. Written off? What are you talking about? Meng Zixuan wanted to say more, but was stopped by Shen Moling, who was beside her, advising, you'd better say less to avoid unnecessary trouble. Liang Yu wanted to continue asking questions, but Meng Zixuan indicated, I have nothing to tell you. If you want to know what exactly happened, it's best you investigate it yourself. Anyway, we only know that ever since you abandoned us, many classmates have been taken away one after another, but not a single one has returned. We don't know the specific reasons. You are now part of the second life pod, so don't worry about those civilians from the fourth life pod. It's best if you act as if nothing happened. After saying this, she quickly turned and left, as if afraid of being implicated. Liang Yu was completely blank. She had worked so hard to protect his students, so why did they mysteriously disappear at West Mountain Base? Could it be that they were assigned to new positions, and just no one else knows? She wondered. Deciding to investigate this matter thoroughly, Liang Yu was suddenly approached by a familiar, deep voice. If you want to know where the missing classmates went, you can come with me. It was the class monitor, Wu Qingyu. Following Wu Qingyu to a corridor, he whispered, recently, due to some special work, I occasionally get called to the second life pod. Once, I accidentally saw two people in protective suits carrying a long bag through here. That bag very likely contained one of the missing students. Determined to find out the truth, Liang Yu told Wu Qingyu to go back to the dorm first while she secretly followed the individuals. Seizing the moment when someone 
was changing clothes, she knocked out the staff member who was donning a protective suit and then quickly put on the protective suit herself. After blending in with the workers and heading towards the morgue, the leader laughed and said, This is the eighth failure recently. It seems their bodies are still hard to adapt. Liang Yu was full of confusion and fear. Adapt? Adapt to what? As she watched, the two placed the body into an instrument chamber and operated the console. Soon, a fierce incineration noise emanated from the machine, and shortly after, a white, viscous fluid slowly flowed out of a pipe in the machine. Liang Yu felt nauseous. Isn't this the same thing we ate on the first day? They're actually making food out of corpses for the people in the fourth life pod. Then she overheard one person saying playfully, looks like we're out of banana flavoring. Let's give them mango flavor today. Holding up a cup of white liquid, he remarked, this stuff is rich in protein and nutritious. If you don't know what it's made of, it's actually quite effective for replenishing energy. Today, let's make it taste better for them, so they can eat well and have the energy to keep pedaling bicycles. After discovering the secret of the white liquid, Liang Yu couldn't help but rush into the bathroom and vomit violently. She confirmed in her heart, those missing students must have been silently disposed of in the same manner. I thought they would be able to fend for themselves in the base, living a hard but secure life. But now it seems this place is nothing but a den of horrors. Had I known this would be the outcome, I would have preferred staying at Azure Sky Academy. Filled with despair, Liang Yu resolved, I can't stay here any longer. I must find a way to take the children and leave. But she felt utterly powerless to do anything at the moment. Meanwhile, under Ling Feng's direction, West Mountain Base dispatched a 30-man special operations squad. Though the traces at the scene had been almost completely cleared by Zhang Yi, some tracks of a snowfield cross-country vehicle were discovered. Following the marks, the team quickly found Zhang Yi's shelter. On Commander Shen Han's order, the team formed up in a tactical arrangement and followed Zhang Yi's footprints cautiously. Suddenly, one of the soldiers felt a slight resistance against his leg. Before he could react, a massive explosion erupted, and Shen Hong could only shout his teammate's name as the soldier was blown into unrecognizable pieces. In the post-apocalyptic world, all comrades were like brothers, and witnessing a brother's death right before his eyes filled Shen Hong with rage. He immediately ordered his troops to fire at Zhang Yi's shelter, but their bullets left no marks on the walls, as if they were firing toy bullets, not even leaving a scratch on the glass. The commotion outside alerted Zhang Yi, who quickly ascended from the basement. Realizing that West Mountain Base had sent people, he immediately activated the artificial intelligence and turned on the optical protection device. As the voice command ended, a protective shield instantly enveloped the entire shelter. From the inside, Zhang Yi could see out, but from the outside, nothing inside could be seen. Observing the fully armed team outside, Zhang Yi muttered, Finally, a worthy opponent has appeared. This is a billion-dollar shelter designed to withstand professional military forces. It would be a waste not to use it against such adversaries. Zhang Yi panicked, not expecting the Special Forces team from West Mountain Base to bring out a bunch of C4 explosives. After the Special Forces team discovered that bullets were unable to inflict any damage on the house, team leader Shen Hong realized that the opponent in front of them was not ordinary. He was fully capable of capturing or even killing Xia Huan Huan and Lu Ziang. Shen Hong ordered a halt to the meaningless shooting, deciding to first clear the ground traps. These were veterans experienced in warfare, who quickly located the grenades using modern technology, even uncovering the deep buried anti-tank mines laid by Zhang Yi. However, every move they made was clearly observed. Zhang Yi decisively pressed the remote detonation device. The anti-tank bomb's power was astonishing, instantly killing the two soldiers closest to it. The shockwave also sent three nearby soldiers flying. Shen Hong's eyes were almost bleeding with rage. Who exactly is he? Why does he have things only our troops possess? This scene made many think of retreating. The deputy commander hurriedly stepped forward to persuade. We don't yet fully understand the situation here, nor do we have heavy weapons and bomb disposal equipment. Let's return to base for instructions to avoid further casualties. Deputy Commander Yu Lang was still sensible. He had already sensed that this opponent was not someone they could handle, but Shen Hong flatly rejected his suggestion. Aren't we the rescue team sent here? If we have to go back for support, where would I put my face? I don't believe a shelter has no weaknesses. Continue the attack. Shen Hong was already too agitated. Eager to perform well in such an important mission, he couldn't return without any achievements. As the vanguard, he at least needed to gather some crucial intelligence about the villa. Otherwise, the deaths of those six brothers would be in vain. Shen Hong ordered everyone to spread out and advance towards the shelter without any dead angles. His aim was to gather more information about the villa, hoping to find a weakness and avenge his fallen comrades. Yang Mi watched the scene with a worried expression. They looked so professional, they couldn't really find a flaw, could they? Zhang Yi, however, was not at all panicked. I have great confidence in the shelter. I practically check it every day. There are no external vulnerabilities. But Yang Mi was still worried. It's scary to have them searching so recklessly. Are 
you suggesting we should take the initiative to attack and stop their search? Attacking them is actually quite simple. I just want to see what other methods they have. After an investigation, the special forces team concluded this villa is just a defensively formidable iron fortress made of extremely advanced materials. However, its only flaw is that it cannot launch an offensive. They helplessly gazed at the villa, saying, it's not surprising to find such a structure in a wealthy area. It's just a rich man's fear of death that led to the creation of this iron turtle. Now that we've cleared the traps around his house, they can just wait to be attacked. At that moment, Shen Hong had a sudden inspiration. We can concentrate the explosives and blow open a corner of the house, then rush in and finish them off. The deputy commander pondered, how much explosive would that require? Shen Hong sneered, on the battlefield, even the most fortified bunkers can be blown open with enough explosive. Could his villa be more fortified than a military bunker? As long as we focus our firepower, we can definitely do it. So, everyone gathered their explosives at what they thought was the weakest point, ready to detonate. Seeing this, Zhang Yi immediately rose from his chair and said coldly, you think I've run out of tricks just because I've been holding back? Today, I'll teach you a good lesson. He then turned to Zhou Kier and Yang Mi behind him, you guys just stay here and enjoy the show. If you're scared, you can go hide in the basement. After placing all the explosives together, the leader decisively pressed the detonation button. A thunderous explosion followed, and everyone thought that if it couldn't flatten the building, it would at least create a breach. The massive explosion created a blizzard-like spread. Everyone eagerly advanced to inspect the effect of the explosion, but when the dust settled, they were all dumbfounded. A deep pit was formed on the ground, but the main building seemed completely unharmed. Everyone couldn't believe their eyes. The area below the wall was covered in some black material, meaning the villa was essentially a 360-degree alloy fortress. Team leader Shin Hong was instantly stupefied. It seems we really need to go back and ask for support. The level of weapons we have is simply not enough. We must call the demolition team with larger quantities of explosives. To Zhang Yi, the mere dozen or so C4 explosives were hardly worth a glance. After all, this shelter was built to withstand nuclear attacks. He went to the second floor and took out a sniper rifle from a different space. At that moment, Deputy Commander Yu Lang's men brought over a heavy box. Upon opening it, Shin Hong was overjoyed. How did you manage to bring this? This is excellent. It's a heavy sniper rifle capable of destroying a tank in one shot. Yu Lang aimed at the shelter's glass, confidently saying, even if that's bulletproof glass, it's unlikely to withstand my shot. Just as Zhang Yi reached the second floor with his sniper rifle, a loud gunshot rang out, startling him. Could this be the heavy sniper? A screeching friction sound came from the external glass. Zhang Yi went closer and saw a small white scratch on the glass. This is serious. If they were to fire millions of rounds like this, the glass might actually crack. Terrifying. Meanwhile, Yu Lang, holding the heavy sniper, began to question his life choices. After two seconds of silence, he broke down. I've used this gun to penetrate bunkers before. How could a mere villa? Shin Hong came over to comfort him. The defensive power of this villa might be even more terrifying than West Mountain Base. It seems we should return and report to our superiors. We're almost out of weapons. Shin Hong immediately ordered a retreat. Zhang Yi, observing from the second floor, saw them preparing to leave. He immediately ordered the windows to be opened and activated a dimensional gate in front. This meant all attacks from outside would be absorbed into the alternate space, while Zhang Yi's own attacks would remain unaffected. He set up his sniper rifle and aimed. When the retreating soldiers noticed the window opening, one shouted, Captain Shen, the window on the second floor of the villa seems to be open. As they reported, they did not hesitate to shoot. As elite soldiers, their marksmanship was highly accurate, aiming straight for Zhang Yi's face. However, their bullets did disappeared like stones sinking into the sea, all vanishing before reaching Zhang Yi. He smirked, I've taken a fancy to that heavy sniper. It's not something ordinary people can get their hands on. Since you've come, don't think about leaving. As they fired, Zhang Yi also pulled the trigger, targeting the soldier carrying the box. Shin Hong, seeing the figure on the second floor of the villa, showed a hint of joy. I thought I had no way to get you, but now you've opened the window yourself. Everyone, fire at him. Twenty people raised their guns and fired wildly. But Zhang Yi, with one hand on the dimensional gate and the other aiming and shooting calmly, accurately shot each in the head. It took the fall of six soldiers before they realized, why can't our bullets hit him? Shin Hong's pupils shrank sharply. This guy might be a mutant. Yu Lang, beside him, also widened his eyes. Could his ability be immunity to all attacks? Shin Hong immediately ordered a retreat, knowing that if the opponent was indeed a mutant, they couldn't handle him with just their team. They all turned and ran. Shin Hong shouted to his teammates, don't worry about the fallen brothers for now. Find cover quickly. Zhang Yi, through his scope, spotted the two team leaders and aimed at them. But with one shot, Shen Hong and Yu Lang instantly disappeared from their spot, narrowly evading his attack. Zhang Yi was familiar with this scene. The same move had surprised him during the fight with Lu Ziang. Could these two be like that man? Mutants transformed through modifications, even with almost identical abilities? After scanning the area, Zhang Yi realized that only two people seemed to have special abilities. He devised a plan and 
fired another shot, this time aiming not for the head, but for the legs of the soldiers. Two soldiers who couldn't evade in time fell to the ground, clutching their legs in agony. Their comrades, witnessing such a scene, desperately wanted to rush out to help. They could bear the pain of leaving the bodies of their fallen brothers behind, but couldn't stand the thought of not helping their close comrades. However, Shin Hong stopped them. Nobody move. He's trying to draw us out. Rushing out now is suicide. Shin Hong, still maintaining his calm, immediately thought of a countermeasure and shouted, throw all the smoke and incendiary grenades out. Instantly, the area near the injured soldiers was engulfed in rolling white smoke and blazing flames. With this approach, even with tactical goggles, no one could see anything. Shin Hong took this opportunity to quickly send people for the rescue. Zhang Yi couldn't help but inwardly commend, they really are professional soldiers with combat discipline. He then smirked wickedly and reversed the direction of the dimensional gate. In the next second, all the bullets that had been absorbed into the alternate space suddenly poured out like a violent storm, instantly turning the two injured soldiers and four rescuers into sieves. Everyone was furious at this tactic, which was beyond their comprehension. Trembling, the soldiers said, this man isn't human, we can't possibly fight against him. A young soldier, completely breaking down, shouted at Shin Hong, Captain, let's send a distress signal, ask the base to send the battalion commander. Shin Hong grabbed the soldier's collar, shut up, weren't we the ones who came to rescue? Now asking for rescue ourselves, where would that leave my face as the captain? The soldiers were in utter despair, looking at their captain with terrified eyes, that person is an invincible demon, how can we possibly stand against him? Rather than dying here, I'd rather be sent to the fourth life pod to pedal a bicycle. The special forces team was in a difficult situation, but Deputy Commander Yu Lang tried to reassure everyone, calm down, everyone, the fact that he's hiding inside and not coming out shows he still fears our strength, let's keep our spirits up. Shin Hong, looking worried, said gravely, his marksmanship is as good as ours, we could be sniped at any moment, we can't just keep hiding here. Yu Lang then drew a plan in the snow, explaining his strategy, his villa doesn't have a view without blind spots, if we break through a few houses in front of us and move through them, as long as we're out of his sight, even the best marksmanship won't help him. Zhang Yi, standing on his balcony, had probably guessed their escape plan, he didn't intend to leave the shelter to pursue them, although their abilities were negligible, they were a highly coordinated team. Zhang Yi didn't want to take the risk, moreover, his dimensional gate could only open in one direction, if he went out and faced attacks from multiple sides, it would be over. Meanwhile, at West Mountain Base, Chen Xinyan received a report from his secretary, Guro. He frowned deeply as he read, 12 soldiers killed, Shen Hong and Yu Lang were ineffective, causing great loss to the base. I think they must be severely punished, to set an example. Chen Xinyan pondered for a moment. In the past, he would have executed Chen Hong and Yu Lang without hesitation, but now the base was short of personnel, and they had indeed brought back important intelligence. This isn't their fault. The opponent is too strong. But what's the background of this shelter? Why haven't I heard about it before? Is there any intelligence on this? Guro, prepared before coming, handed over a tablet displaying a map of Heavenly Sea City with several important locations marked. She briefed Chen Xinyan methodically, based on the reports from Chen Hong and Yu Lang, and combining previous intelligence, the most likely suspect is the warehouse manager Zhang Yi. The original owner of the shelter was the billionaire Wang Siming, who reportedly spent a billion dollars building it ten years ago. It was taken as just entertainment news back then. However, now our engineers speculate that the shelter's defensive strength may surpass our West Mountain base. As for how Zhang Yi took over the shelter, that remains unknown. Chen Xinyan couldn't help but remark, this kid is truly a chosen one, so lucky. In his eyes, Zhang Yi was just a small-time figure who had stumbled upon good fortune. Such individuals, even if they acquired power, would be limited by their narrow vision and shallow knowledge, eventually overwhelmed by their own abilities, unable to compare with someone of his stature. Chen Xinyan picked up the report again and read carefully, Southern Warehouse Manager, innate ability, immune to bullet attacks. Suddenly, he realized the crux of the matter. The place where Xia Huanhuan had trouble is only a few kilometers from his villa. He chased out of the shelter to kill Xia Huanhuan, considering her ability to pass through walls. It's likely she discovered some damning secret of Zhang Yi's, giving him a reason to kill her. The biggest secret in the apocalypse is resources. A sharp glint appeared in his eyes. So, it seems the billions worth of resources from the southern warehouse are likely in his hands, hidden away with some ability. Excited, Chen Xinyan exclaimed, this explains everything. We must capture Zhang Yi. Guro, slightly startled by the revelation, did not forget to flatter Chen Xinyan. Congratulations, Lord Chen, for finding a massive amount of resources for our West Mountain base. Chen Xinyan nodded in satisfaction, clearly intending to take credit for the potential discovery of the resources. He began to fantasize about the prosperous life ahead, almost as if the resources were already in his hands. Indeed, if we really secure these resources, they could sustain the base for decades. Tossing the file onto the table, he decisively ordered, get Ling Feng here. Soon, Ling Feng relayed instructions to the teams of Shen Hong and Yu Lang, directing them to temporarily head to Su East Village 
bridge across the river. This move served two purposes, firstly, to investigate the surrounding area in advance, and secondly, to wait there for the follow-up troops. Ever since Zhang Yi had warned Chun Lei, the timid Chun Lei had been living in fear every day, dreading the possibility of West Mountain Base sending troops to raid his village. His worst fears materialized when a group of fully armed soldiers suddenly appeared in Su East Village. Chun Lei hurriedly called Zhang Yi, Brother Zhang, something terrible has happened. Zhang Yi immediately guessed that the soldiers might have gone to Su East Village. Chun Lei, don't panic, just remember, these people are not the so-called government. They're rampaging through Heavenly Sea City, collecting resources without any regard for morality or law. You must be careful to hide your resources well, and be even more careful about your life. Chun Lei was extremely anxious, but don't worry about me, boss. If I want to run, nobody can catch me. Even you couldn't catch me last time. The problem is that these people have been welcomed as honored guests by our village chief, and now they won't listen to any of my advice. Zhang Yi responded with a faint smile, then there's nothing you can do. Wise words can't persuade the destined to die. Just take good care of yourself and those around you. Suddenly, Zhang Yi's tone turned icy, but let me remind you, I've always treated you like a brother. If you ever decide you don't want to work with me, I won't blame you. The only condition is that you must not betray me. Having experienced Zhang Yi's power and cherishing the limited edition collectibles Zhang Yi had, Chun Lei quickly reassured, Brother Zhang, you can count on me. I know you're the best to me. Zhang Yi originally wanted to call Chun Lei to the shelter, but then had a change of heart. Chun Lei, I need more intelligence about West Mountain Base. Try to find out as much as you can about the soldiers' movements. Chun Lei seemed reluctant. Undercover work isn't my forte. Those soldiers are intimidating, and I get shaky just looking at them. Zhang Yi was somewhat exasperated. It seems this guy still doesn't realize his own strength. With his ability, he could easily freeze these soldiers in a fraction of a second. Why is he so timid? Don't worry, I'm not asking you to fight them. Just probe around a bit. If you can get some important information, there'll be a reward for you, Zhang Yi assured. At this, Chun Lei's face lit up. Boss, you can count on me. I'll handle it perfectly. Meanwhile, in Su East Village, the village chief was busy attending to the soldiers, arranging accommodations, and asking every household to contribute food and drink for them. When Chun Lei approached the village chief from behind and called out to him, the chief turned around and scolded. Didn't I tell you to hide at home and not come out? If the soldiers find out you're a mutant, they might take you away. What would happen to our village then? Chun Lei responded with a smile. The fact that I'm a mutant will come out sooner or later. Even if our villagers keep quiet, can you be sure people from the neighboring village won't talk? They'll think you're hiding something and become wary of you. It's better to admit it now and use this opportunity to get closer to them. The village chief of Su East Village, after some thought, found Chun Lei's suggestion reasonable. He then brought Chun Lei to Shen Hong and the others. Gentlemen, this is my grandson, Su Chun Lei. He's a mutant. Hearing that Chun Lei was a mutant, everyone looked at him in surprise. Shen Hong approached and asked, You don't look like a mutant. What's your ability? To gain the soldier's trust, Chun Lei replied, See these snow houses? I built them all by myself. He then demonstrated his ability. With a slight lift of his right hand, a snowball rose into the air. The onlookers widened their eyes in amazement, dispelling any doubts. Shen Hong, excited, draped an arm around Chun Lei's shoulder and exclaimed, Brother, you're amazing. I had no idea such a small village could harbor such talent. Discovering a mutant was a significant achievement. A natural mutant like Chun Lei could hold a high position in West Mountain Base's special forces. Everyone hoped to build a good relationship with their potential future leader. Feeling elated, Chun Lei turned to the village chief and said, Little Su, prepare more food and drinks. I want to have a good time with the soldiers. During the feast, Chun Lei gathered crucial intelligence and immediately called Zhang Yi. West Mountain Base has assembled a group of terrifyingly powerful mutant captains, ready to attack your shelter at any moment. They've brought a large amount of explosives for targeted demolition. After learning the details from Chun Lei, Zhang Yi had newfound respect for him and expressed his concern. Thanks to your information, you can come and pick up your figurines anytime. Then, with a hint of playfulness, Zhang Yi asked, Fatso, haven't you ever thought about joining West Mountain Base? Following me might not be the best path. Chun Lei smiled openly, Brother Zhang, my heart has always been with you. I trust my instincts. As a sensitive anime fan, Chun Lei could sense the soldiers' ill intentions, especially in the way they looked at the villagers, as if they were livestock. He couldn't imagine being part of such a group. While Zhang Yi might not be a gentleman, Chun Lei saw him as a person of genuine character. Zhang Yi assured him firmly, you will never regret your choice today. Keep an eye on their movements and contact me with any updates. Zhang Yi, deep in thought about countermeasures, contemplated the challenge of dealing with explosives. The main issue is handling the bombing. The stockpile of explosives at West Mountain Base could easily level 10 shelters like mine. But to place the explosives, they have to get close to the shelter first. That's when I'll take them down. He wasn't overly worried. After all, this was his home turf. Even if he couldn't hold the upper two floors, he could retreat to the underground levels. The true essence of the shelter lay in its three subterranean floors, impervious even to missiles. After summoning the women in the shelter and briefing them about the situation, he arranged for them to move underground. The 
The women were understandably nervous, but Zhang Yi reassured them, don't worry at all, I've already assessed the strength of West Mountain Base, they can't threaten our safety. After delegating tasks, Zhang Yi went to the control room to check in with Yang Xinxin. Xinxin, how's the task I assigned you coming along? Yang Xinxin looked somewhat dejected, I've been trying to hack into West Mountain Base's network these past few days, but I failed. It's not that my skills are lacking, but their internal network is a local area network. It's impossible to invade without accessing their internal network, and with the current network media in a paralyzed state, it's like trying to cook a meal without rice. Zhang Yi wasn't surprised by this outcome and consoled her, I don't blame you, as long as we maintain our own security and prevent invasions, that's enough. If we can counter infiltrate, great, if not, it's no big deal. Then, Zhang Yi visited Lu Karen's workshop and asked her seriously, if you were a demolition expert at West Mountain Base, how would you deal with this shelter? Lu Karen answered without hesitation, for buildings, it's common to use TNT explosives with detonators, especially for dealing with old structures. Zhang Yi then inquired, how much explosives do you think would be needed to blow a big hole in our shelter? Considering its sturdiness, Lu Karen scratched her head, I don't have an exact concept of the shelter's strength, but based on the materials and thickness, at least 500 kilograms of explosives would be required. Zhang Yi pondered, such a large quantity would be a very obvious target when being transported. Couldn't I just detonate them prematurely with a sniper rifle? However, Lu Karen shook her head, that's unlikely to work. TNT is highly stable. It can't be detonated by bullets or even direct burning. It must be detonated using a detonator. Zhang Yi thought for a moment. In that case, it seems I'll have to implement the second plan. How did the task I gave you last time turn out? Lu Karen presented a bomb with a detonator. This wasn't difficult for me. The scope is also ready. The hardest part was this, she said, pulling out a set of combat gear from the cabinet. She had put a lot of thought into making it, using the latest technological materials Zhang Yi had provided. It was so sturdy that it could resist most sniper rifle bullets. What puzzled her was, why did you want it made in the style of those soldiers' uniforms? Are you planning to infiltrate West Mountain Base? This is crucial, you'll understand when the time comes. Meanwhile, at West Mountain Base, a top-tier team was quickly assembled and set off towards Su Family Town. Shin Hong and others had been waiting at the village entrance for some time. This mission was also voluntarily joined by Liang Yu, not to combat Zhang Yi, but to prepare for leading her students to escape later. Upon seeing Battalion Commander Ling Feng, Shin Hong hurriedly confessed their failure. They had set out as a rescue team, but had ended up losing 12 soldiers without saving anyone. But Ling Feng didn't seem to blame them. This was an organizational misjudgment, underestimating the opponent's strength. You need not be too hard on yourselves. Then Ling Feng's gaze suddenly turned cold, and he spoke with clenched teeth. The person who killed my brothers, I'll tear him to pieces. Confidently looking at the powerful lineup behind the captain, Shin Hong believed, this time, even if Zhang Yi is incredibly strong, he's going to suffer. Ling Feng then pointed at Chun Lei. Who is this guy? Shin Hong quickly introduced him. This is a natural mutant I found after much effort. He can control ice and snow, a man of limitless potential. Liang Yu, standing behind Ling Feng, recognized Chun Lei immediately. Isn't he the mutant who helped Zhang Yi take Yang Xinxin away last time? However, she chose not to reveal his identity, as her current priority was to escape from West Mountain Base with her students. Ling Feng scrutinized Chun Lei. You can control ice and snow? Chun Lei nodded nervously. Yes. All these ice houses in the village were built by me. Ling Feng patted Chun Lei's shoulder. After this operation, I'll recommend you to the higher-ups. You might even get a chance to be a team leader. Then Ling Feng started to deploy the operation. Based on the information we have, the enemy has very accurate marksmanship. Therefore, when the mine clearing and explosives placement team is in action, we must use smoke grenades to obscure his line of sight. As for his ability to ignore bullet attacks, our goal is to blow open the shelter, not to engage him directly. Meanwhile, inside the shelter, Zhang Yi was calmly reading a paperback book. Upon seeing the thick smoke outside through the surveillance system, he closed the book and put on the special combat suit made by Lu Karen. Zhang Yi told the women, stay in the basement and don't come up. What follows is a battle between men. Standing on the second floor balcony, Zhang Yi looked out at the dense smoke and mused, seems like they're scared of my sniping, but this is indeed a good strategy. Zhang Yi appeared confident, a meaningful smile creeping across his lips. So, it seems they are about to proceed with the demolition of the shelter. Ling Feng first arranged for the bomb disposal personnel to dismantle the traps around the villa. Their method was straightforward and brutal, not meticulously disarming each trap but rather using their own explosives for a saturation detonation. Zhang Yi couldn't help but admire their proficiency, they really know what they're doing. As the traps were cleared by the explosion, Ling Feng signaled, demolition team, move in. Everyone else, be ready to cover them. The bomb squad, each carrying heavy explosives, methodically placed them beneath the walls of the shelter. From inside, Zhang Yi watched their every move. Just place them and leave, like a delivery? Makes sense. They have to get to a safe distance to detonate them remotely. They can't risk being blown up. Looks like I overestimated them. They don't understand my abilities. Soon, 
Wu. Ling Feng received a signal on his radio. All bomb squad members have reached a safe distance, ready to detonate. Ling Feng's lips curled into a smile. Seems Zhang Yi isn't as capable as we thought. I was prepared for a tough fight during the explosive setup, maybe even losing some men, but this was easy. He pressed the detonation button, and everyone braced for the explosion. But after a few seconds, the sound and fury of the explosion seemed to disappear in a fraction of a second. A scout checked through binoculars, and his eyes widened in shock. The mountain of explosives disappeared in an instant, and the blast and flames seemed to be sucked away. There's only minimal damage to the wall. Ling Feng stamped his foot in frustration. This is unbelievable. Were the explosives devoured? Liang Yu's eyes sparkled with a strange light, thinking, Zhang Yi has such power. I need to find a way to cooperate with him. After pondering for a moment, Ling Feng tentatively concluded that Zhang Yi's ability was related to space. Remote bombing wouldn't work. Any amount of explosives sent would be instantly removed. Realizing the difficulty of the situation, Ling Feng still believed Zhang Yi's defensive abilities are extraordinary, suggesting he might not be strong in offense. The four team leaders with us are mutants, and based on their awakening methods, it's unlikely one person's ability covers both offense and defense. So, we don't need to rush. We'll leave some people to watch the shelter, making sure no one inside escapes, and go back to the base to devise a strategy. In the shelter at this time, Zhang Yi also arrived in the basement. Shou Kier hurried over to inquire about the situation. What was that tremor just now? It felt like the sky was about to collapse. Zhang Yi comforted her, saying, You don't need to worry. Even if they breach the first two levels of our shelter, they can't threaten the three underground levels. In this billion-dollar shelter, I bet 800 million is spent on the underground part alone. Recalling the scene of the recently detonated explosives being absorbed into a different space, Zhang Yi muttered to himself, I want to see how much more explosives they can bring to me for free. Several women, looking panicked, gathered around to ask about the situation. Zhang Yi reassured them with a smile, You don't need to be too worried. The explosives they brought this time are already used up. We are temporarily safe. It will take time for them to go back and get more explosives. The West Mountain base is more than 50 kilometers from here. Even if they go back immediately to resupply, it will take them at least half a day to return, and I've already thought of a strategy to deal with them. Then, Zhang Yi went to the living room. While monitoring the outside situation, he asked Yang Mi to prepare food to replenish energy, as the primary source of energy for his special abilities was food. At this moment, Chun Lei suddenly sent a message. Brother Zhang, the noise from your place scared me to death. I thought your villa area had been leveled. Now, many soldiers have returned to our village, and some have gone west. Zhang Yi immediately understood that they had indeed gone back for more explosives. What are the remaining people doing? Chun Lei complained. What else can they do? As soon as they came back, they started demanding food and drink, acting like lords. Zhang Yi couldn't help but worry about Chun Lei. He clearly understands that if this shelter can't be taken down soon, the worst affected will definitely be Su Family Town. It will surely become a base for the West Mountain base, and all the people in Su Family Town will have to serve them. Immediately, Zhang Yi reminded Chun Lei, you must always be cautious of these soldiers. If there's any danger, come to me at any time. Your brother will protect you. Chun Lei was deeply moved and said, thank you, brother Zhang. If things really come to that point, I will definitely come to you. After hanging up the phone, Zhang Yi pondered. He knew that a conflict between the West Mountain base and Su Family Town was inevitable. However, Zhang Yi didn't sympathize with them. Instead, he hoped they would break ties sooner. Meanwhile, Ling Feng returned to the base with his men to transport explosives. Captain Sher Deong and most of his men stayed in Su Family Town. He summoned the village head of Su East Village and Chun Lei. We plan to stay in the village for a while. You need to make room for us to stay, and remember to prepare meals for 65 people every day. The village head still didn't grasp the seriousness of the situation and agreed obsequiously. Chun Lei felt a pang of concern. These soldiers eat so much, one can eat the portion of five. If this continues, the village will eventually be drained. The village head of Su East Village was still fantasizing that the soldiers would only stay for a few days and leave after dealing with Zhang Yi, anticipating a great reward afterward. He carelessly asked, when will you be able to subdue that murderer Zhang Yi? Upon hearing this, Shi Daeyong's eyes turn cold. Don't ask what you shouldn't. Just take care of our food and lodging. Sure Dayong's voice and physique were very imposing. The village head had no choice but to bow repeatedly in agreement. After Sure Dayong left, the village head straightened up and commanded Chun Lei in a stern tone, hurry up and build more ice houses for the important guests to live in. Remember, put extra effort into it. Chun Lei remained silent in response to the village head's command. He knew very well that in the eyes of the villagers, no matter how strong he was, he was just seen as a useless deadbeat. The next day, Ling Feng brought a large amount of explosives. Sure Dayong, transformed 
transformed into a giant ape along with many soldiers, arrived at a reverse slope. Then, Ling Feng and he, working together, hurled a massive bundle of explosives towards the shelter. Watching the flying explosives, Zhang Yi shouted dramatically, Dimensional Gate. Suddenly, a huge gate appeared above the shelter, and a surge of energy poured out. The explosives, which were supposed to hit the shelter, were instantly reflected back, almost along the same path. Ling Feng and his men were caught off guard, instinctively shouting, Take cover! Everyone immediately hit the ground. Ling Feng was stunned. The TNT, as expected, was stable enough not to explode upon impact, but rather after the countdown of the detonator ended, a huge explosion formed a mushroom cloud, engulfing many soldiers in a fiery wave, even throwing those hundreds of meters away. Watching this scene, akin to a bonfire feast, absorbing and then releasing the explosive energy was initially just a bold experiment for Zhang Yi, but its success meant that he could continue using this method against them. Meanwhile, Ling Feng and his group were lucky that Jin Shuerong had timely created an ice barrier, which blocked most of the explosive impact. Ling Feng stood up disheveled, looking at the scene in front of him. The entire hill had been turned into a deep pit, with many special forces members burned to ashes. These were Ling Feng's brothers in arms, who had survived the apocalypse, but in a blink of an eye, they turned into black ash. He thought, anguished. Ling Feng pounded the ground in a rage, the atmosphere on the scene oppressively heavy. His look was more terrifying than an injured wild animal, yet he also tried to stay calm, analyzing what had just happened. He soon guessed the process. Could it be that he used the explosive energy absorbed yesterday and released it, reflecting the thrown explosives back at us? While still pondering, suddenly a bullet mixed with special abilities was shot towards Ling Feng. With a sharp twist of his head, Ling Feng narrowly avoided the bullet, which whizzed past his ear. Turning towards the shelter, their eyes met, causing Zhang Yi's pupils to contract. That fierce look sends chills down the spine, truly befitting their leader. It's a pity I didn't take him out. At that moment, Ling Feng felt a sense of alarm. As a soldier, he never expected Zhang Yi's sniper rifle to be effective over two kilometers away while still maintaining such lethal force. Ling Feng immediately warned everyone to take cover. However, Shi Deong, not being an agile mutant, was shot in the forehead. Yet, he didn't fall. He simply removed the bullet from his forehead with his bare hands, cursing and glaring in the direction of Zhang Yi. This shocked Zhang Yi. Such defense, comparable to a tank. I wonder if he's even stronger than Uncle Yu. All the leaders from the West Mountain base are tough nuts to crack. As Zhang Yi was about to take aim again, those few disappeared from his view. Simultaneously, two sharp bullets flew towards him. Zhang Yi quickly opened the dimensional gate, absorbing the bullets into a different space, and scoffed, trying to sneak attack me with a sniper shot. Zhang Yi immediately reversed the direction of the bullets and sent them back along their original path. The two snipers from the base, among their top tier, would never know that the bullets that killed them were the very ones they had fired. While Zhang Yi was still searching for targets, a cloud of dust suddenly rose in the distance, as if something was charging towards him at a speed even his eyes couldn't track. Before he could react, a loud bang came from below, and the entire shelter felt a strong vibration. The self-check system immediately sent an alarm. Shelter impacted, wall damage at 0.03%. Zhang Yi was startled. When did he get here? If he hits the shelter with thousands of punches like that, it's going to be the end of this place. Ling Feng stared back at Zhang Yi with icy eyes. You coward, come out and fight me one on one. Zhang Yi inwardly sighed, realizing, it seems that conventional strength is hardly enough to harm him. But as long as I stay in the shelter, he can't do anything to me. The frustrated West Mountain base team had no choice but to return to Su family town. The village head of Su East Village greeted them with an obsequious smile. Captain Ling, you must have won a great victory today. Has that demon Zhang Yi been killed? The villagers nearby also looked excited. That huge explosion just now must have blown Zhang Yi to ashes. Captain Ling is truly formidable. The mood of the West Mountain base team was already at its lowest after their failed mission, and the villagers' flattery felt more like mockery. Sure Dayong coldly ordered, shut up, all of you. It was then that the village head realized the soldier's demeanor did not resemble that of Victor's. Ling Feng then approached and said, go, and prepare more food for us. We expended a lot of energy today. After saying this, he headed towards the temporary housing. That forceful punch Ling Feng had thrown had consumed nearly half of his strength. Sure Dayong didn't forget to turn back threateningly to remind the village head, remember, my portion should be the largest. The villagers dared not disobey, continually nodding in agreement. Once the soldiers were out of earshot, the villagers couldn't help but murmur among themselves. It seems they failed today. So many people and they still couldn't handle one Zhang Yi. It's quite embarrassing. Although the villagers spoke softly, their words were overheard by the mutants with their exceptional hearing. Sure Dayong even suggested teaching the villagers a lesson, but Ling Feng stopped him. They still have some value, providing us with food and shelter. If we need to deal with them, we can do it after handling Zhang Yi. Then we can take them all to the base to pedal bicycles for electricity.
electricity. Meanwhile, after the soldiers from the West Mountain base had retreated, Zhang Yi returned to the underground shelter. Xiao Qir rushed over, anxiously asking, Brother Zhang, are you alright? Zhang Yi replied with a smile, the ones who aren't alright are them. Yang Mi considerately prepared some food and brought it over. While eating, Zhang Yi asked Lu Karen, if the wall is somewhat damaged, will it be difficult to repair? Lu Karen pondered and said, I've studied the alloy used in the shelter's walls. We just need some special materials. Even if I can get the materials we need, repairing the wall would require going outside. But it's not possible to go out now, right? Zhang Yi replied with a smile, I just need to know it can be repaired. There's no rush for this. I have plenty of time. Yang Mi looked worried. I wonder how long this battle will last. Zhang Yi handed her a beer. Don't worry, my favorite thing is to fight a war of attrition. Seeing this, the other girls came over to ask for beer too, lightening the atmosphere. After repelling the West Mountain base, Zhang Yi resumed his shameless way of life. However, a sudden phone call broke the tranquility. Yang Xinxin picked up the phone and turned pale. How could it be her? As a top hacker, she wasn't worried about someone hacking her phone. She sensibly handed the phone to Zhang Yi. It was a message from someone named Liang Yu, saying she and her classmates needed help and hoped Yang Xinxin could connect her with Zhang Yi. Upon seeing the name Liang Yu, Zhang Yi thought of the mutant from the Azure Sky Academy who wielded a long sword. Could she have joined the West Mountain base too? I still remember that swordswoman with her fierce swordsmanship. Even struggling with hunger for so long, she could fight evenly with flower. If she's at her full strength, her power must be even more terrifying. Zhang Yi became alert and asked Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen earnestly, tell me about this teacher Liang. They both looked grateful and said, although she has a stubborn and pure character, teacher Liang is undoubtedly a good person. She could have easily survived on her own, yet she chose to risk her life protecting us, who were nothing but burdens to her. Zhang Yi pondered, if she's endured the brutal trials of the apocalypse, that's enough to prove her character. But now that she's joined the West Mountain base, I still have to be cautious. He then asked Yang Xinxin, by sending messages through the phone, is there a risk of our shelter's network being compromised by a virus? Yang Xinxin confidently crossed her arms and reassured, brother, don't worry, I've told you before, the defense level of my phone is not inferior to the supercomputer in the control room. It's impossible for anyone to hack into it. Zhang Yi nodded awkwardly and sent a message to Liang Yu. I am Zhang Yi. What do you want to talk about? As a female captain level mutant, Liang Yu had her own independent ice house. Receiving Zhang Yi's reply, she immediately called him. Zhang Yi, I'm here to discuss a cooperation. My students are in danger at the West Mountain base, and I need your help. Zhang Yi replied sarcastically, don't joke with me. What kind of danger could there be in a shelter like the West Mountain base? Besides, aren't those students all from privileged backgrounds? Liang Yu sounded a bit embarrassed. I'm not joking. Their previous status and positions are worthless now. I'm sincerely seeking cooperation. I was part of the team that came to attack your shelter, and as a new captain, I might be able to assist you. But first, you need to agree to help my students escape from the West Mountain base. Zhang Yi was puzzled. Isn't the West Mountain base a large shelter? How could there be life-threatening danger there? And with Liang Yu's strength, how could she not protect a group of students? Zhang Yi was well aware that while he could ensure his own safety, launching an offensive against the West Mountain base was out of the question. He didn't immediately agree to Liang Yu's conditions. Instead, he asked her for all the information she had about the West Mountain base. To show her sincerity, Liang Yu shared all the information she knew with Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi quickly grasped the key point, so the West Mountain base is indeed conducting experiments on artificial mutations, albeit with a very low success rate so far. Shou Kier, looking horrified, said, the West Mountain base is like a living hell. If the people from the fourth life pod are turned into protein solution, who will generate electricity for them? Zhang Yi chuckled dismissively, there are still quite a few people alive. Even if only 5% of the population survived, that's still a significant number. Look at Su family town across the river, there are thousands of survivors there. But I guess they'll eventually be captured for experiments, experiencing cycling for electricity and artificial mutations. Lu Karen, ever innocent, was worried about her classmates. When I heard they went to the West Mountain base, I was happy for them. But the more I hear, the scarier it gets. If I had known this, it would have been better to stay at Azure Sky Academy. Now Zhang Yi understood why Liang Yi was seeking his help. However, he told her, the West Mountain base is too heavily guarded. With my abilities alone, it's impossible to rescue those privileged students. My power is for self-defense. Expecting me to go out and save people is overestimating my abilities. Although Liang Yi was somewhat disappointed, Zhang Yi's response was within her expectations. She understood the principle of mutual exchange. If I can offer you something valuable enough, would you take the risk for us? Zhang Yi chuckled lightly. Whether I'm willing to act depends on the value of what you offer. Contact me again when you have something worthwhile. He then ended the call. Turning to Yang Xinxin, he said, You mentioned before that if we plant a Trojan horse into the West Mountain Base's network, we could completely infiltrate their system, right? It seems like a good opportunity is presenting itself. In Su family town, Ling Feng, having been repelled, gathered his most trusted subordinates in his room that night.
night to discuss strategies against Zhang Yi. Ling Feng shared his insights. Although our previous attacks failed, we've more or less figured out what Zhang Yi's special abilities are. Conventional weapons are no use. They just get absorbed and reflected back. Fortunately, his offensive means are limited. He doesn't dare leave the shelter and can only threaten us with sniping. There are blind spots in his shelter's defenses. Not every angle is covered by windows. So, I plan for us mutants to take turns attacking these blind spots, while having the villagers of Su family town dig tunnels for underground blasting. Our surface attacks are just a diversion to draw Zhang Yi's attention. Our real goal is to dig through the tunnels and blast from below. Liang Yu was horrified at Ling Feng's plan. You're making the villagers of Su family town do hard labor in these extreme cold conditions. This intense work will surely lead to many of them freezing or working to death. You're sending them to their deaths. Ling Feng responded coldly. I don't care about their lives. Zhang Yi has already killed hundreds of their villagers. Without us, they stand even less chance against Zhang Yi. Some sacrifices are necessary for final victory. Military discipline is about following orders. We must use every means necessary to take down Zhang Yi's shelter. Liang Yu clenched her fists in anger, shaking with emotion. But those are innocent villagers. I'm not a soldier. I can't do this. Ling Feng stared intensely at Liang Yu. The moment you joined the special forces, you became one. Unless you have a better strategy, you must follow orders. Xing Shuerong, sensing the tense atmosphere, quickly chimed in. This is a desperate measure. Zhang Yi has a lot of resources crucial for the West Mountain base. In these apocalyptic times, we can't afford to show mercy to others. Protecting ourselves and those close to us is already a challenge. Like your students, for instance. Liang Yu calmed down when her students were mentioned. Her sense of justice made it hard for her to tolerate such actions. But she knew well that she was no match for Ling Feng. Confronting them directly would not only be suicidal, but also endanger her students. Xing Shuerong continued. Digging tunnels is not the same as being cannon fodder. They're used to farming. This shouldn't be too hard for them. Liang Yu stood up. Somewhat helplessly, you arrange it. But I hope you can prioritize human life and try to avoid casualties among the villagers. After a whole night of discussion, they formulated a battle plan. Ling Feng called the village head to gather everyone in the village. Dozens of soldiers, armed with rifles, looked at the villagers as if they were prisoners. Ling Feng picked up a megaphone and shouted, The murderer Zhang Yi across the river. We have invested a lot of manpower and resources, but this man is extremely cunning and deceitful. Now we need the cooperation of the villagers to dig tunnels and eradicate Zhang Yi. That demon. The villagers were not convinced and whispered angrily. They eat our food, drink our water, and now they want us to do hard labor. This is outrageous. The village head tried to pacify them. Everyone, calm down. The organization is thinking of our village's long-term peace. The villagers were confused. We've been living in peace with Zhang Yi. It was us who attacked him first, and he just retaliated. They grumbled in discontent. Liang Yu watched this scene with a sigh, thinking, Ling Feng's decision could lead to the deaths of many innocent villagers. Upon receiving Liang Yu's intelligence, Zhang Yi was slightly startled. I hadn't considered an underground blast, but given the lack of digging equipment and the extreme cold weather, the progress of such a project would undoubtedly be very slow. I don't need to worry about it in the short term. Zhang Yi had already devised a counter strategy. He decided to play along with their plan, letting them dig the tunnel. When they were close to completion, he would destroy the tunnel, enjoying the look of surprise on their faces. Liang Yu, however, was anxious upon hearing this. But this way, it will be the villagers who will suffer. After all, the people from West Mountain Base are just supervising. Zhang Yi dismissed this concern and swiftly changed the subject, asking Liang Yu, which room are you staying in? Liang Yu was puzzled. Are you planning to come and find me? Zhang Yi smiled mysteriously. This is key to whether you and your students can escape. Liang Yu then described her location relative to Chun Lei's lavish castle. The next day, everyone moved according to the plan to attack the shelter. Zhang Yi watched this with a sense of irony. Beside him, Zhou Kier and Yang Mi were attentively serving him. One peeled seeds while the other brought water. Their competitive behavior made Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen feel envious. Lu Karen broke the awkward silence. This Ling Feng is quite formidable. His attacks are beyond ordinary weapons. Zhang Yi joked, they are the top forces of West Mountain Base, so it's not surprising. He then playfully added, look at the dangerous world outside, while we can eat and stay warm inside. You must cherish this. The implication was clear. They should show their gratitude. The women nodded in agreement, aware that all this was thanks to Zhang Yi. Yang Mi expressed her concerns. Although we know their plan, staying inside all the time isn't a long-term solution. We can't know the progress of their work. Zhang Yi looked towards Yang Xinxin. Explain it to your sister, will you? Yang Xinxin looked at Yang Mi as if she were looking at a fool, proudly explaining, sound travels faster in solids than in air, and being in the basement, we can feel it more clearly. With a sound wave receiver, I can precisely analyze their construction distance through the computer. Your brain probably can't understand this. Yang Mi seemed to have an epiphany, so, we don't have to do anything, just wait. Zhang Yi nodded with a smile. They are all working in vain. We just need to rest and conserve our strength, enjoying their performance. After after several hours of assault, Ling Feng 
and his team decided to take a brief rest. They walked back, stopping by the digging site to check on the progress. The tunnel was filled with shouts and cries of distress. Soon, a man was carried out on a stretcher. After a quick examination, the military medic shook his head. It's an acute myocardial infarction. It's unlikely he'll survive. At this, a young man couldn't hold back his anger. He threw down his shovel and yelled furiously, You're inhuman, treating us like animals. I won't do this anymore. The overseer, Shin Hong, gripping his AK, coldly replied, We're doing this for your revenge. He then aimed his gun at the villager. We've come this far. If you dare disobey orders, you'll be treated as a deserter. Liang Yu, in a state of urgency, called Zhang Yi. At this rate, at least a hundred villagers will die. Can't you think of something to minimize the casualties of these innocent people? Zhang Yi, calm and collected, smiled. This is all within my expectations, but I've noticed that fewer special forces soldiers have been attacking the shelter these past few days. Where have the others gone? Do they have another mission? Liang Yu answered. With the increasing number of villager casualties, the mood has become very tense. So, Ling Feng has left some men in the town to maintain order. She laughed nervously. They say it's to keep order, but it's really just to suppress any potential uprising. After the call, Zhang Yi had a new plan in mind. It's been days since our last confrontation. Ling Feng and his team must have let their guard down. If I don't shake them up a bit, they might think I'm just hiding in the shelter, waiting to be captured. It seems a little shock is in order for them. The next day, Zhang Yi donned a special combat suit made by Lu Karen, preparing to take Flower out for a spin. The shelter had an emergency exit known only to Zhang Yi, leading to a three-kilometer long underground tunnel that ended at a tombstone in the hills behind a public cemetery. Even Zhang Yi had not expected that Wang Siming would create an emergency exit in a cemetery. Taking a snowmobile from his different space, Zhang Yi headed straight to Su Family Town. The guards at the village entrance quickly spotted Zhang Yi's figure, assuming he was a returning frontline captain due to the captain's armband on his combat suit. He saluted him before he could react. Zhang Yi swiftly took him out with his knife, eliminating all the guards silently and storing their bodies in his different space. Although Zhang Yi and Flower were capable of overpowering them, he preferred not to make too much noise. However, the scent of blood alerted the military dogs, which began barking furiously. The well-trained dogs would not bark without reason. Sensing danger, the special forces team rushed outside. Upon seeing Zhang Yi skulking about, they opened fire, but to their horror, their bullets seemed to be sucked into a strange vortex. Zhang Yi, wielding the dragon's roar, went on a frenzied spree of slashing and hacking. The scene instantly turned chaotic with limbs and severed arms flying about. The commotion quickly alerted Ling Feng. Meanwhile, the villagers at the construction site heard the gunfire. Is someone setting off fireworks? Ling Feng, hearing the gunfire, immediately turned serious and ordered, let's go back and investigate. By this time, Zhang Yi had already taken Chun Lei and made their escape, but Chun Lei expressed concern. Brother Zhang, our snowmobile tracks are too obvious. Won't your emergency exit be exposed? Zhang Yi was unfazed, confidently storing the snowmobile and saying, anyone with a brain could eventually find this place. It was bound to be exposed sooner or later, but I'm not worried about it. A meaningful smile played on Zhang Yi's lips. I'm actually looking forward to them coming after me. Back in the village, Ling Feng, seeing the bodies of his special forces soldiers scattered everywhere, was infuriated. He had thought his strategy of openly attacking while secretly digging a tunnel was foolproof, but instead, his base had been infiltrated. He realized there must be a traitor in his ranks, or else Zhang Yi wouldn't have dared to leave the shelter. Xing Shuerong was suspicious. I've had people watching the shelter around the clock. Not even a fly could escape without our knowledge. Could there be another exit? Sure Dayong, pounding his chest in frustration, speculated, there must be. Our West Mountain base has several emergency exits. It must be an inside job. Someone leaked our operation timings, allowing him to attack our base fearlessly. Ling Feng's eyes lit up. Indeed, the West Mountain base has a few emergency exits, and I've heard Chen Xinyan has a private one. A shelter of Zhang Yi's level wouldn't just have one exit. If that's the case, our tunnel digging plan must also be compromised. Continuing the excavation is pointless now. At that moment, a soldier hurried over Captain Ling. During the villager headcount, we found that the local mutant Su Chun Lei is missing, and there's no sign of his body. Also, Captain Liang Yu hasn't returned to the unit. Hearing this, Ling Feng was even more furious. Gritting his teeth, he said, it seems we have more than one traitor. He decided to immediately set off, following the tracks of the snowmobile. The village head, at a loss, lamented, so many villagers died digging that tunnel, and now you tell me it was all for nothing. How am I supposed to explain this to everyone? Chun Lei, entering the shelter, was almost overwhelmed by the sight before him. Zhang Yi had prepared a room full of figurines, tapes, and pillows for him. Zhang Yi told Chun Lei, from now on, you'll live here. Chun Lei, overjoyed, jumped onto the bed and hugged the pillow tightly. From now on, I, Su Chun Lei, am willing to go through fire and water for brother Zhang, never shirking even in the
the face of death. Then, Zhang Yu went to the control room. With the information provided by Liang Yu and the equipment at hand, Yang Xingqing quickly hacked into the West Mountain Base's network. She confidently informed Zhang Yi, Now I can paralyze the West Mountain Base's network at any time and cut off the communication between the dispatch troops and their base. Zhang Yi patted Yang Xingqing on the head in praise. Well done. Once we deal with West Mountain Base's top forces, the threat we face will diminish significantly. He then addressed Liang Yu, As long as you provide me with enough value, I will naturally fulfill my promise to you. But before that, you still need to work for the safety of your students. At that moment, the monitor showed Ling Feng and his team had found the emergency exit. Zhang Yi smiled devilishly, just watch, the show is about to begin. Meanwhile, Ling Feng and his team followed the snowmobile tracks, which eventually led them to a cemetery, and then disappeared. Judging by the distance to the shelter, they concluded that this was undoubtedly the emergency exit. Shi Deong was furious. After killing so many of our brothers, I'll tear Zhang Yi apart when we catch him. Suddenly, a soldier pointed into the distance, shouting, Zhang Yi is over there. Shi Deong didn't hesitate and lunged forward, shouting, Zhang Yi, you scoundrel, I'll tear you into a thousand pieces. Qing Shuerong quickly tried to stop him, saying, Shi Deong, don't be impulsive, come back. By this time, Shi Deong had transformed into an ape man, swearing to make Zhang Yi pay with blood. Zhang Yi, however, was not the least bit panicked. Dealing with this kind of brave but reckless man, Zhang Yi was confident. He raised his sniper rifle and fired three shots. At such a distance, Zhang Yi would never miss, but he deliberately aimed off to lure Shi Deong closer to the trap he had set. Just as Shi Deong was about to reach him, Zhang Yi swiftly stepped on the detonator he had buried earlier. Instantly, a snowstorm several dozen meters high erupted, blocking his vision. At this moment, Jing Xuerong, Ling Feng, and others also caught up. Meanwhile, Liang Yu, wielding the dragon's roar, stood in front of them with flour by her side. Ling Feng angrily accused Liang Yu, How dare you betray the base? Don't you want to save your students? Liang Yu didn't want to waste words with them. Most of her students had died in their human experiments, and she had long hated the base to the core. She shouted, Our paths are different. We cannot plan together. I have nothing to say to you. With that, she swung her knife at Ling Feng. Flower, behind her, suddenly pounced at Jing Xuerong. Jing Xuerong's skills were mainly defensive. She intended to block Flower's attack with an ice wall, but she clearly underestimated the power of Flower's claws. In an instant, she was killed. Ling Feng, in disbelief, looked back to see Jing Xuerong lying in a pool of blood. While Ling Feng was skillfully dodging Liang Yu's dragon's roar, a huge explosion suddenly occurred behind him. When the dust settled, Shi Deong was seen covered in nails, lying on the ground, having lost his ability to fight. Shi Deong looked helplessly at Ling Feng, but it was too late. Zhang Yi, carrying the sniper rifle, fired another shot, eliminating any chance of Shi Deong getting up again. As he fired, Zhang Yi shouted, Chun Lei, it's your turn now. Chun Lei appeared behind them, seemingly out of nowhere. With both hands charged, he immediately sealed off the retreat of the remaining special forces soldiers. At this moment, Liang Yu didn't linger in her fight with Ling Feng. She mounted flower and took the opportunity to flee the scene, simultaneously pulling Chun Lei along with her, escaping at a high speed. Meanwhile, Zhang Yi stood atop a hill, looking down at the special forces soldiers trapped in the ice and snow. Ling Feng, with a look of disdain, said to Zhang Yi, You don't think mere ice and snow can trap me, do you? Zhang Yi let out a cold laugh. The real show was just beginning. Zhang Yi instantly activated the dimensional gate, releasing all the TNT he had previously stored in a different space. Except for Ling Feng himself, the remaining special forces soldiers were all modified beings with Ling Feng's cells transplanted. At the critical moment, Ling Feng ordered everyone to dive into the snow. This move indeed saved them from a lot of impact damage. After the explosion, Ling Feng and his team emerged from the snow in a disheveled state. Before they could recover, a soldier suddenly shouted, Captain, look up there. By the time Ling Feng looked forward, a massive avalanche was already upon them, leaving no time to react. Everyone was instantly buried under the thick snow. Zhang Yi called Liu Karen and Yang Xinxin in the control room. Thanks to you two geniuses, I could deal with these scums so easily. As it turned out, Yang Xinxin had used computer modeling to precisely calculate the location of the avalanche, and Liu Karen's explosives were designed with just the right power. Coupled with Zhang Yi's strategy of luring the enemy into a trap, they executed a seamless, perfect coordination, catching their opponents off guard. This is all because they were too foolish and greedy, thinking I was just prey to be hunted. Little did they know that they themselves were the lambs to be slaughtered. Of course, this couldn't have been done without the significant help of Liang Yu and Chun Lei, who helped me lead them step by step into the abyss. Liang Yu began to worry. I used all my strength against Ling Feng just now and didn't manage to harm him at all. If we can't confirm his death, it will be difficult for me to ensure a safe retreat in another encounter. Zhang Yi, however, was full of confidence. Don't worry about that. Liu Karen had already placed infrared robots in advance. With the thickness of this avalanche and the temperature dropping to minus 80 degrees, no matter how skilled he is, he has no room to maneuver. In less than 10 minutes, 
they will be frozen into ice sculptures. That night, Zhang Yi prepared a lavish dinner to treat everyone. Reflecting on the scenes that had unfolded since the apocalypse, Zhang Yi couldn't help but feel emotional. Everything finally seems to have come to an end. Now, with West Mountain Base losing its top combat power and Yang Xinxin's Trojan horse revealing all the secrets to those at the bottom, they will bring about their own destruction without us having to lift a finger. Shou Kier also expressed her feelings. I never imagined so much could happen in just a few months. It all feels like a dream. I'm so lucky to have met you, brother Zhang. Zhang Yi looked affectionately at Zhou Kier. The only constant in this world is change. Just like the once dominant dinosaurs couldn't escape their fate of extinction, this extreme cold wave was just another evolution in the long river of history. Being one of the few survivors is something we should all be grateful for. Thus, Zhang Yi began a shameless life with five women and a chubby man. This manga has reached its conclusion. For updates on whether there will be a sequel, please follow Manga Explained. We'll update as soon as any sequel is released. Zhang Yi panicked, not expecting the Special Forces team from West Mountain Base to bring out a bunch of C4 explosives. After the Special Forces team discovered that bullets were unable to inflict any damage on the house, team leader Shen Hong realized that the opponent in front of them was not ordinary. He was fully capable of capturing or even killing Xia Huanhuan and Lu Ziang. Shen Hong ordered a halt to the meaningless shooting, deciding to first clear the ground traps. These were veterans experienced in warfare, who quickly located the grenades using modern technology, even uncovering the deeply buried anti-tank mines laid by Zhang Yi. However, every move they made was clearly observed. Zhang Yi decisively pressed the remote detonation device. The anti-tank bomb's power was astonishing, instantly killing the two soldiers closest to it. The shockwave also sent three nearby soldiers flying. Shen Hong's eyes were almost bleeding with rage. Who exactly is he? Why does he have things only our troops possess? This scene made many think of retreating. The deputy commander hurriedly stepped forward to persuade. We don't yet fully understand the situation here, nor do we have heavy weapons and bombs bomb disposal equipment. Let's return to base for instructions to avoid further casualties. Deputy Commander Yu Lang was still sensible. He had already sensed that this opponent was not someone they could handle, but Shen Hong flatly rejected his suggestion. Aren't we the rescue team sent here? If we have to go back for support, where would I put my face? I don't believe a shelter has no weaknesses. Continue the attack. Shen Hong was already too agitated. Eager to perform well in such an important mission, he couldn't return without any achievements. As the vanguard, he at least needed to gather some crucial intelligence about the villa. Otherwise, the deaths of those six brothers would be in vain. Shen Hong ordered everyone to spread out and advance towards the shelter without any dead angles. His aim was to gather more information about the villa, hoping to find a weakness and avenge his fallen comrades. Yang Mi watched the scene with a worried expression. They look so professional, they couldn't really find a flaw, could they? Zhang Yi, however, was not at all panicked. I have great confidence in the shelter. I practically check it every day. There are no external vulnerabilities. But Yang Mi was still worried. It's scary to have them searching so recklessly. Are you suggesting we should take the initiative to attack and stop their search? Attacking them is actually quite simple. I just want to see what other methods they have. After an investigation, the special forces team concluded this villa is just a defensively formidable iron fortress made of extremely advanced materials. However, its only flaw is that it cannot launch an offensive. They helplessly gazed at the villa, saying, it's not surprising to find such a structure in a wealthy area. It's just a rich man's fear of death that led to the creation of this iron turtle. Now that we've cleared the traps around his house, they can just wait to be attacked. At that moment, Shen Hong had a sudden inspiration. We can concentrate the explosives and blow open a corner of the house, then rush in and finish them off. The deputy commander pondered, how much explosive would that require? Shen Hong sneered, on the battlefield, even the most fortified bunkers can be blown open with enough explosive. Could his villa be more fortified than a military bunker? As long as we focus our firepower, we can definitely do it. So, everyone gathered their explosives at what they thought was the weakest point, ready to detonate. Seeing this, Zhang Yi immediately rose from his chair and said coldly, You think I've run out of tricks just because I've been holding back? Today, I'll teach you a good lesson. He then turned to Zhou Kier and Yang Mi behind him. You guys just stay here and enjoy the show. If you're scared, you can go hide in the basement. After placing all the explosives together, the leader decisively pressed the detonation button. A thunderous explosion followed, and everyone thought that if it couldn't flatten the building, it would at least create a breach. The massive explosion created a blizzard-like spread. Everyone eagerly advanced to inspect the effect of the explosion, but when the dust settled, they were all dumbfounded. A deep pit was formed on the ground, but the main building seemed completely unharmed. Everyone couldn't believe their eyes. 
the area below the wall was covered in some black material, meaning the villa was essentially a 360-degree alloy fortress. Team leader Shin Hong was instantly stupefied. It seems we really need to go back and ask for support. The level of weapons we have is simply not enough. We must call the demolition team with larger quantities of explosives. To Zhang Yi, the mere dozen or so C4 explosives were hardly worth a glance. After all, this shelter was built to withstand nuclear attacks. He went to the second floor and took out a sniper rifle from a different space. At that moment, Deputy Commander Yu Lang's men brought over a heavy box. Upon opening it, Shin Hong was overjoyed. How did you manage to bring this? This is excellent. It's a heavy sniper rifle capable of destroying a tank in one shot. Yu Lang aimed at the shelter's glass, confidently saying, even if that's bulletproof glass, it's unlikely to withstand my shot. Just as Zhang Yi reached the second floor with his sniper rifle, a loud gunshot rang out, startling him. Could this be the heavy sniper? A screeching friction sound came from the external glass. Zhang Yi went closer and saw a small white scratch on the glass. This is serious. If they were to fire millions of rounds like this, the glass might actually crack. Terrifying. Meanwhile, Yu Lang, holding the heavy sniper, began to question his life choices. After two seconds of silence, he broke down. I've used this gun to penetrate bunkers before. How could a mere villa? Shin Hong came over to comfort him. The defensive power of this villa might be even more terrifying than West Mountain Base. It seems we should return and report to our superiors. We're almost out of weapons. Shin Hong immediately ordered a retreat. Zhang Yi, observing from the second floor, saw them preparing to leave. He immediately ordered the windows to be opened and activated a dimensional gate in front. This meant all attacks from outside would be absorbed into the alternate space, while Zhang Yi's own attacks would remain unaffected. He set up his sniper rifle and aimed. When the retreating soldiers noticed the window opening, one shouted, Captain Shin, the window on the second floor of the villa seems to be open. As they reported, they did not hesitate to shoot. As elite soldiers, their marksmanship was highly accurate, aiming straight for Zhang Yi's face. However, their bullets disappeared like stones sinking into the sea, all vanishing before reaching Zhang Yi. He smirked, I've taken a fancy to that heavy sniper. It's not something ordinary people can get their hands on. Since you've come, don't think about leaving. As they fired, Zhang Yi also pulled the trigger, targeting the soldier carrying the box. Shin Hong, seeing the figure on the second floor of the villa, showed a hint of joy. I thought I had no way to get you, but now you've opened the window yourself. Everyone, fire at him. Twenty people raised their guns and fired wildly. But Zhang Yi, with one hand on the dimensional gate and the other aiming and shooting calmly, accurately shot each in the head. It took the fall of six soldiers before they realized, why can't our bullets hit him? Shin Hong's pupils shrank sharply. This guy might be a mutant. Yu Lang, beside him, also widened his eyes. Could his ability be immunity to all attacks? Shin Hong immediately ordered a retreat, knowing that if the opponent was indeed a mutant, they couldn't handle him with just their team. They all turned and ran. Shin Hong shouted to his teammates, don't worry about the fallen brothers for now. Find cover quickly. Zhang Yi, through his scope, spotted the two team leaders and aimed at them. But with one shot, Shin Hong and Yu Lang instantly disappeared from their spot, narrowly evading his attack. Zhang Yi was familiar with this scene. The same move had surprised him during the fight with Lu Ziang. Could these two be like that man? Mutants transformed through modifications, even with almost identical abilities? After scanning the area, Zhang Yi realized that only two people seemed to have special abilities. He devised a plan and fired another shot, this time aiming not for the head, but for the legs of the soldiers. Two soldiers who couldn't evade in time fell to the ground, clutching their legs in agony. Their comrades, witnessing such a scene, desperately wanted to rush out to help. They could bear the pain of leaving the bodies of their fallen brothers behind, but couldn't stand the thought of not helping their close comrades. However, Shin Hong stopped them. Nobody move. He's trying to draw us out. Rushing out now is suicide. Shin Hong, still maintaining his calm, immediately thought of a countermeasure and shouted, throw all the smoke and incendiary grenades out. Instantly, the area near the injured soldiers was engulfed in rolling white smoke and blazing flames. With this approach, even with tactical goggles, no one could see anything. Shin Hong took this opportunity to quickly send people for the rescue. Zhang Yi couldn't help but inwardly commend, they really are professional soldiers with combat discipline. He then smirked wickedly and reversed the direction of the dimensional gate. In the next second, all the bullets that had been absorbed into the alternate space suddenly poured out like a violent storm, instantly turning the two injured soldiers and four rescuers into sieves. Everyone was furious at this tactic, which was beyond their comprehension. Trembling, the soldiers said, this man isn't human, we can't possibly fight against him. A young soldier, completely breaking down, shouted at Shin Hong, Captain, let's send a distress signal. Ask the base to send the battalion commander. Shin Hong grabbed the soldier's collar. Shut up. Weren't we the ones who came to rescue? Now asking for rescue ourselves. Where would that leave my face as the captain? The soldiers were in utter despair, looking at their captain with terrified eyes. That person is an invincible demon. How can we possibly stand against him? Rather than dying here, I'd rather be sent to the fourth life pod to pedal a bicycle. The special forces team was in a difficult
difficult situation, but Deputy Commander Yu Lang tried to reassure everyone, calm down, everyone, the fact that he's hiding inside and not coming out shows he still fears our strength, let's keep our spirits up. Shin Hong, looking worried, said gravely, his marksmanship is as good as ours, we could be sniped at any moment, we can't just keep hiding here. Yu Lang then drew a plan in the snow, explaining his strategy, his villa doesn't have a view without blind spots, if we break through a few houses in front of us and move through them, as long as we're out of his sight, even the best marksmanship won't help him. Zhang Yi, standing on his balcony, had probably guessed their escape plan. He didn't intend to leave the shelter to pursue them. Although their abilities were negligible, they were a highly coordinated team. Zhang Yi didn't want to take the risk. Moreover, his dimensional gate could only open in one direction. If he went out and faced attacks from multiple sides, it would be over. Meanwhile, at West Mountain Base, Chen Xinyan received a report from his secretary, Guro. He frowned deeply as he read, 12 soldiers killed, Shen Hong and Yu Lang were ineffective, causing great loss to the base. I think they must be severely punished, to set an example. Chen Xinyan pondered for a moment. In the past, he would have executed Chen Hong and Yu Lang without hesitation, but now the base was short of personnel, and they had indeed brought back important intelligence. This isn't their fault. The opponent is too strong. But what's the background of this shelter? Why haven't I heard about it before? Is there any intelligence on this? Guro, prepared before coming, handed over a tablet displaying a map of Heavenly Sea City with several important locations marked. She briefed Chen Xinyan methodically, based on the reports from Chen Hong and Yu Lang, and combining previous intelligence, the most likely suspect is the warehouse manager Zhang Yi. The original owner of the shelter was the billionaire Wang Siming, who reportedly spent a billion dollars building it ten years ago. It was taken as just entertainment news back then. However, now our engineers speculate that the shelter's defensive strength may surpass our West Mountain base. As for how Zhang Yi took over the shelter, that remains unknown. Chen Xinyan couldn't help but remark, this kid is truly a chosen one, so lucky. In his eyes, Zhang Yi was just a small-time figure who had stumbled upon good fortune. Such individuals, even if they acquired power, would be limited by their narrow vision and shallow knowledge, eventually overwhelmed by their own abilities, unable to compare with someone of his stature. Chen Xinyan picked up the report again and read carefully, Southern Warehouse Manager, innate ability, immune to bullet attacks. Suddenly, he realized the crux of the matter. The place where Xia Huanhuan had trouble is only a few kilometers from his villa. He chased out of the shelter to kill Xia Huanhuan, considering her ability to pass through walls. It's likely she discovered some damning secret of Zhang Yi's, giving him a reason to kill her. The biggest secret in the apocalypse is resources. A sharp glint appeared in his eyes. So, it seems the billions worth of resources from the southern warehouse are likely in his hands, hidden away with some ability. Excited, Chen Xinyan exclaimed, this explains everything. We must capture Zhang Yi. Guro, slightly startled by the revelation, did not forget to flatter Chen Xinyan. Congratulations, Lord Chen, for finding a massive amount of resources for our West Mountain base. Chen Xinyan nodded in satisfaction, clearly intending to take credit for the potential discovery of the resources. He began to fantasize about the prosperous life ahead, almost as if the resources were already in his hands. Indeed, if we really secure these resources, they could sustain the base for decades. Tossing the file onto the table, he decisively ordered, get Ling Feng here. Soon, Ling Feng relayed instructions to the teams of Shen Hong and Yu Lang, directing them to temporarily head to Su East Village across the river. This move served two purposes, firstly, to investigate the surrounding area in advance, and secondly, to wait there for the follow-up troops. Ever since Zhang Yi had warned Chun Lei, the timid Chun Lei had been living in fear every day, dreading the possibility of West Mountain Base sending troops to raid his village. His worst fears materialized when a group of fully armed soldiers suddenly appeared in Su East Village. Chun Lei hurriedly called Zhang Yi, Brother Zhang, something terrible has happened. Zhang Yi immediately guessed that the soldiers might have gone to Su East Village. Chun Lei, don't panic, just remember, these people are not the so-called government. They're rampaging through Heavenly Sea City, collecting resources without any regard for morality or law. You must be careful to hide your resources well, and be even more careful about your life. Chun Lei was extremely anxious, but don't worry about me, boss. If I want to run, nobody can catch me. Even you couldn't catch me last time. The problem is that these people have been welcomed as honored guests by our village chief, and now they won't listen to any of my advice. Zhang Yi responded with a faint smile, then there's nothing you can do. Wise words can't persuade the destined to die. Just take good care of yourself and those around you. Suddenly, Zhang Yi's tone turned icy. But let me remind you, I've always treated you like a brother. If you ever decide you don't want to work with me, I won't blame you. The only condition is that you must not betray me. Having experienced Zhang Yi's power and cherishing the limited edition collectibles Zhang Yi had, Chun Lei quickly reassured, Brother Zhang, you can count on me. I know you're the best to me. Zhang Yi originally wanted to call Chun Lei to the shelter, but then had a change of heart. Chun Lei, I need more intelligence about West Mountain base. Try to find out as much as you can about the soldiers' movements. Chun Lei seemed reluctant. Undercover work isn't my forte. Those soldiers are intimidating.
intimidating, and I get shaky just looking at them. Zhang Yi was somewhat exasperated. It seems this guy still doesn't realize his own strength. With his ability, he could easily freeze these soldiers in a fraction of a second. Why is he so timid? Don't worry, I'm not asking you to fight them. Just probe around a bit. If you can get some important information, there'll be a reward for you, Zhang Yi assured. At this, Chun Lei's face lit up. Boss, you can count on me. I'll handle it perfectly. Meanwhile, in Su East Village, the village chief was busy attending to the soldiers, arranging accommodations, and asking every household to contribute food and drink for them. When Chun Lei approached the village chief from behind and called out to him, the chief turned around and scolded, didn't I tell you to hide at home and not come out? If the soldiers find out you're a mutant, they might take you away. What would happen to our village then? Chun Lei responded with a smile, the fact that I'm a mutant will come out sooner or later. Even if our villagers keep quiet, can you be sure people from the neighboring village won't talk? They'll think you're hiding something and become wary of you. It's better to admit it now and use this opportunity to get closer to them. The village chief of Su East Village, after some thought, found Chun Lei's suggestion reasonable. He then brought Chun Lei to Shen Hong and the others. Gentlemen, this is my grandson, Su Chun Lei. He's a mutant. Hearing that Chun Lei was a mutant, everyone looked at him in surprise. Shen Hong approached and asked, You don't look like a mutant. What's your ability? To gain the soldier's trust, Chun Lei replied, See these snow houses? I built them all by myself. He then demonstrated his ability. With a slight lift of his right hand, a snowball rose into the air. The onlookers widened their eyes in amazement, dispelling any doubts. Shen Hong, excited, draped an arm around Chun Lei's shoulder and exclaimed, Brother, you're amazing. I had no idea such a small village could harbor such talent. Discovering a mutant was a significant achievement. A natural mutant like Chun Lei could hold a high position in West Mountain Base's special forces. Everyone hoped to build a good relationship with their potential future leader. Feeling elated, Chun Lei turned to the village chief and said, Little Su, prepare more food and drinks. I want to have a good time with the soldiers. During the feast, Chun Lei gathered crucial intelligence and immediately called Zhang Yi. West Mountain Base has assembled a group of terrifyingly powerful mutant captains, ready to attack your shelter at any moment. They've brought a large amount of explosives for targeted demolition. After learning the details from Chun Lei, Zhang Yi had newfound respect for him and expressed his concern. Thanks to your information, you can come and pick up your figurines anytime. Then, with a hint of playfulness, Zhang Yi asked, Fatso, haven't you ever thought about joining West Mountain Base? Following me might not be the best path. Chun Lei smiled openly. Brother Zhang, my heart has always been with you. I trust my instincts. As a sensitive anime fan, Chun Lei could sense the soldiers' ill intentions, especially in the way they looked at the villagers, as if they were livestock. He couldn't imagine being part of such a group. While Zhang Yi might not be a gentleman, Chun Lei saw him as a person of genuine character. Zhang Yi assured him firmly, you will never regret your choice today. Keep an eye on their movements and contact me with any updates. Zhang Zhang Yi, deep in thought about countermeasures, contemplated the challenge of dealing with explosives. The main issue is handling the bombing. The stockpile of explosives at West Mountain Base could easily level 10 shelters like mine. But to place the explosives, they have to get close to the shelter first. That's when I'll take them down. He wasn't overly worried. After all, this was his home turf. Even if he couldn't hold the upper two floors, he could retreat to the underground levels. The true essence of the shelter lay in its three subterranean floors, impervious even to missiles. After summoning the women in the shelter and briefing them about the situation, he arranged for them to move underground. The women were understandably nervous, but Zhang Yi reassured them, don't worry at all, I've already assessed the strength of West Mountain Base, they can't threaten our safety. After delegating tasks, Zhang Yi went to the control room to check in with Yang Xinxin. Xinxin, how's the task I assigned you coming along? Yang Xinxin looked somewhat dejected, I've been trying to hack into West Mountain Base's network these past few days, but I failed. It's not that my skills are lacking, but their internal network is a local area network. It's impossible to invade without accessing their internal network, and with the current network media in a paralyzed state, it's like trying to cook a meal without rice. Zhang Yi wasn't surprised by this outcome and consoled her, I don't blame you, as long as we maintain our own security and prevent invasions, that's enough. If we can counter infiltrate, great, if not, it's no big deal. Then, Zhang Yi visited Lu Karen's workshop and asked her seriously, if you were a demolition expert at West Mountain Base, how would you deal with this shelter? Lu Karen answered without hesitation, for buildings, it's common to use TNT explosives with detonators, especially for dealing with old structures. Zhang Yi then inquired, how much explosives do you think would be needed to blow a big hole in our shelter, considering its sturdiness? Lu Karen scratched her head, I don't have an exact concept of the shelter's strength, but based on the materials and thickness, at least 500 kilograms of explosives would be required. Zhang Yi pondered, such a large quantity would be a very obvious target when being transported. Couldn't I just detonate them prematurely with a sniper rifle? However, Lu Karen shook her head, that's unlikely to work. TNT is highly stable. It can't be detonated by bullets or even direct burning. It must be detonated using a detonator. Zhang Yi thought for a moment. In that case, it seems I'll have to implement the second plan. How to 
did the task I gave you last time turn out? Lou Karen presented a bomb with a detonator. This wasn't difficult for me. The scope is also ready. The hardest part was this, she said, pulling out a set of combat gear from the cabinet. She had put a lot of thought into making it, using the latest technological materials Zhang Yi had provided. It was so sturdy that it could resist most sniper rifle bullets. What puzzled her was, why did you want it made in the style of those soldiers' uniforms? Are you planning to infiltrate West Mountain Base? This is crucial. You'll understand when the time comes. Meanwhile, at West Mountain Base, a top-tier team was quickly assembled and set off towards Su Family Town. Shin Hong and others had been waiting at the village entrance for some time. This mission was also voluntarily joined by Liang Yu, not to combat Zhang Yi, but to prepare for leading her students to escape later. Upon seeing Battalion Commander Ling Fong, Shin Hong hurriedly confessed their failure. They had set out as a rescue team, but had ended up losing 12 soldiers without saving anyone. But Ling Fong didn't seem to blame them. This was an organizational misjudgment, underestimating the opponent's strength. You need not be too hard on yourselves. Then Ling Feng's gaze suddenly turned cold, and he spoke with clenched teeth. The person who killed my brothers, I'll tear him to pieces. Confidently looking at the powerful lineup behind the captain, Shin Hong believed, this time, even if Zhang Yi is incredibly strong, he's going to suffer. Ling Feng then pointed at Chun Lei. Who is this guy? Shin Hong quickly introduced him. This is a natural mutant I found after much effort. He can control ice and snow, a man of limitless potential. Liang Yu, standing behind Ling Feng, recognized Chun Lei immediately. Isn't he the mutant who helped Zhang Yi take Yang Xinxin away last time? However, she chose not to reveal his identity, as her current priority was to escape from West Mountain Base with her students. Ling Feng scrutinized Chun Lei. You can control ice and snow? Chun Lei nodded nervously. Yes. All these ice houses in the village were built by me. Ling Feng patted Chun Lei's shoulder. After this operation, I'll recommend you to the higher-ups. You might even get a chance to be a team leader. Then Ling Feng started to deploy the operation. Based on the information we have, the enemy has very accurate marksmanship. Therefore, when the mine clearing and explosives placement team is in action, we must use smoke grenades to obscure his line of sight. As for his ability to ignore bullet attacks, our goal is to blow open the shelter, not to engage him directly. Meanwhile, inside the shelter, Zhang Yi was calmly reading a paperback book. Upon seeing the thick smoke outside through the surveillance system, he closed the book and put on the special combat suit made by Liu Karen. Zhang Yi told the women, stay in the basement and don't come up. What follows is a battle between men. Standing on the second floor balcony, Zhang Yi looked out at the dense smoke and mused, seems like they're scared of my sniping, but this is indeed a good strategy. Zhang Yi appeared confident, a meaningful smile creeping across his lips. So, it seems they are about to proceed with the demolition of the shelter. Ling Feng first arranged for the bomb disposal personnel to dismantle the traps around the villa. Their method was straightforward and brutal, not meticulously disarming each trap but rather using their own explosives for a saturation detonation. Zhang Yi couldn't help but admire their proficiency, they really know what they're doing. As the traps were cleared by the explosion, Ling Feng signaled, demolition team, move in. Everyone else, be ready to cover them. The bomb squad, each carrying heavy explosives, methodically placed them beneath the walls of the shelter. From inside, Zhang Yi watched their every move. Just place them and leave, like a delivery? Makes sense. They have to get to a safe distance to detonate them remotely. They can't risk being blown up. Looks like I overestimated them. They don't understand my abilities. Soon, Ling Feng received a signal on his radio. All bomb squad members have reached a safe distance, ready to detonate. Ling Feng's lips curled into a smile. Seems Zhang Yi isn't as capable as we thought. I was prepared for a tough fight during the explosive setup, maybe even losing some men, but this was easy. He pressed the detonation button, and everyone braced for the explosion. But after a few seconds, the sound and fury of the explosion seemed to disappear in a fraction of a second. A scout checked through binoculars, and his eyes widened in shock. The mountain of explosives disappeared in an instant, and the blast and flames seemed to be sucked away. There's only minimal damage to the wall. Ling Feng stamped his foot in frustration. This is unbelievable. Were the explosives devoured? Liang Yu's eyes sparkled with a strange light, thinking, Zhang Yi has such power. I need to find a way to cooperate with him. After pondering for a moment, Ling Feng tentatively concluded that Zhang Yi's ability was related to space. Remote bombing wouldn't work. Any amount of explosives sent would be instantly removed. Realizing the difficulty of the situation, Ling Feng still believed, Zhang Yi's defensive abilities are extraordinary, suggesting he might not be strong in offense. The four team leaders with us are mutants, and based on their awakening methods, it's unlikely one person's ability covers both offense and defense. So, we don't need to rush. We'll leave some people to watch the shelter, making sure no one inside escapes, and go back to the base to devise a strategy. In the shelter at this time, Zhang Yi also arrived in the basement. Shou Kier hurried over to inquire about the situation. What was that tremor just now? It felt like the sky was about to collapse. Zhang Yi comforted her, saying, you don't need to worry. Even if they breach the first two levels of our shelter, they can't threaten the three underground levels. In this billion-dollar shelter, I bet 800 million is spent on the 
underground part alone. Recalling the scene of the recently detonated explosives being absorbed into a different space, Zhang Yi muttered to himself, I want to see how much more explosives they can bring to me for free. Several women, looking panicked, gathered around to ask about the situation. Zhang Yi reassured them with a smile, You don't need to be too worried. The explosives they brought this time are already used up. We are temporarily safe. It will take time for them to go back and get more explosives. The West Mountain base is more than 50 kilometers from here. Even if they go back immediately to resupply, it will take them at least half a day to return, and I've already thought of a strategy to deal with them. Then, Zhang Yi went to the living room. While monitoring the outside situation, he asked Yang Mi to prepare food to replenish energy, as the primary source of energy for his special abilities was food. At this moment, Chun Lei suddenly sent a message. Brother Zhang, the noise from your place scared me to death. I thought your villa area had been leveled. Now, many soldiers have returned to our village, and some have gone west. Zhang Yi immediately understood that they had indeed gone back for more explosives. What are the remaining people doing? Chun Lei complained. What else can they do? As soon as they came back, they started demanding food and drink, acting like lords. Zhang Yi couldn't help but worry about Chun Lei. He clearly understands that if this shelter can't be taken down soon, the worst affected will definitely be Su Family Town. It will surely become a base for the West Mountain base, and all the people in Su Family Town will have to serve them. Immediately, Zhang Yi reminded Chun Lei, you must always be cautious of these soldiers. If there's any danger, come to me at any time. Your brother will protect you. Chun Lei was deeply moved and said, thank you, brother Zhang. If things really come to that point, I will definitely come to you. After hanging up the phone, Zhang Yi pondered. He knew that a conflict between the West Mountain base and Su Family Town was inevitable. However, Zhang Yi didn't sympathize with them. Instead, he hoped they would break ties sooner. Meanwhile, Ling Feng returned to the base with his men to transport explosives. Captain Sher Daeong and most of his men stayed in Su Family Town. He summoned the village head of Su East Village and Chun Lei. We plan to stay in the village for a while. You need to make room for us to stay, and remember to prepare meals for 65 people every day. The village head still didn't grasp the seriousness of the situation and agreed obsequiously. Chun Lei felt a pang of concern. These soldiers eat so much, one can eat the portion of five. If this continues, the village will eventually be drained. The village head of Su East Village was still fantasizing that the soldiers would only stay for a few days and leave after dealing with Zhang Yi, anticipating a great reward afterward. He carelessly asked, when will you be able to subdue that murderer Zhang Yi? Upon hearing this, Shi Daeyong's eyes turned cold. Don't ask what you shouldn't. Just take care of our food and lodging. Sure Dayong's voice and physique were very imposing. The village head had no choice but to bow repeatedly in agreement. After Sure Dayong left, the village head straightened up and commanded Chun Lei in a stern tone, hurry up and build more ice houses for the important guests to live in. Remember, put extra effort into it. Chun Lei remained silent in response to the village head's command. He knew very well that in the eyes of the villagers, no matter how strong he was, he was just seen as a useless deadbeat. The next day, Ling Feng brought a large amount of explosives. Sure Dayong, trans formed into a giant ape along with many soldiers, arrived at a reverse slope. Then, Ling Feng and he, working together, hurled a massive bundle of explosives towards the shelter. Watching the flying explosives, Zhang Yi shouted dramatically, Dimensional Gate. Suddenly, a huge gate appeared above the shelter, and a surge of energy poured out. The explosives, which were supposed to hit the shelter, were instantly reflected back, almost along the same path. Ling Feng and his men were caught off guard, instinctively shouting, Take cover. Everyone immediately hit the ground. Ling Feng was stunned. The TNT, as expected, was stable enough not to explode upon impact, but rather after the countdown of the detonator ended. A huge explosion formed a mushroom cloud, engulfing many soldiers in a fiery wave, even throwing those hundreds of meters away. Watching this scene, akin to a bonfire feast, absorbing and then releasing the explosive energy was initially just a bold experiment for Zhang Yi, but its success meant that he could continue using this method against them. Meanwhile, Ling Feng and his group were lucky that Jin Shuerong had timely created an ice barrier, which which blocked most of the explosive impact. Ling Feng stood up disheveled, looking at the scene in front of him. The entire hill had been turned into a deep pit, with many special forces members burned to ashes. These were Ling Feng's brothers-in-arms, who had survived the apocalypse, but in a blink of an eye, they turned into black ash. He thought, anguished. Ling Feng pounded the ground in a rage, the atmosphere on the scene oppressively heavy. His look was more terrifying than an injured wild animal, yet he also tried to stay calm. Analyzing what had just happened, he soon guessed the process. Could it be that he used the explosive? Explosive energy absorbed yesterday and released it, reflecting the thrown explosive.
explosives back at us. While still pondering, suddenly a bullet mixed with special abilities was shot towards Ling Feng. With a sharp twist of his head, Ling Feng narrowly avoided the bullet, which whizzed past his ear. Turning towards the shelter, their eyes met, causing Zhang Yi's pupils to contract. That fierce look sends chills down the spine, truly befitting their leader. It's a pity I didn't take him out. At that moment, Ling Feng felt a sense of alarm. As a soldier, he never expected Zhang Yi's sniper rifle to be effective over two kilometers away while still maintaining such lethal force. Ling Feng immediately warned everyone to take cover. However, Shi Deong, not being an agile mutant, was shot in the forehead. Yet, he didn't fall. He simply removed the bullet from his forehead with his bare hands, cursing and glaring in the direction of Zhang Yi. This shocked Zhang Yi. Such defense, comparable to a tank. I wonder if he's even stronger than Uncle Yu. All the leaders from the West Mountain base are tough nuts to crack. As Zhang Yi was about to take aim again, those few disappeared from his view. Simultaneously, two sharp bullets flew towards him. Zhang Yi quickly opened the dimensional gate, absorbing the bullets into a different space, and scoffed, trying to sneak attack me with a sniper shot. Zhang Yi immediately reversed the direction of the bullets and sent them back along their original path. The two snipers from the base, among their top tier, would never know that the bullets that killed them were the very ones they had fired. While Zhang Yi was still searching for targets, a cloud of dust suddenly rose in the distance, as if something was charging towards him at a speed even his eyes couldn't track. Before he could react, a loud bang came from below, and the entire shelter felt a strong vibration. The self-check system immediately sent an alarm. Shelter impacted, wall damage at 0.03%. Zhang Yi was startled. When did he get here? If he hits the shelter with thousands of punches like that, it's going to be the end of this place. Ling Feng stared back at Zhang Yi with icy eyes. You coward, come out and fight me one on one. Zhang Yi inwardly sighed, realizing, it seems that conventional strength is hardly enough to harm him. But as long as I stay in the shelter, he can't do anything to me. The frustrated West Mountain base team had no choice but to return to Su family town. The village head of Su East Village greeted them with an obsequious smile. Captain Ling, you must have won a great victory today. Has that demon Zhang Yi been killed? The villagers nearby also looked excited. That huge explosion just now must have blown Zhang Yi to ashes. Captain Ling is truly formidable. The mood of the West Mountain base team was already at its lowest after their failed mission, and the villagers' flattery felt more like mockery. Shi Deong coldly ordered, shut up, all of you. It was then that the village head realized the soldier's demeanor did not resemble that of Victor's. Ling Feng then approached and said, go and prepare more food for us. We expended a lot of energy today. After saying this, he headed towards the temporary housing. That forceful punch Ling Feng had thrown had consumed nearly half of his strength. Shi Deong didn't forget to turn back threateningly to remind the village head, remember, my portion should be the largest. The villagers dared not disobey, continually nodding in agreement. Once the soldiers were out of earshot, the villagers couldn't help but murmur among themselves. It seems they failed today. So many people and they still couldn't handle one Zhang Yi. It's quite embarrassing. Although the villagers spoke softly, their words were overheard by the mutants with their exceptional hearing. Shi Deong even suggested teaching the villagers a lesson, but Ling Feng stopped him. They still have some value, providing us with food and shelter. If we need to deal with them, we can do it after handling Zhang Yi. Then we can take them all to the base to pedal bicycles for electricity. Meanwhile, after the soldiers from the West Mountain base had retreated, Zhang Yi returned to the underground shelter. Shou Kier rushed over, anxiously asking, Brother Zhang, are you alright? Zhang Yi replied with a smile, the ones who aren't alright are them. Yang Mi considerately prepared some food and brought it over. While eating, Zhang Yi asked Lu Karen, if the wall is somewhat damaged, will it be difficult to repair? Lu Karen pondered and said, I've studied the alloy used in the shelter's walls. We just need some special materials. Even if I can get the materials we need, repairing the wall would require going outside. But it's not possible to go out now, right? Zhang Yi replied with a smile, I just need to know it can be repaired. There's no rush for this. I have plenty of time. Yang Mi looked worried. I wonder how long this battle will last. Zhang Yi handed her a beer. Don't worry, my favorite thing is to fight a war of attrition. Seeing this, the other girls came over to ask for beer too, lightening the atmosphere. After repelling the West Mountain base, Zhang Yi resumed his shameless way of life. However, a sudden phone call broke the tranquility. Yang Xinxin picked up the phone and turned pale. How could it be her? As a top hacker, she wasn't worried about someone hacking her phone. She sensibly handed the phone to Zhang Yi. It was a message from someone named Liang Yu, saying she and her classmates needed help and hoped Yang Xinxin could connect her with Zhang Yi. Upon seeing the name Liang Yu, Zhang Yi thought of the mutant from the Azure Sky Academy who wielded a long sword. Could she have joined the West Mountain base too? I still remember that swordswoman with her fierce swordsmanship. Even struggling with hunger for so long, she could fight evenly with flower. If she's at her full strength, her power must be even more terrifying. Zhang Yi became alert and asked Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen earnestly, tell me about this teacher Liang. They both looked grateful and said, although she has a stubborn and pure character, teacher Liang is undoubtedly a good person. She could have easily survived 
survived on her own, yet she chose to risk her life protecting us, who were nothing but burdens to her. Zhang Yi pondered, if she's endured the brutal trials of the apocalypse, that's enough to prove her character, but now that she's joined the West Mountain base, I still have to be cautious. He then asked Yang Xinxin, by sending messages through the phone, is there a risk of our shelter's network being compromised by a virus? Yang Xinxin confidently crossed her arms and reassured, brother, don't worry, I've told you before, the defense level of my phone is not inferior to the supercomputer in the control room, it's impossible for anyone to hack into it. Zhang Yi nodded awkwardly and sent a message to Liang Yu, I am Zhang Yi, what do you want to talk about? As a female captain level mutant, Liang Yu had her own independent ice house, receiving Zhang Yi's reply, she immediately called him, Zhang Yi, I'm here to discuss a cooperation, my students are in danger at the West Mountain base, and I need your help. Zhang Yi replied sarcastically, don't joke with me, what kind of danger could there be in a shelter like the West Mountain base? Besides, aren't those students all from privileged backgrounds? Liang Yu sounded a bit embarrassed, I'm not joking, their previous status and positions are worthless now, I'm sincerely seeking cooperation, I was part of the team that came to attack your shelter, and as a new captain, I might be able to assist you, but first, you need to agree to help my students escape from the West Mountain base. Zhang Yi was puzzled, isn't the West Mountain base a large shelter? How could there be life-threatening danger there? And with Liang Yu's strength, how could she not protect a group of students? Zhang Yi was well aware that while he could ensure his own safety, launching an offensive against the West Mountain base was out of the question. He didn't immediately agree to Liang Yu's conditions. Instead, he asked her for all the information she had about the West Mountain base. To show her sincerity, Liang Yu shared all the information she knew with Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi quickly grasped the key point, so the West Mountain base is indeed conducting experiments on artificial mutations, albeit with a very low success rate so far. Shou Kier, looking horrified, said, the West Mountain base is like a living hell. If the people from the fourth life pod are turned into protein solution, who will generate electricity for them? Zhang Yi chuckled dismissively, there are still quite a few people alive. Even if only 5% of the population survived, that's still a significant number. Look at Su family town across the river, there are thousands of survivors there, but I guess they'll eventually be captured for experiments, experiencing cycling for electricity and artificial mutations. Lu Karen, ever innocent, was worried about her classmates. When I heard they went to the West Mountain base, I was happy for them, but the more I hear, the scarier it gets. If I had known this, it would have been better to stay at Azure Sky Academy. Now Zhang Yi understood why Liang Yi was seeking his help. However, he told her, the West Mountain base is too heavily guarded. With my abilities alone, it's impossible to rescue those privileged students. My power is for self-defense. Expecting me to go out and save people is overestimating my abilities. Although Liang Yi was somewhat disappointed, Zhang Yi's response was within her expectations. She understood the principle of mutual exchange. If I can offer you something valuable enough, would you take the risk for us? Zhang Yi chuckled lightly. Whether I'm willing to act depends on the value of what you offer. Contact me again when you have something worthwhile. He then ended the call. Turning to Yang Xinxin, he said, You mentioned before that if we plant a Trojan horse into the West Mountain base's network, we could completely infiltrate their system, right? It seems like a good opportunity is presenting itself. In Su family town, Ling Feng, having been repelled, gathered his most trusted subordinates in his room that night to discuss strategies against Zhang Yi. Ling Feng shared his insights. Although our previous attacks failed, we've more or less figured out what Zhang Yi's special abilities are. Conventional weapons are no use. They just get absorbed and reflected back. Fortunately, his offensive means are limited. He doesn't dare leave the shelter and can only threaten us with sniping. There are blind spots in his shelter's defenses. Not every angle is covered by windows. So, I plan for us mutants to take turns attacking these blind spots, while having the villagers of Su family town dig tunnels for underground blasting. Our surface attacks are just a diversion to draw Zhang Yi's attention. Our real goal is to dig through the tunnels and blast from below. Liang Yu was horrified at Ling Feng's plan. You're making the villagers of Su family town do hard labor in these extreme cold conditions. This intense work will surely lead to many of them freezing or working to death. You're sending them to their deaths. Ling Feng responded coldly. I don't care about their lives. Zhang Yi has already killed hundreds of their villagers. Without us, they stand even less chance against Zhang Yi. Some sacrifices are necessary for final victory. Military discipline is about following orders. We must use every means necessary to take down Zhang Yi's shelter. Liang Yu clenched her fists in anger, shaking with emotion. But those are innocent villagers. I'm not a soldier. I can't do this. Ling Feng stared intensely at Liang Yu. The moment you joined the special forces, you became one. Unless you have a better strategy, you must follow orders. Xing Shuerong, sensing the tense atmosphere, quickly chimed in. This is a desperate measure. Zhang Yi has a lot of resources crucial for the West Mountain base. In these apocalyptic times, we can't afford to show mercy to others. Protecting ourselves and those close to us is already a challenge. Like your students, for instance. Liang Yu calmed down when her students were mentioned. Her sense of justice made it hard for her to 
tolerate such actions, but she knew well that she was no match for Ling Feng. Confronting them directly would not only be suicidal, but also endanger her students. Xing Shuerong continued, Digging tunnels is not the same as being cannon fodder. They're used to farming. This shouldn't be too hard for them. Liang Yu stood up. Somewhat helplessly, you arrange it. But I hope you can prioritize human life and try to avoid casualties among the villagers. After a whole night of discussion, they formulated a battle plan. Ling Feng called the village head to gather everyone in the village. Dozens of soldiers, armed with rifles, looked at the villagers as if they were prisoners. Ling Feng picked up a megaphone and shouted, The murderer Zhang Yi across the river. We have invested a lot of manpower and resources, but this man is extremely cunning and deceitful. Now we need the cooperation of the villagers to dig tunnels and eradicate Zhang Yi. That demon, the villagers were not convinced and whispered angrily, They eat our food, drink our water, and now they want us to do hard labor. This is outrageous. The village head tried to pacify them. Everyone, calm down. The organization is thinking of our village's long-term peace. The villagers were confused. We've been living in peace with Zhang Yi. It was us who attacked him first, and he just retaliated. They grumbled in discontent. Liang Yu watched this scene with a sigh, thinking, Ling Feng's decision could lead to the deaths of many innocent villagers. Upon receiving Liang Yu's intelligence, Zhang Yi was slightly startled. I hadn't considered an underground blast, but given the lack of digging equipment and the extreme cold weather, the progress of such a project would undoubtedly be very slow. I don't need to worry about it in the short term. Zhang Yi had already devised a counter strategy. He decided to play along with their plan, letting them dig the tunnel. When they were close to completion, he would destroy the tunnel, enjoying the look of surprise on their faces. Liang Yu, however, was anxious upon hearing this. But this way, it will be the villagers who will suffer. After all, the people from West Mountain Base are just supervising. Zhang Yi dismissed this concern and swiftly changed the subject, asking Liang Yu, which room are you staying in? Liang Yu was puzzled. Are you planning to come and find me? Zhang Yi smiled mysteriously. This is key to whether you and your students can escape. Liang Yu then described her location relative to Chun Lei's lavish castle. The next day, everyone moved according to the plan to attack the shelter. Zhang Yi watched this with a sense of irony. Beside him, Zhou Kier and Yang Mi were attentively serving him, one peeled seeds while the other brought water. Their competitive behavior made Yang Xinxin and Lu Karen feel envious. Lu Karen broke the awkward silence. This Ling Feng is quite formidable. His attacks are beyond ordinary weapons. Zhang Yi joked, they are the top forces of West Mountain Base, so it's not surprising. He then playfully added, look at the dangerous world outside, while we can eat and stay warm inside. You must cherish this. The implication was clear, they should show their gratitude. The women nodded in agreement, aware that all this was thanks to Zhang Yi. Yang Mi expressed her concerns. Although we know their plan, staying inside all the time isn't a long-term solution. We can't know the progress of their work. Zhang Yi looked towards Yang Xinxin. Explain it to your sister, will you? Yang Xinxin looked at Yang Mi as if she were looking at a fool, proudly explaining, sound travels faster in solids than in air, and being in the basement, we can feel it more clearly. With a sound wave receiver, I can precisely analyze their construction distance through the computer. Your brain probably can't understand this. Yang Mi seemed to have an epiphany, so, we don't have to do anything, just wait. Zhang Yi nodded with a smile, they are all working in vain, we just need to rest and conserve our strength, enjoying their performance. After several hours of assault, Ling Feng and his team decided to take a brief rest. They walked back, stopping by the digging site to check on the progress. The tunnel was filled with shouts and cries of distress. Soon, a man was carried out on a stretcher. After a quick examination, the military medic shook his head. It's an acute myocardial infarction. It's unlikely he'll survive. At this, a young man couldn't hold back his anger. He threw down a shovel and yelled furiously, you're inhuman, treating us like animals. I won't do this anymore. The overseer, Shin Hong, gripping his AK, coldly replied, we're doing this for your revenge. He then aimed his gun at the villager. We've come this far. If you dare disobey orders, you'll be treated as a deserter. Liang Yu, in a state of urgency, called Zhang Yi. At this rate, at least a hundred villagers will die. Can't you think of something to minimize the casualties of these innocent people? Zhang Yi, calm and collected, smiled. This is all within my expectations, but I've noticed that fewer special forces soldiers have been attacking the shelter these past few days. Where have the others gone? Do they have another mission? Liang Yu answered. With the increasing number of villager casualties, the mood has become very tense. So, Ling Feng has left some men in the town to maintain order. She laughed nervously. They say it's to keep order, but it's really just to suppress any potential uprising. After the call, Zhang Yi had a new plan in mind. It's been days since our last confrontation. Ling Feng and his team must have let their guard down. If I don't shake them up a bit, they might think I'm just hiding in the shelter, waiting to be captured. It seems a little shock is in order for them. The next day, Zhang Yi donned a special combat suit made by Lu Karen, preparing to take Flower out for a spin. The shelter had an emergency exit known only to Zhang Yi, leading to a three-kilometer long underground tunnel that ended at a tombstone in the hills behind a public cemetery. Even Zhang Yi had not expected that Wang Siming would create an emergency exit in a cemetery. Taking a 
snowmobile from his different space, Zhang Yi headed straight to Su family town. The guards at the village entrance quickly spotted Zhang Yi's figure, assuming he was a returning frontline captain due to the captain's armband on his combat suit. He saluted him. Before he could react, Zhang Yi swiftly took him out with his knife, eliminating all the guards silently and storing their bodies in his different space. Although Zhang Yi and Flower were capable of overpowering them, he preferred not to make too much noise. However, the scent of blood alerted the military dogs, which began barking furiously. The well-trained dogs would not bark without reason. Sensing danger, the special forces team rushed outside. Upon seeing Zhang Yi skulking about, they opened fire, but to their horror, their bullets seemed to be sucked into a strange vortex. Zhang Yi, wielding the dragon's roar, went on a frenzied spree of slashing and hacking. The scene instantly turned chaotic with limbs and severed arms flying about. The commotion quickly alerted Ling Feng. Meanwhile, the villagers at the construction site heard the gunfire. Is someone setting off fireworks? Ling Feng, hearing the gunfire, immediately turned serious and ordered, let's go back and investigate. By this time, Zhang Yi had already taken Chun Lei and made their escape, but Chun Lei expressed concern. Brother Zhang, our snowmobile tracks are too obvious. Won't your emergency exit be exposed? Zhang Yi was unfazed, confidently storing the snowmobile and saying, anyone with a brain could eventually find this place. It was bound to be exposed sooner or later, but I'm not worried about it. A meaningful smile played on Zhang Yi's lips. I'm actually looking forward to them coming after me. Back in the village, Ling Feng, seeing the bodies of his special forces soldiers scattered everywhere, was infuriated. He had thought his strategy of openly attacking while secretly digging a tunnel was foolproof, but instead, his base had been infiltrated. He realized there must be a traitor in his ranks, or else Zhang Yi wouldn't have dared to leave the shelter. Qing Xueron was suspicious. I've had people watching the shelter around the clock. Not even a fly could escape without our knowledge. Could there be another exit? Shi Deong, pounding his chest in frustration, speculated, there must be. Our West Mountain base has several emergency exits. It must be an inside job. Someone leaked our operation timings, allowing him to attack our base fearlessly. Ling Feng's eyes lit up. Indeed, the West Mountain base has a few emergency exits, and I've heard Chen Xinyan has a private one. A shelter of Zhang Yi's level wouldn't just have one exit. If that's the case, our tunnel digging plan must also be compromised. Continuing the excavation is pointless now. At that moment, a soldier hurried over. Captain Ling, during the villager headcount, we found that the local mutant Su Chun Lei is missing, and there's no sign of his body. Also, Captain Liang Yu hasn't returned to the unit. Hearing this, Ling Feng was even more furious. Gritting his teeth, he said, it seems we have more than one traitor. He decided to immediately set off. Following the tracks of the snowmobile, the village head, at a loss, lamented, so many villagers died digging that tunnel, and now you tell me it was all for nothing. How am I supposed to explain this to everyone? Chun Lei, entering the shelter, was almost overwhelmed by the sight before him. Zhang Yi had prepared a room full of figurines, tapes, and pillows for him. Zhang Yi told Chun Lei, from now on, you'll live here. Chun Lei, overjoyed, jumped onto the bed and hugged the pillow tightly. From now on, I, Su Chun Lei, am willing to go through fire and water for brother Zhang, never shirking even in the face of death. Then, Zhang Yi went to the control room. With the information provided by Liang Yu and the equipment at hand, Yang Xinxin quickly hacked into the West Mountain Base's network. She confidently informed Zhang Yi, now I can paralyze the West Mountain Base's network at any time and cut off the communication between the dispatch troops and their base. Zhang Yi patted Yang Xinxin on the head in praise. Well done. Once we deal with West Mountain Base's top forces, the threat we face will diminish significantly. He then addressed Liang Yu, as long as you provide me with enough value, I will naturally fulfill my promise to you. But before that, you still need to work for the safety of your students. At that moment, the monitor showed Ling Feng and his team had found the emergency exit. Zhang Yi smiled devilishly, just watch, the show is about to begin. Meanwhile, Ling Feng and his team followed the snowmobile tracks, which eventually led them to a cemetery and then disappeared. Judging by the distance to the shelter, they concluded that this was undoubtedly the emergency exit. Shi Deong was furious. After killing so many of our brothers, I'll tear Zhang Yi apart when we catch him. Suddenly, a soldier pointed into the distance, shouting, Zhang Yi is over there. Shi Deong didn't hesitate and lunged forward, shouting, Zhang Yi, you scoundrel, I'll tear you into a thousand pieces. Xing Xueron quickly tried to stop him, saying, Shi Deong, don't be impulsive, come back. By this time, Shi Deong had transformed into an ape man, swearing to make Zhang Yi pay with blood. Zhang Yi, however, was not the least bit panicked. Dealing with this kind of brave but reckless man, Zhang Yi was confident. He raised his sniper rifle and fired three shots. At such a distance, Zhang Yi would never miss, but he deliberately aimed off to lure Shi Deong closer to the trap he had set. Just as Shi Deong was about to reach him, Zhang Yi swiftly stepped on the detonator he had buried earlier. Instantly, a snowstorm several dozen meters high erupted, blocking his vision. At this moment, Jing Xueron, Ling Feng, and others also caught up. Meanwhile, Liang Yu, wielding the dragon's roar, stood in front of them with flower by her side. Ling Feng 
Wang angrily accused Liang Yu. How dare you betray the base? Don't you want to save your students? Liang Yu didn't want to waste words with them. Most of her students had died in their human experiments, and she had long hated the base to the core. She shouted, Our paths are different. We cannot plan together. I have nothing to say to you. With that, she swung her knife at Ling Feng. Flower, behind her, suddenly pounced at Jing Xueron. Jing Xueron's skills were mainly defensive. She intended to block Flower's attack with an ice wall, but she clearly underestimated the power of Flower's claws. In an instant, she was killed. Ling Feng, in disbelief, looked back to see Jing Xueron lying in a pool of blood. While Ling Feng was skillfully dodging Liang Yu's dragon's roar, a huge explosion suddenly occurred behind him. When the dust settled, Shi Deong was seen covered in nails, lying on the ground, having lost his ability to fight. Shi Deong looked helplessly at Ling Feng, but it was too late. Zhang Yi, carrying the sniper rifle, fired another shot, eliminating any chance of Shi Deong getting up again. As he fired, Zhang Yi shouted, Chun Lei, it's your turn now. Chun Lei appeared behind them, seemingly out of nowhere. With both hands charged, he immediately sealed off the retreat of the remaining special forces soldiers. At this moment, Liang Yu didn't linger in her fight with Ling Feng. She mounted flower and took the opportunity to flee the scene, simultaneously pulling Chun Lei along with her, escaping at a high speed. Meanwhile, Zhang Yi stood atop a hill, looking down at the special forces soldiers trapped in the ice and snow. Ling Feng, with a look of disdain, said to Zhang Yi, You don't think mere ice and snow can trap me, do you? Zhang Yi let out a cold laugh. The real show was just beginning. Zhang Yi instantly activated the dimensional gate, releasing all the TNT he had previously stored in a different space. Except for Ling Feng himself, the remaining special forces soldiers were all modified beings with Ling Feng's cells transplanted. At the critical moment, Ling Feng ordered everyone to dive into the snow. This move indeed saved them from a lot of impact damage. After the explosion, Ling Feng and his team emerged from the snow in a disheveled state. Before they could recover, a soldier suddenly shouted, Captain, look up there. By the time Ling Feng looked forward, a massive avalanche was already upon them, leaving no time to react. Everyone was instantly buried under the thick snow. Zhang Yi called Liu Karen and Yang Xinxin in the control room. Thanks to you two geniuses, I could deal with these scum so easily. As it turned out, Yang Xinxin had used computer modeling to precisely calculate the location of the avalanche, and Liu Karen's explosives were designed with just the right power. Coupled with Zhang Yi's strategy of luring the enemy into a trap, they executed a seamless, perfect coordination, catching their opponents off guard. This is all because they were too foolish and greedy, thinking I was just prey to be hunted. Little did they know that they themselves were the lambs to be slaughtered. Of course, this couldn't have been done without the significant help of Liang Yu and Chun Lei, who helped me lead them step by step into the abyss. Liang Yu began to worry. I used all my strength against Ling Feng just now and didn't manage to harm him at all. If we can't confirm his death, it will be difficult for me to ensure a safe retreat in another encounter. Zhang Yi, however, was full of confidence. Don't worry about that. Liu Karen had already placed infrared robots in advance. With the thickness of this avalanche and the temperature dropping to minus 80 degrees, no matter how skilled he is, he has no room to maneuver. In less than 10 minutes, they will be frozen into ice sculptures. That night, Zhang Yi prepared a lavish dinner to treat everyone. Reflecting on the scenes that had unfolded since the apocalypse, Zhang Yi couldn't help but feel emotional. Everything finally seems to have come to an end. Now, with West Mountain Base losing its top combat power and Yang Xinxin's Trojan horse revealing all the secrets to those at the bottom, they will bring about their own destruction without us having to lift a finger. Shou Kier also expressed her feelings. I never imagined so much could happen in just a few months. It all feels like a dream. I'm so lucky to have met you, brother. Zhang. Zhang Yi looked affectionately at Zhou Care. The only constant in this world is change. Just like the once dominant dinosaurs couldn't escape their fate of extinction, this extreme cold wave was just another evolution in the long river of history. Being one of the few survivors is something we should all be grateful for. Thus, Zhang Yi began a shameless life with five women and a chubby man. This manga has reached its conclusion. For updates on whether there will be a sequel, please follow Manga Explained. We'll update as soon as any sequel is released. He faked his death. After being buried by an avalanche for two days, Ling Feng miraculously survived. The entire special forces team was wiped out. Ling Feng was in immense grief. He can't die here. With strong willpower, Ling Feng walked back to West Mountain Base on foot. Upon learning the full story, Chen Xinyan was instantly furious. I entrusted half of the base's elite soldiers to you, and yet you came back alone. Do you know how precious those genetically modified mutants are? They were selected through numerous experiments, each capable of overpowering a hundred ordinary soldiers with their combat skills 
skills. It's your mismanagement that led to their deaths, making you the center of West Mountain Base. How dare you show your face at West Mountain Base? Ling Feng had nothing to say in response, allowing my comrades to die under the avalanche. Indeed makes me responsible for the greatest fault, but all this should be blamed on that damn Zhang Yi. Ling Feng suddenly knelt before Chen Xinyin. Lord Chen, I am willing to accept any punishment, even if it means death. I have no complaints. However, I beg you to give me a chance to redeem myself. If I don't personally take down Zhang Yi, I won't rest in peace even in death. Chen Xinyin's chest heaved violently, and he looked coldly at his top warrior, almost wishing he could kill him on the spot. But considering the current situation, he seemed to need this sharp knife. He then spoke in a calmer tone. Well, it's also our fault for underestimating the enemy's strength. Zhang Yi is too cunning, so I can't blame you entirely. This time, I won't hold you accountable, but it depends on your future performance. If you make a similar mistake again, you will be punished for all your crimes. Chen Xinyin didn't want to see Ling Feng, so he waved his hand, signaling him to go back. Confining him to quarters for a week was his punishment, but turning around and thinking of Zhang Yi, the thorn in his side, his headache started again. It seems I've underestimated him. This disastrous defeat has severely weakened West Mountain Base. I must quickly replenish our forces. Otherwise, if other powers learn of our significant loss in strength, it would inevitably attract their covetous eyes. With this thought, Chen Xinyin quickly called for Guro. Ling Feng just said he brought back quite a few survivors. How are the test results? Guro looked at the tablet in her hand. The test results are not out yet, but this batch is all young and middle-aged people from rural areas, with very excellent physical conditions. There's a high probability of producing mutants. Chen Xinyin snorted lightly. The awakening of mutants is not as simple as you think. Not everyone can become like Ling Feng. There's no time to delay. The base urgently needs to replenish its strength. Hurry up and experiment on them. If manual catalysis doesn't work, then implant Ling Feng's cells. In any case, we cannot allow the base's overall combat power to drop too much. Hearing this, Guro's eyes flashed with a hint of horror. Shouldn't we rush this matter? If the experiments are rushed, the success rate might not even reach 3%, leading to more needless sacrifices. Chen Xinyin, however, didn't care about this. He waved his hand indifferently and said, What I need now is combat power, not labor force. There are still many survivors in this city. Finding and supplementing them is not difficult, but once we lose strong military force, we won't have any say in this city. As he spoke, Chen Xinyin's expression became more ruthless. My goal is the entire Heavenly Sea City, not just surviving in this small place of West Mountain. This was the first time Chen Xinyin revealed his ambition. Even his longtime secretary, Guro, was taken aback, nodding repeatedly with utmost respect. I'll arrange it right away. After Guro left, Chen Xinyin's face was filled with worry. How should I deal with this Zhang Yi? Even Ling Feng, fighting him personally, couldn't handle him. Do I really need to ask for help from River South Domain? Letting that Mr. Zhu support me with a missile? Should I use a missile? Chen Xinyin was still undecided. But how should I handle this thorn? Zhang Yi. Yes, handle. It was a kind of superior handling. Chen Xinyin still believed. Zhang Yi is just a trouble within my territory. As long as I remove this trouble, my personal authority in West Mountain Base won't be shaken. The favor from River South Domain's old Zhu shouldn't be wasted so easily. It's been my trump card all along. There are still many powers in Heavenly Sea City. With the deterrence of this trump card, other powers hardly dare to harbor any ill intentions towards West Mountain Base. I don't want to use this relationship unless absolutely necessary. Chen Xinyin was torn inside. Since a hard approach won't work, let's try persuading him one last time. Just offer some illusory conditions. After all, making grand promises is what I do best. Chen Xinyin immediately called the Minister of Information, ordering him to contact Zhang Yi right away. After a brief setup, Zhang Yi also received the call request. Chen Xinyin thought to himself, if this negotiation fails, then use a missile to flatten my shelter. Upon connecting, Zhang Yi directly addressed him. I've long admired your reputation. Chen Xinyin, having been the top leader in the area for so long, Chen Xinyin had not been directly addressed by his name in a long time, but he still managed a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Brother Zhang Yi, it's truly surprising that you are still alive, but your luck has run out. Zhang Yi waved his hand. Old Chen, I advise you to stop messing with me. Look, all the elites you sent are taken care of by me. Now that you are significantly weakened, you better take care of yourselves. Zhang Yi teased Chen Xinyin with an incredibly annoying expression. Why bother me when you have no real strength? Wouldn't it be nice to just hide in your mound? I think you should give up your pointless fantasies. Better to let go sooner. I'm a person who loves peace. I don't mind coexisting peacefully with you. How about we agree to not interfere with each other from now on? Zhang Yi spoke in a condescending tone, getting Chen Xinyin a way out, but Chen Xinyin seemed ungrateful. Zhang Yi, I advise you not to misjudge the situation. Don't think I really can't deal with you. I'm sparing you because I value talent, not because I can't launch a destructive strike against you. If you're willing to submit to me, I can make you the second in command of West Mountain Base. You've never experienced being second only to one, above tens of thousands, have you? However, to show your sincerity, you need to hand over all the materials you have. Hearing this, Zhang Yi laughed, propping up his legs in a relaxed manner. Who would covet being your second in command at West Mountain Base? Are you seen 
smile. I'm the victor here. You're out of options now, aren't you? Thinking you can be my boss? You must be out of your mind. Shou Kier and Yang Mi at his side also burst into laughter at this. Seeing this, Chen Xingyin grew even angrier. The presence of two such beautiful women in this guy's shelter meant he was already utterly defeated in terms of influence. Zhang Yi continued to mock. How about I make you my subordinate instead? From now on, I'll take care of you. You just stay quietly in that mound of yours. If anything happens, just use my name. Chen Xingyin became instantly furious. You ignorant fool. Your end is near. Zhang Yi still wore a smug expression. Then come at me. I'm waiting. Chen Xingyin's expression suddenly turned grim. Do you really think I've run out of options? Let me tell you plainly. With just one phone call, I can have a missile sent here. One strike could flatten your shelter. No matter how sturdy your shelter is, are you sure it can withstand a precise missile strike? Chen Xingyin's eyes were bloodshot with a murderous intent. Hearing this, Zhang Yi was startled. This old guy can't be serious, can he? But Zhang Yi quickly recovered. Don't scare me, old man. Where would Heavenly Sea City get missile capabilities? You can't possibly be calling in missiles from another region. Do you have that kind of power? Chen Xingyin laughed. You, a commoner from the lower levels. How would you know whether I have the means to do it or not? Let me tell you. Boy, with just one phone call, I can obliterate your shelter. Zhang Yi, however, remained unconvinced after hearing this. If you had such great power, why wait until now? Your main force, Ling Feng, has been worn down by me for a whole month. So what now? Chen Xingyin spoke with a tone of moral righteousness. My patience has its limits. I hope you won't be too stubborn to see reason. I valued your talent, which is why I haven't struck you down. Now, you have two choices. Either submit to me, or I'll flatten your shelter. The choice is yours. Zhang Yi became angry, thinking highly of yourself, aren't you? But he still cautiously said, if you really have the capability to call in a missile, then prove it to me. If you're really that capable, I wouldn't lose face by following you. Chen Xingyin's face darkened. What joke are you making? Can such a thing be tested? I don't have time to squabble with you. Saying this, Chen Xingyin's eyes were filled with murderous intent. You better wise up. I've said my patience has its limits. Zhang Yi looked at the old man's angry face. The missile matter doesn't seem made up on the spot, but upon closer thought, this person has a strong ability to deceive, and no one can grasp his true intentions. Zhang Yi pondered and said, let me think about it. Seeing Zhang Yi's tone soften, Chen Xingyin felt somewhat proud inside. He thought Zhang Yi was still too young, easily suppressed by him, his authority maintained. The wise know when to submit. Don't think about playing any tricks with me. Delaying is pointless. Zhang Yi appeared indifferent again. You've been fighting me for a month with Ling Feng. A few more days won't make a difference. I'm giving you one day to decide. If you don't choose to submit within 24 hours, I'll flatten your shelter. Then he directly hung up the video call. Chen Xingyin took a deep breath, then closed his eyes and prayed with his hands together. This missile opportunity is hard to come by. I hope this guy is wise enough to choose to surrender. Otherwise, this precious opportunity will be wasted. Zhang Yi sat up and stretched. It seems we can't stay in the shelter for long. We must evacuate quickly. If we can't face it, can't we hide? Yang Xingxin also looked doubtful. If he really had missiles, why bring them out now? Wouldn't that mean all his soldiers died in vain before? Zhang Yi spread his hands and explained. He definitely doesn't have any, but the neighboring capital of Splendor houses the River South Domain, which has several missile bases. Chen Xingyin has been entrenched in Heavenly Sea City for so long. It's not impossible he has connections and capital of Splendor. The most important thing is, whether he's telling the truth or not, as long as there's a slight possibility, we can't risk our lives on it. So, I've decided we better scatter first. Shou Kier's eyes lit up. Are we going back to Yuelu District? Since arriving at the shelter, Shou Kier often missed the days in the safe house. After all, every corner there carried memories of her and Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi smiled and nodded. Right, we can only go back there for now. Everyone agreed with Zhang Yi's decision. The hardest to leave will be Chun Lei. Having just moved in for a few days, with plenty to eat and drink, now leaving a five-story shelter to return to a three-bedroom apartment. Truly a pity. Liang Yu suddenly stood up. At least before we leave, you have to fulfill our agreement. Zhang Yi looked towards Yang Xinxin, taking a SIM card from her hands and said, Of course, but the whole thing still requires teacher Liang to take a risk at West Mountain Base once more. Yang Xinxin's previously implanted virus could help her bypass the base's identity recognition system to find an opportunity to rescue her students. She decided to continue hiding in the base. One day, she overheard a conversation between two experimental subjects. Due to Liang Yu's betrayal angering Chen Xinyan, her students were also subjected to transformation experiments ahead of schedule, making Liang Yu feel even more guilty. After the experimental subjects left, she took out the SIM card Zhang Yi had given her before. This SIM card, specially modified by Yang Xinxin, not only had strong signal reception capabilities, but could also bypass multiple server encryptions without being detected by West Mountain Base. Liang Yu sent a message to Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi, I need to hurry and take my students out of here. Ling Feng is not dead. My defection to you has been exposed. Now, my students and I are in great danger. Zhang Yi immediately responded. Try to sneak into the network center and insert the chip I gave you into any computer. This way, Yang Xingxin will be able to control the entire network of West Mountain Base, and then we can help you escape. Liang Yu was slightly 
immediately startled. Accomplishing this task is easier said than done. The whole base is filled with surveillance, and the entrance to the information department is heavily guarded. This task is almost impossible to complete, but Liang Yu knew in her heart, right now, this is the only chance to save my students. As long as Yang Xingqing can use this chip to cripple the network for a while, I will have the opportunity to rescue the students. She immediately sent a message to Zhang Yi. Don't worry, Zhang Yi, I will definitely fulfill what I promised you. I hope you also remember what you promised me. Before setting out, Zhang Yi had promised Liang Yu that after escaping, he would provide them with some food and temporary shelter. As for other assistance, it would depend on Liang Yu's contribution. Zhang Yi responded without hesitation. Of course, that's no problem. Liang Yu turned off her phone, removed the SIM card, and started planning her route in her mind. The information department is also in the second life capsule, about 500 meters away from her current location. Liang Yu took a deep breath, her gaze quickly becoming firm, muttering to herself, Never thought I'd go back to my old job. When I was a high-ranking official's bodyguard, I received systematic professional training. On the other hand, Zhang Yi and the others were on their way to the Yuelu district. Just after contacting Liang Yu, Zhang Yi said with anticipation, To win this confrontation, Liang Yu's role is crucial. After all, knowing both ourselves and the enemy ensures we will not be in danger in any battle. Knowing all their cards, we can take a significant initiative. Yang Xingxin stared at her laptop. I also want to know if they truly have the capability to deploy missiles. After all, in such a post-apocalyptic world, the value of holding such strategic weapons is immense, and the threat to us is incomparable. Yang Xingxin lifted her computer to show Zhang Yi. She had successfully hacked into West Mountain Base's surveillance system. Zhang Yi nodded in admiration. Indeed, unknown forces are what worry us the most. If we can understand the opponent's cards, we can easily counter their moves. At that moment, Liu Karen, who was driving, sighed deeply. Zhang Yi, concerned, asked, What's troubling you? Liu Karen said nervously, We are safe now, but Teacher Liang is entering the tiger's den. Her mission is so dangerous. If she gets caught, Zhang Yi raised an eyebrow, thinking to himself, I don't care about her life or death. Our interaction is merely a transaction, nothing more. However, Zhang Yi still smiled and said, Teacher Liang has her own good fortune. Her act of rescuing her students is a deed of great merit. Heaven will naturally protect her. Liu Karen nodded in relief upon hearing this. Teacher Liang is so kind. She will surely be fine. Zhang Yi was holding back his laughter on the side, but he decided to keep his thoughts to himself. Let this young girl retain her innocence. Soon, Zhang Yi and his group arrived at Yuelu District. After being away for over a month, the snow had covered up to the sixth floor. The whole district was silent. Uncle Yu and Zhou Haime were waiting downstairs early on. Unnoticed by everyone on the way, there was an invisible presence in the car. That was Chun Lei, curled up in the trunk, shivering with cold. As everyone got out of the car, Zhang Yi scanned the district. The entire district is silent, devoid of life. Probably everyone is frozen to death. Uncle Yu and Zhou Haime came over with smiles on their faces. It's too cold outside. Let's hurry upstairs. Uncle Yu had heard the explosion at Lark Manor some time ago, had even contacted Zhang Yi, offering to help, but was refused by Zhang Yi. Uncle Yu understood that his survival to this point was all thanks to Zhang Yi. His life was given by Zhang Yi. The women gathered and were so happy they couldn't stop smiling. Soon they entered the safe house as if it were New Year's. Returning to the long-missed safe house, both Zhang Yi and Zhou Kier showed nostalgic expressions. Zhang Yi couldn't help but sigh. It's been so long since the icy apocalypse began. Zhou Haime said with a smile, I cleaned the rooms early this morning. Luckily, the rooms are big enough. Let's all squeeze in. Having such a warm and comfortable house in the apocalypse, even sleeping on the floor was acceptable to everyone. Besides, everyone was bored every day. Having more people to talk to was better than anything. Zhang Yi also took off his cold weather gear and sat down to chat with Uncle Yu. Zhang Yi took out a pack of cigarettes from his pocket, offered one to Uncle Yu, and they started smoking. Zhang Yi was the first to speak. Has anything happened in the district during this time? I see everyone else is dead. Did they try to rob you? Uncle Yu chuckled. It's pretty much the same as when you were in the district. After you left, they thought it was safe and came over to me to beg and seek sympathy. But after so long in the apocalypse, I didn't want to be a saint anymore, so I flat out refused them. Later, when they tried to force me, I just took the opportunity to take them all out. You taught me a lot after the apocalypse. Protecting oneself and those around us is more important than anything. Uncle Yu said calmly. Then his gaze sharpened. But not everyone is dead. There's a group of survivors in the district. Zhang Yi was taken aback, then instinctively said, How is that possible? Without external supplies, it's impossible for anyone to have survived until now. Uncle Yu took a drag and said with a smile, You know them well. It's Li Jian and his group from Building 18. Zhang Yi looked incredulous. Li Jian's actions had indeed shocked Zhang Yi previously, but he hadn't thought they would last long. Zhang Yi asked curiously, How did they manage to do that? Do you know? Uncle Yu shook his head. I'm not sure. After all, you had advised me not to contact anyone, since people's intentions can be unpredictable after the apocalypse, to avoid being exploited. So, I never interacted with them. I just often saw shadows of people alive in Building 18, knowing that many of them were still surviving. Zhang Yi quietly looked out the window, 
curiosity stirring within him. It seems I'll have to make time to visit this old friend. Then, Uncle Yu also asked with concern, is there any danger at your shelter now? Zhang Yi detailed the whole situation to Uncle Yu, leaving him almost dropping his jaw in surprise. No way, they have missiles to deal with a civilian. They're actually willing to use missiles. Zhang Yi took out some food from another space. It's still unclear if they're bluffing or if they really have such capabilities. For safety, I decided to temporarily return to the district to lay low for a while. Once we're sure it's safe, we'll go back. Uncle Yu didn't see it that way. This is no joking matter. Since you're already here, I think it's better for everyone to stay a bit longer. This safe house is still yours. Show Jaime and I can move next door. Uncle Yu understood. This house was originally Zhang Yi's. He wouldn't really consider himself the owner. Zhang Yi patted Uncle Yu's shoulder. I won't stay too long here. Based on my understanding of West Mountain Base, they currently lack precise satellite positioning capabilities and may not be able to pinpoint the shelter's exact coordinates. So, the threat of a precise missile strike might not be real. They also wouldn't know we've moved to Yuelu District. Besides, I'm not sure of houses now. Let's just squeeze in here for the time being. Feeling unsettled by the unknown threats, Zhang Yi was clearly frustrated. Zhang Yi pondered, saying, we have to settle things with West Mountain Base once and for all. The conflict has reached a point where it can't be resolved anymore. Chen Xinyan probably wants me dead by now. As long as I don't concede, he'll definitely try everything to kill me and take everything I have. Zhang Yi sighed helplessly. I just wanted to live quietly in the shelter. Why do they always have to bother me? Uncle Yu, seeing Zhang Yi's gloomy face, tried to comfort him. That's because you have too many good things. Spreading his hands, he added, look at me. I don't have these problems. Thanks to the snowmobile you gave me, I can go out to find supplies, but that's just to maintain a basic living. It's inevitable that people would covet what you have. Given your resources, there's nothing you can do about it. Zhang Yi stood up and walked to the window, looking in the direction of West Mountain Base. If only I could wipe out West Mountain Base, he said with a laugh, treating the thought more as a joke. After all, facing such a massive base, even the strongest mutants would only be marching to their death if they attacked rashly. Suddenly, Uncle Yu said seriously, some time ago, a group of very strange people came to the district. They looked like ascetics, about five or six hundred in number. Zhang Yi frowned. That many people? The more people, the greater the threat. Uncle Yu continued, at first, I thought they were here to steal supplies, but later, I realized they didn't seem to have any ill intentions, so I tried to make contact with them. Turns out, they're a religious organization called the Snow Worship Sect. Zhang Yi laughed. Even religions have emerged. It's always been like this throughout history. People like to place their fear of natural disasters on some supernatural existence, turning various calamities into objects of worship. Isn't that how the rain gods and plague gods came to be? Now there's even a snow god. Uncle Yu, reflecting on the past, said, at that time, I didn't take them seriously, but thinking about it now, those people were indeed out of the ordinary, especially their leader. He could tell at a glance that I was a mutant, and what's more bizarre, he even said he could help me unlock the potential of my powers to become even stronger. Hearing this, Zhang Yi became serious. Although he wouldn't find any peculiar abilities strange by now, the mention of unlocking the potential of powers intrigued him. However, he thought to himself, there's no such thing as a free lunch in this world. Why would they help you for no reason? These people are likely fraudsters. As for the ability to see that you're a mutant, I guess they might have encountered you using your abilities outside. While Zhang Yi and Uncle Yu were talking, the women were playfully enjoying themselves. Uncle Yu nodded. That's what I thought too. After all, you've warned me never to easily trust any strangers. So, I directly refused them. They probably thought I wasn't easy to mess with, so they didn't persist too much. But they did enter the district later. I think they went to find Li Jian and the others. I don't know what happened after that. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment. Now, only Uncle Yu's family and the people in Building 18 are in the district. Li Jian and his group surviving until now might be connected to these people. Could it be that someone in Building 18 has also awakened powers? Thinking this, Zhang Yi decided to go and check it out for himself. Uncle Yu immediately offered, I'll go with you. Zhang Yi smiled slightly and waved his hand. No need for that. Those people have never had bad intentions. I'll just take flower with me. Despite saying this, Zhang Yi still put on a bulletproof vest and donned combat gear. Seeing Zhang Yi ready for action, Lu Karen and Yang Xinxin came out and asked, Brother Zhang Yi, where are you going? Zhang Yi simply said, I'm going to meet a few old friends. The entire district was eerily silent, with no sign of life in sight. At the base of a building, in the snow, Zhang Yi saw hundreds of snow mounds that looked like graves. These are all graves, aren't they? Zhang Yi couldn't help but remark, to be buried this way in the icy apocalypse. 
apocalypse is practically a luxury. Approaching building 18's entrance, Zhang Yi took out his handgun and fired two shots into the air. The crisp sound of gunfire reminded the residents of building 18 of the fear they once felt under Zhang Yi's dominance. Li Jian, looking out the window towards the source of the gunshots, immediately recognized him. Zhang Yi, it's Zhang Yi, he's back. A chill went through Li Jian's heart. He gave us a child to take care of, and we failed to keep the child alive. He's probably here to hold us accountable. Li Jian's wife and child approached him. Why has this demon come back? We've finally managed to survive until now. We can't let him destroy us again. I'm going down to confront him. Li Jian gently embraced his wife. If he finds out about that incident, all of us might end up dead. He sighed deeply. I'll go down and talk to him. We stand no chance against him if it comes to force. Don't act rashly. Li Jian earnestly said to his wife. If he does kill me, don't think about revenge. Just stay here and protect our last hope. After saying this, he left the house and headed downstairs. Soon, he arrived at the corridor window. Zhang Yi, looking at the emaciated man before him, said indifferently. It's been a long time. Li Jian, I'm surprised you've managed to survive until now. Zhang Yi looked up to see each floor of the building bustling with people, expressing his surprise. I've been away for over a month, yet it seems like you have even more people now. It's practically a miracle. Zhang Yi asked Li Jian, how did you manage it? Li Jian swallowed hard before answering, it's all thanks to the seeds you left us. Zhang Yi couldn't believe his ears. I was just speaking off the cuff. How could those seeds possibly grow, let alone the freezing temperatures right now? How could there be a harvest in a month's time? Enough to feed so many of you? A bold idea then surfaced in Zhang Yi's mind. It seems you've got a mutant in your building, huh? As he said this, Zhang Yi was ready to act at any moment, prepared to kill the man in front of him if anything unusual happened. Seeing this, Li Jian knelt down abruptly. We were wrong. We failed to protect the child you left with us. We tried our best. I'm sorry. Li Jian continued to count out desperately. If you must kill, then kill me. Please don't harm the innocent neighbors. After saying this, Li Jian bowed his head, ready to face death. At that moment, from a snow cave beside Zhang Yi, an old man's voice was heard. You can't kill Li Jian. If he dies, all of us lose our hope of surviving. The old man, a professor of agronomy, stood firmly in front of Li Jian. Let me die in his place. I've lived long enough anyway. Then, the neighbors rushed to protect Li Jian. I'm single. Let me be the one. A strong man also spoke up. It's not entirely Li Jian's fault that the child died. In such freezing weather, keeping an infant alive is nearly impossible. If you need a life to atone, let me take his place. Li Jian's eyes brimmed with emotional tears. Zhang Yi, witnessing this scene, felt unexpectedly moved. He was struck silent, as if he saw a glimmer of humanity's light surviving the apocalypse. Seeing the neighbors willing to die to protect Li Jian, even the usually cold-hearted Zhang Yi felt somewhat stirred. He let out an awkward chuckle. I never said I wanted your lives. Li Jian looked at Zhang Yi in shock, humbly admitting, the child you entrusted to us has died. Aren't you here for revenge? Zhang Yi was somewhat speechless at the group's assumption. So, that melodrama was all about this? Scratching his head, Zhang Yi added, I almost forgot I had brought a child here in the first place. That kid was a burden to me. If I wasn't worried about being haunted by guilt, I would have gotten rid of him myself. Their fear and anxiety were because they thought the child was important to me. Spreading his hands, Zhang Yi concluded, death cannot be reversed. I know you all did your best. I won't hold it against you. Hearing this, Li Jian was overjoyed. I don't have to die. Li Jian was deeply moved, believing Zhang Yi to truly be a compassionate person. The other neighbors also breathed a sigh of relief. Zhang Yi, still puzzled, asked, I'm just curious how you managed to survive until now. It's nothing short of a miracle. Li Jian, not daring to withhold any information, said, it's a long story. Why don't you come and see for yourself? Zhang Yi wasn't afraid of any tricks they might play. With Flower, his invincible bodyguard, on his shoulder, it was nearly impossible for anyone to harm him. All right, I'll come in and take a look. Subsequently, Li Jian led Zhang Yi upstairs. On the way, Li Jian talked about the recent events in his building. Li Jian introduced, remember the seeds you gave us last time when you brought the child over? Professor Guru really went on to try various cultivation methods seriously, but the results weren't very good. Even if a very few could sprout, their vitality was extremely weak, making it impossible to have any yield. At that time, we even considered sending out a suicide squad to look for food. Just when we were in utter despair, a group of people claiming to be from the Snow Worship sect arrived in the neighborhood. A gleam flashed in Zhang Yi's eyes. It really has something to do with these weirdos. Do you mean that the Snow Worship sect has helped you survive till now? Li Jian dared not hide anything at this moment. You could say that. At that time, their leader told me he had a way to grant me extraordinary abilities to help us survive. With no other options left, we chose to agree. After all, at most we would just die. I thought no matter what the condition was, it couldn't be harder to accept than death. But what I didn't expect was, they just needed us to believe in the snow god. That's all, nothing else was required. However, Zhang Yi was skeptical. He never believed that there's such a thing as a free lunch in the world. Based on his many years of gaming experience, the free ones are the most expensive. Zhang Yi couldn't help asking, what is your special ability now? Li Jian pointed at his forehead and said, at that time, he planted a seed into my forehead. Instantly, my whole body felt like it was thrown into an ice cellar, and after a while, 
while, it became unbearably hot. Soon after, I lost consciousness. When I woke up, my body had developed a strange power. As he said this, Li Jian rolled up his sleeves. Zhang Yi's scalp tingled at the sight. Li Jian's arm was densely covered with protrusions, looking like a petri dish. Each protrusion seemed to be nurturing a plant. Li Jian looked weakly at Zhang Yi. These are all seeds of food crops. My ability is to cultivate plants with my own flesh. After the plants absorb my flesh and blood, they not only have strong vitality, but also grow faster. Zhang Yi looked at Li Jian incredulously and said, Even so, the nutrients from one person can't possibly sustain the food needs of everyone. Li Jian weakly responded, This is indeed a big problem, but fortunately, we have Professor Gu. He is a leading agronomy expert in the country. As he spoke, Li Jian led Zhang Yi to a room's door, mysteriously saying, Prepare yourself mentally. The scene inside might disturb you. Please be understanding. Zhang Yi laughed it off. You're worrying too much. What kind of scene haven't I seen after the apocalypse? Li Jian gave an awkward smile. That's true. Then he opened the door. Despite being prepared, Zhang Yi was still shocked by the scene before him. The room was filled with heaps of corpses, on which grew vigorously healthy crops. The warm and humid air in the room hit them, mixed with an indescribably eerie smell. It wasn't exactly foul, definitely not pleasant. Zhang Yi couldn't help but swallow his saliva at the sight. Li Jian continued to explain, These are all bodies we collected around the neighborhood. To have enough nutrients, this was a reluctant choice. Zhang Yi smirked and said, This is actually quite good. After all, those bodies were of no use anymore. This way, there's no guilt from cannibalism, and the waste is maximally utilized. Zhang Yi curiously asked, Did you guys also make those snow-covered graves outside? Li Jian nodded somewhat sheepishly. Those were piled up by us for storing the bodies. Zhang Yi carefully looked at the lush crops, which seemed to be growing very well. The corpses at their roots, having been drained of nutrients, were basically reduced to skeletons. Flower also curiously sniffed around, seeming to find no difference from ordinary crops. Li Jian mentioned, We have three more of these cultivation rooms. Hearing this, Zhang Yi became worried. Although it's good to be self-sufficient, I see that these crops are sprouting from the nutrients in your body. Continuing this way, you'll eventually be drained dry. Li Jian scoffed. Even if I'm drained into a mummy, I accept it. We've already come to this point. Rather than sitting and waiting for death, it's better to do something so that my wife and son can survive. When Li Jian mentioned his wife and son, his eyes were full of warmth. Zhang Yi couldn't help but feel admiration for Li Jian. He doesn't have children yet. Perhaps he couldn't fully understand his feeling, thinking his actions are indeed a bit crazy, but they are admirable to anyone. However, Zhang Yi quickly put away his sympathy, looking sternly at Li Jian and saying, Let me see your ability. So far, he had seen many modified mutants, but their abilities were far inferior to those of natural mutants. Yet, the way Li Jian acquired his abilities made Zhang Yi curious. Moreover, Zhang Yi also wanted to know what methods the Snow Worship sect used to awaken abilities in an ordinary person, and to what extent these abilities could be developed. Li Jian didn't refuse, nor dared to. Under Zhang Yi's gaze, he rolled up the sleeve of his arm filled with seeds again. Suddenly, he clenched his fist and started to exert force. Zhang Yi also noticed a white light appearing on Li Jian's forehead. The next moment, his arm's veins bulged, and a seed burst through the skin, sprouting into a wheat seedling about a dozen centimeters tall with a pop. As the seed sprouted, Li Jian's complexion became even paler. Zhang Yi quickly stopped Li Jian. Enough, enough. I roughly understand how it works now. Zhang Yi was speechless. What kind of ability is this? This is simply using one's own flesh and blood to irrigate plants. If abilities could be raided, this would definitely be the worst. Even worse than artificially created mutants. Li Jian hurriedly propped himself up and called for Professor Gu. Quick, transplant this wheat seedling over there. Zhang Yi began to ponder. The Snow Worship sect really has something. Zhang Yi began to ponder. The Snow Worship sect really has something. This ability, stimulated artificially, is completely different from naturally awakened mutants. Although it's unclear what the side effects are for now, it definitely causes great harm to the body. Fortunately, it's not an offensive ability. If his ability posed a threat to Zhang Yi, he might have killed Li Jian on the spot. Zhang Yi lost interest in this place and turned to leave the cultivation room. Suddenly, he thought, if the West Mountain base discovers my whereabouts and uses missiles to bomb the Yuelu neighborhood, then everyone would be done for. Now that the Lark Manor shelter has been exposed, if it really gets hit by a missile, I must find a new residence quickly. After all, this safe house is too easy for an organization like the West Mountain base to breach. Zhang Yi thought to himself, I wonder what the situation is now with Liang Yu. If she successfully inserted the chip into West Mountain base's information department, according to Yang Xinxin, I would be able to understand every step of their plan. This would allow us to turn from being passive to being active. At this time, inside West Mountain base, to compensate for the loss of a large number of excellent soldiers during the campaign against Zhang Yi, they were also busily accelerating the pace of human experiments. These were young adults abducted from Su family village. The soldiers, armed to the teeth, closely monitored these villagers, leaving them no courage to resist. Then, a villager clenched his fists and shouted, Why should we bear the consequences of your defeat? We haven't done anything wrong. This is unfair. 
a man burst into tears upon hearing this. We treated you well, fed you, and clothed you, and you turned around and killed my wife and children. You are a hundred times more beastly than Zhang Yi. But the next second, two shots rang out, and both were shot in the head on the spot. The soldier who fired the shots warned, I advise you to be smart. This is what happens to those who don't obey. Our base sent out soldiers to deal with your enemies. Now that there have been many sacrifices, it's natural for you to replenish our forces. You'd better obediently accept the experiment. There's still a way to live. You might even successfully awaken abilities and live a life of plenty in the base. Either die now or accept the experiment. You don't need me to tell you how to choose, right? This scene was all witnessed by Liang Yu, hiding nearby, thinking that most of these people would die, and their bodies would be processed into protein substitutes, then fed to the people in the fourth life pod. Liang Yu's stomach churned. At that moment, Liang Yu realized a serious problem. All the core departments of West Mountain Base seemed to be in the second life pod, guarded by soldiers at every department entrance. Due to the limited underground space, the departments were basically interconnected. However, the security in the second life pod seemed sparse, as the higher life pod's residents had no reason to rebel. Being beneficiaries, Chen Xinyan also believed that the source of instability could only come from the fourth life pod, hence the main defensive force was arranged there. Apart from Chen Xinyan's personal guard, other areas were basically in an unguarded patrol state. Now, with over 400 villagers from Su Family Village being sent for experiments, even more guards were drawn away. For Liang Yu, this was the best opportunity to sneak into the information department. As she walked, Liang Yu observed her surroundings, knowing she had to succeed this time. After they're done with these villagers, my students will be next. There's not much time left. Liang Yu quietly arrived at the information department's entrance, about to push open the door, when suddenly a hand tapped her shoulder from behind. Teacher Liang, what are you doing here? Liang Yu was startled. I was so careful. Was I still discovered? Despite her surprise, she clenched her fist, thinking, we've come this far. Might as well go on the offensive. Now that Ling Feng is confined, even if I can't beat the others, escaping shouldn't be too hard. Liang Yu turned around, ready to strike, but the soldier in front of her took off his helmet. Teacher Liang, it's me. Only then did Liang Yu realize that the soldier was her student, Yi Xiaoyan. Liang Yu stopped her attack and said, Yi Xiaoyan, why is it you? Yi Xiaoyan said with a worried expression, Teacher Liang, I've heard about your situation. You finally escaped this base. Why come back now? This place is truly a den of evil. Liang Yu said she came back to rescue him and their classmates, but why were you able to join the special forces? Yi Xiaoyan replied with a bitter smile. It seems you really don't know anything, teacher. I'm the only successful experiment among the students who were taken. As he spoke, Yi Xiaoyan slowly unbuttoned his shirt, revealing a terrifying dark red scar on his chest, resembling the bizarre scar of plant grafting. Liang Yu, agitated, pushed Yi Xiaoyan's shoulder. What about the other students? They didn't all die, did they? Yi Xiaoyan nodded with a dim look in his eyes. All the students who were taken have died. Although Liang Yu had guessed this would be the outcome, she was still exceptionally saddened, seeing that it was not safe to stay. She pulled Yi Xiaoyan to a secluded spot. Yi Xiaoyan did not hesitate, having been through too much hell after the apocalypse. To him, Liang Yu was the only person he could trust in this world. If it wasn't for Teacher Liang, they would have died at Azure Sky Academy long ago. Now, turned into something neither human nor ghost, he also longed for warmth and redemption from Liang Yu. They found a corner where they could avoid surveillance, and Yi Xiaoyan immediately began to vent his grievances. These demons, they don't see us as human beings, using us as experimental rats. You can't imagine what I went through in the laboratory. Saying this, Yi Xiaoyan couldn't stop trembling. West Mountain Base has long discovered that people have a chance to awaken abilities in extreme situations. So, the first step for the test subjects they capture is to torture them in every way possible, including electric shocks, waterboarding, knife cuts, and so on. More than a dozen inhumane methods. The goal is to make the test subjects experience the feeling of being close to death. If all these fail, it basically means this person has no talent for abilities. Then they will inject mutant cells into your body. Saying this, Yi Xiaoyan subconsciously covered his chest. If we can withstand the rejection reaction, we might gain power similar to the transplanters, but the cost is irreversible damage to the body. Currently, the cells used in the experiments are all from Captain Ling Fong. This power, acquired through postnatal modification, is undoubtedly at the expense of one's own lifespan. Yi Xiaotian, tears in his eyes. Liang Yu, moved, hugged him, then looked into his eyes and asked earnestly, If I say I have a way to get you out of here, would you cooperate with me? Yi Xiaotian stood up abruptly, clenched his fists. I don't want to stay here for another moment. It would be best to blow up this den of evil. Then Yi Xiaotian put his helmet on Liang Yu and took her to the entrance of the information department. Yi Xiaotian, being in charge of patrolling the second life pod, quickly found a reason to send the two guards at the door away. Yi Xiaotian even used his own identity to help Liang Yu open the door of the information department. For someone with abilities like Liang Yu, passing through this door and inserting a tiny chip into a computer was a piece of cake. Back in the safe house, Zhang Yi received another call request from Chen Xinyan. This time it was a final ultimatum. Chen Xinyan started with a calm tone. Brother Zhang,
Zhang Yi. Quickly tell me your answer. Zhang Yi responded with a disdainful laugh. Dream on about me submitting to you. Why don't you submit to me instead? I'll take care of you from now on. Chen Xingyan, furious, turned pale. This is all your own doing. Then you can turn to ashes along with your shelter. He then hung up the phone directly. Zhang Yi's expression remained very calm. He knew that Chen Xingyan had lost patience with him. This attitude confirmed that the missile threat was almost certainly real. Do I really have to give up that shelter? Zhang Yi sighed deeply. Let it go then. After all, I have plenty of supplies. As long as the people are alive, that's what matters. Just then, his phone in his pocket suddenly received a message. Zhang Yi abruptly sat up from the couch after reading it. The message from Liang Yi read, The chip has been successfully inserted into West Mountain Base's computer. I've done what you asked. I hope you'll keep your promise to help me and my students escape this place. Without a word, Zhang Yi pushed open Yang Xinxin's room door. Great news, Yang Xinxin. Our plan succeeded. Yang Xinxin immediately sat up from her bed, her eyes brimming with excitement. It's finally my turn to show off. As a world-class genius hacker, having the opportunity to hack into a military-grade shelter was a very fulfilling task for her. I'll start working right now. Yang Xinxin moved to her workstation in her wheelchair. Zhang Yi brought over the shelter's supercomputer, with a flurry of clicks and types. In just two minutes, Yang Xinxin proudly announced to Zhang Yi standing behind her. Now the network of West Mountain Base is in my pocket. Zhang Yi was somewhat surprised. He had thought it would take at least an entire night of hard work. The success came so unexpectedly fast that it felt almost unreal to Zhang Yi. Yang Xinxin said with a hint of arrogance, Hacking into this base was not a difficult task for me. If it weren't for their use of an isolated network, I would have broken in much sooner. What I needed was a key to open that door, and Teacher Liang's chip was that key. Technically speaking, what do those technicians at their base have to compare with me? As Yang Xinxin proudly explained, Zhang Yi leaned in close and asked, Will our actions be detected? If our intrusion is discovered and they cut off the network again, wouldn't all our efforts be wasted? Zhang Yi moved closer to Yang Xinxin's Ear. Looking at the screen, this proximity made Yang Xinxin's heart flutter. Yang Xinxin, a bit nervously, said, I've obtained the highest control authority of their base, which is like having a god's eye view over them. This means I can see every action they make, while they can't detect our presence. Hearing this, Zhang Yi's smile deepened. This is perfect. Now we can uncover everything about them. Zhang Yi pointed at the screen. Quickly bring up all the information related to the missiles. I want to see if Chen Xinyan really has the capability he claims. Yang Xinxin operated swiftly and soon retrieved information information related to missiles. It seems they don't have the authority to deploy missiles, Yang Xinxin said. Zhang Yi then asked, do they have the possibility of requesting external support, like contacting other places for deployment? Yang Xinxin started searching the West Mountain Base's external communication records, and indeed found a crucial conversation. It was Chen Xinyan requesting River South Domain to deploy missiles, and River South Domain agreed to launch precisely at 12 o'clock. Zhang Yi and Yang Xinxin couldn't help but gasp. River South Domain has considerable strength. A missile is indeed not much for them. I just didn't expect Chen Xinyan to have such connections. Zhang Yi hurriedly said to Yang Xinxin, check if they have sent the coordinates of the shelter. Yang Xinxin's movements were very quick. Fortunately, they are still going through the approval process. After all, this involves satellite coordination for precise guidance. They haven't had the chance to send the coordinates yet. Then, Yang Xinxin turned to look at Zhang Yi with a devilish smile. I have an interesting game. Do you want to play, brother? Zhang Yi was puzzled. What time is it? And you're thinking of playing games? She told Zhang Yi, I can change the missile's target Target coordinates to West Mountain Base, letting them bomb themselves. Wouldn't that be fun? Zhang Yi was both shocked and delighted. That sounds difficult to achieve. They would surely triple check the coordinates before sending. Even if West Mountain Base's information department is foolish, they wouldn't be foolish enough not to recognize their own coordinates, right? Yang Xinxin laughed. That's where you're wrong. Do you think I just secretly modify it before they send it? The logic of a top hacker is never that superficial. I can intercept their send information through packet capturing, then resend it after my modifications. This way, it can be done without anyone noticing. Zhang Yi was thrilled internally. Even if the coordinates are successfully modified, West Mountain Base wouldn't be so easily destroyed by just one missile, right? Thinking this, Zhang Yi called over Liu Karen from behind. Liu Karen is a genius in the field of mechanical engineering and has a profound understanding of engineering physics. Zhang Yi asked Yang Xinxin to bring up the structural blueprints of West Mountain Base. Upon hearing this, Liu Karen immediately leaned in. After carefully reviewing the structure and materials, Liu Karen frowned. Brother 
Nuclear Zhang'e. Based on my initial analysis, this shelter seems to be designed for wartime nuclear defense. It's located hundreds of meters underground, and both the materials and thickness exceed those of typical military constructions. For a fortification of this level, one missile would basically be inconsequential. It would require a specialized bunker buster to have any effect, but even then, destroying it with one shot is almost impossible. Zhang'e thought to himself, this way, wouldn't it just alert them unnecessarily? Once they react and send another missile, wouldn't it be over? If they find any clue leading to the Uelu neighborhood and decide to bomb the residential buildings there, wouldn't that be disastrous? For a moment, Zhang Yi was indecisive. He finally said to Yang Xinqin, change the coordinates as you suggested. No matter what, the missile must not head towards my shelter. Also, I want all the information on everyone in West Mountain Base, especially the number of mutants and weapons. I need to study this carefully. After speaking, he left their room. Lu Karen, somewhat puzzled, asked Yang Xinqin, what exactly is brother Zhang Yi worried about? If you successfully change the coordinates, isn't the missile problem essentially solved? Yang Xinqin, pondering and looking at the screen, said, from his expression just now, I can tell that brother might be planning to take the initiative this time. Lu Karen, however, disagreed, with brother's cautious character. It's almost impossible for him to take such a risk. Both girls are highly intelligent and capable of analyzing situations comprehensively. Yet, high intelligence does not necessarily mean they can predict everything, because analyzing human nature also requires a high level of emotional intelligence. Zhang Yi went to a suite on the 20th floor, with a crazy plan in mind, whether to take this opportunity to completely eliminate West Mountain Base. He seriously pondered the feasibility of the plan. I can't keep hiding forever, like there's a sword hanging over my neck. It's very frustrating. Most importantly, now that Chen Xinyan has the capability to contact other forces to attack me, if larger forces learn my secrets, I'll never have peace. At this point, eliminating West Mountain Base seems like the only option, and there's only one chance, the moment of the missile attack. Even if it doesn't completely destroy West Mountain Base, it can at least cause huge panic, giving me an opportunity. Now, I have tons of TNT explosives. If I can enter during the chaos and deploy the explosives inside West Mountain Base, the explosion would be spectacular. Even if it doesn't destroy West Mountain Base, the people inside would definitely be killed by the powerful blast. Thinking this, Zhang Yi returned to Yang Xinxin's room. Now, help me gather all the information on West Mountain Base's military forces and weapons, as well as all related information on mutants. Yang Xinxin was surprised. Is brother really planning to attack West Mountain Base actively? Zhang Yi looked at her calmly and said, we need to gather all their information first, to see what their actual strength is. If the strength gap isn't big and there's a high chance of success, why not try? We need to turn from passive to active. Better to strike first than to wait for a hundred punches. If their strength is too great, then consider what I just said a joke. Hearing this, Yang Xinxin laughed. This is the Zhang Yi brother we know. Now, for Yang Xinxin, retrieving information was like picking something out of a bag. She quickly turned around and told Zhang Yi, the information is ready. You can look at it now. After making room, Zhang Yi pulled up a chair and started to go through the data. The base currently has over 500 regular soldiers, 64 special forces members, excluding Liang Yu. There are six existing mutants and an additional 13 post-transformation mutants. Though their combat power is below that of natural mutants, they far exceed ordinary elite soldiers. They all likely underwent cell implantation from Ling Feng. These people might be a bit troublesome, but not a real problem. As for the regular soldiers, Zhang Yi didn't consider them a threat. After scanning through the general information, Zhang Yi quickly looked at the part he was most concerned about, the captains of the West Mountain Base Mutants. The first, Ling Feng, enhancement type, ability codename, Superman, possesses 10 times the combat prowess of a normal human, with speed and strength ratings of 5 stars. Zhang Yi took a deep breath, worthy of being the captain of West Mountain Base's special forces, the one who left fist impressions on the shelter walls with his bare hands. Fortunately, he is a close combat type mutant. As long as I maintain enough distance, even with his formidable physique and skills, he can't do anything to me. The second, Fang Zun, ability codename, Fireman, can release high temperature flames from his body. Zhang Yi laughed. Awakening fire type abilities during an ice age is practically useless. The third, Xing Shuerong, control type, ability codename, Ice Block, can create solid ice blocks for combat. The fourth, Su Mingjie, beast man type, ability codename, Toxic Beast, can transform into a giant monster with greatly enhanced strength and bodily fluids are highly corrosive. The fifth, Shi Daeong, beast man type, ability codename, Frost Giant Ape, can transform into a giant frost ape, significantly increasing physical strength and cold resistance. The sixth, Yi Ronghua, psychic type, ability codename, which, misleading in nature, conceals her true ability of deep hypnosis, can hypnotize others through brainwaves, simulate death, or even cause brain death. The effect of her ability is optimized through eye contact. Zhang Yi was startled. Weren't sure Daeong and Jing Shuerong taken out by me? Did Ling Feng manage to save them? This was the first time Zhang Yi encountered a classification of mutants' abilities. However, it seemed rather general at this stage. 
age, only allowing for classification based on their ability manifestations. These categories were clearly not comprehensive. My space-based ability does not fit into any of these categories. Zhang Yi printed out the information on several captain-level mutants, thinking, my side strength is not weak either. Flower and Uncle you have excellent close combat capabilities. My space-based ability provides nearly invincible defense. Chun Lei's practical ice and snow control ability, plus Liang Yu as an insider. It seems we're not entirely without a chance. Zhang Yi reviewed the information several times, memorizing each person's ability type to ensure he wouldn't be caught off guard if they ever encountered. The most pressing issue was how to infiltrate the base, silently place the explosives, and ensure a safe exit. Do we really have to confront them head-on? At a loss, Lu Karen suggested, instead of pondering alone, why not discuss it with everyone? If you're going to make a move, you'll have to bring them along anyway. Maybe they have some good ideas that could inspire you. Zhang Yi had this in mind and soon called everyone in the house. He laid out his plan. There's a rare opportunity coming up to take down West Mountain Base once and for all. I think everyone understands that West Mountain Base and we are irreconcilable. I, Zhang Yi, am not someone who seeks conflict, but I won't let others bully us. This battle seems inevitable, but I can't do it alone. I need everyone's cooperation. Hearing such a crazy plan. Everyone in the room had different expressions. Zhang Yi looked at Uncle Yu and said, You're the eldest here. I want to hear your opinion. Uncle Yu nodded. West Mountain Base suffered heavy losses attacking our shelter. Now, reconciliation is impossible. Rather than waiting to be attacked, it's better to strike first. We've found a good opportunity to use their weapon against them, create chaos, and I think we should seize it. Besides, my life was saved by Zhang Yi. Whatever Zhang Yi decides, I'll support him all the way. Then, Zhang Yi turned his gaze towards Chun Lei. Hesitating, Chun Lei mumbled, Are you, are you sure? They have an army, weapons, and mutants. Isn't this just like sending us to our deaths? Zhang Yi calmly responded. Don't worry, I've already looked into the mutants. They have only six. As for the regular soldiers, leave them all to me. Dealing with them is as simple as dealing with ants for me. And have you forgotten? So many of your fellow villagers died at their hands, including your first love, Su Lily, and her family. They were all killed by them. Chun Lei feigned ignorance, scratching his head. Actually, it's okay. I wasn't that close to the people in the village. And who is Su Lily? I don't seem to recognize that name. Zhang Yi, seeing Chun Lei acting cowardly, thinking, I thought I was cautious enough, but this fat guy is even more so. However, before Zhang Yi could say anything, Chun Lei hurriedly added, but boss, since you've decided to fight, then I'll support you all the way. Following you, I've had food and drink. If your plan fails and you die at West Mountain Base, then there's no point for me to live in this apocalypse either. Zhang Yi was surprised. This fat guy actually has a clear view of the situation. Chun Lei also expressed his loyalty. The most important thing is to choose the right platform, to be able to enjoy good food and drink with brother Zhang. I've decided to go all out. Zhang Yi felt reassured. This guy may be a bit too cautious, but at least he's not stupid. He knows he needs to bring value to stick with me. Otherwise, why would I keep him around? The three of them thus formed a united front, ready to take action. However, Chun Lei still nervously said, Boss, we have to plan this operation carefully. Zhang Yi laughed. I don't plan on dying anytime soon. Let's start discussing our strategy now. Uncle Yu said, I received professional military training back when I was in the army. I can offer some specific suggestions. Zhang Yi then looked towards Yang Xinqin. First, give them a brief on West Mountain Base's situation. All the information I just went through. Yang Xingxing took the two to the computer, while Zhang Yi pulled out his phone to contact Liang Yu. After all, for the plan to succeed, Liang Yu's role was crucial. Zhang Yi sent a message. Thanks for helping me out with a big problem. Before midnight tomorrow, take your students and hide in a safe place. There will be a chance for you to escape, and we'll be outside to meet you. Liang Yu immediately responded. I'll do my best to hide first, but you can also tell me the plan, so we can work together from the inside and outside. Zhang Yi could sense Liang Yu's excitement and informed her, we've successfully taken control of West Mountain Base's network, so don't worry about communication security, you'll understand the specific plan in due time. Just take care of yourself and your students. Liang Yi was indecisive, and Zhang Yi didn't want to disclose the detailed plan to her. Moreover, her students were still in West Mountain Base. She might not agree with the plan to bomb West Mountain Base with missiles to avoid unnecessary disputes. Zhang Yi did not reveal the entire plan. With the decisive battle against West Mountain Base looming, to ensure nothing went wrong. Zhang Yi asked Lu Karen to conduct a detailed analysis of West Mountain Base's structure. Lu Karen told Zhang Yi, based on my calculations, to deal with a shelter that can't be destroyed by 500 kilograms of TNT, they'll likely use heavy bunker buster missiles. Although these missiles might not destroy West Mountain Base in one hit, they will certainly cause a significant tremor. Zhang Yi pondered for a moment. If we cut off their power during the explosion, what would happen? After all, they're deep underground. Losing their light source would instantly cripple their ability to move. The whole base would be paralyzed instantly, certainly causing even greater panic. At this point, Zhang Yi was eager to try. Yang Xinxin, however, cautioned, I can indeed cut off their power through the network, but they will surely have a manual power restoration plan, and such standardized bases will definitely have emergency lighting. 
that amount of time won't be enough for you to infiltrate. Xiang Yi smiled lightly. I have my own arrangements for that. My main goal is to cause internal turmoil. Liang Yu will surely take this opportunity to escape the fourth life pod with her students. With Liang Yu taking the lead, those long oppressed residents of the fourth life pod will definitely try to seize control of West Mountain Base. At that time, there will be massive chaos in the fourth life pod, and all their forces will surely be dispatched to suppress it. That's when our chance comes. Chun Lei, still worried, asked, even if we successfully penetrate West Mountain Base, then what? If we just take out their leader, Chen Xinian, I guess a second Chen Xinian will quickly take his place. That wouldn't completely eliminate them. There are thousands of people inside. We can't just kill them all, right? Chun Lei laughed heartily, thinking he had made a humorous point. However, seeing Zhang Yi's serious expression, Chun Lei's laughter abruptly stopped. Stun, he looked at Zhang Yi. Boss, you didn't actually agree with me, did you? You're not really planning to take them all out, are you? Not just Chun Lei. Everyone present was shocked. This plan is too crazy. Just a few of us. Isn't this like going on a suicide mission? Zhang Yi laid it out. My goal is to wipe them out in one fell swoop, eliminating over 80% of their combat power. If possible, of course, it would be best to kill them all. Zhang Yi revealed his detailed plan. I have stockpiled thousands of kilograms of TNT explosives. All I need to do is infiltrate West Mountain Base, deploy the explosives inside, and set the explosion timing in advance. The detonation of such a large amount of explosives underground would certainly be interesting, Liu Karen thoughtfully said. The effects of external bombing and internal explosions are vastly different. Even if the structure of the base can withstand the energy of the explosion, the people inside definitely cannot withstand such an impact. Moreover, such an explosion will surely destroy the base's life support systems, like the air circulation and escape systems, which are critical. Additionally, the explosion will consume a large amount of oxygen and instantly generate intense heat. All these factors combined, if we can really detonate it inside, the success rate is undoubtedly very high. Hearing this, Chun Lei became excited, showing a stark contrast to his earlier cowardly demeanor. Boss, you're a genius. Your plan is brilliant. But how do we infiltrate the base? We can't just barge in through the front, can we? What if we get lost inside and can't find our way out? Zhang Yi pointed at the computer screen. That's why you need to memorize the internal structure of the base. This is a matter of life and death. You must not be careless. Saying this, Zhang Yi took out two sets of white combat suits from the dimensional space. These were taken from the corpses of their special forces. Just put these on and wear the helmets. It shouldn't be too difficult to blend in during the chaos. As for the placement of the explosives, we'll choose the second life pod. That's where the main force of the base is located, along with various life support systems. Most importantly, their armory is there. If we can also blow up their armory, it would be killing two birds with one stone. The three men and one cat decided to conduct one last sand table exercise. Zhang Yi's plan was very detailed. Even the timid Chun Lei was impressed, calling it brilliant. Zhang Yi's dimensional gate in the narrow spaces inside the base was almost invincible, and Flower's mobility is not something ordinary mutants can compare with. If anything goes wrong, it can instantly transform into a combat vehicle, taking us all to the surface in no time. Once we're on the surface, things will be easier. To my knowledge, their base only has one snowmobile. As for those dozens of dog sleds, they're hardly a threat. My snow vehicle can easily leave them far behind. Zhang Yi seriously reminded Chun Lei and Uncle Yu, you must remember, the most important thing is to save your lives. Whether or not we can complete the mission depends on fate. Inside West Mountain Base, with Yi Xiaoyan's help, Liang Yu arrived at the fourth life pod. She told her students, don't sleep at midnight tomorrow. I'll come back here to tell you all something important. The students unanimously agreed. Their continuous disappearances had left everyone anxious, and Liang Yu had become their only hope. She didn't tell the students about the escape plan for the next day. After so many events, Liang Yu had become more cautious. She knew well that if the news leaked prematurely, it would endanger everyone. After calming the students, Liang Yu left the dormitory. The next morning, Zhang Yi and the others were confirming their battle plan over a hearty breakfast. Zhang Yi said, the missile attack is scheduled for midnight tonight. We'll scout the area nearby an hour in advance. As long as the missile hits accurately, Liang Yu will surely lead her students out amidst the chaos. Zhang Yi emphasized, remember, we must wait for Liang Yu to come out before we act. If she can make it out, it means the fourth life pod is already in chaos. If Liang Yu doesn't show up, it implies there's a problem with our inside help, and we must abandon the attack plan. We need Liang Yu to guide us. Although we've memorized the base's layout, there's still a risk of getting lost inside. So, we must have Liang Yu lead the way. The plan is roughly to blend into the crowd during the chaos, then plant the explosives, and make our escape. If anything uncertain happens at any stage, we must prioritize escaping. Remember, safety first. It's not worth taking any uncertain risks. Hearing this, Chun Lei nodded vigorously in agreement, finding common ground with the plan. Uncle Yu pondered and said, So, you mean our action is predicated on Liang Yu being able to rescue her students, right? Zhang Yi smirked. You could say that. But in reality, he wasn't concerned with the fate of Liang Yu's students, as long as Liang Yu herself could make it out, that was enough. Zhang 
he put down his bowl. One last crucial point, as you know, if there's a battle inside the base, they won't be able to use their large weapon systems. Ordinary soldiers and handheld thermal weapons are not a problem for me. The most troublesome are those six mutants. If we really encounter them, I plan to deal with them using a divide and conquer strategy, but only as a last resort if we cannot escape. If there's a chance to run, escaping is definitely the first option. By night, the group was ready to depart from outside the house. Uncle Yu and Zhang Yu were bidding farewell to the women, while Chun Lei stood in the snow, feeling somewhat superfluous. At that moment, Zhou Kier, unable to hide her concern, said, Brother Zhang Yi, why not take me with you? If I'm by your side, I can heal any injuries in case of emergency. Zhang Yi reassured her, we won't get injured, and if we do get hurt, it would mean facing a powerful mutant, so having you there wouldn't make much of a difference. The emergency medicine you've prepared for us is already enough. Just wait here patiently for our return. After saying their goodbyes, Zhang Yi and the others headed towards West Mountain Base on their snow vehicle. A conflict at West Mountain Base is imminent. Zhang Yi and two others are heading towards West Mountain Base. Yang Xinxin is also on edge at home, not daring to relax for a moment. She told Zhang Yi, West Mountain Base has just confirmed the missile launch time with River South Domain. It's definitely tonight at midnight, without error. I've already secretly modified the coordinates, so there's no need to worry. Zhang Yi asked her to continue monitoring their every move online, while he himself drove slowly towards the destination. After all, it was a dark and windy night, and Zhang Yi did not dare to drive too fast. Soon, they arrived near the base. Zhang Yi parked the car three kilometers away from the base, then took out a box from another space. After opening it, there were ten syringes inside. He passed two each to Chun Lei and Uncle Yu. This is a special stimulant that can excite the body and nerves in a short time, significantly enhancing a person's combat ability and reducing the sensation of pain to some extent. After saying this, Zhang Yi injected himself in the arm. Uncle Yu did not hesitate to do the same. Chun Lei weakly asked, this thing won't have any side effects, right? Zhang Yi rolled his eyes. Don't worry, even if there are side effects, they won't affect us in the short term. Our primary concern is to save our lives. It's not too late to recuperate after the mission is completed. The surprise for West Mountain Base is coming soon. Then, they waited in the car for the missile to strike. At this time, in West Mountain Base, Liang Yu came to the fourth life pod again. She went to her student's dormitory to remind everyone, put on all the clothes you have that can keep out the cold. It was then that the students realized that teacher Liang was indeed planning to take them out of there. Wu Chen Yu signaled everyone to keep quiet. Teacher Liang would never harm us. We just need to do as she says. Everyone closely followed behind Liang Yu, waiting for an opportunity to escape. At this time, Chen Xinyan was not sleeping early as usual but was nervously watching his laptop, waiting for the news that Zhang Yi's shelter had been bombed. Chen Xinyan was comforting himself, thinking that although launching the missile cost him a significant favor, the thought of getting rid of Zhang Yi, a major thorn in his side, made it all seem worth it. From a certain perspective, Zhang Yi was considered by Chen Xinyan to be an even bigger threat than and other major forces in Heavenly Sea City. After all, Zhang Yi had once caused him a painful defeat. As a high-ranking official of Heavenly Sea City, to be humiliated by such a clown was something Chen Xinyan could never accept. However, at such a crucial moment, he did not plan to enjoy this victory alone. He called over the team leader, Ling Feng, to tell him indirectly that the person he couldn't deal with had been easily handled by him, as a reminder to Ling Feng not to overestimate his abilities, implying that Chen Xinyan could manage without him. Ling Feng was surprised to learn that Chen Xinyan had a way to deal with Zhang Yi. This old guy got to his current position entirely because of his family's power. In terms of combat readiness, Chen Xinyan, you might not even compare to an upper-class soldier. Ling Feng couldn't figure out what method he might have to deal with Zhang Yi. At this moment, Chen Xinyan was full of confidence. I just want to remind you that mutants are not invincible. Even now, in the post-apocalyptic world, the power of the military is still unquestionable. Ling Feng nodded. Don't worry, I will definitely follow your arrangement. Chen Xinyan turned the computer screen to show Ling Feng, the top leader of River South Domain, Zhu Zheng, owes me a big favor, so, I contacted him to get a ground-penetrating missile. Hearing this, Ling Feng was overjoyed. We can finally avenge our brothers. This time, Zhang Yi is surely dead. Chen Xinyan said proudly, I've always said, don't think just because you've luckily awakened some special abilities that you can be arrogant. You're still too young. He then called Ling Feng to stand behind him. Ling Feng, come over here. Today, we'll see how this arrogant Zhang Yi is blown to pieces. No matter how sturdy his shelter is, it can't withstand the attack of a ground-penetrating missile.
Ling Feng was naturally very excited. So many of my brothers died at his hands, and now I can finally relieve my hatred. It's just that. To deal with just Zhang Yi, using a high-yield ground-penetrating missile seems a bit wasteful. Chen Xinyan said helplessly, it's true that a higher rank crushes the lower one. Once upon a time, my rank was almost the same as Zhu Zhang's, but now they control the weapons, and in the end, they've become the overlord of the River South Domain. Ling Feng suddenly had an idea. If we could get the support of Commander Zhu, wouldn't Heavenly Sea City be ours for the taking? Chen Xinyan glanced at Ling Feng, you're being too naive. Chen Xinyan couldn't help thinking, although I have some connections with Zhu Zheng, it's now the apocalypse. If I can't create value for him, he has no reason to help me. Time passed by every second. Yang Xinxin did not take her eyes off the screen for a moment, fearing she would miss any crucial information. It was almost midnight. At this moment, at the command center of River South Domain headquarters, as a middle-aged man in military uniform pressed the launch button, a heavy missile soared from the silo, trailing a tail of fire that caught through the night sky, exceptionally conspicuous in the quiet night. Chen Xinyan's eyes showed excitement, staring intently at the screen. Just then, the information department at West Mountain Base detected an unidentified object speeding towards them. The information department immediately went into a frenzy. This is a missile coming from the direction of Capital of Splendor. The target seems to be us. Report it quickly, but the missile's speed didn't give them time to react. Zhang Yi, in a snow vehicle, saw a bright light approaching from the horizon, falling to West Mountain Base like a meteor. With a loud boom, a muffled sound almost shook the area within 10 miles. Even the snow vehicle parked 3 kilometers away was nearly flipped over by the shockwave. Zhang Yi immediately informed Yang Xinxin the missile coordinate modification plan was successful. Inside the safe house, Yang Xinxin was already prepared, and everything proceeded according to plan. She immediately cut off the electricity system of West Mountain Base. At this time, the interior of West Mountain Base was in chaos, as if it had experienced a major earthquake. The sudden shutdown of the electricity system plunged the entire base into darkness. Screams filled the base. Chen Xinyan had no idea what was happening and suddenly slumped to the ground, weak at the knees. What's going on? How could this happen? It was then that the information department called. Bad news, Lord Chen. We've been hit by a missile. Chen Xinyan was puzzled. Who would dare attack us with missiles? Could it be that Zhu Xing has betrayed me? However, Chen Xinyan quickly regained his composure. He knew that the priority was to quickly restore order to the base and ensure his own safety. Thinking this, Chen Xinyan immediately ordered Ling Feng, quickly call the special forces to protect my safety. Also, make sure that those people in the fourth life pod don't cause any trouble. Send troops to guard it strictly. Finally, tell the engineers to hurry up and repair the electricity. Chen Xinyan was aware that West Mountain Base was very robustly built and couldn't be breached by just a few missiles. As long as we stabilize the current situation, the advantage is still ours. The intense shaking caused the soldiers guarding outside the base to panic. They hurriedly tried to use their communication devices to contact the command center, but the underground power supply had been cut off by Yang Xinxin, and everyone was in disarray, unable to contact anyone. Just then, Zhang Yi, driving the snow vehicle, came crashing in at high speed, instantly knocking down four people. Before the guards could react, Zhang Yi and his two companions, along with their cat, had already stepped out of the vehicle with guns in hand. In just two minutes, the guards at the entrance were all taken down. Although the ground guards were the most elite soldiers, they stood no chance against the trio and their mutant cat. Zhang Yi glanced at the southern entrance of the base. He didn't plan to storm in directly. With a serious look, Zhang Yi said, Next, it's up to Liang Yu. At this moment, in the fourth life pod, the students were also shouting and screaming due to the sudden shaking. Liang Yu then understood. So, this was the reason we were told to wait until midnight? Fortunately, the shelter is exceptionally sturdy. Despite the severe shaking, there are no signs of collapse. Liang Yu signaled the students behind her, Quickly, follow me. Liang Yu no longer had time to explain to the students. Every second counted now. Once West Mountain Base managed to restore the electricity system in order, they would have no chance to escape. Liang Yu took out her phone for light, and everyone closely followed behind her. The Hall of the Third Life Pod was in chaos. The soldiers were also taken aback for a moment. They were holding guns, ordering everyone to quickly return to the Fourth Life Pod. But now, in the pitch dark, they dared not shoot rashly. Most importantly, they had not yet received orders from above to fire. Seeing the chaotic scene outside, Liang Yu was secretly pleased. The opportunity has come. She had already memorized the entire escape route, so she didn't run around like a headless fly like the others. Liang Yu seized the opportunity and led the students out of the fourth life pod. Immediately, several gunshots were heard from inside. Fortunately, they ran out in time. They finally couldn't help but start shooting. Liang Yu couldn't care about that anymore. Her only wish at this moment was to lead the students out of West Mountain Base. The dozen or so students followed her closely, not daring to relax for a moment. Liang Yu was also aware that the armed forces of West Mountain Base were not to be underestimated. Once the electricity was restored, quelling such a scale of unrest would be easy. They had to speed up. As they passed by a stairwell, they suddenly saw two 
soldiers guarding with guns. Seeing the situation turn sour, the soldiers were about to raise their guns to stop them. Liang Yu didn't hesitate, activated her ability, swung her sword, and charged forward. The two soldiers hadn't even figured out what was happening before they were instantly beheaded. Liang Yu knew that the appearance of these two soldiers meant that the higher-ups of West Mountain Base had begun to restore order. If they didn't leave now, more soldiers would surely appear. The stairs leading to the surface from the base were long. Soon, a bright light appeared ahead. The students were overjoyed, almost reaching the exit. At this moment, Liang Yu extended her hand to block the students behind her. There was a sinister figure ahead. Suddenly, a familiar sound of high heels echoed, only to hear the shadow coldly say, Liang Yu, you traitor, dare to come back. At this moment, everyone realized that in front of them were over 30 fully armed special forces members. Guru played with her fringe. Lord Chen is truly wise to have guessed that some would try to escape amidst the chaos. Guru signaled the soldiers beside her to get into formation. Did you think West Mountain Base is a place you can come and go as you please? The only outcome for those who attempt to escape the base is to become food for the lower classes. Liang Yu, you traitor, you were given a good life but didn't appreciate it, and now you're even willing to risk your life for these worthless test subjects. Hearing the word food, the students' faces turned pale. Were they using people as food? Was the yogurt-like substance they had been eating made from corpses? Some people started to vomit. At this point, Liang Yu suddenly extended her hand. Wait, I think we can still talk. Guru, however, responded coldly. What is there left to talk about with you? A traitor is a traitor and must not be tolerated. Just a second before Guru gestured to open fire, a soldier suddenly fell. Shot. Zhang Yi, holding a silenced sniper rifle, had arrived behind them. Guru's face turned pale instantly. Then she loudly ordered her soldiers to return fire. In no time, the entire narrow passage was covered in gunfire. Liang Yu had the students lie down against the walls while she herself charged forward with her long sword, knowing that Zhang Yi and his team had arrived to support them. With this backup, Liang Yu's confidence surged. The soldiers of West Mountain Base were attacked from both sides by powerful mutants, overwhelmed in both close combat and ranged attacks. After Zhang Yi opened the dimensional gate, all their shots became meaningless. In just two minutes, the narrow passage was filled with dismembered limbs. Liang Yu, regaining her senses and looking gratefully at Zhang Yi, said, Thank you for your support. Zhang Yi simply replied, Don't mention it. He understood that without Liang Yu's risky return to the base as an insider, he would have had no chance to change the missile coordinates. Helping her rescue the students was only natural. Thinking this, Zhang Yi said to Liang Yu, There's no time to lose. Hurry and get them out of here. Liang Yu quickly calmed the frightened students. Everyone, move quickly. We're about to be free. At this moment, Liang Yu saw Guru curled up in a corner. Liang Yu stared at Guru intently and said, I heard it was your idea that led to the death of my students, right? Fear was written all over Guru's face. Please, don't kill me. I'm just a secretary. All those decisions were made by Lord Chen himself. Yi Xiaoyan, filled with hatred, walked over. The experiments he had undergone for human modification were like climbing out of the 18 layers of hell. Now, faced with Guru's pleas, he didn't say a word before pulling out a dagger and slicing her throat. Afterward, he simply stated, people like her are not worth pitying. Liang Yu approached Zhang Yi sincerely and said, thank you for keeping your word. You helped me save the students. What can I do for you next? Zhang Yi told Liang Yu, the guards at the entrance have all been dealt with. There's no time to waste. Your students must leave quickly. Saying this, Zhang Yi took out two backpacks from another space. Here are energy bars to restore strength and some fuel for warmth. First, go hide in the district five kilometers southeast of here. I will come to meet you later. Then, Zhang Yi pointed at Liang Yu and said, you can't leave yet. You need to lead the way for us. We'll go in together soon. The students, hearing this, look terrified. Teacher can't leave us. If by any chance pursuers come after us, we have no power to resist. Then we're doomed. Zhang Yi smiled and said, I guess they're too busy to chase you now. However, Zhang Yi's expression suddenly changed. If we all escape now and West Mountain Base stabilizes the situation here, they will definitely come after us soon. Especially since just now, your teacher Liang and I killed so many of their people. Do you think they would let it go? Liang Yu understood deep down. From the moment she decided to defect from West Mountain Base, her escape route was already cut off. Even if she escapes from West Mountain Base today, she might still face their endless pursuit in the future. Liang Yu bit her lip weakly and asked, So, what do we do next? Zhang Yi smiled slightly. Isn't it simple? Just blow up their entire base. That way, it's solved once and for all. Liang Yu felt a twinge of reluctance in her heart. There are so many people inside. Those are thousands of living lives. But if we don't root out the problem, she and the students will eventually face retaliation. By then, it will be them who die. After pondering for a moment, Liang Yu made up her mind. I'll help you. She knew she didn't have much time left. Given the situation, this might be the only path she could choose. Liang Yu instructed Yi Xiaotian, who was beside her. Yi Xiaotian, you lead the way. We will come to find you guys as soon as we're done here. Yi Xiaotian glanced at Zhang Yi and the others, then said to Liang Yu, Teacher Liang, you must protect yourself. Then he led the students out of the base. At this point, Liang Yu didn't know how much she could help. She was aware of the gap in strength between herself and Ling Feng. Zhang Yi handed 
texted his phone to Leon Yu. We must act quickly. Take us to this location. That location was the second life pod where she had always lived and was very familiar with. Leon Yu nodded. Follow me. The four of them immediately put on helmets and sprinted towards the designated location. Zhang Yi and his team quickly arrived at the central location, which was ideal for placing explosives. Zhang Yi signaled Uncle Yu and Chun Lei, start the operation. The two nodded and quickly took out timed explosives from their backpacks, placing them in various hidden corners. Seeing this, Liang Yu said anxiously, this amount of explosives won't have any effect. The sturdiness here is beyond your imagination. Your ordinary C4 won't make a dent. Zhang Yi calmly responded, these are explosives specially made by Lu Karen. While speaking, Zhang Yi activated the dimensional gate. In the next second, piles of explosives landed in the corners. Liang Yu's eyes widened in shock. These bombs look somewhat familiar at first glance. Upon closer thought, aren't these the same explosives Ling Feng used to bomb the shelter? You actually kept these things? Zhang Yi chuckled. I, Zhang Yi, have always been frugal, never wasting a grain of rice. Now, let them taste their own medicine. After setting everything up, Zhang Yi signaled to quickly evacuate. On their way out, Zhang Yi also attached explosives to every door they passed. When they reached a corner, Liang Yu suddenly stopped. She looked towards the end of the second life pod and said, why don't we take this opportunity to directly eliminate Chen Xin Yin? Without their leader, the base will surely fall into chaos. Clenching her long sword, the thought of her students being killed by Chen Xin Yin's orders filled Liang Yu with deep hatred, especially since that old man had manipulated her students, which disgusted her as a woman. Zhang Yi also stopped and, without turning back, said with a laugh, even if we kill Chen Xin Yin, someone will quickly take his place. Have you not considered that the problem is not the person Chen Xin Yin, but the system of West Mountain Base itself? Liang Yu found herself unable to argue because she too felt that the truth was as Zhang Yi had said. Zhang Yi continued, the only solution now is to destroy the entire base. Otherwise, no matter who takes over as the leader, the result will be the same. During their conversation, their unusual behavior caught the attention of the special forces. They were all wearing special forces uniforms, especially Liang Yu, who was wearing a captain's uniform. Under the insufficient light and chaotic situation, no one would normally notice anything odd about them. However, one of the special forces members noticed their peculiar behavior, especially the spotted cat beside Zhang Yi. West Mountain Base has never heard of anyone keeping a pet. The soldier raised his gun and shouted, there's something wrong with these people. Seize them. Zhang Yi had no choice but to immediately activate his ability, quadrupling his speed. He enhanced his speed to the maximum and quickly fired a shot in retaliation. The person hadn't even reacted before their head was pierced through instantly. When the special forces saw their teammate fall, they raised their AKs and began shooting wildly at Zhang Yi and his team. By this time, Zhang Yi had already opened the dimensional gate, blocking all angles in the narrow corridor while calmly raising his handgun, hitting his targets with almost every shot. Liang Yu was astonished behind him. After following Ling Feng for a month, they couldn't take down his shelter. I only knew that Zhang Yi's ability was troublesome, but now I see he possesses such powerful defensive capabilities that are almost monstrous. Before long, someone in the crowd shouted, this is a spatial ability, this person is Zhang Yi. Everyone stopped shooting, retreat and spread out. The person shouting was Shen Hong, one of the first special forces soldiers who had attacked Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi smiled and muttered, recognizing me now is too late. Then he dramatically shouted, counterattack. Suddenly, all the bullets that had been fired at them were sent back like a storm in the opposite direction, hitting almost everyone. Only a few managed to block the bullets using the bodies of their comrades. However, as Zhang Yi and his team were retreating, dozens of grenades flew out from the dimensional gate, engulfing the corridor in an explosion and turning the scene into a sea of fire. The dozens of grenades Zhang Yi threw caused a massive commotion. They knew they couldn't stay there much longer. If the base's power was restored and they were surrounded, it would be troublesome since the dimensional gate couldn't defend against multiple angles at once. Just then, Zhang Yi noticed the lights above start to flicker, indicating the base's electrical system was about to come back on. He was well aware that once West Mountain Base's systems were back online, the explosives they had placed could potentially be discovered in advance. While it was unlikely all the explosives could be defused quickly, it would still give them time to move. At this moment, the news of Zhang Yi's infiltration and Liang Yu's betrayal reached Chen Xinyin. Furious, he immediately issued a death order. Zhang Yi must be eliminated. While donning his specially made combat suit, Chen Xinyin furiously cursed. Zhang Yi, you arrogant brat, the advantage is mine this time. You're doomed. Coming here on your own, without the protection of your shelter, I'll chop you up into a protein shake. Ling Feng immediately took his team, filled with rage, to seek vengeance on Zhang Yi. His eyes brimmed with a murderous intent, determined to settle both new and old scores with Zhang Yi once and for all. However, the second life pod was also in chaos. After the power was restored, people discovered that C4 explosives were plastered everywhere. While these explosives weren't enough to destroy the walls and collapse the base, the series of small explosions would consume a significant amount of the internal oxygen and drastically increase the internal temperature, ultimately leading
leading to the death of everyone inside. Ling Feng couldn't care less at this point, quickly arranged for bomb disposal experts to clear them, he ordered, before striding outside to pursue. Right now, nothing was more important to him than killing Zhang Yi. Along the way, Zhang Yi and his team encountered numerous troubles. No matter which direction they tried to escape, they saw heavily armed soldiers. Following the orders from above, they did everything they could to delay Zhang Yi and the others, buying time for Ling Feng and other mutant leaders to catch up. They no longer just shot blindly, knowing that Zhang Yi's ability would send all the bullets right back at them. Faced with the onslaught of Special Forces soldiers, Uncle Yu stepped forward. Let me handle this. As he activated his ability, his muscles visibly swelled at an astonishing speed, instantly bursting through his durable combat suit and transforming him into a muscle giant over two meters tall. The next second, he charged into the crowd like a tank, bullets no longer causing him substantial harm. Uncle Yu was like a titan, clearing the obstacles in his path like a bulldozer, sending any soldiers attempting to block him flying instantly. Zhang Yi didn't forget to caution, be careful, Uncle Yu. Using his body to take bullets head-on was something Zhang Yi hadn't anticipated. Uncle Yu chuckled, don't worry about me, this is nothing to me. He was well aware of his ability's powerful self-healing capability. As long as it's not a fatal injury, I can heal rapidly. Just then, several armored special forces soldiers suddenly charged in front of them. Among them, Zhang Yi recognized two, Xin Hong and Yu Lang. They were from the team that first attacked the shelter, where all their teammates died at Zhang Yi's hands except for these two who were lucky to survive. With such deep-seated hatred, Xin Hong was instantly enraged. Zhang Yi, you won't escape from here today. These few were likely modified humans who had undergone cell transplantation from Ling Feng. Knowing Zhang Yi's abilities, they decided to use melee weapons. Uncle Yu stepped in front of Zhang Yi and his team, scoffing, if you want to get to Zhang Yi, you'll have to get past me first. As the five modified humans faced off against Uncle Yu, Zhang Yi watched anxiously. Unexpectedly, at the moment of contact, Uncle Yu simply swung his arm fiercely, sending all five flying. They were embedded into the wall, unable to extricate themselves. Seeing this, Zhang Yi laughed. These half-baked, modified mutants thinking they can go head-to-head -head with a natural mutant is simply delusional. Uncle Yu looked puzzled. Is that it? Unbeknownst to him, his body was continuously becoming stronger through mutation, while these modified humans were inherently flawed. The mutated cells were consuming their normal cells, ultimately weakening them further. Uncle Yu was somewhat disappointed. Since gaining his powerful strength, he hadn't had a real chance to engage in a serious fight with anyone. This left the veteran somewhat restless, having only faced weak opponents. Zhang Yi remarked, what I dislike the most is fighting. Isn't it better to live our lives comfortably? Why insist on expanding conflicts and killings? As they were quickly retreating, a cold laugh came from ahead, thinking of running. It won't be that easy. A tall figure approached, carrying something resembling an explosive tank on his back. The gold stars on the shoulder of his combat suit indicated his rank as a team leader. Zhang Yi immediately recognized him. This was the mutant known as Fang Zun, codenamed Fireman in the files. Zhang Yi quickly opened the dimensional gate. Fang Zun spread his hands, and suddenly, a massive fire dragon surged towards Zhang Yi. Although the dimensional gate swallowed the fire dragon entirely, Fang Zun's assault did not cease. Zhang Yi realized that he was being delayed. Once the dimensional gate was activated, Zhang Yi couldn't move, meaning unless Fang Zun stopped, Zhang Yi had no way to leave. The temperature of the fire dragon released by Fang Zun could instantly reach thousands of degrees Celsius. If Zhang Yi closed the gate, everyone would be engulfed in flames, but keeping it open would allow more special forces soldiers to catch up. Caught between a rock and a hard place, Zhang Yi shouted to Chun Lei, Chubby, it's up to you. After his words fell, Zhang Yi's dimensional gate suddenly spewed out a vast amount of ice and snow, instantly overcoming Fang Zun's fire dragon. Fang Zun stepped back with disdain, saying, trivial tricks. Then he took out the canister from behind and started pouring its contents on the ground. It was his specially formulated fuel, which, when ignited, was as potent as explosives. He filled the entire corridor with a black oily substance, stepped back a few steps, and snapped his fingers lightly. Instantly, a wave of heat burst from the ground, engulfing the entire corridor in flames. Fang Zun stood in the middle of the blaze, and scathed, not even a flicker of flame touching the hem of his clothes. Fang Zun confidently stated, Our team leader will be here soon. Let's see how long you can hold out. Thankfully, Zhang Yi had also collected a large amount of ice and snow in the dimensional space, allowing Chun Lei to unleash his ability when the ice was released. The clash of ice and fire filled the entire corridor with steam. Fang Zun was momentarily stunned. They actually have a mutant who can manipulate ice and snow. There was no record of Chun Lei in their data, as no one had seen him take action before. Taking advantage of the moment Chun Lei was holding off Fang Zun, Zhang Yi and his team quickly retreated through the steam. Suddenly, a terrifying gust of wind came from ahead. Uncle Yu didn't have time to see what was happening when a gigantic fist was already bearing down on him. Instinctively crossing his arms to block, there was a loud bang, and Uncle Yu was sent flying back several meters, barely managing to steady himself in a kneeling position. Seeing this, Zhang Yi inwardly gasped. 
Uncle Yu, known for his physical strength, was left in such a state by a single hit. He moved back to Uncle Yu's side, concerned, Uncle Yu, are you alright? Uncle Yu was drenched in sweat, thanks to the stimulant, he didn't feel much pain. He joked lightly, it's not too bad, should be nothing fatal. Ling Feng stood about 10 meters away from Zhang Yi. Having a rough understanding of spatial abilities and learning from his previous painful lesson, he knew better than to approach hastily, likely falling into Zhang Yi's trap. He decided to wait it out, knowing they had nowhere to escape. Chun Lei also hurried over, sweating profusely at the sight of Uncle Yu's injuries. Uncle Yu, are you okay? Uncle Yu's forehead was covered in sweat. I'm fine, just feels like I've been hit by a train. Zhang Yi took out a stimulant from the dimensional space and without a second thought, injected it directly into Uncle Yu's arm. Concerns about side effects were set aside for now. It was crucial for Uncle Yu to quickly regain his combat strength. Uncle Yu understood Zhang Yi's intention. At this time, Flower also came over, visibly angered by the situation. Its fur bristled as it began to growl menacingly. Liang Yu also took a combat stance, ready to fight. Zhang Yi then halted them. Don't be rash, they can't get to us now. However, Ling Feng continued to press forward. After their last encounter, he had learned that Zhang Yi's dimensional space lacked the ability to attack proactively. He knew as long as he didn't venture into it himself, Zhang Yi couldn't do much against him. As the standoff continued, Ling Feng started to taunt, without the protection of your turtle shell shelter, do you think you can escape? Just give up and surrender, maybe I'll spare your life. More and more special forces soldiers were gathering on both sides. Fortunately, after receiving the second injection, Uncle Yu's powerful self-healing ability had nearly restored him to full strength. Zhang Yi, with a furrowed brow, said, so it has come to this after all. It seems my plan was too idealistic. Just then, a woman cloaked in a cape appeared behind Ling Feng. She softly called out Zhang Yi's name. Zhang Yi instinctively glanced at her. In that moment of eye contact, Zhang Yi felt as if he was being pulled into an abyss by an invisible force. It was Yi Ronghua, whose ability was to hypnotize through eye contact. But the next second, Yi Ronghua clutched her eyes, screaming in pain, while others fell into a hallucinatory state. Zhang Yi smirked, I forgot to tell you, my dimensional space can reflect your brainwaves back at you. At this time, Flower's body began to grow larger, taking advantage of their momentary mental lapse. Everyone quickly climbed onto Flower's body. At Zhang Yi's command, they madly ran towards the exit of the corridor. Zhang Yi then opened the dimensional gate and simultaneously threw out hundreds of grenades from the dimensional space. Ling Feng and his team had just begun to regain their composure when they were instantly engulfed in a sea of flames. The corridor echoed with continuous explosions. Chun Lei, worried, asked Zhang Yi, Boss, the big one we set up hasn't been diffused, has it? Otherwise, all our efforts will have been wasted. Zhang Yi replied solemnly, there's no way they could have in this short amount of time. Besides, we left so many C4 explosives along the way, they wouldn't have had time to defuse that big one in the corner. Once we're out, we'll detonate it. As Flower charged madly, Ling Feng and his team took shelter inside the walls during the explosions. Suddenly, with a roar, Ling Feng punched through a half-meter thick wall. Hurry up and chase, he bellowed before dashing forward. Suddenly, Su Ming Jie had exerted himself, his body beginning to twist and swell, transforming into a two-meter tall humanoid creature. He grabbed Yi Ronghua with one hand and Fang Zun with the other, and followed Ling Feng in a fierce chase. Seeing that they were about to be caught up, Chun Lei urgently told Zhang Yi, Boss, throw more grenades to stop them, at least to delay them a bit. But this time, Zhang Yi unusually said, I, Zhang Yi, am not the kind of person who takes advantage of others' vulnerabilities. If they like chasing, let them chase. Chun Lei and Uncle Yu were speechless. That statement coming from you doesn't sound convincing at all. However, they also knew, Zhang Yi has always been willing to use any means to achieve his ends, not rashly using his spatial ability, he must have his reasons, so, the group didn't dwell on further questions. After all, with Flower's speed, it wouldn't be easy for Ling Feng and his team to catch up. A few seconds later, Flower leaped out of the opening, and they finally emerged onto the ground of West Mountain Base. Ling Feng and his team also rushed to the door soon after. Once bitten, twice shy, Ling Feng didn't dare to approach rashly but just stood at the entrance, staring intently at Zhang Yi and his group. He was well aware that no one could escape under his watch, especially in the vast snowy terrain. Your dimensional space, Zhang Yi, is only invincible in one direction. If I just avoid that side and attack from all other angles, you can't escape. Chun Lei realized the dire situation. Without the narrow corridors of the base, Zhang Yi's spatial defense couldn't block Ling Feng's abnormally fast attacks. Boss, what do we do now? A cold smirk appeared on Ling Feng's lips, his eyes filled with the thrill of revenge. Then he mockingly said, without the protection of your turtle shell shelter, where can you 
you run now? Zhang Yi sighed. When will this cycle of vengeance end? While speaking, Zhang Yi's right hand pulled out a remote control from his pocket and pressed it hard. Seeing this, Ling Feng panicked. What's that in your hand? Zhang Yi didn't answer Ling Feng's question, but kept pressing the button. Just two seconds later, a muffled sound came from behind them, and the ground shook violently. Before they could steady themselves, a wave of heat surged from behind, followed by a fire dragon erupting from the corridor entrance. Everyone's attention was on Zhang Yi, paying no heed to the anomaly behind them. Suddenly, they were all swept away by the scorching blast. Chun Lei's eyes sparkled with excitement. It's finally done. West Mountain Base is destroyed. They all showed relieved smiles. Ling Feng clenched his fists and roared, Damn you, Zhang Yi, what have you done? Zhang Yi responded with a teasing tone. You know, I should actually thank you. Remember that big bundle of TNT you left when you attacked my shelter? I've returned it all to you. To keep up with the tradition of giving and receiving, I even added a bit more as a return gift. I must say, your explosives really are quite effective. Zhang Yi, with a somewhat provoking tone, said, If it weren't for Captain Ling's generous gift, we couldn't have produced such high-yield explosives ourselves. After all, in this snowy wilderness, there's nowhere to gather materials. Ling Feng turned to look at the destroyed base, feeling a chill in his heart. The base that I relied on for survival has been destroyed like this, and even using my own explosives, he even felt an impulse to go back and rescue people. But after such an explosion, there's likely no chance of any survivors. Ling Feng's eyes were nearly bleeding with rage. Today, I will make you pay in blood. Just then, Zhang Yi suddenly extended his hand. Wait, you need to think this through. There are four mutants on our side, making it 4v4 on this level. But your fireman is practically a joke here, and your hypnotist lady has been backfired by her own illusion. Now it's just you and that big guy. Those special forces soldiers behind you are hardly a threat. All four of us are combat specialists. Are you confident you can defeat us? Even if you're more powerful, it will end in mutual destruction. Even if we can't kill you, we're absolutely sure we can take down all your brothers. Why bother? You don't need to look so aggrieved. It was you who attacked me first. This is self-defense on my part. I don't owe you anything. Ling Feng coldly responded. Don't talk to me about this nonsense. Today, it's either you die or I do. Hearing this, Zhang Yi suddenly laughed darkly. By your logic, your target is just me, right? Ling Feng was growing impatient, unsure of what trick Zhang Yi was planning next. All he wanted was a swift conclusion. Stop with the nonsense. Prepare to die. Zhang Yi was fearless. He stepped forward and loudly told Ling Feng, since your target is me, I don't think we need to gamble with our brother's lives. Zhang Yi provocatively beckoned with his hand and said, Ling Feng, this is a grudge between the two.